unless you've been living under a rock. And you've seen all of my videos talking about how I'm on a mission to destroy all the gurus on the internet by giving everything away for free. And then we went ahead and gave away my seven figure agency course that shows you how to go from zero all the way to the million dollar run rate. And that's when I came up with the genius idea of taking everything that's working right now, not last week, not last month, not last year, but right now and combining it into a 10 to 15 hour course. And over the next 10 to 15 hours, you're going to learn how to build an agency that combines the best of all three worlds, AI, SaaS, and SMMA. So with that in mind, sit back, take out a massive piece of paper to take out a lot of notes, probably get two pens, relax, and let's dive in. Let's get started. So this entire workshop is going to be three days long, but we do have some surprises for you that we will share. And if you stay through this whole entire live session today, tomorrow, and also day three, um, we, 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 you will get a lot of different things out of this, I promise you. Um, one, let me first do a quick introduction to Joel Kaplan, who he is. Um, I think 2019, Joel, I reached out to Joel because in, in, in that time of period, which sounds crazy, almost four years ago, in my, in my thought process, he was, if not the best or one of the best, uh, marketers and coaches and agency players in the space that was like, to me, one of the top, you know, legends of cold marketing. When it comes to mass communication, um, he was it. And I was personally part of a lot of his programs as well, along with my business partner, Lewis. Um, and I can tell you, uh, there's no fluff. Uh, he's one of those guys that'll tell you how it is. And uh, it's like unapologetic, but the truth, and I'm excited for it, um, really as a overarching outcome for this workshop, once you're done with this workshop, you should have a game plan for the entire 2024 year for you to get to a positive revenue. Now, from a claim standpoint, revenue claims, all that stuff, it's up to you to make what you want to make out of it. We've got plenty of case studies that are proven that has results. And there's also people that fail from the same content as well. So you have to do the work that's behind it. Some of Joel's team members will also be joining um, along during this workshop as well. So there's a ton happening. Joel, let's take it away, man. I'm, I'm done with my first round of Soapbox here. Uh, excited to have you as a friend as well as a colleague. Um, Give us give us a rundown of your story real quick for a few minutes and we'll get started with day one. Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, it's been four years, man, since we did that 10 day workshop, which is wild. Um, I actually can't see in the comments, if, but if you guys want to comment on the Facebook live, who here was on our or ha who here has gone through our 10 day workshop that Paulson and I did back in 2019? It that was, was the first ever like workshop. educational content for high level, right? That was that was the first ever workshop ever built, and mainly because we looked at the accounts and realized a ton of people were struggling in sales and marketing. Yeah, and I feel like now there's so much value, there's so much content around high level, and you guys have really just taken the world by storm. So I'm just grateful that you asked me to come back, and my challenge. To myself this time around was to destroy that 10 day workshop. <laughs> I want to make that 10 day workshop, which we literally taught you guys everything. I want to make it so bad <laughs> where you guys are like, this new three day workshop is the greatest workshop in history of high level in the agency space ever. So my hope for this week, really, guys, is to over deliver for you guys at as much value as humanly possible and ultimately give you everything that you'll need to build an agency from zero all the way to a million dollars. Like Paulson said, is it going to be really fucking hard? Of course. Will everyone make it? Of course not. If everyone could make it, everyone here would be a millionaire. It's really, really hard. But I will give you guys all the tools to increase your potential to make that happen. So again, I'm really honored to be back, Paulson. I feel like uh, I'm having deja vu, you know? 
And uh, I'm like, we've been here before, but it's not deja vu because it's actually happened. And it's going to be insane, guys. I think the, the biggest difference between last time we did this, it was a lot of like talking about how to do cold email, talking about how to do paid ads, talking about how to do sales. Whereas this time around, I literally am going to be building out everything with you guys. So we're going to show you cold email. We're going to show you how to do Instagram DMs. We're going to show you how to do the service delivery, so on and so forth. So with that in mind, I do have slides to kick us off and then I'll be transitioning off of the slides. So Feel go free. ahead and share my screen. Yeah, real quick. By the way, I... just real quick. Yeah, those of you it. that might be watching and you're in the waiting room, our Zoom room is already booked out. There's over a thousand people in there. And, uh, and that means you're not going to be able to watch it inside the Zoom room. You are more than welcome to join our live streaming, which is happening inside the Facebook group for high level. If you don't have a high level account and you're trying to watch it live, um, you should be ashamed of yourself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Pump into a quick account and you'll be able to get access to the Facebook group for at least day two and three. Um, there will be replays in the YouTube channel afterwards. Give us a couple of days to post each one of those. And just right out of the gate, for those of you that are just joining us, this is a workshop that is going to go long. And there's so much content. Usually we do these workshops for like an hour and we do 30 minutes of Q&A and I'm, I was thinking, okay, with Joel, we're, it's going to be at least two hours. But he he gave me a rude awakening that he wants to teach for like five hours. So I told him, let's try to keep it below three hours. So get your books ready. If you don't have your lunch with you, go grab your lunch, heat it up, have it ready. We No have, bathroom breaks. Yeah, we, we have a lot <laughs> of content to go through uh, in setting up your success for 2024. So just a fair warning, these sessions are going to be long. Um, stay with it. I promise you it's, it's going to be very valuable for you. Go ahead, Joel. Well, I'm excited guys. We're going to break down how to scale your agency to hundred thousand dollars a month in 2024, leveraging the new SaaS model that combines paper show with AI and high level. So what I'm really excited about is that this model leverages the best of all three worlds, agency or SMMA, AI and SaaS. And it brings all of them together to really stand out, even in saturated markets. And uh, with that in mind, let's dive in. So here's what we're going to go over. So day one is going to be us going over the model that's going to be today and service delivery. So we're going to start off by breaking down the model step by step and how to get your clients insane results. That's going to be day one. Uh-oh, why is it not letting me? Okay, cool. Uh, day two, we're going to go over... Why did it do that? One second. So, so click on... Um, yeah, go back to sharing where you were. Yeah, you're good. Go under... Go back to your slides. Yeah. Under uh, the Zoom options where you click view options at the very top where you're sharing, click on yeah, that. Yeah, I think other people are drawing. Right, right. I'm I'm showing you how to turn that off. So go click okay. on Okay. Click on more. <laughs> What's going on, guys? <laughs> Stop drawing on the screen. You guys are ridiculous. All right. Do I where do I tweak that? So, That's so hilarious. When you, <laughs> when you share, it'll give you a bar for annotation. Okay. So click on annotation, click on more, and in there you can allow you can just basically remove the ability for people to um not annotate <laughs> little technical difficulties here where this is after i share after you share yeah so click on share okay why is it kicking you out from sharing okay cool so good so at the very top you, you see where you see annotate yeah yeah so then guys I'm, you're being ridiculous yeah it's just uh, Spanish, that annotate, and then what and then go to, let's see, let me just clear clear this all up. Okay, so at the very, there's a, there's a button for, there's a button for. I clicked on annotate. Yeah, there's a drop down button that says click on more options. 
And uh, you know, I don't have that drop down. So stop sharing and I'll share. Okay. Yeah. So. You guys are ridiculous, by the way. I got to give you props <laughs> for your ridiculousness. <laughs> so what you do is disable annotate for others. So it's basically now, now if you share. Um, we should be good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, what you oh, want to cool. do is click on more after you share. And um, I know I didn't have that option. Maybe because you're not a co-host. Let me add you as a co-host real quick. Um, real quick. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. Because <laughs> you guys are acting like second graders. Okay. <laughs> so just give us like two minutes. Let me just make you a we'll start over. Yeah. I have so much value for you guys. And you're drawing on the freaking whiteboard. <laughs> it's usually some spammers that just want some attention. Uh, so now when so you good. click so click share at the bottom, after you share, click on right. more and it'll it'll basically give you the option to disable annotation for others. Unless I already did it automatically. Yeah, click on no, more. Wait. No, I don't have I don't have that option. You should. Um when you sh it's basically your settings. Uh let's see. Disable annotation. Got it. Yeah. Now you can clear all of that. Well, yeah, don't <laughs> Don't stop. All right, let's see. Aha. We got it. <laughs> got you guys. All right. We're going to start over again because, uh, yeah, we're going to start over again. So we're going to go over how to scale your agency to $100,000 a month in 2024, leveraging the new SaaS model that combines the best of all three worlds, SMMA, AI, and SaaS with high level. So here's what's going to go down. On day one, we're going to go over the model. And we're going to break down service delivery, a.k.a. we're going to teach you guys how to get your clients insane results with this model. On day two, we're going to go over acquisition part one. So we're going to talk about how to max out your calendar with ready to buy qualified prospects. On day three, we're going to go over acquisition part two. So we're going to talk about how to get prospects to say yes and ink big deals. Now, this is the first surprise that we got for you guys. I'm gonna drop surprise number one for all of you guys that are taking time out of your day to be here and to share your time with us, which I believe is your greatest asset. So for that, we are going to over deliver and throw in day number four. So we already are over delivering for you guys. We're gonna have a fourth day uh, it's not going to be a three-day workshop. It's going to be a four-day workshop where we're going to break down how to leverage AI within high level. And we're going to go over Q&A on day four. And we're going to talk about next steps. So essentially, we're going to talk about everything that you guys need to do to win in 2024 and how to leverage AI to destroy your competition. Plus, there's going to be some top secret guests throughout. So if you guys go back to 2019 when I did the workshop with Paulson, it was just us two, and I think we had Omir as well, but yeah. this time around, I wanted to elevate others around me. You know, a lot of the things that I know today aren't just me. It's because of everyone that I've surrounded myself with. You know, like, I don't personally, I use high level for everything, but I don't personally go into high level. We have a team. We have someone completely dedicated to high level that helps us out. So we're going to be elevating all of my connections, all of my team members throughout this workshop. One of my biggest core values is that a rising tide raises all ships. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So I'll be bringing a few surprise guest speakers each day to help make all of this happen. Plus, for all of you guys that attend and stay until the end, on the last day, I'm going to be giving away 10 of my best courses. I'm going to give, be giving away all of my 100K a month master classes where we interview students who I've helped scale to 100K a month. We're going to be giving you guys a free course on how to send 10,000 emails per day. We're going to give you guys a free course breaking down how to increase your profits in your agency over a five-day challenge. We're going to be giving you guys a free course on how to do agency fulfillment A to Z. We're going to give you an entire free course on how to run YouTube ads 
or how to build a YouTube ads agency for B2B, we're going to give you an entire course on how to build a YouTube ads agency for B2C for local businesses. We're going to give you my advanced paper show agency course that breaks all of this down in even more detail. We're going to give you guys a sales mastery course, a TikTok ad agency course, and all of my top master classes of all time. If you guys stay until the end, all 100% for free. On top of all that, I'm also going to be giving away all of our snapshots from the next three or four days. So all of the snapshots that we showcase, all of the funnels within high level, all of the assets that we go over that exist within high level, we're going to be giving away to you guys for free at the end. Plus, on top of that, I'm going to be raffling a one, one iPhone to a lucky winner. Now, the, I'm paying for the iPhone. I did not ask high level to pay for this. So you guys better stay until the end and uh, pay attention. I'm going to be giving away one iPhone to one lucky winner. I have no idea how we're going to do that, Paulson. So just bear with me. We'll figure it out. But one of you guys is going to be walking away with an iPhone. And then once you get the iPhone, I'm going to make you post a picture of yourself with the iPhone in the high level group so that you guys can see that it actually happened. On top of that, we're going to be raffling a one-on-one -on -one with me. So one lucky winner will get to meet with me one-on-one -on -one and I'll coach you on your agency. There's going to be no pitch today or tomorrow or the next four days. We're not going to ask you for a single dollar to enter to win. All you have to do is stay till the end. So all we ask is that you hang out with us for the next few days and uh, tune in through the live. If you didn't make the, uh, the zoom room and and real quick joel yeah. before you get started with the rest of the stuff let me also share my screen for one second if you don't mind um because yeah, i know no worries. i know there's a ton of you and everything joel just said is really to the you know folks that already are on high level um if you're watching this and you don't have a high level account you essentially won't be able to access any of those goodies unless you sign up for either a new account or trial or some kind. So if you don't have a high level account, um, I promise you, yeah, you'll, you'll need, you'll need to get all those snapshots to get the free courses. You don't need a high level account, but most of the free courses show you how to leverage high level to grow your agency. So right. you will need a high level account to get access to the snapshots. Yeah. At least. And, and we're going to have a snapshot for this workshop as well as an additional bonus, which you would also need a high level account for it. So Jordan, if you don't mind grabbing this link and posting it in the comments, I definitely appreciate it. Go ahead, Joel. You can go ahead and share uh, your screen and get started. I'll grab. By that. the way, I see there's a thousand of you guys in the Zoom. So thank you for being here. It means a lot. I'm going to make sure to uh, over deliver for you guys. So. My only selfish ask for this entire workshop, take a minute to follow me on Instagram and subscribe on my YouTube if you haven't already. Um, so my Instagram is official Joel Kaplan. My YouTube, just go to Joel Kaplan SMMA. Just literally search for that. You'll find my channel. That's my only ask for this entire four-day workshop. And yes, this is going to be recorded and uploaded to both my channel and the High Level channel. So you do not have to worry about that. I'm going to say it one more time because people will ask. Yes, it will be recorded and uploaded to both my channel and the high-level channel. So you guys will be good. If you join us live, you get to enter to win the RAF, uh, the one-on-one -on -one with me, the iPhone, all that good stuff. But everyone will be able to access this later on. And most importantly, don't just consume all this info over the next four days. The easy part is consuming. The hard part that will actually get you the results is taking massive action. So before we begin, I've got some warnings for you. Warning number one, this model is really effing hard. You know, Paulson said that I tell the truth, even if it's not what you guys want to hear. I, I, my, my goal is to tell you what you need to hear, because I believe that if I tell you what you need to hear, you're, you're going to be much more prepared to go out into battle in business and win. So again, this is not easy. This model is really effing hard. The performance model is one of the hardest models in the agency space. 
it puts most of the pressure on you to perform and deliver. With the rise of guarantees, crazy offers, and unmet promises, this is actually an amazing thing, and I'll explain why. <clears throat> it puts the pressure on the product. And if it really is an amazing product, sales will come. Now, the best products in the world share the risk between the client and the service provider. In this model, places that risk right in the middle. And by risk, I mean of the risk of whether or not it will work. So let's say that a client pays you for advertising, the risk of what if it doesn't work? The best products share that risk where the client has to step up, put some skin in the game, make sure they're doing what they need to do. And you have pressure to perform. You have skin in the game. You need to make sure that you do what you need to do in order to succeed. So what I love about this model is that the client has to invest into ads, but you only make money when you perform. That being said, if you crack the code on this model, you will walk away with an amazing product. And most importantly, you'll be able to get unlimited clients because you will hold the keys to acquisition for your clients. If you can get your clients clients, you'll have no problem getting yourself clients. Just think about that. If you can figure out how to get your clients clients, people will pay you money. So this model forces you to figure that out. Um, like most things, guys, in life, if it's hard and only a few people can figure it out, it's probably worth doing or attempting to do it. So that's warning number one. Warning number two, some of this info is not new and I might have already given it away. So I did want to give that warning because some of you guys might be like, oh, Joel, like those are similar ads to what you've shared before or like, oh, Joel, like you already showed us how to do cold email. You know, as you guys know, I've been on a mission to destroy all the gurus on the internet by giving everything away for free, including myself. And, uh, uh oh, hold on. I don't know why annotations are not. Okay. And, uh, which means that some of what we cover, I've already given away. So, so don't be like, this is all supposed to be new. This model is 80% the same as it was when I started in 2017. Probably the only big change since 2017 is high level. Funny enough, like it's, it's still the same. It's still very, very, very similar. It's just building an agency. It's just marketing for businesses. And it's going to be the same, 80% the same in, 2017, uh, in 2027 and 2037. And some things will change like the offers, the pricing structures and leveraging AI. But at the end of the day, this is not rocket science. You're not building Tesla. We're not sending people to Mars. We're not building robots. We're just doing marketing for local businesses and leveraging an amazing tool called high level to make it all easier. So a lot of the info I share might be the same. And uh, that being said, if you followed my stuff in the past, this will be a great revisit and there will be a lot of new material as well. Warning number three, we will not be covering how to pick a niche or what is an agency. We're gonna be diving right into some advanced concepts. So if you're like, Joel, what's an agency? Or what is high level? Or what are we doing here today? <laughs> that's totally okay. Um, that's not a problem. If that's where you're at, that's totally okay. I hear you. I'm there for you. That being said, my recommendation for you is to go check out our 10-day course with high level, either on my channel or on their channel for an overview. So if you literally look up Joel Kaplan high level 10-day course on YouTube, you'll be able to see a full step-by-step 10-day -step course that introduces you to the model and introduces you to every nitty-gritty concept. How to pick a niche. How does, how does this work? How do you get paid? All that good stuff. All those foundational questions will be answered in that 10-day course. And that will bring you up to speed on uh, the foundations of everything. And by the way, if you're just starting out at zero, I still recommend that you watch this and jump right in. All I'm saying is that if you have some more beginner questions, you can also go back and watch that. Warning number four, we're going to be here for a while for the next four days. So I want to literally teach you guys how to build a million dollar business in four days. That's my challenge, which means that it's very hard to do in like an hour. You know, I told Paulson, I'm like, Paulson, I'm trying to teach these guys an entire business model, how to get clients, how to do sales, how to get clients, crazy results, all that in four days. 
which means that I'm going to need you guys dialed in for the next four days. And it will be overwhelming. I'm, I'm warning you right now. It's going to be overwhelming. You guys are going to be jumping right into the deep end. And I like to think about the gym analogy when going through this. At the gym, we have to break our muscles down in order to get stronger. You're literally causing a disruption to your body and breaking your fi your muscle fibers down so that they heal and come back stronger. And with business, we have to break our minds down to get stronger. So if you're mentally a little overwhelmed, it's not a bad thing. It means that you had a great business workout and now you're going to come back stronger. So there will be a lot of information over the next few days. My recommendation to you guys is commit and lean in to it. And most importantly, take notes throughout and be focused. That helps big time with knowledge retention. If you guys are actually focused, not doing other stuff, and you're taking notes, you're going to be able to connect with the information on a deeper level. Yeah. And most importantly, my last warning, this is not a magic pill, guys. Like Elon Musk says, business is like waking up and choosing to eat glass. It just... Think about the visual of you eating glass, like, and you're bleeding. You're just like consciously choosing to eat glass with a smile on your face. That's what business is like. It's supposed to be hard. If it was easy, everyone would be a millionaire. It demands everything from you. It will take longer than you expect it to. You will want to give up many, many times, and you must keep going. And most importantly, you must go all in for a long, long, long time. And all of the information that I share with you today is not going to get rid of this business reality. Even if I give you guys the scripts, the templates, the walkthrough videos, the service delivery systems, everything, it's not going to magically make business easy. Yeah. All we're doing, just like high level, is giving you guys tools. Giving you guys tools. Yeah. Real quick, let's just add a few notes to that, Joel. So I, I know a ton of you that are in here. I'm seeing a couple of familiar names and faces. Um, you might have gone through our five day challenge, which basically is a new initiative, maybe two, three months old now, basically helps you get to your first paying customer. So if you're a brand new beginner in entrepreneurship, go through the five day challenge. Okay. If you are a little bit more advanced and you're like, you know what, also I've got an agency, I've got to figure out a way to add SaaS to the mix or one or the other, whatever, do our SaaSpreneur course, which is the SaaSpreneur local hero. Both are free, by the way. We have our masterminds. We obviously have our big conference. You will forever get amazing content from high level. Cool. One, yeah. it's a, one, it's a mission for me to make sure the industry gets the right relevant information. And we have these workshops that we do once a month, sometimes twice a month, twice every month, and some months even weekly. But regardless, pay attention to all of these. Um, things that you learn here might contradict and conflict with another workshop or another podcast session. Everybody has their own reasoning of why they feel like there's some mm, strength to what they're doing. Point. But but doesn't mean somebody is wrong. It just means they have a different perspective, right? So take a break from all the content for a second. Consider this to be like a university class, almost like an academic experience. Get off the browser, stop trying to watch emails and all these different things while you're learning and listening. I promise you, you're going to get a lot of things out of this as we kind of go right into the content. Okay. Go ahead, John. No, I like that. I, I, I think about a lot of business and the analogy of sports. I know you like basketball. It's like you can have two players that play the game very differently. Like a center will not play like a point guard. I mean, maybe now in, in 2023, you've got some <laughs> crazy centers, but there's many ways to succeed, right? There's many different paths. It will look like, it will look different for everyone. Um, the challenge, the, the important thing though is, to know what you're signing up for. Know that you're signing up for this to be really hard. I think a lot of people get let down when they're like, oh, I got high level. Why am I not making millions of dollars? It's like, well, it's going to be hard. The tool, the, this, the tool of education, the tool of software are just tools to support you. It's like you have the best basketball shoe in the world. It doesn't make basketball easy. You still have to work out. You still have to train. You still have to practice. You still have to show up and get better each and every day. So let me share my screen and we'll keep going. 
All right. So now that we got out of the got that out of the way, for those of you guys that don't know who I am, you're probably wondering who is this guy? Who is Joel Kaplan? If you don't know who I am, I'm gonna share a quick little story. So this was me back in 2017, literally six years ago. And I had just gone live on Facebook to announce that I quit my job to become an entrepreneur and start a marketing agency. And I thought we were about to take over the world and generate millions. We literally worked out of that kitchen, my first office. This was six years ago, guys. Almost seven now, almost seven. And we worked out of our living room. And we would do sales calls out of my room, like where I slept, okay, guys? I literally would take sales calls in my room. And I would go to the BNI group every single Thursday. For those of you guys that have been in the agency game for a while, you know what BNI is. It's a local networking group with business owners. This was me getting sworn into the BNI group. And this was me every single day. As you guys know, entrepreneurship is really hard. One moment you're excited. Then you're like, this is really hard. Then it's working. Then you're like, I messed this up. Then you're like, I'm going to give up good for great. Then I'm like, I think I'm going bankrupt. This was me. I was in this entrepreneurial roller coaster, just like all of you guys. And we did everything wrong. I'll tell you guys a quick story for a whole week. I spent a whole week, Paulson, designing this sticker, thinking that if I put it on my computer, on my laptop, and I go to coffee shops, I would get people to come to me and ask me about marketing. I spent a whole week, guys, designing a stupid sticker. How many clients do you think this got me, Paulson? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. I wasted a lot of time on things that didn't matter. I picked seven niches at the same time. As you guys can see here, hotels, Cairo, wedding venue, surgeon, dentist, real estate, rock climbing gyms. I, uh, I made ads in the middle of nowhere. I literally thought if I go out in the mountains, maybe that'll be a pattern interrupt. I, I, I probably read something about pattern interrupts. So I was like, I'm going to go in the middle of the mountains. It'll have a crazy background. Yep. How many clients do you think this, uh, this, this ad none. got me? Probably none. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even though, you know, with that in mind, slowly but surely things started to click. So we, we got up to 12 clients. As you can see here, I had all of our clients. And uh, we ended up going from zero to 13K a month in eight months. It took us eight months to get to 13K a month. And the reason I show you guys this, um, this was a part of a Facebook group I was in a while back. And I show you guys this to show you that I was in your shoes. Yeah. You know, like I, it literally says here that uh, this week I decided to put a spin on it, on this masterclass. And they brought me and my business partner to do a workshop on how we went from zero to 13K a month in eight months. A lot of you guys on this call are already past that. And this was just six years ago. Um, so with that in mind, I also almost quit multiple times. Like you can see here, this was my, an application that I submitted in January, 2018. January of 2018. And I got rejected. Look, it literally says, Dear Joel, thank you for applying for the Director of Leadership and Learning position with Moonshot Adventures. We received an overwhelming number of applications and have chosen to move forward with other candidates at this time. So I was applying to jobs. I felt like giving up multiple times. Even when things were actually clicking, even when we had some clients, even when, even when we were at 13K a month, it felt really hard. Because... Again, let's be honest, this journey of entrepreneurship is really fucking hard. And with that in mind, we didn't give up. We started focusing on the right actions. I actually shared this back in 2019 when we did our 10-day workshop. We put up a, a whiteboard in our kitchen that asked where, where we would be reminded to ask ourselves, is this getting us closer to a sale? If yes, continue. If not, stop and ask yourself what will, because we didn't know how to get clients. So we're like, let's at least focus on getting clients and allocate energy towards that. And eventually we got up to $20,000 per month. Um, then I started surrounding myself with other entrepreneurs in the community. And we ended up scaling our agency to 70,000 a month. Now, the reason I share this with you guys is because I get a lot of screenshots all the time from entrepreneurs like you that are like, hey, Joel, look, I just hit 10K a month. I just hit 50K a month. I just hit 70K a month. I just did 100K a month. And I was also in that exact position 
not that many years ago where I was like, holy crap, I just hit this revenue mark. So exciting. I sent this to one of my mentors at the time, Paulson, you probably know him, Nick Robbins, incredible individual. I have nothing but the highest love and respect for that guy. He was kind of the OG. He built an eight-figure agency and uh, he's, he's exited. Now he focuses on real estate. Um, and then after that, we ended up scaling our own agency to $250,000 per month within six months. And over time, people kept asking for help on scaling their agencies. So we ended up throwing our first event and Agency Lab was born. And we started helping other agency owners scale to $100,000 per month like I did. This was the first round of agency owners that we helped scale to $100,000 per month and then more and then more and then more and then more. This was just at a recent event like a month ago uh, in Miami where we had our last round of 100K a month uh, agency owners. So the reason I took you guys way back in time is to show you what is possible. Now, it won't be easy by any means. It's really hard. But it is absolutely possible. Remember, this was just six years ago, which is wild. And now we have scaled our own agency to seven figures. We've scaled Agency Lab to eight figures. And we've helped 109 agency owners hit $100,000 a month. Now, let's fast forward to this moment right now. My goal over the next four days is to over-deliver on like ever before and give everything that I've learned over the course of the last seven years away. I wanna break down an entire business model that you can take and scale all the way to $1 million in literally just four days, not three days, it's supposed to say four. And I wanna give you a model that is untapped and is already winning in 2023 and is set up to dominate in 2024. And it's gonna combine the best of all three worlds, high-level SaaS, SMMA, and AI. I'll be giving away the ads, the snapshots, the templates, the scripts, literally everything so that you can one day reach $100,000 per month with your agency. And we're actually going to take you behind the scenes and show you everything live inside of the ads manager, inside of high level, everything. We're actually going to show you. <laughs> One of my biggest regrets from 2019 is that we just talked about it on slides and we didn't actually log into the ads manager and show you the ads, show you the snapshots show you everything and also so that's going to be the biggest difference yeah also just for the folks that are watching and maybe they don't know you they don't know me maybe they're brand new to high level um i'm i'm happy to essentially confirm the story that Joel's talking about because i met Joel a little after 2018 a little after Omir and Marcos and those guys started scaling and they were right under about 100K. And I started seeing their names everywhere. And I had my own agency. And I re I remember reaching out to Joel. We were on a phone call. And I was like, Joel, I've got this software opportunity. And I've got this opportunity to scale my agency. And he had no idea I was talking about high level in any way, shape, or form. This is like 2018. And he's like, what's wrong with you, man? Go all in on uh, agency. So it's really cool to now make a full circle back on that conversation. And now we're going all in on. Wait, Paulson, you got to clarify. I, I said, I said, I said, no matter what you pick, either one, just True. go all in. That's that is what, what you said. <laughs> that is what you said. And I did listen to it after like a year and a half of maintaining my agency while doing high level stuff. And then we let the agency go all the way through. But all to tell you, I've seen the struggle Joel went through to get to the point where he's at now. And the 109 people that he's talking about, I'm, I'm very confident to tell you, I probably know 80 of those guys personally, because mm. I was part of these inner circles. I was part of these coaching programs. Even some of those guys have their own programs. Uh, and, and all to tell you, it takes a lot of hard work. This is not easy, um, but it is possible. And obviously there's margins and things like that that you want to play into when we claim these numbers or say these things. Um, so don't take it all just, you know, take it with a grain of salt is what I will tell you. So what are we looking at here? It won't be just a strategy. You're going to show us everything, Joel. Exactly. Yeah. So back in 2019, it felt like a lot of strategy, like, Hey, here's how you come up with an offer as opposed to being like, here's the exact offer. Or here's how you kind of think about cold email as opposed to being like, here's the exact cold email set up step by step. So we're going to show you guys everything. And uh, again, if you're ready to go, 
All I ask is that you take out a pen and paper, take notes throughout, tag me on Instagram at official Joel Kaplan. As we go through this, I will repost you. If you tag me in Paulson, I will repost you. If you tag, oh, and uh, actually tag, tag, tag Paulson high and high level. Yeah. High level, even... Paulson, Joel. If you don't <laughs> yeah. want it. You don't want the clout. That's fine. Yeah, no. And just, tag just, high tag, <laughs> just tag high level and tag official Joel Kaplan. Do a video that you're watching a massive workshop to level up your clients. And you'll probably get some buzz around to your own self with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely tag Go High Level on Instagram and Facebook and um, Joel. So let's get going to actual. Content. Yeah. Yeah. So today for day one, we're going to go over how to get your clients and same results in 2024. But before we do that, we need to better understand the paper show AI agency model. So let's jump right in, guys. Here's how the model works. You do the lead gen with ads. We're going to show you how to do that. But you're going to have to generate leads with ads. You're going to do the lead nurture with high level. So we're going to show you how to do that. And we're going to show you how to add AI. Now you can call their leads. You can also partner with a white label ISA or have your clients call the leads. And then they pay for the ad spend. And then you charge a show fee. And for us, when we were running this model, a show qualifies as a phone call or as a prepay. So essentially connecting the prospect with the client live or getting them to prepay for an appointment. Either of, the, either of those two qualified as a show. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in person. A lot of people think like pay per show is like pay per someone that walks in the door. But like for us, it just meant, are you taught, are you, did you show up to the consultation over the phone? Or if we're doing the consultations, are we getting a payment for the appointment in advance, which pretty much guarantees that they're going to show up? It's essentially a connect with the prospect. And the client is going to buy a certain amount of shows up front. Now, that's how you get paid. So for, we'll talk about the pricing, all that stuff in just a little bit. Now, why I love this model. And by the way, one quick warning. I'm going to go very fast. If you guys are like, Joel, uh, what the hell did you just say? Go back and watch it afterwards. Yeah, We're going to do a Q&A. Well. We're going to do a Q&A as well. Um, and post your question so, in the comments or the Facebook streaming, and I'll go through those questions, just FYI. Okay, cool. So yeah, um, if you're like, Joel, what did he just say? Go back and watch. Um, now, why I love this model? For beginners, it's very easy to get in the door since people aren't paying a retainer for nothing, right? Or for the risk of nothing. They're not paying the retainer up front for the risk of nothing. Now, if you're advanced, I also love this model because you can partner with your clients and scale with them. The best agencies generate tens of thousands of dollars a month, a month even for their clients and only get paid $1,500 a month. For example, there was a client who I generated $40,000 for in the very first 30 days. And I she paid me $1,500, which is, and she paid $500 for the ad spend. So it was a 20X ROI. So it's a, essentially she gave me $1, I give her back 20. If we were more of a partner model, imagine if we split some of those results. It would have allowed me to grow with the client and be their growth partner. Again, I talked about this earlier. It allows you to share the risk. You have to be dialed in on fulfillment. They're putting up the advertising cost. And worst case for you, you don't get paid. Worst case for your client, they advertise, they get exposure without the best results. But they're not just like paying you at a risk. The only risk really is that they're paying Facebook. Um, here's another thing to note. You can always transition to retainer. If you start with paper show, once you get your clients amazing results, now you have the leverage to lock in a six to 12 month retainer contract. Because if you're telling someone who just made, four, you made them $40,000, they give you $10,000 of that. They're like, look, if we lock in a 12 month contract, I'm willing to do a $2,500 a month retainer. And this is going to be more affordable than your clients paying you on performance. So now you hold the power. So what I love about this model is that it gives you the leverage to decide the pricing, to decide what this relationship looks like long-term. Again, if you can get your clients clients, you'll always be able to get yourself clients and dictate how much you want to get paid and how you want to get paid. So once you have a big brand with a ton of clients and now you know how to get great results, you can also switch right to retainer. If you're like, Joel, I did pay per show. 
I got a lot of clients. I got my feet wet. I got experience. I learned how to get my clients clients, but retainer is easier. Cool. You can always switch back to retainer, but now you have a big brand with a ton of clients. So you can easily convince a prospect to just give you money and take on that risk because now you've reduced the risk by being someone worthy of being paid the $2,500 upfront, even if it might not work. So Joel, just for clarity, do you recommend this for the brand new person that's starting out without a lot of fulfillment experience? Or yes, you... I recommend it. I recommend it for, for everyone. So I think that if you're amazing, like there's this guy named Conrad, great friend, and he has a seven figure roofing agency and he gets his clients insane results. Like he makes them hundreds of, not tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm like, Conrad, why don't you partner with like five clients and be their growth partner and share in the growth? So instead of now, ramping up massive book of business, you're just going all in on the best result, best clients that you really like. Yeah, and you can have, in a perfect world, you have a mix of retainer and performance. Performance with your top clients, retainer with everyone else. Now, if you're a beginner though, I love this model because it's a very easy way to get in the door without having to do free trials. And if you're advanced, it's a really good way to get paid for what you're worth. Because again, you could be making a roofer $500,000 a month and then now you're still making 2,500. That's ridiculous. Where if you just pull the plug on your marketing, they go back down to 100,000. So you're adding $400,000 a month of value for 2,500. That is not fair. Um, so here's my last piece of why I love this model. It forces you to start with service delivery and puts pressure on product and fulfillment. This puts you in charge of everything right before the clients close, which you don't have control over. Like if the client can close or not, you can't control, but it forces you to make the product as good as humanly possible. Now let's go over the offer. Here's the offer. If I'm talking to a client, I'm like, here's what you're gonna get. No hidden setup fee. You never pay us a retainer unless you want to. You cover the ad spend, only pay when you get results. We partner with you and are both incentivized to help you grow. Now, really important note, the result doesn't have to be a show. You guys have the flexibility here to change the result. It could be paper appointment, paper live transfer. It does not have to be a show. For us, again, was a show was a prepaid patient over the phone. Now let's go over the pricing. And again, I'm going fast. You guys can always rewind. Yes. Option yes. one. Keep going fast, Joel, because we have we have hours of content to go through. We'll yeah. deal with Q&A even if it's not live. Um, okay. The pricing. Option one. This is what I would tell a client. $0 setup fee. $125 per prepaid patient or showed appointment. Minimum 20 patient credit. So it's $2,500 to get started plus ad spend. So essentially I'm getting a credit of the 20 shows. This gives me some cash flow to play with so that I don't have as much risk. And if I don't get the show, I would have to refund it. So if I don't get those, I refund that. They're covering the ad spend. So you're essentially getting them to buy a credit of shows. So how Option is two? This is different than like buying leads, for example, just to. They're buying a better result, really. I think if you say paper lead, they're going to tell you to F off. They're going to be like, well, anyone, I could generate, most people could generate leads, Downloads you know. Yeah. Th this is why high level comes into play with AI. It's like, no, I'm going to generate you a, a short appointment where I'm going to get someone to literally call you or, or connect with you on the phone or we're going to call them and get them to prepay. That makes sense. Option two is $19.97 a month. Unlimited patients for $0. So you don't have to pay me per additional result that I bring you. And it's $19.97 to get started plus ad spend. So I give them both options, right? You can either do performance or you can do retainer. But again, now you have the leverage. Now you have the leverage. And you're actually likely to get more retainers this way. Like when we did, when, when we did paper show back when high level had dialogue flow and it wasn't AI, um, what we would do is we would pitch paper show and people would still be like, now nah, I'll do the retainer. But yeah. you know, I give, I give people both options. 
I think when you, know, you it's really an offer like this, there's a sense of confidence that they feel. They're like, well, this guy is willing to go essentially on performance because he's so confident in what he can deliver. I think that's correct. I think that's a story they pick up quickly. Now, a really important note, they're always going to buy a credit of X amount of results. This helps with cash flow. I would do this if I were you. Um, I would not do just blank zero dollars up front. Um, you can also be lenient on the down south of the retainer. We did, like I said, we did that often. If someone wanted a retainer, I'm like, sure. Like I just, I want to make it, and I, I talked about this back in 2019. I want to make it easy for people to do business with me, not hard. I don't want to cause so much friction. I want to make it easy. If someone's like, I'd rather do the retainer. No problem. Let's do the retainer. I just want to start a business relationship with as many people as possible and deliver good results. Now, here's the most important piece of this whole model. The biggest lever is ad spend. So the more that they advertise, again, now you can grow with your clients. So you've got three options. And I tell them, got three options for ad spend. Good, better, and best. Good would be about $50 a day. Better would be about $100 a day. Best would be about $150 a day. Now, most clients go with a better option. And if you really are trying to scale fast and be aggressive in your growth, our top clients, some of our best, best clients, end up going with the best option. Now, what ends up happening is most people pick the middle. You still want to have the, the bottom option because it anchors uh, middle and best. But you're also saying, hey, the best clients, you're, you're kind of striking their ego. The best clients also spend the most. So the people that are aggressive are going to be like, no, nah, screw it. Let's go with the, the, the highest amount of ad spend. And this does two things. It gives you more budget to play with to get them great results. And the more results you get them, the more you get paid. So it's like you want to have as much budget as humanly possible. The big lever to move here is how much they're spending on ads. And one of the biggest hacks to getting your clients better results is that like I had an email from a guy, no, no joke, Paulson. I had an email from a guy the other day and he was like, hey, I got this client and he has about $150 a month in, in budget for advertising. Like a month. It's going to be near impossible to get results off of 150 a month. Like that's not even, that's like $5 a day. Like it, it's just not going to happen. Like it, so, so it, imagine if he said, I have a $5,000 a month budget. Now you can experiment, test things out. You have a lot more room to play with to actually get them results. Um, so one of the biggest hacks to actually Getting clients better results is not being such a slave to small budgets. And also, I don't know why there's like a standard in local business, like spend 500 to 1500 a month. Why not spend 5,000 a month in ads? Like, why can't you spend more? If you're a roofing company making, you know, 10 million a year, why not spend 5,000 a month? It just, it's just a marketing budget that makes sense given where they're at. Um, all right, let's keep going. So real, real quick, real quick, before you go fast. The so option one, can you can you review option one one more time? Go back one slide for, if you don't. Yeah, go back. Uh, you're saying yeah. So option one is zero setup fee, 125 to 150 prepaid customer, about 2500 to get started. Option two is the standard retainer that we all do. Flat retainer fee with an ad spend based on the market, based on the offers that they're doing for unlimited. And option three is basically saying, hey, give us- No, no, no. There's, there's only two options as far as how okay. you're getting paid. Okay. And then there's three options for how much they want to spend on ads. Great question. Gotcha. There's three options for how much they want to spend on ads. So option one, it's like good, $50 a day. Better $100 a day, best $150 a day. And you could bump these up and down. Gotcha. Um, most clients go with better option. Uh, but if you're really looking to scale fast and grow aggressively- like you said, you did, Dr. John, you know, you said you wanted to blow up your practice and double in 2024. So, so, so you know, I suggest maybe this, going with it. Let me ask you this. So that's about $4,500 to 5k, usually on average for a local business. It, what happens if they tell you, well, Paulson, I've got about $2,000 or 3,000 on ads. Can we still, still do this model? 
or do I have to do the retainer? No, I mean, I think, I think that this is going to get into a much larger conversation. My preference is working with local businesses that have money. That's my preference. I think like if you want to work with smaller local business, I highly recommend the SaaS model. So maybe go check out the, the SaaS course that you guys developed. Yeah, the low ticket. Where it's more yeah. affordable. But if I'm working with a doctor, they've got the money. They just don't want to give it to you. If you're yeah. working with a lawyer, they're spending 40000 a month on a freaking billboard that gets them nothing. If you're working with a dentist, they're making five hundred k a year in profit. Like, they have money. So, so um, fair. That's they're, fair. And they're already by the... They're already hiring other agencies, by the way. So, so a bigger philosophy here is, I mean, we can kind of pause and talk about this. My favorite niches have two things. They're proven to work. So I see other people succeeding in that niche. And number two, they've got money. I, in a perfect world, I don't ever have to deal with the objection of, I can't afford this. Those are my favorite niches. Now, I'm not saying it won't happen. And there's some niches that have a bit of both. Like, for example, solar. You've got some solar companies that are making more money than they even know what to do with. And you've got some solar companies that are brand new starting out, don't have any money. Yeah. You've got roofing companies, HVAC companies that are massive, $100 million companies. And you've got one man roofing companies, one man HVAC companies where it's them and their truck and they go to fix the HVAC and do the sales and do everything themselves. Yeah. So I like niches where I can find very wealthy people I don't like niches where I'm limited to be able to do my job very well. I think, um, that's, I think so, that's I think that's one of your styles as well. Like you like going after saturated markets, being the one cook in the kitchen and just going after the top gems in that industry. That's one thing I've always noticed about you. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, again, we talked about this. There's many different ways to succeed. There's different strategies, approaches. I'm just giving you what I would do in 2024. You can be like, no, screw you, Joel. I actually recommend for you guys to ask yourselves all the time, how can I beat Joel? And for me, for you to beat Joel, you have to think different than me or be better than me. Those are your only two options. There's no other way to beat me. If I wanted to literally build a and I'm not going to, but if I wanted to build a bigger software company than high level, I would have to either be different from you guys or be better than you guys. That's it. What are the other options here? So I give all, I actually encourage all of you guys to, if you, if you find a more unique way or better way or a different way to think about this or do this, absolutely go for it. Um, but I'm just sharing what I would do. Yeah. Um, cool. So you want to get as much ad spend as possible. Now, here's how we're going to get people to, um, hold on a second. Can't find my mouse. All right. Uh, here's how we're going to get, uh, people results. So number one, lead generation, we're going to run ads to get new leads. We're going to show you guys how to do that. Number two, lead nurture. We're going to warm up the leads up to show up with high level. And then last but not least lead reactivation. We're going to show you guys how to reactivate an entire database of leads to get a ton of shows right out of the gate. So even if they don't have a lot of ad spend, that's another thing that you could do. If they don't have as much budget, if they have a lot of leads in their database, um, we're going to show you guys today how to reactivate them. Now for the rest of the three-day workshop or a four-day workshop, now that you guys understand the foundation of the model, I'm going to show you guys everything live. And for today, we're going to start with one special guest that's going to show you the ads, the high-level snapshots, and even us calling the leads and booking them with the scripts that we use to get shows for both Cairo and roofing. So we're going to show you guys two niches for today with a very special guest. And then I'm going to pass it on to another special guest that's going to show you how to run a reactivation campaign live. We're going to build it out. And I'm going to give you guys the scripts for that. So with that in mind, let's officially dive in. We're going to have to call the special guest, this guy. The reason I wanted to bring him on, not only is he crushing it, for a client, but he's leveraging the paper show model right now. I wanted to bring someone on that is using this right now, not last week. Well, I mean, he was doing it last week, not last year, two years ago, right now. So uh, I think he's on, his name's Faisal Mangal. I don't know if you can uh, call him up. He's a great guy, incredible individual, and I'm happy to have him. He's gonna share the ads, high level snapshots, 
everything. So his name is Faisal, F-A-I-S-A-L. Yo, what is going on, Joel? Yo, yo, Faisal, can, can you share your your camera or no? I don't think I'm able, Paulson. I'm not I'm not allowed to share my camera for some reason. Paulson doesn't Paulson, want me to, you... yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't want me to see my face, so. Oh, man, is he, oh, man. I think Paulson's on a call. He's la Paulson, are you there? Oh, no, now you're co-host. Cool. There you share your... Yeah, you should be able to now. It's because, believe it or not, just like the house uh, annotation thing. Yo, Paulson, were you on the call? No, 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 no. I wasn't. I was talking. <laughs> no, <you're not> <laughs> Joel, I don't have to do sales calls anymore. Those days are past me. <laughs> um, I <laughs> turned the video off intentionally because we've had some crazy things happen on these Zooms, just like that annotation thing you dealt with earlier. Faisal, I know about you from Joel and Sergio and some of the other guys. Good to meet you. Let's see what you want to share. Welcome in, man. So Faisal, yeah. why don't we why don't we talk about like how, you know you've been running the paper show model. Um, and uh, like right now, right? You're running it right now as we speak. Yeah, so paper show model, I've been running it for actually quite some time now. Let's say about three to four months already. But I actually spoke with Joel, let's say about two weeks ago. And he just kind of, uh, he, he just he just kind of put a spin on it for me. So I actually thought I had the secret code because he was like, oh, dude, just do this, do this, do this, right? And I'm like, dude, he just shared it all today. I'm like, what, what, what is this? So... <laughs> Yeah, so you know, Faisal, one of the one of the big things that you'll learn in business, you know, the you've already done it. Like the more you give, the more you get. Like now everyone here is gonna be your friend, you know, virtually. And like your network just grew by thousands of people. Um, and that's worth way more than some competitive edge, right? Mm -hmm. That pretty that probably already exists. So yeah, no, 100 percent And also I feel like um if if you're just not gonna share something, that means like you're not willing to get better. Um, I can share all this info, and if tomorrow Cairo stops working, I can easily think of something else because I just know I can do that. So, um, you just have to innovate. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Should we just get right into it? Should we just yeah. let's get right into yeah, it? Yeah, let's let's dive right in. Show show oh, the yeah. ads. Show high level. Show the call. Show everything. All right, let's do it. Maybe so start with the ads. We're, we're gonna start off with the ads, and we're just gonna start off with Cairo first. So, so that's my so okay. Faisal, just like Joel, whenever you share, click on the more button and turn off annotation. Um, it just... By the way, more is all the way to the right on that bar. Oh. It's the last thing. Yeah. yeah. So it says uh, start focus mode. I don't know if that's that's what it says for me. I don't know. No, you should be able to share your screen, right? Okay. Yeah. So I see my, I can share my screen. Yeah. Um, let's see. Once you share, it'll give you the more option. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense. Yeah. All righty. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. it. Oh. Well, cool. And then can you – do you see the more option? Uh, No, I don't see – actually, oh, yeah, it's right here. Um, and then disable annotation. Disable annotation. There we go. All right, cool. All right, we got them quick. Well, before before you go further – Clear the annotation that one person got in already. It's so silly, right? I thought we we're grownups, guys. <laughs> no, it's the internet, Boston. I know. <laughs> and we're just gotta be like one one percent of people. There's still like ten, you know, ten people today. So, all right. All right. So, and how do I clear that? Okay, so just stop sharing. Stop sharing. No, 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 sharing. no, no, no. You, you, you can continue sharing. Don't stop sharing. There you go. Continue sharing. Yeah, there you go. You just click that little trash button. Okay, cool. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. Cool. So now we're good. Right? Yeah. Officially good. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Let's do it. So first of all, something, first thing I want to share is um, kind of like how you start off with the ad. So let's say you sign a client, right? You have them and you're about to start running his ads. You're real, in his quick, ad Basil, real quick. This is for the client fulfillment or client acquisition. Yeah. We're, we're starting client with client fulfillment. fulfillment. First, we, I want to teach people how to get great results first. Got it. I think that, uh, yeah, that's what we're starting with. Thank you. Sorry mm -hmm. about yeah, no, totally. So here's here's how I do my campaigns, right? Uh, should we just, damn, I, I just get right into it. So uh, this is how I always do my campaigns. Uh, I remember when I Joel, Joel and I first started, something that we used to do, something that I used to do was I just did income, right? So I was like, okay, cool. I want to get the highest quality lead. I want to get everything. And I'm just going to do that. But I kind of changed up my strategy a little bit more. So now I do three ad sets. And this works for every single niche, just so you guys know. So three ad sets. 
broad interest and income. And you're going to break down each one, right? Yep. I'm going to break down each one. So let's say for broad. Uh, but, but before I do that, you're going to have three ads in each one, right? So three different ads, three different videos, and that's how you're going to have it. So for the ads, and just so you guys know, I'm doing CBO, so campaign budget optimization. So the campaign decides everything. So yeah. Can you scroll and, up a little bit on campaign just so people could see the settings? I don't think there's anything else even to tweak. That's it. So yeah. you guys see all that? Cool. Super simple. Super simple. It's actually a live then, campaign. <laughs> yeah, literally it's 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 working. It's working right now. Um and in fact, this is gonna be the broad. So you're gonna do this is how I do it. I always do instant forms for Kairos, especially for any local business, unless it's something like roofing where you're going to get a lot more bots and stuff. You just want to do instant forms, nothing crazy. And it works. So for budget, there's no budget in ad set because we already did it in the campaign. Yeah. And this is how I do my targeting. This is just for this client, but I can't tell you guys. So this is zip code targeting. Is that right? affluent zip codes or anything? So this is for affluent only. Okay. And you kind of see how like it's all blue right here, right? Yeah. So what I did, and I just made it super simple. I was like, all right, cool. Where does this person live? And I'll just grab one of his zip codes. So I went into Justice Map, and I've already shared this before. So if you guys, um, this is what I would recommend. If you guys want to target higher income people, I just went in here and I just saw there was blue right here and there was red right here. I was like, all right, cool. I'll just copy it. And you can see it's it's very similar to the way I have it. It's not hard. It's not hard like rocket science. I was like, let's just do it. So it makes sense. Um, I know Joel and I, I'm pretty sure we shared this already. We were like, just keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't do all these weird targetings. Just yeah. But part of why I wanted to dive in and not talk, I wanted to give you guys the basic overview of paper show offer the pricing, but then I just want to jump right in because it's really this simple. You know, it's not easy. I'm going to say that again, but it is simple. So all of this will come down to the strength of the offer. If your targeting is this open, this wide, of course, you have affluent versus non-affluent. So you basically avoid like the poor areas of a city. Um, but but how do we create the result well, we want to have? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get, let's get into that phase of once we get to the ads, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So so this this is basically the targeting and everything that you do. And you can just copy paste this for literally every single client. Minimum age 24. Copy and paste it based on justice map. So that based you're targeting justice. higher income. Yeah, literally based on justice map right here. Yeah. Justicemap.org. <laughs> yep. Yep. There's plenty yeah. of sites like that that tells you income levels of a city, just FYI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is this does it for all of the US. So you can just easily copy it. So um, you do minimum age 24? Yep. Minimum age 24 for Kairos. It just makes sense. I mean, is an 18 year old going to get into a clinic? Probably not. Right. No. So, um, I do that. And then I also do advantage audience. Like you guys see, I don't, I don't do any crazy stuff. Yeah. Everything's turned on placements, advantage placements. Yeah. I don't do stories, yeah. nothing. Everything's on. Right. Times have changed. You know, back when Joel and I were starting out, you had to be really good at the targeting because the Facebook system was not that effective. Of course it had all the data, but you had to have some serious skills as an advertiser to pinpoint the magazines they read, the podcasts that they listen to, and where they shop, and all these different things by very, very clean, I mean, very, very specific targeting. In today's age, you can turn on Advantage Audience, you can turn on CBO, you can just drop a few bucks, and literally the system, the algorithm of these platforms will function and work optimized for you. You just got to be patient enough to leave it alone enough to give it enough time. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And what you always want to do when it comes to ads, you always want to give it 48 hours initially when you start just to test it out to see if it starts working and start to see if you, are, if you are getting results. So um, you always want to give it some time. So yeah, that's that, that's definitely true. But let's just, let's uh, should we should we go into the other ad sets as well? Or yeah, yeah. we should. So all the ad sets. Mm -hmm. So this is brought, right? Everything's open. Advantage audience, placement, everything. All of it is open. But what's the difference is, between income and broad? So income, it only targets people who are uh, top 5%, top 10%, top 25%. So this just like lowers the audience size even more than what it what it would be. Just so it can, because sometimes what I've noticed is income works better than broad. Maybe broad works better than income. 
interest sometimes works. So I just have all three, really. And you have the 150 okay. or whatever running on each specific tree, or is it for the entire campaign or entire ad account? Uh, so it's all for the whole campaign. So it's CBO, campaign CBO, budget. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it decides everything. So the campaign is deciding where it's going to go. Yep. Okay, and then, and then can you show the, uh, so the income, you click on that advanced income targeting. For broad, you keep it open. And then what interests are you picking for interest targeting? So for interest, these are, it's very simple. Like I never, I, I didn't overcomplicate it. I just searched up health and these are the things that popped up and I just chose these. So it's nothing crazy, right? Um, you don't have to be super particular with it. Whatever you just kind of, kind of matches the niche. So for example, if it's roofing, I would put home improvement, right? Or stuff like that. So um, I didn't overcomplicate it. Now, do any of these audiences like overlap or cross pollinate or contaminate? Uh, no, I mean, so I, I guess, I guess it would, but let me just double, let me, let me share my screen one more time. Cause I want to show you guys a quick drawing or something. So let's see, am I able to share my screen again? You're sharing. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reshare my whole desktop. You stop. Yeah. You can, you can, if you stop. And I'm pretty sure you guys can see my whole screen now, right? Yeah. Well, we see you moving into. Yeah. Help. Okay, cool. So this is, this is how I have the setup, right? So with income, let's say like this, this is like this whole thing is the audience with income. You only have these people with interest. It could be just this. So if you just do interest and income, it's only just targeting this, but with broad, it's really just targeting this starting whole, the whole pie. Yeah. This yeah whole so I was going to say, is that a pie graph? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, it's a nice yeah, so thing to be. You really, so you really, you want, you just want to show it to everyone. That's, that's kind of like the whole goal of this. Um, but you also want it would to be interesting to test out separate campaigns for each category. Mm -hmm. But again, we're doing local advertising. I don't like to overcomplicate it. As a rule of thumb, if we're doing national campaigns with like ten thousand dollars a day budget, okay, overcomplicate the crap out of it. But when we're doing fifty dollars a day, just like keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Got it. So let's move forward. We got about. Another hour left, so let's rapid fire. We're at the full. All right. Cool. Cool. Well, wait. We I thought we had till. Oh, all right, we'll see. Let's keep going. We started right, at keep... eleven. We're about an hour and hour and we're halfway basically. <laughs> we'll keep going. Yeah, yeah. Keep all going. Right. <laughs> let's go. So, with Cairo, I always use videos. So these are the videos that I literally have a team now who edits these videos for me. But um, yeah, it's it's very simple. Right. Um, and I'm pretty sure Joel and I, we talked about it already. Do you want me to kind of share the video as well? And maybe you can touch yeah. on it. All right. Cool. Cool. So for this client, it is a shockwave therapy treatment. Right. So and this is what the video looks like. Southern Charlotte area. Do you have knee pain, back pain, neck pain, or just have a really bothersome injury? You should come and try out our shockwave therapy treatment. This technology has helped thousands of men and women recover faster and reduce that nagging pain. This is Dr. Price. He's our chiropractic practitioner and has helped thousands of people in the Southern Charlotte area get out of pain using natural and non-surgical procedures. Here's what one of his patients have to say. Dr. Zach has. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, maybe Joel, you can touch on this a little bit as well. You see how I said, like, in the beginning, hey, this technology has helped thousands of people, right? The doctor has helped thousands of people. So it's just kind of showing proof, right? Um, that's main. That's really the main reason why this video works. And then I also did a testimonial. See what one of his patients have to say. And she's just talking, 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 right? Hey, see, go see Dr. Zach. He's amazing. And at the end, I just did the offer. I just told him, hey. And right now, we're giving away new patient vouchers for our shockwave therapy treatment for only $49. So if you're ready to finally get out of pain and feel like you're 17 again, tap below and we'll give you a call to get you scheduled. Super simple video. Sweet. Can you show the other creatives? Yep. Fast, so, fast, fast, fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah so this one is just the part. testimonial. So this part is just like literally this is just fast, a testimonial. Fast, fast. So this is just the testimonial of the Okay. Lady. So you just did testimonial with call to yeah. action or no call to action? Yeah, call to action at the end too. Yeah. So you can see only for $49. Yeah. Same with that. 
and and then short you just did a 60 second version i assume yeah so this one is like without without the test. yep that's I got it. it yeah so so you essentially did one video with the practice the clips the full offer introducing the doctor so it's essentially, it's essentially introducing the doctor the offer the practice testimonial call to action add yep. to his testimonial call to action at the three is introducing the doctor the practice the offer call to action no testimony yep. yep that's it yeah okay yes. now i want to break this down really really quickly the big reason why this works you know i tell people all the time offer is king and so that's number one the 80 20 is having a really good offer and then number two you have right now in today's world with advertising you have to have really good creatives like if you actually go into the ads library right now and look up chiropractor like I don't know if you could do that, Faisal, real quick. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, I want to actually prove this point. Uh, as library, though, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. And by the way, those of you that are watching, you're going to see a lot of... Look up all ads. You're going to see a lot of... Look up chiropractor. Kairos, because that's one of the spaces. Oh, chiropractor. Agency. Um, we also have roofing, roofing uh, examples, too. Just yeah, but like now, there's, like, there's a lot okay. more videos. Yeah, those are good. If you click on like that picture here, go down a little bit. No, no, wait. Go down a little bit. You see that picture? Like that is not going to compete. The Victor C. And mm -hmm. there are definitely some better videos now. Um, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, for example, like this, like you can't, you can't have stuff like this. Like gotta, you got to have the doctor. But most of these are videos. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, these are all one company though. <laughs> Yeah. Adjustment viral. So this is where, I guess, like, for example, like this. Okay. Just a picture. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was trying to show. Like that, who, which is going to get more attention? Faisal's video or this random picture? Like that doesn't really make sense. And then also, who is someone going to trust more? Someone that you're seeing actually actively doing the treatment, showing the office, showing actual videos of the patients of the of their clients and then listening to a client or are they going to just click on a random picture that says love dothan doesn't <laughs> really make sense so it's like right now in today's world you can you can go back to the ads manager if you want um in today's world the creative is extremely important and then the offer is key now my belief is that a lot of you guys know what offers work really well. It's just that your clients are persuading you to get away from it. So like you can't negotiate with your clients, especially with a performance model. It's your offer or this won't work. So if you know that a $21 adjustment, for example, or a $2,000 off of Invisalign treatment, whatever the offer is, if you know that that is what works, you cannot... Um, deviate otherwise your clients are going to end up getting bad results and then therefore you don't get paid so um yeah but the 80 20 i would say is the creative like the, or sorry the offer and then the creative so like the creative is extremely important mm -hmm. so that's it that's literally it yep very simple and now i'll also just get into roofing as well i do the same thing like it's it's not it's not hard this is for roofing, right? Interest, um, super, super broad. And then I had like interior design, renovation, nothing crazy, right? This, this is for roofing. Do you do it's videos helpful. for roofing? Cause it's a little different or just images? Yeah. So for roofing, I do, I do more like images, but I'll, I just combine both really. So for example, for this client, I did a picture and for him, it works really, really well. So they were getting leads. And for some clients, I'll just go into here and I'll show you. And I have some examples I can share maybe. For example, this is a client for roofing. And this was their video. It says homeowner. Like, is your roof been damaged by hail storms? You should try to get it inspected and your insurance can help you replace it for free. Yes. You heard that, right? It will be of no cost to you. Mm -hmm. So same concept that I did for Cairo. I do the same thing for roofing, right? I keep video playing it. 
Rope has replaced thousands of ropes, and we can help you submit your claim and fix your route once and for all. Click below to learn more. We hope to see you soon. That's the video. Nice. You could even yeah. you could even combine the way that I would make that even better is you could even combine some of the uh, concepts from the Cairo ad where we sh where you show the roofer their family some of their clients like some actual b roll of them as opposed to just random b roll like stock b roll that could mm -hmm. be like the next iteration of making it better yeah yeah definitely definitely and, and also okay, let's go into the end. yeah and also yeah, go one for it. example like this you know Dr Harrison right um so this is an yeah. ad that I him. Like for example, this is Christmas, and it works really, really well. Do you have that the and relief you deserve? So you can also make it seasonal, right? People would say like, "Oh, well, ads are not going to work in Christmas, and it's downtime." No, you can also just be different, and you can apply the same thing for your ads too. So if you're running, I would, I would say like get B-roll from your clients. Ideally, get some testimonials. Take the time to edit it, and then you'll stand out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. So let's go over the interests. Sorry, I'm pushing us to go faster. I just want to make sure we get through everything. Yeah, no, you're um, good. So this is Oh, and we got to go over the instant forms too. That's the last piece for both Cairo yeah. and roofing, but let's do that last. Okay, cool, cool. So this is the interest. This is what it looks like. Very simple. I didn't overcomplicate it. I just saw what what made sense and I just kept those. And top income, same thing, right? 10%, 25, 50. And then broad, literally the same thing. I didn't, I didn't really change anything. Besides the minimum age, I just put it 25 this time. And and Faisal, do you run two different sets for female and uh, male or desktop and mobile or just, or is that even not needed? Uh, no, I just, it's it's both. So minimum age, male, female, all these just combine male and female. Cool. Um. Yeah, yeah. I never ran like separate one, unless you're, for example, doing something like med spa, right? It just kind of makes sense to do it, but for roofing or and all this stuff, I don't think it makes sense. I just, you can just keep it both. Got it. So Joel, this, this fulfillment seems a lot more simpler than I thought. Yeah. I mean, we've been saying it's, it's simple. Just <laughs> well, I mean like hard, it, it's the not... hard part here. I'll tell you where the hard part is. The hard part is getting the creatives from the clients. The hard part is convincing the clients to do really good offers that's the, the the setup is simple like it's just like you know like creating a workflow in high level is not rocket science it's more what is the copy right that's the hard part what, what are you going to say in those workflows to get the desired response like that's the hard part so it's like um yeah Wait, well, Faisal, yeah. do you want to show the other the other ad sets uh yeah so interest right um very simple i already showed the interests Top income, same thing as the last one, right? And broad, same same for this one. Uh, this is just totally broad, right? Very simple. Um, I try not to overcomplicate it, but I also think Facebook is kind of like 80-20. 80% is just scheduling part. And then the 20% is Facebook because like you can easily generate leads no matter what. Um, I don't think it's very hard unless you have your offer down. So if your offer is good, you can easily generate leads. But yeah. That's that. Um, can you sh can you show the copy and then the forms? Yeah. So let's go over roofing first for their copy. So. So what I did here is, um, it's kind of what Sergio did, right? Roofing program, and um, mentioned what the offer was, what our star rating is. Yeah, it's very simple. Okay. Do you want to show Cairo and then actually show the lead form first? For roofing? Yeah. You might have to duplicate it. Oh, oh, yeah. Maybe right there. Yeah. So for lead form for roofing, it's very simple. Um, I always just do like a survey, right? I'm pretty sure with this, it's more like a smart one. So if they press no, it just quits them out of it. Um, but yeah. So I always ask them like, hey, uh, are you a homeowner? How many square feet? And what's the scope of this project? Very three simple questions. And then, yeah, it's just their name, number, and uh, email. And the reason you yep. want to ask questions, can you explain why it's important to ask questions? Yeah. So if you don't ask these questions, right, um, you're actually going to get lower quality leads. And sometimes you're also going to get bots as well, or people on the phone, they're going to say, oh, well, I don't remember signing up for this ad, right? Because they were just not as engaged as 
if someone was actually like typing things, right? They were moving things, but that's just kind of the main reason. Yeah, like if someone put, I'm a homeowner, I got fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollar, uh, twenty five hundred square feet, and I'm looking for a complete uh, roof, and then they say I forgot, I didn't sign up for this. They're lying, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like they're lying. You just gotta. Yeah. Anyways, um, okay. Let's show the uh, copy for Cairo, and then let's show the uh, uh, lead form, and then I want to actually talk about how you come up with your offers. Mm -hmm. And so for Kairos, uh, I actually like did what Joel said one time, right? This is the kind of the copy he mentioned where I was like, Hey, get rid of pain for this much. It's possible. So I kind of follow the same framework and I did it with him. And you can follow the same in roofing, by the way, want a new roof for $0 covered by insurance. It's possible. You yeah. could literally take the same structure, want a new, uh, kitchen for, you know, X amount. Like it's possible. Want you know a new one Invisalign for ninety nine dollars a month? It's possible, right? Like you can just put in offer. It's possible. Then introduce the uh, uh, the owner of the business. Uh, then explain the benefits of it, and then go over the offer. It's pretty mm -hmm. simple. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So yeah, that's the copy. Anything else you want me to mention about the copy or oh, yeah, the, lead form? Yeah. Lead form I do for Cairo. It's a little bit different um, for this one. Cause like these are really just my clients, right? I want to, I want to praise them as much as possible. Uh, I always ask them like, Hey, what's a good phone number to contact you? So they physically have to type what their phone number is mm, sometimes good. with Kairos or with really any niche. Right. So you can do the same thing for roofing. Um, you would ask them, Hey, what's a good phone number to contact you? Cause sometimes the phone number like they, that automatically goes on Facebook is completely different than the phone number they type. Or maybe they mistyped it, right? Um, lots can go wrong. So I just ask them for the right phone number because this is how you ultimately reach them anyways, right? So you guys should you guys should add that. You guys should do a double opt-in. It's actually a good idea to do a double opt-in on every form. And what I would actually do is take, the, take some questions, like yes or no questions first. Like, are you looking to try shockwave therapy? Yes, no. Um, what kind of pain do you have? Back pain, whatever. And then they could click one and then what's a good phone number to contact you? And then you go to the next form. That's how I would do it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. A lot, yeah, a lot of these also... platforms, oh, sorry. A lot of these platforms allow autofill or pre-fill of forms. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Google, all these platforms allow pre-fill because they just want you to be able to just any kind of leads. They don't care about the quality in a sense. So what you want to do as an advertiser is create the right amount of resistance so you have the right quality of people that you're essentially getting, allowing through the doors to the business. Go ahead, Faisal. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, you're totally right. Like, because that's, I mean, that's kind of like your whole job. Leads are very easy to generate. But which leads are going to be able, like, which, how, what are the leads that are actually going to go forward, right? So, um, yeah. But the next thing I ask, right, so after the lead, lead form, I tell them, hey, wait, right, update. We only have four more spots open for our shockwave therapy treatment. So if you are serious about coming in and want to experience relief, like most of our patients, click the link below to schedule an appointment. And then uh, there's, like, a link they click. Should I go into the link or? Um, yeah, why not? I forgot what, how to do that. Let me see. Maybe I can like duplicate. Actually, you might no. have to create. Yeah, you have to create. Yeah, you might have to duplicate form. Uh, let's see. Message for the leads, and then yeah, it's this one. So for each client for roofing, and this is kind of like a secret, not really, but get, like buy it one domain, right? That you can use for all of your clients. Just one domain. I called it chiropracticoffer.net, and just use it for all of your clients. So slash. Client number one, client number two, client number three, and you can just duplicate it for all of your clients. And this is what this kind of looks like. I took in inspiration from Gil, and um, yeah, because this this is how he does it also. But yeah, I just tell them, hey, you need to secure your appointment. You can either just schedule here, or you can just give us a call, and um, we'll schedule your your appointment. And it has your logo, and also in the snapshot, all of this is in here, so you guys can just copy paste. All you need to do really is just remove the logo, remove the number, remove this, and yeah, change this. And that'd be it. You have all of it. By the way, you, are you talking about Gil Valerio? Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. Cool. So, he's, 
that is Joel's like one of his top students now. I remember when Gil first jumped into Joel's program, he's doing like half a million a month. So things that we're teaching. Yeah, he went, he like, went from like 3K a month when he joined to 500,000 a month. Yeah. And there's, uh, this year in Cairo. You did like a spotlight session or some kind of podcast or something with him, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't recorded. This is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> well, too bad. I can um, go watch it then. <laughs> um, wait, Faisal. So you've got uh, this similar for roofing as well. Yeah. So same thing for roofing, right? Um, it's it's literally the same opt out page. Like they just they just go in here and you can secure a spot. But yeah, for every client, what I would recommend, or not for every client, just for all of your clients, just buy like a domain and call it um roofing jobs offers.com and then the you could also look who knows if this is real or not i for local i still have no idea <laughs> but you could potentially uh install a pixel as well and collect data and do something with it again for a local i don't think it makes a freaking difference i'm gonna just be honest because it's just not enough data but it, anyways Maybe if you're doing like massive uh, lead reselling eventually to like a huge Cairo lead buyer, like I know for law, for example, mm -hmm. if you're generating thousands of leads a day, it does make a difference. But anyways, right. yeah. I don't think it will for individual uh, clients. One last thing though. So something I do on this page is I ask them for their credit card. So they prepay before their appointment. I've had like probably like 10% of the people that come in, they just put their card really? number. Yeah. And they just pay. So we never have to call them anyways. And they just they just go into the office because we have the location and everything in here, so they can just see it. Um, they so they literally do that. Just go to the office, and you get the showed appointment fee. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So I've had that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So out of a hundred leads that you get, let's say a hundred leads in a month, ten of them will literally just prepay. So you guys have that in the snapshot as well. By the That's way, awesome. It's all being built into a snapshot. So if you do jump into a high level account, you get this for free. Just because Joel is being nice and you're part of the workshop live, just FYI. So teams have built a lot of cool things for you. So take advantage of it. This is not going to be available outside of this. Yep. Absolutely. What else, what else um, do we to cover on the fulfillment, Joel? Let's wrap, let's keep going. Tempo is too slow right How now. much time do we have? So we started at 11. It's 1238. Uh, how much longer do we need for client fulfillment? Uh, a little bit more, yeah. I mean, let's keep going. We let's can. Go. Uh, all right. Going. So you know so what we'll do? We'll, ads, do, we'll ads. eliminate the Q and A, and let's just get to the. Oh yeah, no Q and A today. Yeah, I, I think Q and A on the last day, on day four. Okay, cool. Okay, let's. Um, so 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 we've got. We went over roofing. We went over Cairo. We went over the ads. We went over the targeting. We went over the lead forms. We went over the post scheduler in high level. We went over, uh, the copy. We went over the income targeting to get higher quality leads. Now, Faisal, how do you come up with the offers? So for offers for like all of my clients? Yeah, and I can tell you what I would do, but I'm curious to hear. Let's let's answer that question and let's get into high level. So so the way let's I do that question, go into high level. I just make it very simple. So I would go into ads library and I would see what everyone else is doing, right? Okay, so that's what I was literally going to say. And I was going to yeah. say, try to figure out how you can be better than them. Yep, exactly. So for example, this picture, like he has the picture of him. I mean, it's pretty cool, right? But you can also like, for example, I just did a video, right? Um, but yeah, that, that, that's literally it. So whatever Joel was going to say, he already knows. <laughs> I was just going to say, guys, most of the offers are already on the internet. You just have to find them and then ask yourself, well, what would be a better offer than this? So for example, if someone is doing a $21 adjustment, what if you convince... What if you can convince your chiropractor to be the first chiropractor to do a $19 adjustment? You just beat everyone with a simple minor price adjustment, literally $2. Or what else can you add to the offer by to beat everyone? If everyone is doing adjustments, maybe we offer shockwave therapy. Now we're the first practice in the whole city to offer shockwave. So it's a new offer. So, so you can literally just find what's already out there and ask yourself, how can I... Uh, make it better. And then also guys, I know we're rushing through this. This is like, I'm not trying to shamelessly plug myself here, Paulson. I'm just actually trying to add more uh, context. If you guys have more specifics around how to do this, I have a ton of videos on my channel that break down client fulfillment offers, all that nitty gritty. This should give you a high level of 
how to set up the ads, what should go into high level. And then obviously you can explore it more uh, deeply. So of course. what were you going to say on this, Faisal, on the roofing? Yeah, I was going to say as library, I just searched up roof just to search it up, just like see what everyone else is doing. This person wrote. Like that one's pretty good. Yeah, that one is pretty good. Let's see. Uh, like, you have a picture of him. So if you can, if you guys can convince, like, for example, your client to do something like this, just take a picture of him, maybe like a testimonial. Hey, I got a new roof. These will kill it. I've actually tried it for so, some. So like get a new roof for, uh, for just 2,497. You could even be like, get a new roof for a thousand. If yep. your client could do it right. If the insurance is set up for that, like, or you could just make it 1997 and you just beat him. Right. I have a yeah. question now for you. you have a better oh. offer. I have a question for you. Do you see that clients are more willing to work with you when you're the paper show model and the risk is kind of shared versus like the retainer where they're like, hey, run my offer? Once, like, once, you once you once you have a big brand, hundreds of clients, hundreds of case studies, I don't think they care. At the beginning, they definitely would prefer on a performance model where the risk is shared, where they don't have to just give you the 1997 a month or the whatever retainer and saying, I hope it works, right? At right. least they're saying, hey, I'm going to give you the credit, but I'm owed the results. And if I don't get those results, I get my money back. Got it. And from a billing so standpoint, there... you have to kind of have some kind of a, a, a accepted currency, right? Appointments or shows. Yes, you guys have to go over that. I, I'm curious to hear how you do it, Faisal. Like I know, right now, me and Sean Clark are working on uh, a system where once a shown appointment happens, it automatically gets billed. So I'm actually literally working on that with your, with the high level team right now to make that process as easy as possible. Turn it into a feature. Uh, Faisal, I'm not sure. How... Yeah. So yeah. the way I, do you... yeah. So for example, if someone shows up to the clinic, cause I do paper show like proper show. Um, now I'm actually doing paper, like prepay patient, right. But paper show, if someone shows up to the clinic, uh, like at the end of the day, the client gets a message on their phone. Right. And it tells them, Hey, did the per this person show up? Type yes, type no. If they don't type anything, like the next day we call the person, right? If they type yes, they automatically get billed. That's how I do it. It's automatic. Who who calls the person? You or the client? Yeah, my, my team, my team. So you will call the potential prospect for the client. So you're telling me you're handling some of the sales component of it as well. Uh, So not, not really. Yeah. The, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Or the scheduling. Yeah, the scheduling. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you're starting the sales cycle, basically. Yep, yep. Cool. And I'll basically just so go over, go. like, we're, we just we just finished the ads. Anything else about the ads I should share? I mean, we could spend four hours on it, but let's just, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. So now let's just, let's go into the goal high level and the way I have it set up, right? So if this is a patient that I just kind of picked out because he didn't give us credit card info, so which is good. Um, for him, right? The, the first message I always send is I just tell them, hey, is this Aaron? And this is what Joel shared one time. And I just kind of took it and ran with it. Um, and yeah, he replied. As soon as he replied, th there's an automatic message that goes to him. And you just tell them, okay, cool. Thank you. This is the doctor. Obviously, it's not just an automatic message. I um, mean, it just tells him, can you tell me a little bit more about what you're feeling? He said, oh, this I have is really important. Yeah. Guys. You want to you wanna qualify them a little bit and connect with them emotionally and get them to remember why they even signed up in the first place. Because if they are emotionally bought in, they're going to be much more likely to follow through to a call, pay you, and show up. If they're mm -hmm. just showing up for the offer and there's no emotional connection, it's just an offer. They'll forget about it. It's kind of like you, Black Friday, there were a lot of really cool discounts, but Maybe you wanted to buy something at the mall or whatever, but if you're if you forgot about it now, that's it. Whereas if you're like, I really need this, I'm emotionally connected to buying a new iPhone because it'll change my life in some way, shape, or form. You're much more likely to follow through. So I think like, I mean, I teach this as part of the process. Don't just go right for the throat. Like you're you want to build a relationship with people. This is a huge part of the process. Build relationship when doing appointment setting. This is the 80-20. And Faisal will show you the call and improve the point. But all right, keep going. Yeah. So we asked them a little, like a few questions. This is just more of like a human thing, just so they can kind of like see, okay, cool. I'm human. I'm not like a random person a robot. Or, or a robot. I know like you guys are going to be doing AI and stuff. So I'm guessing like also this texting part can also be automated. I'm not sure if you guys are doing that with high. See, 
Yeah, we're That's gonna cover that on, it, on the last. Yeah, day. So it, it got even better. See, like now you guys can just innovate on this because I do it like automatically. I have a team who does it automatically, so I tell them, okay, cool. That's very interesting. Uh, you mean you do it manually, but automated yeah. with a team? Yeah, yeah. So I have a team, right? Who okay. does it yeah, it's not automated, but yeah, I have a team who does it for me. Yeah. So I texted him, but uh, my team literally just called him up straight up, and I, as soon as he texted back, because I mean he's already here, like he's he's in the chat, he's looking at it. So why not just give him a call, right? So we called him. It was a 17-minute call. Should I go over the call? This calls? is really important. It's 17 minutes, guys. It's not like a quick, hey, bye. Yeah. You're going to take them through an entire sales process. This is what gets people to show up mm -hmm. when they feel like you connected yep. with them. Yep. Uh, I don't think we have time for the call. So what we'll do, Faisal, is this. I will, at, if, uh, at the end of the four-day workshop, let's drop a few of the live recordings. Faisal, let's actually drop a few of the live recordings of clients you went through the process and closed on the prepay. And then let's just go through the script today. Okay, cool, cool. But we will give you guys the recordings to these calls. Yeah. Can I mention something here, Joel? So yeah. uh, um, if you are in the medical space, if you're in the insurance space, financial space, there are regulations that you need to think about. So like if you're in the medical space, get into our HIPAA compliant account, you, yeah. like get a, you know, a lawyer involved in how you do transfers and things like that. Just to be safe, everything that we're showing you here is not legal advice or financial advice. You do what you do when it comes to the way you handle your fulfillment. But these are things that you want to pay attention to. There's A2P and all these different things. So just, just FYI, I see a few comments of people asking what about HIPAA and all these things. Those are all actually opportunities for you because High Level makes it easy where you can just simply upgrade to a compliant account to attack any of those highly regulated industries where you I, I, I would work with a lawyer and I would work with a high level inside of their HIPAA account, you know, accounts. I, I would say though, with compliance, this is me being real with you guys. Every lawyer gives you a slightly different answer. Like <laughs> it's, 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 it's very, uh, it's very tricky. Right. Um, but I would just consult with a lawyer. We're not lawyers. This is not legal advice. So you know, right. proceed with, Whatever you feel. If you, is go best to, for you. if you go to our marketplace, you could upgrade your account to be a compliant account. So GDPR, HIPAA, uh, financial industry, legal industry, all those are covered if you just jump into our compliant account. So from a place mm -hmm. of housing all the data, in, you can get a compliant high level account, just FYI. But, anyways, let's keep going over the script. I think that was the next thing that we were going to talk about, Joel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but just one last thing though. So something that I did for him, right, is uh, we actually send them reminders. This one didn't send, I'm not sure why, but we just tell them like, this is an automated text, but we just tell them, hey, this is Dr. Torres. Just wanted to personally message you to say, I'm excited to see you today. And a lot of people, if it did send, obviously, it would tell like, it'd be, oh, I'm excited to see you too, right? It just gets them excited. So that's something else that we do as well that I have on the script or I have on the snapshot. So it just kind of like makes it more- What human. do you say before that? Before that, I mean, uh, on the script you said, or on the script? No, 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 on the text. On the text. Here's so the confirmation. Yeah. So I tell them, okay, cool, right? Um, I make we make them pay first before their appointment. So we tell them, hey, right, for for me to like lock in your appointment and confirm it, um, we have to take the Stripe. So we send them the Stripe account, or we send them the Stripe link. They pay, and um, as soon as they pay, they have to type yes to confirm their appointment, right? And then I text them, oh, okay, cool. Here's the confirmation. Mm -hmm. Type yes. And um, yeah, which is now very I, important. That's why I didn't want to skip over that. You're getting additional buy-in. Yeah, yeah. See how many touch points they've had before the appointment. This is what increases the show up rate. So where is the okay? Phone, keep where's the phone call in relation to this? Oh, it happened above. This this actually oh, happens. Okay. In the, this this actually happens in the phone call itself. As so well, most of the top of that on phone call. Yeah, we tell them, hey, we send you a text. Reply yes to it. So on the call, they have to type yes. Oh, seriously. Yeah. That's great. And now, and now the way I have it, so you guys have my updated snapshot. With this one, I didn't have like a automated text. So as soon as they type yes, they get an automated text saying, thank you for doing this. So it sounds more legit. It looks more legit. And they're like, okay, cool. These guys are not scammers. Like they're actually real people. They have a system in place. Yeah, hopefully that made sense. I don't know if that. Yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going.
right, cool. But yeah, that's that, right? Sends me reminders. And uh, yeah, here's the script that we have for the call. I always tell my callers, um, I give them this advice every single time, just so you guys know, before you even get into them. And if you guys have a calling team, this is what I would do. Type F T S F. That means like the script, right? That's what I tell my calling team all the time. All the time. Reason being, because like they're going to say it word for word and it's going to sound super robotic over the phone, right? Mm. That's what I've, as a leader, right? Humans want to connect with humans. Yep, exactly. So I always told my team, don't use the script, just follow like a framework. So for my team, I have this. I don't have like that script specifically. I show them, I show them the script. I tell them, hey, this is what it looks like. But I make them follow this. I tell them, hey, have a strong opening, build rapport, schedule, take deposit. Super simple. So that's the framework. Strong opening, build rapport, scheduling, and take security deposit. Yeah. And I tell them, hey, Four phases. Be, yeah, be a curious baby, right? Just make them feel as if they were your friend. Laugh with them, joke with them, make them trust you. That's what I tell my team. Instead of just forming. This is really important. A lot of people skip this. And Faisal said something really important earlier that was overlooked. He said the 80% of this process is in the scheduling. Only 20% is in the ads. Yeah, so so the high, everything in the high level that we're showing you is 80% of making this work. The, remember, Paulson also asked me, why don't you just do paper lead? And I said, anyone could generate leads. That's the 20%. Like anyone could just throw up an ad, generate leads, even with crappy offers, even with crappy creatives, right? Yeah. So, Basil, can you show um, the framework that you were showing this one more time, if you don't mind? Um, yeah. So can you go over that real quick? The strong opening. So that talks about who we are. Building rapport yep. is a humanized connection and scheduling, right? So how do you do the scheduling? Is that inside high level? Do you force all your clients yep. to come to the high level? Yep. Or, okay, got it. And then the to oh. deposit as well. Yep. So deposit is also through high level, right? In high level, we actually build this. So whenever, like now it's more updated. So you guys have this in the snapshot. I'm giving you like my updated things just so you guys know. <laughs> so you exactly. can either tell the person on the phone, I we, or we either tell them like, hey, we can make it quick and easy. I just take your card number and I'll just type it. But I know a lot of people who we get on the phone with, they're not comfortable with this option. I know you wouldn't be either. So what we can also do is I can send you a payment link to your phone. It's very secure, just like PayPal, right? It's called Stripe and we'll send it to your phone and you can just take care of yourself. Which one sounds like a better option to you? Most of the time, they're going to say the link. So we just send them this link, but it's it, it, it's not like Stripe. So here I had like a Stripe link. This was before and not a lot of people were depositing. They would look at it. They'd be like, oh, this is probably a scam. But with this, you have a logo, you have a payment. It looks more legit. So, Got yeah. It. That, that's and, it. and when you do send over that snapshot, uh, Faisal, can you go ahead and shoot us a loom video that explains everything that's in the snapshot? Because there's a ton of people that's going to watch this on replay. There's going to be people watching this over the next couple of months. So, yeah. Like, if you can just shoot me a quick loom video that explains different aspects of the workflow and snapshot, that would definitely be appreciated. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome. So what else do we need to know about the fulfillment side of Paper Show? Joel, your camera went out. I don't know if you stepped out for a quick second, but uh, what else is there we need to think about, Faisal? I'd say number one thing, right? This is probably like the last thing I'll say is rapport building over the phone. Like Joel said, right? 20% is like making, like doing the Facebook ads. 80% is calling the leads, right? To schedule them. But in order for you to take a prepay over the phone, it's so like, it can be easy for you to do it if you know how to talk to people and you're good at sales, but for you, for you to teach your team properly, it's very hard, right? That's what I've noticed after having a team member myself. So you want to make sure you have like, you're actually role-playing with your team. You're doing all this stuff. So yeah. you, you can, you're, you're more likely to build rapport with people. And yet, you have a few options. You can also put this on your client. The way that we did it with my agency is we put this responsibility on our, our clients and train them. That being, and we actually told them, if you want to do performance, you have to be willing to get trained. You have to be willing to show up to their calls. You have to be willing to follow the process. And if you don't, we're going to put you back in retainer. So if you want to be a growth partner with us, you got to do what we tell you. Because again, we're sharing the risk here. You do your job, we do our job. If we both do our job well, we both grow. Yeah. And if not, we just bump you right back to retainer. So th that's another way to do it. And again, have leverage. Yeah, You're Joel, leading the relationship. 
Yeah, with my dental agency, that's what made me stand out more than anybody else is I would fly into the location, regardless where the dental practice is, anywhere in the U.S., and I would ask them, block off the calendar for two days. And I would literally spend two days teaching sales to every person inside the dental practice, not just the front desk, like everybody in there. So literally over the next like two, three months, everybody's doing sales. Like the 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 appointments that they have in the back, they're upselling. The front desk is getting transferred to new stuff. But anyways, go back to what you're sharing. Get off my soapbox here. <laughs> yeah, no, but but that's actually true. Because like, if you look at the biggest sales organizations, right? They always like, they do two two calls a day or two sales trainings a day, two like for like five days, right? So 10 hours of sales training. If they're doing that and you're not doing that with your own team and with yourself, like that's just, that's just you're, you're not really like, you don't have an agency, right? You're not, you're not like, that's, that's leadership. That's you're property. Not serious about it or don't know how you're to be serious. serious. Okay. Yeah. What else do we need to know about the fulfillment of the paper show model? I think that's it. Well, let's, well, can, did you go over the phone script? Yeah. So the phone script. Oh, no. Yeah. I interrupted you. Sorry. Go over the phone script. <laughs> so the phone. Yeah. Script, let's go over it. Yeah. So this is, this is what we always rush through it. Yeah. So we always tell them, Hey, this is me, right? This is where we are. And I always tell them like, Hey, this is where we're actually located. Cause sometimes you'll get leads for like 50 hours away and you go through the whole thing. And then they tell you, Oh yeah, I'm like, in like I'm in, I'm in Warsaw. So um, it just, it just makes no sense. So we always do this and we all, cause like we, we chat with them through the phone. So we tell them, okay, cool. I know we were texting back and forth a little bit. Um, and you said to give me, give you a call this time. And we asked them a question. So I know you mentioned all the text. You currently have back pain, right? Yeah, I have that. Oh, so how long have you had it for? Oh, wait, you also mentioned you it started about two years ago. Is that right? Okay, cool, cool. So let me quickly get you scheduled, right? So we do the report building. We do all this. It's obviously a lot more questions. And go and and and, and by the way, go. You want to dig deep, like pro. Be like, tell me more about that. Yeah. How is that affecting? Is that affecting things in your life? Out, you know, at work or outside of work with family? Yeah. Okay, and you know why? Why do you want to get that taken care of now? Like dig deep. But again, I think make it a conversation. Don't be a scripted robot. Let yeah. AI get them on the phone with you. Once they're on the phone with you, you got to be a human. <laughs> right. Well, so, the prospects uh, also don't know whether you're the office or an agency. They're expecting to be talking to the actual office. So you have to present yourself as yeah. if you're representing that. Yeah, very good light. Yeah. And you, I'm, I'm going to tell yeah. you guys a I'll, I'll say a secret real quick. Uh, so something that I do for my clients, I always tell them, hey, tell us how you, like, describe us your location as if like everyone in the area would know. So that's that. And I tell my VAs to do the same thing. So I tell them, hey, whenever you describe the location, tell them as if you actually live there yourself. So I uh, we're actually located near this Costco off of this street and this highway. Do you know where that is? Most people would be like, yeah, yeah, I know where that is. So it sounds like they're actually in the office. That makes sense. We're by the Costco. You know where that is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes sense. The Walmart. Yeah, keep keep going. Yeah. So, so that's then the, you get them scheduled. Right. You get them scheduled. Right. And um, right. We tell them, hey, just type yes once you see it. The text. We send them the text. All right. Wonderful. Just one last thing. We do have a very busy office. And I tell my team to say this word for word, this part. We do have a very busy office. So no shows really disturb our schedule. For me to avoid any, for us to avoid any no shows, and for me to like block in your appointment in our calendar, we take all deposits over the phone. So you can either just tell me your card number, and I'll just take care of it for you. But if you don't feel comfortable, which I totally get, um, I'll just send a link to your phone, and you can do it yourself. Which one sounds like a better option for you? Most of the time, they're going to say link. So interesting. So then like you they said then you send a link over high level. Yep, over high level. And then you saw that, and then they pay for it. Yep, and they then, pay for it. and and then we get a Slack notification and you guys have that on the uh, what do you call on the snapshot as well so you can just plug and play, but it sends us a notification so my team sees it, and it just says to them all right awesome thank you the payment went through and our I just updated the calendar as well thank you so much for scheduling we'll see you then and after the call is ended we send them a personal message so something like a with an emoji as well we tell them hey it was nice talking to you David have a great rest of your night or have a great rest of your day. So, afternoon yeah yep two That's two questions for you, anything Joel. else two questions nope. two questions so the 125 dollar target that we're shooting for per show does that always happen is it variable 
Is it like 80 sometimes? Is it 150 sometimes? Are you just trying to get the what average? You, you know how you said there's $125 per appointment that you're basically- For any time, any time that we get, again, you have to determine what qualifies as a show. When okay. we did it with our agency, it was, hey, when we get you connected to a pro patient on the phone, they showed up to a phone conversation, bill them. Um, Faisal, I think you're doing prepaid. So it's like anytime that you get a payment like this guy, now you bill the client or they paid you already for the credits, right? So you would just remove one of the owed shows. Got it. I, I guess my question is, how did you determine that 125? Because it, does the cost of acquisition, is that below the 125 or you're not even thinking about that? Uh, I just, I just want to, we kind of calculated, like if I get them 20 patients, you know, I want to, I want to make any, anywhere between 1500 to 2,500 a month off of them. So I was kind of working backwards from that. Again, what would a retainer be? And then with my best clients, like one, one of the things I told Faisal, was like take your best clients. Like we even talked about this yesterday. Uh, he, he just partnered with a million dollar Cairo. I was like, why don't you just, he was like, oh, you know, they started at like $60 a day ad spend. I'm like, screw that. Let's get them on $500 a day ad spend. <laughs> like really scale with them. Cause now he can make more from that one client than all of his other clients. Up yeah. until a point where there's market saturation, right? But at, at that point, you know, you focus on other ones. So I, I want to say something real quick. This is going to definitely be a curveball. This 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 model works in various niches. So I know we're showing you Cairo and roofing because we quite literally are trying to show you an entire business model, how to get clients results, how to get clients, how to leverage AI over four days. So we can't show you every single niche on the planet, but it does work in other niches. Um, I want I want to make that uh, super clear. So you don't have to do one of the two niches that we showed you. We're just picking one or two because that's how we're going to teach you guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that was that it on the script, Faisal? Yep. That's that's it. I've, and I so like what I, happens after that? And after that, um, I mean, the person just shows up to the clinic, right? Um, that's that's really it. Very, now, how are you? You say you're how do, how are you currently tracking that? So the way I do it is right now I'm charging them per show, so not like per prepaid deposit per show. So as soon as they show up to the clinic. At the end of the day, they like the client will get an automated message on their phone telling them, "Hey, press this link if it, if the person showed up. Press this link if they didn't. If they didn't, the patient will get an automatic message, right? Um, hey, you didn't show up to your appointment. Blah blah blah. What happened? And then we'll call them the next day. So my calling team will call them. Um, and if they did pay, they just press on the link and we just bill them automatically. That's how I do it. And then, guy, I want to state something you guys after we finish this workshop over the next four days you're going to get access to all of the resources the scripts the ads we can even throw in some creatives along with the snapshots i'll create another folder called resources where we put everything in there for you guys and uh Faisal will upload a, a few of his actual live calls so you can listen to it live already what's, um what's next on fulfillment yeah, I think we're, we've covered a lot. So to recap, we've covered how to do the ads. We've covered how to do the follow-up and high level, the texting, all that good stuff. We've covered um, how to actually get them on the phone and what to say to get them to show up. We've covered all that. Um, is there anything missing on uh, your part? Is there, is, the there, last guest? is there a chance, Faisal, that we can take like two, three minutes and go over the workflow? in the snapshot yep. or whatever, like the high level component. I, I like to just kind of see the automations. Just yeah, like of course. basic level, of course, everybody that jumps into an account, you're going to get it. If you stay through the end of this entire workshop um, on Wednesday or Thursday, you'll get all assets essentially if you already have a high level account. But can you log in a high level and just kind of show the um, automations behind the fulfillment? Just at a glance, you don't have to you know, mm -hmm. spend... 15 minutes going oh. over everything. Um, by the way, high level will be a little slower when you're sharing on Zoom on a live and just in general based on browser issues, but uh, wait for it to load. Um, yeah, wait, wait for it to load. Thank you. thank you for doing this, by the way, Faisal. We appreciate it. No, of course. Of course. I mean, I just saw like, I just saw Joel sharing everything. Um, one day I shared 
I, I, I know, you know, it's funny though. Cause I actually shared just a creative. It was like a, uh, what do you call it? It was a Friday event and, uh, and his coaching program. And uh, I just shared one of his creatives. And ever since then, he's just been begging me to do all this. So Joel's a uh, famous. I, 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 Friday. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, um, to be honest, man, like I see your potential. The fact that you're willing to give, it just makes me want to help you out. So you get, you literally get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me now for free. <laughs> Cause I just want to help you. You know, I, I, yesterday we talked and I was like, Hey, I'm going to make sure that I over deliver for you after this training because you're just here giving. So I think that's a great lesson for all of you guys in and of itself. Like the more you give, the more you get. And giving doesn't mean just giving away free courses. Like I know that's like a thing now, but it's like giving is also just having a desire in your heart to help your prospects, to help your clients, to help your team members, so on and so forth. And it just comes back to you. So, all right, let's go over this. So what are we looking at here? What part of high level is this? I mean, I know what it is, but for those that are like, there's a lot of people in this call phase that doesn't know anything about high level. That's why I'm asking that. Right, right. So once you have your client, right, you're going to create a sub account just like this. And you can see all of your clients here. Well, I have a lot, but um, you're going to see a lot of this, right? Um, so you're going to have your client and this is going to be the dashboard. This is where you're going to conversate with people. For example, I mean, I'm sending myself reply back messages. But for example, like people like this, right? We reach out to them. We can just text them from here. This is the conversations. This is because, um, Paul, I know you mentioned this. Where do we do all the calendar stuff, right? This is where we do all the calendar stuff right here. Um, you can schedule people in here. Very simple. And um, yeah, that's the calendar. This is the opportunities. This is where you have everything organized, right? You're going to have all this in here. The pipeline. Yep, the pipeline. The places like your Trello, pipe drive, that type of thing. Literally, literally. Yep. So we have that. And then this is the automations. This is all the automations I have. So also for some people who don't prepay, just so you guys know, I have like a six hours after sending the prepay, they get a message. Hey, prepay, prepay, prepay until they actually do prepay. Because sometimes we call them, they're like, hey, I don't have my credit card number. So um, it's hard to keep track of it that way. But yeah, that's that. And uh, should I just go over the new lead? Or Yeah, just go over the new lead sure. real quick, like two minutes if you don't mind, um, mm -hmm. and go over the next item. All right, cool. So first thing, right, um, whenever you're making your automations, you add them into an opportunity, just kind of like Trello, right? You want to keep everything organized. So that's what I do. Um, I add a tag to them. So for me to follow up with people, I follow up through tags, not through like the um, opportunities. So I have a day one follow-up one. I add that tag to them. I take them into a spreadsheet just so I can keep track of it for my client KPIs because those are important um, as soon as you, like right after when you get to like 10K and stuff. Um, so we have reminders. So I send, as soon as we get, we get a, we send a, I send a Slack reminder I send an email reminder to my VA. I send an app reminder to my VA. And we send them an SMS text. So this is the SMS text we send them. We wait 10 minutes for their reply, for the person to reply to the first text, right? And if they don't reply, we'll send them another text. So we'll tell them, hey, this is the doctor. I just saw your reply, blah, blah, blah. Can you tell me a little bit what you're feeling? If they so do reply. Who's, who's covering the text cost when you're doing performance model? Uh, so with text cost, I mean, I cover it myself right okay. right now um but i mean you can also just have your client because i know you can put your client's credit card info in here and they can just cover all of it cool yep and so if someone replied i had a tag to them replied we send a slack notification hey this person replied text them go ahead call them Who's all that slack. client slack slack uh no it's our slack so my like my vas and they they always Looking at oh, it, so. so it's in, inform your internal team. Okay, jump on that call so you don't miss that on the prospect. Yep, yep. Got it, okay. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's how you do it. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the workflow. It's nothing no, nothing too complicated. Well, I think the 80-20, the guys, is getting them on the phone and having a human-to-human -human conversation where you get to know them, you make it very personal, uh, personable, you connect with them, not sounding like a robot. That is the 80-20 of 
all of this, generating the leads, we literally gave you the, the targeting, the ads, the creatives. We literally showed you how to come up with offers. It's all there. It's not yeah. going to change much. Again, like I said, 80% of agency has been the same for a long, long time. The, the real difference maker is, I'm going to just be very honest, Faisal is just better at calling the leads and connecting with them. That's that's the that's the eighty twenty of why he's winning. So, um. Anyways, anything else that we didn't go over? I think uh, it's pretty clear so far. Um, Faisal, anything you need to uh, share? Um, and maybe you can talk about like how you're setting up paper show, like how you price it right now. Yeah. So the way I price paper show, and I'll just go into my demo presentation just so you guys see how it looks like. Um, just so you guys know, I don't Let's really follow, go. I don't really follow my demo presentation like crazy or anything like that. I just kind of show them the pricing part. Okay. Um, you do your demos over Zoom or phone calls. Yeah. Or... So it's always over. We'll go, Zoom. go over We'll go over sales. We'll have a whole day on sales, but um, and I'll give you guys a demo. Uh, which one is it? Oh, most hated one. Oh, it's this one. Okay, cool. So I have a three-step system. I know Christian. Okay, don't tease now. Can you show the slides? Yeah. You can't, you can't, don't tease, you know? All right. So I should just, I just go into the pricing part. Where is the pricing? It's right here. So this is how I do it. Tell them, hey, we have a $60 a day option. Um, we have an $80 a day and we have a $100 a day. Most of the clients that we work with, most of the doctors, they, they most of them, most of them just choose $80 a day. But for the lower end, they always go with 60. It's a hundred and this is, this is supposed to be 125. It's $125 per patient. And I have $1,000 that goes to, towards the credit fee. Obviously, I'm not really the best at sales. So I just asked them for 1,000. But I mean, you don't really have to be. If you can just explain them the process very easily, you should be able to get. Uh, yeah. And those of you that are go watching, over your demo. Today's, today's focus is client fulfillment. We are going to talk about sales and marketing over the next several days. Just FYI, that is kind of the Joel Kaplan secret weapon, in my opinion, he's very good at marketing and sales. Um, but the I, I get, I don't get, you know, it's funny because everyone sees me as like, Joel just cares about setting and closing appointments. But you know, when I ran my agency and had over 50 clients that I personally managed the ads for and had every single relationship, I had a 100% retention rate over some months. So with 50 clients by myself, so it's like, the, he, the fundamental problem with all of this is like you absolutely need an amazing product, but if you have no one to deliver that product to, it does not matter. It becomes a get, it actually goes to zero. It becomes irrelevant. And where most people get stuck is that they never have anyone to work with to deliver even potentially good results. So that's why I focus. I, I When I coach, by the way, side note, like I'm always coaching the entrepreneur, not the business. And I know the entrepreneur is stuck focusing on things that don't matter. So I aggressively push them towards setting and closing appointments. And I think over time, people have thought, well, that means that client results don't matter. But like one of the reasons why I actually wanted to start today with client results was to prove like that is the foundation. The only reason that Faisal is able to run the system is because he has he has everything dialed in. Like you can tell it's dialed in. So that's the only reason it works. If if any of these pieces weren't dialed in, it wouldn't work. And now what's really powerful is you have the power to decide, you know what, I want to do a retainer. Like, and you have the confidence. Now that you know how to literally get people to show up at a local business, you have the keys to their acquisition, to their growth, which means you have the power to determine how you want to build a business relationship with your client. Whether you want to do paper show, whether you want to do retainer, whether you want to literally be like, hey, I only want to partner with five people. I want 50% of the business. Yeah. Now would, you have the power. Yeah. I would be putting my MBA hat on and trying to acquire the business over the next three years and being like, hey, let's just go 20% on the revenue. I'll handle all the marketing and sales. That's, I mean, 50%. everybody has their own way of, you know, creating that recipe. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's honestly why we started with fulfillment. It's because if, if without it, what I like about this model is it forces you to have everything dialed in. And then if you're like, you know what? I don't want to do paper show, but I, I literally know how to get people to show up, which is what businesses want. Now you have the key to decide how you want to work with people.
Again, if you know how to get your clients' clients, you'll never have to worry about clients. Um, is there anything else that we didn't go over on your end? If not, we'll turn it over to last speaker for today. We have till one, or we have 45 more minutes. Before I'm more concerned yeah. about the recordings and the streaming more than anything else. Cause as soon as like two and a half hour mark happens, it just starts crapping out. That's the only reason, but there's All plenty right. of comments in the streaming. That's like, let the man speak for another two hours. So we're, we might. Hey, I want. I texted pause for the record. I texted pause in this morning. I said, "Can I get eight hours?" He said, "No." I love you, bro. <laughs> oh man. Okay, guys. Honestly, I want to give. Can I just actually give you a quick shout out? Paulson took all the risk back in 2019. He said, "Guys, we need to start these educational series in high level," and this is back when high level was really at a. Uh, like it wasn't as big as it is today. So there was had, a lot of had, like moving pieces. Yeah, we had less than a thousand customers. Today we're at over 70,000 agencies. So this yeah, is- the I, By the way, I was one of the first, I was one of the first 100. Yeah, uh, during, like, during that time, it was like, Paulson, something's not working. What's what's wrong with this thing? What's wrong with that thing? It was like chaotic because we're trying to build for the agencies. Now the high level that you walk into is not what it was back then. I'm telling you, you guys have a gem in your hands compared to what it used to be a couple of years ago. Just FYI, I'm and, so and, I'll, and I'll tell you, Paulson. I'll tell you what. Like I would not be here if it wasn't for you because that and part of why I wanted to bring guest speakers is because that workshop really put me on the map. It really did. Like you put your trust in me to over deliver for everyone and. Obviously, we created an amazing 10-day workshop, and it put me on the map. So, you know, I have nothing but the highest level of respect for you and a lot of love as well. And I think that of course. my hope with also bringing guests is to pass it forward, right? Yeah. Elevate other people. Because now every single person knows Faisal, right? And it, and it will it. continue we're, we're to having, be a ripple. We're effect, having so. a bro moment. We're having a bro moment. <laughs> let's let's it's good. I like Good to gotta be, we can't we can't talk about being human you know, and, uh, and then like be all robotic. All, all right. right, Faisal, thanks uh, for jumping. I think we're in. good, right? Yeah. Thanks for jumping in, Faisal. I appreciate it. Uh we'll keep you posted. If you can shoot me a loom video so that way the follow-up for our entire team is a lot easier in delivering these things. Definitely appreciate it, man. Stay in the community if you're not all already part of it, please. Um Joel, let's go with the next person that you have in mind. Absolutely. Um, Faith, one last thing. Any Anything else that you want to share? Or... Um, anything else I want to share? I mean, let's just give it all away for free. I mean, what else What else is there to share? Love it, man. So I think you went over the ads, high level, for the ads for two niches. We went over mm -hmm. the calling script. We're going to yeah. give away the live, the live yeah. calls as well at the end. Yeah. There's nothing one else really, thing. right? One, one last thing. I knew so, that there was one last thing. That's why I, I so I am running this thing. So I'm I'm running the same exact offer that Joel is presenting to you guys. And I'm gonna take my Cairo agency. So I because I have a white label and a Cairo. I'm gonna take the Cairo agency to hundred K a month with this offer alone. And Joel and I were gonna do a podcast together on it. Let's go. You hit you hit hundred K a month. I'll fly <laughs> you out. I'll pay for everything. We'll have it, we'll uh we'll get to hang out and I'll uh we'll do a podcast. And maybe it. high level will bring you back, you know? <laughs> I love so, it. Well, thanks for jumping in, Faisal. I appreciate it. Uh, let's all let's right, guys. move forward. So to, to kind of do a 30-second recap, at this point, we've talked about the model from a high level. We've talked about uh, specifics of how to get clients results through ads, through lead generation, and through a little bit of lead nurture. The last way that you guys can get results for clients with this model is lead reactivation. So what we just went over over the last like hour is how to generate new business, how to drum up new business for a client. They didn't have these leads. Now they do. But a lot of businesses have worked with a lot of people over the years. For example, a chiropractor or a gym, right? They have thousands of leads from people that they've already worked with in the past. One of the easiest ways to grab the low-hanging fruit and to get clients also quick wins. Like one of the ways that you guys can just get a lot of shows quickly 
is by taking all of their leads that already exist and reactivating. And we're gonna show, I'm gonna give you guys right now one of my campaigns that has proven to work over and over and over again for any niche. And we're gonna show you how to do a full reactivation campaign. Again, we... the two parts of serve. Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. The two parts of serve of client fulfillment is again lead generation with lead nurture, which we just showed you. And then the last piece is gonna be lead reactivation. And I'm gonna be bringing a very special guest. He's someone that actually manages all of our high level accounts for all of my companies. And he is our go to tech person for anything. Not only that, he's been a high level ambassador since the start and uh, probably knows more about high level than anyone else I know. <laughs> like he knows a lot. And uh, he also has his own tech agency. So he helps people with tech. He helps people with high level. I want to make sure that he's on right now. Yeah, he is. Okay, cool. So I don't know if you can uh, bring him on, but uh, his name is Aaron Delzensky. Some of you guys might know him. Aaron, what's up? I don't know if Aaron... You should be able to... You have to make him co-host. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. First of all, before we get started, can everybody type in Aaron on the streaming just to get the engagement going? Like I'm seeing some of the comments. Uh, Appreciate it. Um, Aaron and I met several times in person, I feel like in different events and things like that. Um, What's up, man? What's up, Joe? Joel? Yeah. Hey, yeah, man. we've been a couple times at the at some of the high level events. Absolutely. Um, we've been at Joel's event. We've met. Yeah. So. Yep. Aaron's a genius. I'm telling you, there's a few people that I call geniuses in the high level world. He's one of them. By the way, side note about Aaron, this guy used to uh operate submarines, like actual <laughs> submarines. <laughs> And I was like, yo, what's the craziest thing that's happening? Or I don't know if it or if it actually happened or what, but you were telling me about what to do if there's a fire underwater in a submarine. So like, if you can solve that, you can help with high level, you know? It's crazy. All right, Aaron, I don't know if you want to take it away, jump right in. Yeah, whenever you yeah. share your screen or whatever, just make sure you turn the annotation off. I don't know how to do it, preset. I need to figure that out, but Aaron, go ahead. All right, I'll jump right into it. So let's get this sharing going and turn off. Turn off the Click yeah. on more and then turn off remote annotation. Oh no. There we go. A lot of a lot of creative artists in this building today. <laughs> but it's the same. A lot of people are should... changing. <laughs> I, I don't it's... know. Yeah. Okay, uh, you might so... have to yeah, then stop you have to sharing and reshare. No, you don't stop sharing. Keep sharing what you're sharing. Oh, yeah. there we the... go. No, clear. I yeah. got it. Um, <laughs> this view, Aaron, can you actually maximize it? So for our production team, otherwise they will probably like snipe me because it'll create a lot of work for them. Can you maximize this browser? Uh, yeah. We see your desktop. You mean... yeah. We see your full desktop. Oh, okay. So you mean, all right, I will... Yeah, click on it, and you're using a Mac, right? So click on that green button at the top left corner after, whenever you're sharing the browser. Oh, you just want, okay, so just expand it, you're saying? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, expand it. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Aaron, do you want me to uh, give okay. a little context on this? Uh, yeah, go ahead. So guys, this is a reactivation campaign that I wrote. Now, here's the really cool part. It's a Black Friday campaign, but it could be used for anything. All you have to do is change the special occasion. So right now it's going to be the holidays. So you could be like, hey, first name, I'm testing something brand new for the holidays, for Christmas, for New Year's, for the summer start, for springtime, for Halloween, for, oh, there's there's like other stuff too. <laughs> um, Valentine's Day. You could just you could literally be like for March. You could even just put the the for 2024. So you can just flip this with any occasion given where you're at. You don't have to wait till next year to do this. To keep it exclusive, we're going to be rolling this out to the next 10 patients that reply it back, the next 10 homeowners that reply back. You're going to just change it based on your niche, right? This is something you're sending out on behalf of your prospects. 
Now, by the way, you can also use this for yourself. Highly recommend. You can also use this exact campaign as an agency to get to reactivate your own leads. Golden nugget right there. We use this every single year in Black Friday for our companies and it crushes. Like we get insane results. So again, uh, Aaron, like you could modify it for 2024 for New Year's. Like you could literally just change Black Friday with New Year's. And then now it's now you guys can run it right now right <laughs> so you want to send the first one asap then you're going to send the next day two hours before the next the 24 hour period lapses you're going to say there's only two hours left and again you're also you're going to do this all through high level aaron's going to show you how on mo the following monday or you know a few days later um all you have to do, because there's no Cyber Monday, say, amazing news, we decided to extend our new program that we're testing for a few more days, for three more days. So you're just doing an extension of the promo for one more week. It does not really matter. You could literally say, we're, we're decided to extend our new program we're testing for one more week. As I mentioned above, to keep exclusive, we're only going to be rolling this out to the next 10 patients, homeowners, whatever, that reply back. We're closing it down for good, though, after Sunday. So you don't have to put Cyber Monday. I want to make that clear. Um, and that's it. Then, the, the, then literally the, at the end of the day, you just send that and yeah. you're done. And, and just so ha everybody has context to what reactivation means, what, what that means is you, you are bringing back old customers or old interested leads back into the business, right? So one of the first people in the, in the high level family, I want to give credit where it's due is Rob Bailey that coined the term re database reactivations. So, you know, we all have the same exact type of method, you know, Jay Abraham, Frank Kern, Dan Kennedy, all these guys ultimately teach the idea of bringing back customers regardless of what the naming conventions are. But this is something you add as part of the fulfillment, regardless whether you're doing paper show model or not. This is a scenario that applies to all models as an agency, just in general. Go ahead. Mm. Yeah. Joel, Fair I also enough. have, I also have your other database reactivation down here. If you want to go over that. Let's just focus on the Black Friday one for right now okay. to keep it simple. Yeah. Sweet. Um, I think I'll pass it off to you now. All right. So next we'll go into, so now we'll go into actually how you build it out and how you'd use it in your high level account. Uh, how much, I guess, Joel or Paul, how much time do we have? Do we want to? How much time do you need? We, we're about three hours into the call now. So <laughs> I, well, I guess look, the reason I'm asking is that I can do, I can actually go through and build and build it out so they can see how it works, or I can just pull this up here and walk through each step so they know how it works. How much time would it take for you to build it up? I mean, I can move pretty quick. I'm <laughs> like, give me Let's a go. number. I like that. Give me a number. <laughs> uh, I'd say we probably, I could probably get it built out in like 20 minutes oh, or, or less. Maximize the screen. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's so freaking go, Paulson. Let's go. All right, maximize, so first of all, yeah, maximize the screen on the top left. Sorry, Aaron. Uh, yeah, expand well, it. I, I want to. I want to have the oh, script got it, on the side. Okay. Man, I feel bad for our video production guys. They're gonna have to go through this and cut it all up. It's gonna be a while before you get replaced, y'all. Just FYI. Go ahead, Aaron. Sorry, I didn't mean to stop you. No, no, you're good. You're good. All right. So first off, I'm gonna just hop into. I have this database reactivation workflow here, and this is just the basic. So if you want to start, just get it up super quick. Go basic. You can you can do it this way. So what you would do is, um, so I'll walk over building the the advanced one out. Um, this one is real basic. I'm gonna show you first thing. It just sends out the, an an SMS. So it sends out the text, which will be right here, the Black Friday one. And then you're gonna wait a day. So you're gonna put a wait step in. You're gonna wait a day. Then you're gonna send out the second text. Wait a day. Send out one if you want to do it on Monday, wait a day, then send out the fourth one. So it's real simple. You can send them out that way. Uh, the key to this, what you'd want to do is you want to go into the settings and you'd want to turn on stop on response so that when somebody does re reply to this workflow, then they're not getting the automated messages because you're going in and actually responding to them. But 
In the advanced one, we're going to keep that off because we're going to automate some of the responses come back. So we're going to go build that one out. Cool. And where are you at? The screen that you just pulled up, just be mindful, Aaron. There's a lot of people watching that don't even have a high level account. So some of the basics you may just have to highlight a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah got that. Um, so this is the workflow. This is my favorite part of high level. This is all the automations, how you automate your entire business, essentially. Uh, the view that you saw was slightly different. It was a uh, beta feature. It's in labs. This is actually coming out at the end of January. So I just wanted to show that one compared to what you saw uh, previously. Yeah. He, what, is he was, so, what is labs for somebody who doesn't know what labs is? Labs is uh, any beta features that high level is coming out with. Uh, and so they want to, that's the thing I love about high level is they're always listening to their users and then they're testing things and they're giving us a chance to go in and turn these features on and test about ourselves and then provide feedback to the team uh, and then they're going to make it even better. Awesome. Uh, that's, that's the thing I love about high level is they're, they're constantly listening to, to us and making the software better and not coming out once a year with a 2.0 version or updates. No, they're constantly throwing out updates. That's why I think they're taking over the internet. Cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask a bunch of elementary questions, assuming somebody's watching that doesn't know anything about high level. Keep going. Go for it. Okay. All right, so now we're going to actually hop into the automation here. We're going to build out this workflow. So I'm going to up here click the create workflow. Now there's a bunch of different recipes in here. These are pre-built workflows that you can use. Uh, the high level is already built out. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to start from scratch. And it's now going to come to the blank canvas that you have here. Now starting out with workflows, there are two main parts to a workflow. You have the trigger, which is the action that adds them the contact into the workflow. And then the next next part you have is the actions, the things that happen when a contact is in this workflow. All right, so there's two main parts, triggers, and then your actions. You can add multiple triggers, so you can have in different ways to get the contact in here, or you can actually add no trigger. And in this case for the database reactivation, we're not gonna add a trigger. It's not gonna be necessary for this. So, we're going to start by sending by doing the first action. And the first action following our script here is we're going to send out an SMS. So you can search for it here, or if you scroll down to the communication section, there's send SMS. And then, and then from here, I always like to name my actions. So then I, I as I'm going through my workflow, I can quickly see what they what each action is. So instead of just saying SMS, I'm going to name it to day one. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the script here. We'll copy this script. And I'm going to paste that in here. So this is the message that will be sent out. However, we don't want to can send out. Modify it? And can you modify it for New Year's too? Yes, I'll do that. Okay, so first off, I don't want to just to, to send, hey, first name. We actually wanted to say the contact's first name. Uh, so this is also going to depend on does your client, their list of, pay, of customers that they're giving you, do they have a first name in the list or not? If they do, then what Hilo has is called custom values, custom fields, where you can come up and you can choose the first name. And so for each text that goes out, it'll put in that person's first name, also called merge fields. Uh, but in high level term, they're called custom fields. And then down here, we're going to change out this from Black Friday to, what'd you say, New Year's? Correct. And then, exactly. Just say like we're, patience. Yeah, we're going to go with patience. We're going to keep the Cairo theme. And so now this is the message that's going to go out to them. Save that. Now, the next thing I like to do is I always like to uh, tag my contacts. So when you tag contacts, it's a great way to see where they are in their customer journey and what's going on with the contact. So in this one, I'm going to add a tag that's called DBR sent. Again, I name it. So then now that is, they're gonna get the message, then they're going to get a tag added to them. Why is the tagging important, Aaron? Tagging is important for many different reasons. There's tagging, you can, you can tag contacts to, uh, to basically 
so you can see in the system where they are in their customer journey uh, or based on different actions that they've taken interacting with your business. The other thing about contacts is you can use contacts for automations in your in your workflows. Maybe they'll only go past a certain step if they have a contact or or if they have a tag or don't pass through the step if they don't have a have a certain tag or maybe only add to a workflow if they have a tag, if the tag gets added or removed. There's a number of different ways you can use tags. Yeah, it's basically for audience segmentation based on the customer journey. Exactly. Yeah, better, better way of putting it, audience segmentation. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right, so next, after that, so after the SMS is sent, add a tag, now we're gonna wait for them to reply because here we're basically saying, um, if you want the info, just let me know in the next 24 hours. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to add in a wait step. Now, the cool thing about wait steps in here is you can just have a typical wait a certain amount of time, or there's all these other actions in here based on for different types of, of waiting. So if you're sending an appointment reminders, so someone books on a calendar, you can have a wait step that is before their appointment, say 24 hours before, hour before, you can wait for certain conditions to be applied. So for example, going back to tags, you can have to wait here until a tag gets added or removed from that contact before they move on to the next step. In this case, we're gonna go down contact reply. So now they're gonna to get to this step and they're gonna wait. They're gonna be in the step waiting for the contact to reply to that, this SMS that we selected. So I'm gonna name it, wait for reply. Or I'm gonna say, 22 hours because and, and, go, on. go ahead Aaron. Uh, because in here Joel said two hours before the 24 hour period so that would be 22 hours <laughs> but we're gonna put a timeout in here because what a timeout is a timeout is going to be for this case 22 hours so what this is saying is when they're on the wait step if they don't reply within the 22 hours, then the timeout will move them on to the next step. If you don't turn a timeout on here, then the contacts will stay at this step forever if they never reply. So usually I almost always turn a timeout on. It's a, it's a delayed push, essentially. Correct. So SMS gets sent, they get tagged, and then they're gonna be on this wait step. If they reply, say they reply two hours later, they'll go on to the next step. If they don't and 22 hours hits, then they will go on to the next step. Got it. I'm with you so far. Got it? Cool. I'm not a All techie, right. but I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this so far. Guys, I don't know. If it, also, like, can I just say there's also incredible people that are more tech oriented, like Aaron, that are in the high level community that can help you. Like, yeah. I'll be very honest. I do not. I'm going to just expose myself. I don't know how to do this stuff. I just call Aaron. I say, Hey, help me. So you have a lot of people also in the high level community that are so good at the tech side and don't want to do the sales and vision. You know, they just want to focus. They love the tech. So like you can also find these people don't feel like just because you don't know how to do this, that you can't do this. Right. Um, and By you also way. can learn it. I, but, I also know that any single person that commits to learning this can learn. Like we're not talking about like physics here. It's it, the, the high level makes it very simple. Again, it's not easy, but it makes it simple. Like, so yeah, I wanted to throw that out there. Just big shout out to some of the departments internally. We just launched a certifications program. If you don't know, like a month ago where you can get certified as a high leveler and you can also get businesses from that program that are looking for certified high levelers. So it benefits whether you're certified or if you're get, trying to get business off of it. Um, but either way, jump into our certifications program. You just, people just take it just to even learn high level as well. It all, we just launched it literally like a month ago. But anyways, Aaron, let's get back to workflows. And actually Paulson, I got my, my live proctor exam coming up in a week and a half, so. Oh man, you better pass that after being on a workshop. I'm a, I'm a good. Oh. <laughs> I took it three years ago. 
<laughs> I know. I'm just uh, uh, all kidding aside. I yeah. Um, okay. You write the exam <laughs> for us. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah. Waiting for the 22 hour reply. It's a delayed push. What's happening as the next step? Okay, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a quick modification. I'm going to go back to the initial text up here. And what I'm going to do, because to make this a little bit more automated so you can have hand, your hands off and more focusing on the sales. So here I'm going to put in, if you want info, just reply yes to let me know next 24 hours. So I'm going to save that in the message there. Because down here, after the wait, so we're waiting for them to reply to that message. We're going to add in now. Now, when they reply, there's different ways that they can reply. They can reply yes. They can reply negatively, like no, or they just don't reply at all. So what we're going to add in now is called an if-else statement. So it's different branches to go down based on their action. I always name my steps. So I'm going to name this one replied, question mark. First branch is going to be the yes, yes or positive. What we're going to do here is the condition to go down this branch, we're going to choose this one contact reply, and we're going to say reply message. We're going to say is, we're going to say yes, because yes was in, it told him to reply yes in that message. Now I'm going to add another condition because somebody, I'm going to change this to an or, because somebody might just reply back, sure. So we say contact reply, reply message is sure. And does it matter if it's like lowercase or capitals or like? It, no, it... this is not not case sensitive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you don't have to do that. Uh, yeah, you can put cap capital or not. Uh, but so now, now this is I chose is so this is the exact message meaning their message would only have to say sure. Uh, it, you can do contains, but you know you can do contains or does not contains. Um, in this case, we're doing. What about like yeah or yeah with the H? So, yeah, yeah. What I'm getting at here is I'm going to put a couple different ones in here, and so I'm just going to do one more. But then you can go and add more more in that you want. So in this case, we're going to say yeah. Now the other the cool thing that high level has in here is we go to contact reply. There's intent type. So I always. I have this in as well, and we're gonna say is positive. So this uses, actually, I'm not sure if it still uses Google's um, or wow. switch to OpenAI or something, but it's a uh, Google's dialog flow. And so it, it looks to see is the message, is it a positive or is it a negative intent? So that would cover, yeah, yup, sure, yeah, yes, anything like that. But a lot of times I like to put these other ones in here just kind of as a fallback because this may not always be perfect on the intent type. Got it. And so that's going to cover our yes branch. And then when I click save, now you have the two branches here. However, I'm going to add in a third branch. So I'm going to come back into back into here, click add branch. This one I'm going to call other than yes. And you'll see here why in a second. So this one's going to be contact reply, intent type, is not or is not positive. And I'm gonna save that. So now we have our three branches. We have if they replied yes, anything that's positive. If they don't reply in the 22 hours, then they'll come down this none branch because these two branches are for replying. But if they reply something that's not positive, it's like maybe they're asking, asking a question, I'm gonna send them down the other than yes branch. And this one, the only thing I'm gonna add in is I'm gonna notify the client that there's been some other message that came in. So the way we do this is we come down to communication again, and we're gonna to go to send internal notification. Here, I'm gonna send an SMS. Let's select the type, it's gonna be an SMS notification. Now, who do you wanna send it to? You can probably do a signed user, you can choose a particular user. Um, most likely you choose your clients your client's user. Uh, for simplicity here, we're just gonna say all users. And then here, what I'm gonna I'm gonna say is I already have make this go quicker. I already have a message here. So contact name, so whatever contact is, replied with the following message. 
and then I'll have what their actual message was in here. So the client will get it and they'll say, oh, Bob Smith replied with, well, how much is the offer? And then they'll be able to see. So we got that notification there. And by the way, Aaron, real quick, on Thursday, we're also going to be talking about how to leverage AI to help all, all of this process. And we're also going to be talking about how to leverage AI to leverage everything that Basil taught earlier today. Um, so just wanted to throw awesome. that in there. Okay. So then the next one going down, if they reply yes, something that's positive, what we're going to do is I like to create an opportunity. So I'm going to go down to create an update opportunity. This is for your CRM for the pipeline to manage all your all your leads. So in this case, I'm going to do a create opportunity. I created a very simple pipeline called DBR. And then I'm going to put it in the reply. You have to create the pipeline before you can come choose it. Yes, you, yes, you have to do that. Um, we go to. So in the opportunity section here, you have the um, like different CRMs, but you have your different stages and you have an opportunity card in here. So for each contact that reply positively, an uh, opportunity will be created here and you can move them down the different stages along the customer journey. So then you can manage your, your, your leads in the best possible way. Do you mind quickly yeah. like 10 seconds of showing how to create a pipeline? Yes. If you go into pipelines here, this is the settings for the pipeline. You can create as many pipelines as you want and you create as many stages as you want. So in this one, if you just said, uh, or let's do leads. Then say this first stage name, say you're running ads, maybe you wanna do new lead. You can add another stage and then say replied. Yeah. And you can add several stages, say, book to call. Yeah. These are things so you then, want to actually talk to your customer and your clients and figure out what is their different stages in their sales pipeline and say sales flow. So when you come back into high level, you build it synchronized to their normal practice of sales. Exactly. So the way I like to, to talk to people about the pipeline and say, even when I'm building out high level accounts for people is you usually start at the pipeline. So I ask them, Hey, what is your what's the customer journey for your business? When a customer first interacts with say your ad or first interacts with you, all the way down to them becoming a customer. What are all the major steps that have to happen in your sales process? And that is, once I get the pipeline down, the major steps, then it's a lot easier to go through and build out a snapshot, build out a sub account, all the automations, build everything out because you know the client's, the client's customer's journey and then you can map that out and have a great streamlined flow for their customer journey. Got it. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. And then we'll click save. And so then you'll have that second pipeline created. All right. So now back in the workflow. So this is going to the create the opportunity and the positive reply. Now, by default, it typically does put their first, their full name in for the name of the opportunity, but you can name this whatever you want. I always like to have the custom, the custom field here of full name. So in the opportunity card, will say the patient's full name. In the source, you can see, you can put a source in where they came from. So maybe just put DBR and everything else here, you can just leave default the way it is. And so we'll save action. And now it's gonna create an opportunity when they get to the step. Next thing I like to do is like to add a tag. Again, I always like to add tags on all the major steps so you can see where your customers are and segment them appropriately. In this one, I'm gonna say DBR claimed because they came down the yes branch. And we'll save action. And next is we actually want to, since they sent us, since we sent this message out and they replied, now we actually wanna follow up with them and give them a, uh, a confirmation back that we received their message. So I don't want to send a message back immediately because I don't want it to always look like a bot. So if I do, I'm gonna do a wait step. I'd like to do say 1.5 minutes because then it's less automated looking when they get the message. It's not instant reply back. 
You know what's funny also, Aaron? If you have like a bunch of like misspelled, like random jargon in there, they usually perform better because it kind of imitates a human texting versus very appropriate English. <laughs> True. And yeah, as much as I love, I love technology and automation and all this and the AI, I still, what I like to do is basically what Tom or Paulson was saying was I like to put in different wait steps. So for example, like on appointment reminders, I usually send out a 47 minute before and I say your appointment is coming up in about 45 minutes. That way it looks more like human, like someone sent it out as opposed to automated. So I always try to get the little things in there to be less robotic. Uh, so then here we'll, we can just, we can say, uh, what are we doing here? all right, so we can put a basic message saying back, replying back, awesome, I'll save a spot for you around what time do you think you might want to come by? And we'll name this confirmation. We'll say. Okay, so we have that now. And then next, we, we could go put in another uh, wait for reply and then more branches down. But before I get to that, I'm going to come back to the follow up, which is the next couple of days. Okay, so we're going to say we sent out the message. Waited 22 hours, they did not reply. So now they're gonna go down this branch. So what we're gonna do is we are going to send them another message. And so we're going to send an SMS and we're gonna come back here and we're gonna grab the, the day two. Grab this one, we're gonna put it in, change out this to the actual custom field. Probably could have changed it in, the, in Google Doc beforehand, but. <laughs> Yo, Aaron, can I can I chime in real quick? Something super yeah. fast. So, guys, also, right now, Aaron's been showing you how to build an entire reactivation campaign step by step to awaken old leads in your client's database. Right, right now, what's interesting is we're talking about how to leverage this for paper show. Right, so any people that anyone that replies yes, you could also just call them directly and get them scheduled or have your clients call them directly and get them scheduled. Again, you don't have to be the one calling, but um, the idea is you don't even have to make it super complex. You can also just, as soon as they reply, yes, you can just go right into the same process that Faisal taught you earlier of like, awesome. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on and why you want this offer? And just go right into the same process. So the same calling process that we taught earlier is the exact same calling process that you can use here. And you can either call them as soon as they say yes or text them a little bit, qualify them with some questions, just like we taught earlier, and then call them. And then also, you could use this outside of paper show. Like one of the big things that we used to do in our agency is we would always kick off the first 30 days with this campaign, this, ex this exact campaign, because what would happen is you would get your clients a lot of quick wins. Now, I promise you guys, this campaign is proven to work. I've, I've ran it in different niches. I've ran it for agencies. I've ran it for coaching programs. I've ran it for local businesses. So if you're like, Joel, I have no idea how to get clients results. You can literally just steal this campaign word for word, use it with clients that do have a database. They do need to have it leads, right? To, to reawaken and you guys will be able to instantly get your clients great results. Now, the only warning is the clients do need to have a database. And if they don't, then it's like, cool, let's do ads, <laughs> which we talked about earlier. Um, but this will give you a very quick win. And then also I'll say one last thing here and I'll pass it back. Um, we're going to be also giving you giving away our Google review version of this. So right now, this one is based on reactivating leads to generate appointments again and generate business for the business. We also have a version of this campaign where the only goal of it is to generate more Google reviews. So you guys can also use exactly what Aaron is teaching you to plug and play either of both campaigns to get your clients great results with a proven uh, campaign with a proven method that we've, uh, we've used in multiple niches, multiple industries, so on and so forth. All right, back to you, Aaron.
Sorry, I want. I don't right. know why my brain was like, I gotta make that point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's point well taken because, like, it's my ADHD. So people don't realize there's millions of dollars worth behind what we're teaching right now, and it just we're just casually going through it like it's just you know just random. But there are hundreds and thousands of agencies that has proven what we're teaching right here on this reactivation. I promise you that. Um, and most high level agencies differentiated themselves in the early days by launching these while they were getting approved on Facebook ads and Google ads and everything. Because it used to take like four days to get approved and it takes three days to build it out. So then all of a sudden you have seven days of window after your client has paid and onboarded, just waiting for you to launch. So these are things that you should pre-build uh, just to have as like ramp up quick win experiences for your customers. Uh, back into the workflow, Aaron. All right, cool. So now... Again, what I'm going to do is we send out the day two SMS. And now again, we want to wait. We want to waste some time, wait for reply. Now, I, I built all this out already, right? And I could go do it again, and that'll take time. But what Hilo has in here, which is really cool and convenient, I'm going to come up to, actually, we're going to start with the wait step. I'm going to click on the three dots here. I'm going to say copy all actions from here. I'm going to put it down here. Now that takes that entire branch and puts it down here, and now I just make the modifications. So that's how we're going to build this out even quicker. Is that new? So in here, uh, no, it's been there for. <laughs> cool. I've been, been there for. I'm telling you, I'm not a tech yeah. Joel. I just you can copy a single action and move it, or copy all actions from in there below. You can also move. So if I want to move this whole branch or move a certain action to a certain spot, you can do that. That just helps building your workflows that much quicker. Very cool. And I know you can transfer traffic from one workflow to another workflow by assigning traffic that way too, right? Uh, yes. If we One of the actions in here is actually called uh, add to workflow. So okay. you can they get to this step, add them into another workflow. Okay. Or when they get into this step, maybe remove them from another workflow. So the reason you want to do that, the remove from workflow, this would be, say they fill out the ad with your, your form, name, email, phone. Now you're sending them nurture sequence over several days and say they book a call during that time. Well, now you don't want them getting automated messages of saying your call's coming up, but then the nurture sequence saying, make sure you book a call, make sure you book a call. So once they book a call in the workflow, you'll have a step that removes them from the nurture sequence. Very cool. All right, so we're gonna come down here and then I believe in this one was just, yeah, so then, to and now we're going to wait till Monday. So, what we can do here, it just, it's like you could do like three days later. Well, actually, we got another way, another way to do that. Um, oh, yeah. So, we got to select, select this and then we're going to do a timeout of say, in this case, yeah, three days later. And that's the window, right? So, if they do respond during that time, it'll just trigger off versus keeping them there for three days, no matter what happens. Correct. It's the wait step and is waiting for the contact reply. And that's why you choose that SMS from before. So the reply to that one. So when they reply, they'll go on to the next step, which is DFLs. If three days pass and they don't reply, then they come here. And then again, it's going to be based on the condition, which if they don't meet either of these two, which is a positive reply or a negative reply, then they'll go down the number. But now here's another cool thing that high level has in, in workflows here. Because if I did this, now we get down here and let's make this day three. Say you wanted to keep going over several days. And if I were to take this and I copy all this and move down here, as you see, the workflow is going to start to get pretty big and crazy. But where there's a little issue that's going to come in is Whenever they're, this is all about getting them to reply yes or somehow reply for this offer. So what if you want to change up your confirmation message later on? You have to come in here and change this one out. You'd have to come down and change this one out. But let's avoid all that. So quick recap. If they don't reply, they're going to come down, they're going to get a day two message. And then say they do reply yes, well, what's going to happen? It's going to be the same thing on this branch. So I'm gonna delete this whole branch here, delete all actions from here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to use this handy dandy convenient action step, which is called go to. Save action. And I'm going to choose where I want it to go here. Ah, okay. So then so you have a double. Here. Okay. Yeah. So they, they get the day two text because they didn't reply to the first one. Finally, they reply yes. You're going to get here and it's going to take them up to the top here, create the opportunity, add tag, wait a minute, send a confirmation. Because the same actions are happening no matter what day they reply. And so I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to delete this, all of these. I'm going to add in a go to. Click save. And then you're going to choose which step up here. First one, yeah. So it basically three, yeah. one, one messaging for all that says yes. Right, because now I say I want to change this up. I just got to change one spot. I don't have to go to all these other spots and change it and maybe miss one. All right. And so then you keep going and keep going and you can make this almost yeah. as big as you want. So give me, a, give me a one in the chat and the Facebook streaming if this has been helpful, just going over the workflows, even just in general, like. I just want to make sure you all appreciate what we're doing. This is a lot of time and effort just sharing some of these things and built on a lot of IP behind several agencies, just FYI. I think um, also um, a lot of people are asking about the snapshots. On the end of day four, we're going to give you guys everything for free. Again, no pitch, no asks. At the end, we're going to give you guys all the snapshots. We're going to give you guys my 10 best courses for free at the end. So just because it's going to be a lot to do it as we go through this. So we're going to have all the snapshots, all the, we're even going to have a resources folder with everything else that we covered. Yeah. As long as you have a high level account. Yeah, you will need, <laughs> yes, yeah, you will need a high level to import all these resources. As long as uh, it won't work for it. Let's keep going. Let's go. Yeah, let's keep going. Paul's, Paul's in a Santa Claus. <laughs> no, no, no. When you give away the iPhone, you will become the Santa Claus, my friend. <laughs> All right. Fair, fair enough. I got you. <laughs> but anyways, All right. uh, go ahead, Aaron. Sorry, okay. All right. So this is pretty much set up. Um, now you can add in more actions. Say if they reply something other than yes, you can maybe, maybe uh, create an opportunity, uh, move them to like maybe there's an, another stage that's replied. Um, so you can, you can do that. A number of different things. This is more of just kind of the basic to get it set up. Uh, and then, so I, I'm not necessarily going to go through and edit all of these now for the day four or anything. That you can come in and do that, and we're, we'll have this all avail available for you. But I just want to show the main structure of it and give you some tips on how to use workflows because workflows, in my opinion, are it's the, the most powerful feature at level. It's the engine, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so a couple things in here, I'm going to go over to the settings. In this case, there's stop on response. You want to make sure this, in this case, you need to have it off. If you turn this on, it's not going to work. The reason why this, what the stop on response does is if they reply to any of the messages in this workflow. So if they reply to here, or if they reply to this one, any of these, they will get removed from the workflow. So this is the time you want to have stop and response on is for a use case of, say you did the basic Black Friday one or, or the basic uh, database reactivation where you're not waiting for any replies, you're just sending it out on a standard wait period. And then you want to have a stop and response on. But if you ever have a, a workflow that has a wait for reply, well, you can't have stop and response, it's not going to work. It, they'll get removed and they won't go through that next step. The allow reentry, this is going to be, if they've already gone through the workflow, do you want them to be able to go through again? So this is going to be up to you. Uh, for example, if, say an ad's running, they fill it out, they go through the workflow. Say they go and see the ad again, they fill it out again. Do you want them to go through it again? Yes or no? That's up to you. Uh, and that's pretty, the other thing I'll turn on is mark conversations is red. Uh, this is for the automated messages that go out in the conversation section. They're not going to be marked, marked as unread, just so it cleans up your um, your conversation section a little bit more. 
now that's so that's that's the base that's the main thing for this workflow uh one thing that i i'll give a little advice on workflows may especially if you're new here gonna look can be kind of confusing and how do i build all this out what i've done well you get it is a snapshot so then you don't well, have to build yeah. it <laughs> but there's gonna be other workflows that you want to build out for you, <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> so what i'm getting at is just a real quick thing. It may sound very boring, and I understand that. It's not for you, your techie. But if you just come into workflows and you click on the trigger here, the reason that I know pretty much everything about workflows is because I've come in here and I've done this. And I also I teach it to, to people, especially in Joel's group. But if you were just coming here, spend maybe 15 minutes, click on the trigger, go through and look and see what are all your options in here. Even click into them and say, um, contact tag. Okay, there's filters here. What does that mean? Click on the filters. See what, what you can set up. I am telling you, if you just come through and look at all of the triggers, this will get your brain think uh, firing off on, oh, what can I do? Oh, when an order is submitted, okay, I can automate my business that way. When they start a lesson in a membership, okay, I can do some automations that way. Then the next step, I would go to the actions and do the same thing. Just go through and click each one, kind of familiarize yourself with what is possible with workflows. And then that way, when you're going through your your day-to-day -day actions and you're realizing, oh, I'm doing this all the time repetitively. Well, I remember there was that, oh, I can automatically add a note. Okay, let me go build a workflow out for it. Automate my business. And when you do that, then you can focus on what you do best, which is serving your clients. That's why I love automation so much. So you can have the day-to-day -day task taken off your off your plate and let the the system do it for you. So that's a little tip that I have. Go through the triggers, go through the actions, see what's possible, and that'll get your brain spinning. And to just a real quick to add, so whenever you guys are in the Facebook group, especially those of you that are part of the 70,000 agencies already in the high level family. When you see Sean coming at you live Monday through front Monday on a new video, the, some of those features are going right here and he's providing context really to new things that are coming. And right now we're at like, I don't know, four or 500 features. Our goal in 2024 is to get to like 2000 features and really move from like being like a CRM company to really being an operating system that gives you the freedom to build whatever you want. You just got Legos of different types of pieces and you can be very creative in creating the, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so the, our teams will continuously build things out as long as it's relevant. You can't just build that bunch of stuff for yourself and it doesn't matter to any other agency. So go to the ideas.gohighlevel.com board, put in your ideas of things that you would like to see built out. And really, we will take a look at it. Whether you're small, big, it doesn't matter. We'll check the relevance of it and actually build it out. Um, Aaron, also, anything like, else? Um, Paulson, I, I know it's very tempting to get confused with tech stuff always go back to first principles, right? Like this is very simple. Like, again, is it technically complex? Yes. But the overall strategy is simple. We're taking all of our clients leads. We're uploading them to high level and we're doing a blast to get people to respond to a new offer based on the text message that we've sent out. That's what's happening here. Um, and once they respond, we call them, get them scheduled, charge per short appointment. Because I know it could be really easy to get stuck in like the the weeds. So, yeah, go ahead, Joel. Uh, or Mike, you can just, or you can just call Aaron. <laughs> Mike, 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 call him. Yeah. Drop your phone number in the chat, Aaron. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay, then. I'm going to show just uh, three more minutes how you actually add people to to the workflow here. So first off, when you're done, you'll want to turn it on. So publish and save. And now we're going to go I'm going to back out of workflows. I'm going to go to my contacts. Now, there's several different ways you can add them, but I'm just going to show this way. So in here, now this is all mock data that I've, I've added in here. So don't worry, this is not real stuff. <laughs> but so these are mock co contacts in here. What you would do is you would get the con the contact list from your, your client and you would come into the contacts here, you click import, and then you would upload a file. It's gonna have to be a CSV file. And when you do that, you're gonna map all the fields. 
get all the contacts imported. Once they're imported, what you're gonna do is you're going to select all the contacts. So in this case, there's just, I think, 10 in this account. Um, I won't get into it, but there's a smart list. So you can come in, you can filter out and just pick specific people that you wanna send. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna select everyone here. And all you have to do is click on add to campaign or workflow. Click proceed, choose that workflow. And then now it's gonna be dependent on how big the list is. You probably don't wanna send them all at once if they have 20,000 people. Yeah. It's probably high for local business. But uh, <laughs> so in that case, you wanna do in drip mode. You have to name it. And then this is where you would choose when you want it to start. How big is the batch quantity? Maybe a hundred at a time, maybe wait two hours. And then you would click add to campaign, add to workflow. And then they'll start going through that workflow getting the messages sent out. Yeah. Quite often you want to match the hours of the business as well. If they're open from 11 a.m. to 3, then it doesn't make sense to run those while nobody's attending the phone calls. Like there's nuances that you'll find in certain industries as well. Yeah. And he's talking about right here, say they're open from 9 a.m. to 3.30 and you choose what days. So then say it gets to 3.30 on Wednesday and there's still more people, it will wait until Thursday at 9 a.m. and send the next batch out. That's what Paulson is getting at. Yep. Um, all right, Joel, is there anything else you wanted me to go over? That's, I think that's pretty much everything I had. I think, uh, no, so like just to recap guys, today we covered how to generate leads with ads for both Cairo and um, roofing. By the way, on the last day, I'm going to be giving out a free course on YouTube ads and TikTok ads. So that'll show you how you can take the exact same ads we showed you today for Facebook and run them on YouTube and on TikTok. We talked about lead gen. We talked about the model overall, how it works, how the pricing is set up, all that good stuff, wh why it's valuable, why we, why we recommend this model. And then also Aaron showed you guys how to reactivate leads um, if your clients already have a database of leads to reactivate. And this is, again, just a way to just grab low-hanging fruit. Instead of going out and paying for new leads, you're essentially taking leads you already have in your pipeline and reawakening them. So that's it for today. Um, day two, guys, we're going to go over... Just to give you guys a quick little teaser, we're going to talk about how to get clients for this offer through Instagram DMs, how to get clients for this offer through cold email, and how to get clients for this offer through um, paid ads. So we're literally going to show you two free prospecting uh, two free prospecting strategies that you guys can implement immediately to start getting clients, and one paid prospecting strategy that you can implement if you're ready to invest in your agency and move a little faster. We're going to break down everything. I'm going to show you guys how to send the DMs. We're going to break down conversations in Instagram. We're going to show you how to set up the cold email, how to send out the messages, the scripts. We're even going to show you the ads for pay per show, the, the funnel on high level. Everything that you guys need is going to be given to you tomorrow to start getting clients. So that'll be day two. Paulson, thank you so much for having me. For sure. Guys, sign up for high level, okay? Stop <laughs> messing around. Stop. <laughs> I, don't, I can't say it. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want to drop the B word. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the passion. Uh, I appreciate the passion. I know I'm, pre I'm pretty intense. Got, <laughs> it's like we're giving you guys all these things. Um, you, you do need the software to make all this possible. And uh, like we're being honest about it. Like, yeah, we obviously want you to sign up. Like I'm an ambassador for high level. I believe in high level. They've supported me and uh, had my back since they launched really. Like they were working with my agency as one of the first few agencies ever when it was literally just two-way text and email yeah. and like a basic CRM. <laughs> we're like, oh, you can drag stuff? It was, that was it. So um, yeah, but, I'm, I'm excited. That's good. So, but, you know, uh, Aaron, first of all, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Uh, Faisal as well, if you're watching, if you're still in the call, um, these guys have plenty of things to do um, and they're busy people. So appreciate you jumping into the call. 
Um, and if there's anything uh, people may ask, I'm sure you're active in the community as well. So feel free to reach out to them for whatever you need. Um, and they might be able to help you as well. So just one more time, if you are watching this and don't have a high level account, this will be limited to this workshop in order for you to get all the courses and all the snapshots, which is really the main thing is the snapshots. Um, you need to have a high level account. So go sign up. But anyways, we'll see you tomorrow and wish me best of luck when I stop this call so the recordings will start rendering properly. Uh, anyways, if it was helpful for you, give us a one as a thank you for day one in the Facebook. Yeah, drop a one in the chat. Yeah, or a, drop a one in the chat. Show some some love. Uh, this takes a lot of effort with our teams behind us. Jordan Matthias, he sat for like the entire time fielding. He is everybody. crushing it. <laughs> He's like, he re guys, guys we sa I said to people, we're giving away all the courses, all the snapshots, <laughs> all the resources on Thursday. You guys keep asking him in the comments, when are we getting the courses? And he's so nice. He keeps answering Thursday. I know. Jordan's Thursday. like super professional. In, you know, so I appreciate you, Jordan. Um, Ethan as well. I'm sure Ethan will be uh, in one of the calls as well. But anyways, we'll see you tomorrow. Same link. I'm really excited to bring Isaac Rubel to, okay. uh, the, uh, to the Zoom. Welcome he's, in, Isaac. He's uh, a legend. He's a legend <laughs> when it comes to advertising. And on top of that, uh he gives everything he just, he's just like me he gives literally everything away for free so if, today we're gonna try to show you guys how to do advertising for your own agency in an hour it's it's hard you guys are essentially like that, that could be an entire course but yeah. if you guys want more isaac also gives everything away for free on his youtube you guys can always go check that out so Isaac, before, so Isaac, before you get before you get started uh sorry i didn't mean to cut you off joel but before you get started just so everybody understands we're going to go over multiple cold strategies today. So ads, Instagram, well, DMs, and multiple. We're going to do ad, ads is not necessarily cold. I would okay. say it's kind of like right, right. lukewarm. Right. And then, and then we're going to go over uh, next will be cold email and last will be Instagram DMs. So there's three big things that we're going to cover in how to create a world of inbound leads. Okay. So stay tuned. This call is going to take a few hours. Go get your lunch, sit back, turn off all your browsers. Don't get distracted because these tradings are worth millions of dollars. Um, I kn I've known Isaac for many years, actually. And uh, Isaac was like one of my guys that I would reach out to when something drastically goes wrong in our ad account. Like we're spending a couple of hundred thousand dollars and all of a sudden an ad account goes down. Isaac is like the person I would reach out to in the middle of the night. And he would like literally reach back out and help out, never ask for any money, never ask for anything in exchange. And I also consider Isaac as a good friend uh, in the online space. Um, Joel, thanks for bringing him on. And he's part of your coaching programs and he scaled hundreds and hundreds of agencies. And he's kind of the machine behind a lot of the ads for uh, Joel, as well as a lot of his other programs. All, the, all that, I would say 90, well, I don't know the exact stats, so I don't want to <laughs> say something that's not the case but a lot of the agency ads that you guys see on your feed are either written from isaac yeah taken from isaac <laughs> or being run by isaac all right jo joel said joel said license when we were talking about youtube license is a nice way of saying <laughs> a lot of them would get it. taken but yes yeah, <laughs> a lot of ads originate from uh from stuff i've written but um, pleasure to see you again, Paulson. It's been a while since we talked. Nice to see yeah, you. yeah. Welcome in. What's your story? Just so you know, folks that don't know you have a little bit of a background. Give us a thirty second rundown of how you got started. Yeah, maybe thirty seconds because we got a lot to cover. Yeah, yeah. I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Uh, so, brief rundown of me. Um, basically, all I've done since twenty fourteen is run ads. That's basically it. Um, I've worked out a little bit. Uh, I've gone outside a couple times. Joe actually keeps like a lock on my door. I'm not like allowed to leave, but like all I've done since 2014 is run ads. A lot of those years were spent running ads specifically for agency owners. Um, so not only do I run a lot of ads, but I run a lot of ads specifically for agencies. And also I've coached God knows how many agencies with an agency lab on how to Thousands. run ads. Thousands. So yeah, <laughs> I, I'm like the closest thing you can get to an AI that's trained on B2B agency ads. Um, 
over the over the years, I, I pretty much I have ve- most of my clients that I have taken on and actually ran their ads for them. Almost all of them hit 100k months within their first 30 to 60 days, and there's a reason for that. Um, and it, I'm going to teach you guys exactly how I'm doing that in these ad accounts. Paid ads are an expensive way to get clients. They're more expensive than some of the other methods that are probably going to be taught on this call. It is pay to play. But the benefit of it is if you are ready for that type of traffic, if you're ready for that sort of volume, you can scale very, very quickly, especially using some of the the you know templates, overall guidelines I'm going to give you. So um, with the right methods, you can scale very, very quickly with paid ads. Um, so if you have a sales team ready to go, you have a solid offer ready to go, you have proven systems, you're ready to onboard a bunch of clients, paid ads are really the only way to do it. Also, you might want to get one of these. That's that's a uh, steam sauna. The reason for that is like, if you get an ad account banned, you hop in that. That's like the emergency, <laughs> like it, it just relaxes you. And then you can go back, you can talk to the Facebook <laughs> rep for like an hour and actually like get it handled. Is that um, the is that the two hundred dollar one from Amazon that everybody keeps talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I have so many people telling me about that. <laughs> the new ones like cover your head. I'm like, I don't want my want my head in the steam. It's weird. <laughs> but well, um, running ads is stressful, so I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, but here, wait, let me pull up some stuff for screen share. Okay, so before, right before we jump in, hey, Isaac, screen. there's like. You could be talking about this for, you could create an entire course on this and yeah. people are actually going to be getting your TikTok ad agency course. That's one of the courses we're giving away and oh, your nice. YouTube ad agency course. So you guys are going to get two courses from Isaac. And if you, again, if you want more, even more nitty gritty on this, because we're trying to give you as much as possible, Isaac gives it all away for free. So. And, and by the way, if you don't have a high level account, you won't be able to get any of that. But yeah, so right before we jump in, The key thing with paid ads is you can't have any element of your ads that's extremely lacking. I get students on calls all the time where like their ads will look good. Like, oh, it's like a really cool video, but their offer sucks. So, or or like the vice versa, like great offer, but the ad is just like, you know, it was made on like Microsoft paint, like from like five years ago. So like (laughs) you have to have these, these key pillars to really get ads to work. But once those are in place, you can absolutely take over markets. The case study I'm about to show you guys and the full breakdown I'm about to show you is from the most saturated agency niche on the planet, chiropractors. Chiropractors. And (laughs) we went into this niche. We got, we were getting $30 meetings for the first few months. We're getting like 60, $70 meetings. Now these are long form survey submits. They schedule on the calendar. Um, He scales agency past hundred K in the first 30 days. He actually got to like 120K in the first 30 days, and he's well past that now. Um, so he already had an agency, just to give you guys some context. Yeah. He just was stuck, and then he scaled very fast. But it's Precisely. not like he, it wasn't from zero. He already had uh, an agency. Yeah, he had the systems in place. He was getting good results for his clients. He was doing, yeah, I believe he was doing email outreach was his main uh, acquisition. He had a few, little paid ads running. Um, but yeah, he was ready for ready to go for the traffic. So um, I'm going to break it down for you guys. We're just going to go step by step. I'm going to share my screen. Go for it. Okay. So the first thing you need to know about paid ads is how to target. This is going to vary from niche to niche. And I'll, I'll give you guys a brief rant about uh, what to do in every single niche. But first, I'll show you exactly what to do in Cairo. And then we'll extrapolate that out into every other niche. Um, Because every niche has its own unique targeting that works. Years ago, you could just upload a custom list and be like, good to go. Upload my list of emails and phone numbers. It's going to crush. I can scale it to 1K a day and just really run it up. Can't do that anymore. That only works in a couple niches now. It's actually the minority of niches that works in. So let's jump into this ad set first. You do CBO? Uh, ABO. Yeah. Let me break down settings first. I was going to do interest in settings, but let's just go through settings as we go. So, go so Isaac, before you go further into the nitty gritty details, um, can you give us like a range of cost of acquisition for an agency? Like what is the cost of acquisition that you should actually shoot for from a goal standpoint? And then let's get into the details of how to get there. It's going to vary from niche to niche. 
Um, on the cheaper end, I've seen acquisitions as cheap as like 100 to 150. That would be in like car detailing. Um, other niches, it's going to be more like in Cairo, usually it's going to be a few hundred, like three, four, 500 uh, to, to acquire a client. That, that's for retainers between like 1,500 and 2,500 monthly retainers. Your retainer price will obviously affect, you know. Uh, that being said, like, when I, when I was running ads, I was willing to break even on month one. So if I was getting paid 1500 from a client, I was willing to spend $1,500 to get one client and actually make zero money, but not lose money either. I was willing to just break even on month one, but now I've earned the client. I have them. Yeah. And as long as I can deliver results, I can keep scaling that. So I think like also, Isaac, maybe we could touch on this, like, for paid ad, like the reason we're also teaching you cold email and cold DMs is because if things go wrong, it's not like you lost money. Whereas with paid ads, you do have to be dialed in. Like it does require you to have your sales dialed in. It does require you to be ready to take on a lot of volume. A lot of agencies collapse when they don't, when they get a lot of appointments and they're not used to that. They're like, I don't know how to call the leads. What should I say? So it's like, it is pay to play. It is more advanced, but it's also what's allowed us to help 109 agencies scale to 100K a month. I'd say 90% of them were through paid ads. So um, again, my goal with this three-day workshop was to teach you guys everything. And then you guys have the power to decide, I'm going to start with cold email. I'll start with cold DM or I'll start with paid ads. Yeah. And in terms of the cost for acquisition breaking, even Joel's exactly right. Um, at lower budgets, you guys using these methods, you're probably going to be well below break even. You're probably going to be very profitable even on the front end of acquiring these. Um, but as you scale up, there was times in my agency personally that I would push massive scale on ads and, you know, it would cost more to acquire. We'd be breaking even, but we did acquire a ton of clients in a month and that's all profit month two, assuming your retention is even somewhat dialed in. If you're breaking even on the front end, guess what? Month two, month three, month four, month five, that is, it's all profit from there. So um, I don't think you guys will have to break even. You know, th these methods are, you know, very few people have things as dialed in as I'm about to show you, but you shouldn't be afraid to break even, especially at scale. Um, it, it's actually a hack to scale your agency really quickly. Also, Isaac, can you explain, I want you to just rattle out some niches that you've done this for. AKA all of them. Oh yeah. I mean, li <laughs> literally even as you can think of roofing, dental, Cairo, HVAC, um, plumbing works too. Did you do uh, something with insurance? If I can remember. Yeah. Wait, which insurance? Like life insurance or one of those. Yeah. yeah life insurance. You can acquire those guys really cheap. Um, mortgage, well, I've done real estate, real estate, uh, uh, investing as a separate niche. Um, Agency lawyers, <laughs> lawyers. I've done a ton of lawyers, but I've done Coaching immigration programs. lawyers, uh, uh, personal injury lawyers. Um, so it works. Your, guys. I, I don't know it, just, it works in it works in, it works in pretty much every niche that could be advertised to. If there's like yeah. th ten people in your niche, don't run ads. If you're like, I only work with Fortune 500 companies in the healthcare space, and there's like twenty of them. You don't run ads, you know? Yeah, that's LinkedIn if you're, stuff. If you're, yeah, if you're doing uh, any local business niche, you can pretty much, for so, the most so, part. Like, so let's get yeah, into literally, the... we've, we've literally ran ads for funeral homes, uh, agencies to get them appointments, mattress store agencies to get them appointments. So anyways, yeah, let's, let's break down an entire campaign, Isaac. Yeah. So I... Uh... First, let's go through the settings, then we'll go into um, interest. I like ABO. ABO means ad set budget optimization. Um, CBO is where you set the budget at the campaign level. So you're setting it here and it distributes the budget across all your ad sets. For That has some use cases. B2B is not one of them. ABO, where you set the budget here, is always going to outperform um, CBO uh, for B2B. Another important setting is um, this. For B2B, 
I have a very strong preference for running dynamic creative. And I'll show you exactly what that means here at the ad level. But um, with dynamic creative, the ads will outperform just making a bunch of individual ads uh, underneath the ad set. So pretty much always have dynamic creative turned on that automatically rotates through creatives that you feed Facebook and finds winners for you. It's cost wise, it'll often be similar to other types of methods. But the good thing about dynamic is it's very stable. Like once you find winners with dynamic, they tend to last a lot longer than um, putting multiple ads under underneath an ad set. So you have you'll get a lot more longevity out of it, which means less testing, which means less budget needed. Um, so it so reduces it's really ad fatigue. So it reduces ad fatigue essentially by having multiple yeah. layers of creative. So it'll run on its own essentially. Yeah, exactly. And for, for whatever reason, the way it rotates creatives is better than having multiple creatives underneath an ad set. I think it, when it has multiple creatives underneath an ad set, it, it like resets itself sometimes and it's not beneficial. Like it'll just like crash randomly. Whereas with dynamic, it just goes like it just goes like the only thing that kills a dynamic ad is like true ad fatigue. Like if the market's seen your ad too many times and it's time for new creatives, then, um, you know, dynamics will fatigue. Um, daily budget. So you want your daily budget for every single ad set to get you at least one meeting per day. Um, that's really the sweet spot. So let's what say do you mean your niche. What's up? Or what do meeting cost range in? What would you say is like an estimate? Generally, most people are going to pay between 40 and like 110, 120 per meeting. Harder niches are going to be on the upper end of that. Easier niches, like if you're, if you're doing real estate, let's say you're doing real estate and you're at lower scale, like you're at like mm, 500, 300 to 500 per day, you can get $30 meetings in that niche. But if you're in Cairo or if you're in dental, uh, dental especially, you know, you're going to probably pay 80 plus per meeting. Um, so you have to, you have to judge it off your niche. But you, you don't, what you don't want is your budget to be lower than your cost per meeting. Um, that's pretty, it never works as well. And um, it actually will raise your cost per meeting. This is a weird thing that Facebook does. Budget cheaper than, uh, budget spending less than cost per meeting, they raise your cost per meeting. So you get punished for having too low of a budget. So budget has to be at least one X your cost. You per can't meeting. find a person for that, that budget. What's up? Because if you have, if the cost per meeting is 60 bucks and you only have 40, then it can't even find a person that day. Yeah, it'll, it'll find a person every other day. And then Facebook's like, you suck, bro. You can't even find a person every day. Like turn that, turn those ads off. Um, so yeah, you have to have adequate budget. Um, schedule. I don't do any starter end dates, just run it ongoing. Scheduling stuff with starting end dates generally is not good. Um, run ads all the time, never put a schedule on it. That'll always mess you up. Um, oh, this is important. People often, uh, leave out Canada on ads. Um, there's no reason to do this. If your niche is in Canada as well, think about how many agency owners forget to target Canada. Like a lot of them. Um, what so, about Australia and like UK and stuff? The first, yeah, you can things. you can do those as well. I've had Cairo agencies that uh, hit the UK and US, and they you know you can get cheaper meetings if you're able to hit those countries. You have to work around time zones, obviously, but um, if you can hit them, absolutely, because the competition in these countries is like it's like nothing. Yeah. There's no competition basically compared to the US, where there's a lot of agencies. Just to add a few note here, the ads that we went through yesterday is for your client fulfillment. The ads that we're going through right now is for yourself as an agency for client acquisition. Okay. Another thing to pay attention to these numbers that we're talking about, $120, $250 meetings, that is not the same thing as the way you would calculate client acquisition costs because client acquisition costs need to be you know considered with the cost of appointment setter amount of hours spent cost of show multiple other variables that we're not talking about we're simply just talking about essentially a lead cost that is accurate not, instead of just anything and every everything 
and and I did warn you guys yesterday, like the if you guys are starting out brand new, you can always go and check out our 10 day course that we did with high level that's more foundational. It's on YouTube, either my channel or high level's channel. Just literally look up Joel Kaplan high level 10 day course. For now, we wanted to dive right in and literally get into advanced topics where we show you guys the nitty gritty, which is what I feel is missing in 99% of courses anyways. It's like, okay, show me step by step. So, yeah. all right, keep going. Yeah. So, yeah, all these stats and all these methods are very different from local. Like if you're running ads for your clients, like B2C, um, these methods won't work. And also these costs are going to be much higher. So you can't. It exactly what Paulson said, like you don't want to reference them uh, against each other. Um, Canada, US, other countries, if you can, age 25 plus, I mean, it, it just depends. You can go a little bit lower with age, but F Facebook's really just going to probably, especially for something like chiropractor, it's going to optimize for the higher age ranges anyway. So it doesn't really matter what you do there. Um, most niches, I just put 25 plus. Um, 65 plus, uh, if it's like a non- um, if it's a non like contractor niche, like for example, there's probably not too many 70 year old roofers, but th there's some like 65 year old chiropractors, like people do some of these businesses into their older years. So like you can do 65 plus for uh, some medical niches, especially. Okay, so here is the targeting. Um, I'm going to do two things here. First, I'm going to break down what I'm doing for chiropractors. So for this specific client, then I'm going to break down, I'm going to do a quick rant about like what works and what niches. So I'll try to hit most of the big niches for you guys. There's a lot of niches out there, but I'll go off my knowledge base and try to give you guys exactly what targeting uh, you should use. Okay, so this ad set, as you can see, is titled Narrow Interest. Narrow Interest includes things like job titles, fields of study, and schools attended. Um, it will also include interests that don't have a ton of reach. You'll notice my estimated audience size is below a million here. Um, the other ad set, the broad one, will be bigger because I include a lot of broad reaching interest. What fields of study are schools attended and job titles? These are actually what they list on their Facebook profile. So if somebody says, like, I studied in chiropractic school on their Facebook profile, they will fall under this targetable category. Um, same thing with job titles, same thing with schools attended. The problem is, if you just do those hyper narrow ones, the audience size is often too small. It'll be like 30K, 40K. That'll work for some very low budgets, but Facebook, the way the algorithm works now, and this is subject to change, but it's been like this for a while, they like bigger audiences. They actually want you to target people who are not chiropractors. Why? Don't know, but it works better that way. The way it optimizes is it'll look at your ads, it'll look at who watches the ads, and it'll look at who you're calling out in the ads, and it'll find chiropractors within this larger segment. Um, some people will be like, I don't believe you. I'm going to go test the 30K audience with just fields of study, job titles, schools attended. It's, you, you'll, you'll see fairly quickly what your meeting cost comes out to be. It's not going to be good. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's go through these. Fields of study. You can see all these first ones are fields of study. Here's a school attended. The way you know it's a school attended is if it's actually under the school category. Sometimes you'll see a college but it's not under the school category. That's actually an interest targeting. Um, yeah, it's actually an interest. So there's two types of schools, um, but this is a school attended. School attended, school attended, work. I will include work. Um, now you'll notice this is an employer category. Why do I include this? Employer, doctor of chiropractic doesn't mean doesn't that mean like an employee? Doesn't that mean like someone who's working underneath the doctor of chiropractic? You would think, but the reality is people build their Facebook profiles really fast. When you start a Facebook profile, you just click on shit, kind of. Um, most people are like, yeah, chiropractic, click, click, click. They will often list themselves as employees of chiropractors, even though they are a chiropractor. So it's important to include these employer categories here. Um, 
Isaac, can you speak to the different types of targeting? So like, I know there's different costs associated with like interests versus behaviors versus demographic versus financial actions. Like, can you speak a little bit to that on like, what's the cheapest versus the most expensive? Yeah, so a, a lot of those don't really apply to B2B too much, like the different okay. financial stuff, the different demographics. Um, the, the only real categories for B2B are the following. Fields of study, schools attended, job titles, schools as interest, and then plain broad interest. Um, the cost, the cost don't really matter because you, you want to combine them all. Like I'm, I would never tell someone just to build an ad set of job titles and fields of study. Um, it's too, too narrow. narrow, too narrow. Yeah, right? it's too narrow for most niches. Yeah. You kind of have to combine them into like what you're seeing in front of you right now, like this conglomerate, narrower interest ad set where I'm doing all the job titles, all the fields of study, all the schools, and then I'm throwing in a few more broad interests, but still not too broad because like our our audience size is still sub 1 million. Um, you want to combine them. And I'll go on a rant after uh, this breakdown on like what to do for each niche. Um, like, for example, like real estate, I don't do job titles at all. I, there's no like schools attend or fields of study for real estate. Real estate is all interest targeting. Um, and for example, some niches, uh, if you're going into a niche that no one's heard about, and if, you've, you, if you're lucky enough to have found one of those that's viable, you can actually use the custom list, the, the uploading the emails, uploading the phone numbers. That works really well when the niche has never been hit by, before by ads. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, gotta do do enough, you, you all have to do enough research in your industries. The things that we're teaching are principles and pillars that you want to take. Like back when I had my dental agency, I paid like an email data broker to find the data of current residents in dental schools. So then two years later, those guys became doctors and practice practitioners. So then I would, I would literally, like if we're in 2023, I would find the data of folks that were residents in 2019. Because in three years, they're tired of the first job they got and they're thinking about starting a new clinic. So then we would just blast them and kind of bring people in. So you have to be creative, kind of do your own research and find the pillars that make sense for you out of the things that we're teaching. Go ahead, Isaac. I don't mean to interrupt you. Just get excited. No, you're good. And that's the same logic I use behind why I target schools attended. Because a lot of people that, fall under that category aren't chiropractors yet like they're in these schools um but like they see your ads they graduate they see your ads again yep. okay well i you know i need patients for you know this this new clinic i've either started or i'm working on so like similar logic there as well um so everything i've shown you guys so far is is very narrow job titles now as we get to the end of these interests we're actually going to start getting broad so if you look at if you wait how do Where's the reach? It's supposed to show up. There we go. If, if you look at me hover over these, look at the size, 6,000, 8,000, very small. It's because it's a job title. As we go into interest, look at the reach. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, I are... see a lot of you guys asking like life insurance, so like real estate. This is where you guys need to think and be entrepreneurs and be like, okay, what interests can I search for relevant to my niche, right? Like, we're giving you guys the frameworks. Again, this is me sharing what you guys need to hear and what you want to hear out of love to help you guys succeed. But if 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 we're if we went niche by niche, we would be here for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Another another one I would target is like licenses. Like if you're targeting nurses, they have to pass the NCLEX. If you are targeting lawyers, they have to pass the bar. Like there are even more targeting that you can get creative with, just FYI. Yeah, and that uh, interesting note on that, ChatGPT is actually pretty good at finding um, unique angles to target from an interest side of things. So one one case study for that, um, there was the auto, auto repair uh, niche. Um, I actually targeted a lot of the brands of the cleaning products that auto repair shops use. And you, yeah. they were, you could find them within the interest area on Facebook, surprisingly. Um, and I mean, I got meetings in that niche like for like $9. Like it was like $9 meetings. <laughs> Crazy. Um, but so when I'm hovering over these, 
data is glitching right now, but these are actually very broad. Um, these are like a few hundred thousand uh, reach. If I were to remove these, it would cut this reach down by a lot. Yeah. Um, so your narrow ad set, this is an ad set I like to use in a lot of niches, is narrow interest. This includes the job titles, fields of study, schools attended, um, employers, and then throw in a couple broad interest directly related to your niche. You'll notice these interests are directly related to Cairo. If you look up these colleges, these are chiropractic dominant universities. Um, within your narrow interest ad set, you don't want to go broad. So that'll be the next ad set we go into is going to be the broad one where it's like, okay, now we're targeting like these very big segments of, of people. Um, but for your narrow, you want to keep it narrow generally. Um, let's scroll down. Uh, manual placement. Okay. So this, this is very important. Um, if you're running videos versus images, you want to have two different placement profiles here. So once you reach the section, if you're just doing images, do Facebook feed and Instagram feed. That's really it. You can test some of the other square image placements here, but I've run a lot of ads. Almost all of the results come from these two. Um, you can test these other ones in the future, but starting off, if you want to spend your money with the highest chance of success, Facebook feed, Instagram feed. Now, um, if you are running videos and if you're running videos, quick note, it should be vertical. Uh, none of you should be running horizontal videos in 2020. We're going to 2024. All of your video ads for, uh, all your video ads should basically resemble TikToks. And I'll show you an example of video ad here in one second. Um, there's almost no reason to run horizontal ads B2B on Facebook anymore. Um, the stories and the reels are too good of placements to just run a horizontal video. You want that vertical format. Um, you can also turn on this. You can also turn on this. I've recently had a lot of success with this. It didn't used to work as well, but randomly it kind of works. So the, if you're running videos, you can also turn on uh, this placement. Yeah. Um, Another thing I want to add here, Isaac, is going back to that placement, if you don't mind. So yeah. you, you all need to step back for a quick second and look at the the macro environment of social media. So when TikTok came out, guess what? They're destroying destroying CTRs of all the other platforms. They're getting engagement like crazy. So like all of a sudden, Facebook is going to figure out how do we compete with TikTok? YouTube is going to try to figure out how to compete with TikTok. So you'll see platforms launching new things like YouTube recently launched Shorts. Um, Facebook re recently launched video-oriented Reels. So like pay attention to the grand scheme of things of how platforms are competing with each other. And that'll also give you testing ground. So like, I remember when Canvas picture ads came out. I remember when story ads first came out. Those are time, those are areas that you want to test out, especially if a new feature comes out on a platform, because they're more than likely going to push it because they want to compete and figure it out. And that's if you have extra money, just FYI. Don't go wasting money on new stuff. That's if you have extra few dollars here and there, you want to test it out. Look at the new things the platform is actually launching and drop dollars there. It probably will give you a lot of reach. Yeah, guys, any anything new that gets released, I, I try to stay on top of running it. Um, I'm literally waiting for Hulu ads to release landing pages as a feature because they can't they don't allow landing pages right now. Um, but like as soon as new stuff is released, you have like almost, to be quite honest, it's almost an entire year um, where you're like the only one doing it. Um, we, to my knowledge, which is we, insane. we filmed like me, I, I filmed and Joel, uh, gave me, gave me the idea and we worked on it together to film the first local ads program for TikTok, And we were getting like dollar 50 implant lead cost, like, uh, oh for, for God. a dentist, like That's it was insane. crazy. It was absolutely crazy. And it, and it lasted for like a year. And I mean, it was even, even after like a year, it was still much cheaper than other platforms. Um, so if you can be early, take the knowledge you learn from, you know, th th this type of knowledge where you build the foundation. And if you can be early to anything, um, yeah, do it because it's always really cheap. Um, 
Okay. By the way, I want to say one more thing. Um, I don't want to shamelessly plug Isaac, but Isaac does have an entire ads breakdown for other niches as well. I know you guys are asking about other niches. Part of me wants to tell you guys, hey, also take what you're teaching and really think how can I make this work for myself? Because there's going to be a moment in time that Isaac can't help you. But Isaac also does have a lot of other niches on the internet already covered. So yeah, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's some very unhinged videos talking about exactly what to do in like at least like six niches now. So um, yeah, you can go over there and check it out. I break down like full B2B and B2C uh, for those industries and offers as well. Uh, so, um, okay. So we just targeted, we just covered the narrow interest ad set. Now I'm going to cover broad interest. By the way, Isaac, we should probably go a little faster. Okay. Heads, yeah. heads up. Okay. Broad interest is an exact duplicate of your narrow interest. So narrow interest, hit duplicate, that's your broad. What you're going to do though, is on top of your narrow interest is add a bunch of really broad interest as well. So here I'll find some for you guys that I've put on here. Okay, health and wellness, medical education, medicine. Uh, so the million dollar, I mean, a million dollar, the, the, the sub million audiences, those you consider as narrow. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so yeah. then above 100 million or plus, or maybe 50 million is what you're considering to be broad. What I'll do, what I'll do is every niche has interest has interest of different sizes. For example, in real estate, almost all the interests are pretty big. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll look at all the available interest and I'll mark an arbitrary center point. I'll be like 50% of interest fall above this reach, 50% of interest fall below this reach. Let's say it's 500,000. My uh, broad ad set will include all of it. Like it'll include all the more narrow sub 500,000 and all the above 500,000 and my narrow will only include the sub 500,000. Um, so it, it is arbitrary, but what you're doing is you're giving diversity to Facebook to find winning segments in different types of audiences. Um, like these both, uh, were performers, like 128 meetings, 91 meetings over their lifetime. Like they both, like you can see even the broad, like a lot of people in their intuition, they'd be like, oh, you know, broad is probably um, more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But like it's we, cheaper. we, yeah, it's cheaper. So um, giving the algorithm breathing room. Exactly. And what you want to do when you're trying to, cause like you guys are going to have to brainstorm, like what interests match your niche. Here's how I look at it. You have interests that are exactly matching your niche, right? So like some of those schools, from the narrow interest. Um, if there's an interest called like, there used to be interests that were actually like chiropractic. They removed <laughs> yeah. all those, but there actually used to be like narrow interests that were exactly the niche. Those go in narrow. Um, but then when, you, when you're thinking about what to do for your broad one, you can kind of go a little bit outside of your niche. So I like to think here's Cairo, what niches lie immediately outside of Cairo? So like the general medical world, alternative medicine, pain management. Yeah. Those are things that they may not be Cairo, but they're close enough. And they're close enough that when you build good ads and you let the Facebook algorithm do what it needs to do, it'll find chiropractors within those segments. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay. And those of you that just joined in, we're talking about client acquisition for your agency through paid ads right now. Keep going, Isaac. Let's move fast. Yeah. Okay, so next I'm gonna give a brief rundown of what to do in most niches. So in terms of targeting, real estate is all interest. If you're anything in real estate, it's all interest targeting. Um, even lookalikes don't perform that well in real estate. It's, it's all interest targeting if you're gonna be running ads. Mortgage is a combination of interest and lookalikes. Dental is all narrow targeting. It's all narrow targeting lead forms only. And you have to turn off the reach expander 
The reach expander you'll find here, it's only on lead formats. That's the only way to not get any B2C traffic through dental funnels right now. It's weird. Um, what other niches? Uh, roofing, uh, all interest to start, then you can expand into lookalikes. If you're in any niche that is brand new, like if you're in something weird, if you're in like tripod sales for a local business, you know, you know tripod sales, whatever, uh, custom list, you, you'll find work very well, but only in untapped niches. Most custom list means I use scrape. And guys, again, I know this advanced stuff. If you're like, what is going on? <laughs> We're trying to teach you guys an entire seven figure business in three days. That's what's going on. <laughs> guys want more context go back and watch the 10-day course but a custom list means that you scrape so you grab a database of emails and phone numbers of tripod sales businesses all in, all across the united states and you can upload that and run ads to that data as yeah. a custom audience as opposed yeah. to targeting interests and only do that in untapped niches if, if you're so in don't a niche, do that in dental yeah if you're a niche cairo dental Real estate, mortgage, uh, the you know, interest uh, targeting is good enough. Yeah. Interest targeting is where you're going to find almost all of your results come from. The vast majority of my, my campaigns are carefully selected interest targeting, like I've shown you here. Um, you want to narrow and you want to broad. That's a good start. Once you get some data, you can expand it into open targeting, meaning no targeting. Um, once your pixel learns, you can expand into just open. That often works. Uh, you can also expand into lookalikes, but lookalikes don't, lookalikes are hit or miss. Um, that's why I recommend for most niches, you're going to want to start with just interest targeting. No lookalikes, no custom list, just interest. Once you get it working, once your offer is proven, then expand into lookalikes, then expand into open, but start with the interest for most of you, the vast majority of you. Okay. Let's go through the rest fast. Okay. Here's you want to have, can you explain what, can you explain the campaign objective, by the way? Yeah. So um, for, for this niche, it's conversion because uh, we're running to a funnel. Um, the actual conversion event. So in this case, schedule takes place on the thank you page. A lot of people always ask me, like, do I make the conversion count after they become a lead after they schedule? When do I make it count? You want it to count on the thank you page. You don't want to fire the conversion event on leads. You, you can try it. I've seen people do it. It sometimes works. It's much more reliable to have it fire on the very final step of the funnel. Um, beyond that, yeah, it's a conversion campaign, never traffic. Some You can do lead forms as well. Just be aware there's a quality issue sometimes with lead forms. Also with lead forms, uh, make sure you set it to English only. Lead forms will preferentially, preferentially target people who speak other languages who fill out a lot of lead forms. Why that is, don't know, but make sure you select English only if you're doing lead forms. It's very important. Um, now, if you're testing for the first time ever, do you recommend starting with lead forms before pushing into conversions or a funnel or landing page or something, or do you not care? I would start with lead forms. Um, it, here's, here's what I'll say. If you're copying someone who's proven, like if you go into a niche and you look at roofing and you're on like an ad spy tool and you're looking at like the top guy and they're all running survey ads, right? Like you look at all the top people in the ads library and they're all running a survey lander. Run a survey lander. You can do it like just logically if everybody's doing it and they're all currently spending on it, that's the type, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Like you don't really have to question if that's gonna work. Just mimic what they're doing closely. Obviously change the copy, make it look different, but like mimic the structure. Um, if you're unsure, or you're very unexperienced with setting up landing pages, uh, then use lead forms, right? Like if, if there's not a, if there's not a, um, I'm trying to, the term I want to use is meta, like in video games where there's like the top characters that people pick, but like if there's, um, if there's not a thing that everybody's doing, uh, then use lead forms. But if there's a very reliable, like, Hey, everybody in this niche is using survey landers, just use survey landers. You can, it's reliable enough just to look at what other people are doing. Okay. So Let's you want to have actual. one, uh, you want to have one ad set for, uh, you want to have one ad set for the um, narrow and one for broad, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. One ad set for your narrow interest, one ad set for your broad. Once you start scaling, you can then test open and lookalikes. Yep. And don't, okay. don't forget behind these ads, 
there are obviously automations and typically built on high level and systems like that. And then there's also tracking. So you're tracking, attributing a certain source. So whether you do Google ads, TikTok, Facebook, it doesn't matter. You still need to figure out and understand how to track the traffic that is incoming into your business. Um, Isaac, can you, before you go to the next item, can you speak a little bit to the monthly budget that someone should kind of have in their pocket before they can go straight to paid ads for their agency? Or is it more? Yeah, I would look to spend, if it's a cheaper niche, if, if it's a like a very cheap niche, like if it's like real estate or if it's a niche that you know for a fact you can get like 30 to $50 meetings, I'd probably budget out $100 per day um, for paid cool. ads. That, that'll that give you some wiggle room. That'll give you some testing room. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to be safe, $100 per day. Um, if it's more expensive, like if you're going into Cairo, if you're going into dental, um, probably $150, $200 daily is what I budget out. And you will, you'll spend more budget up front testing in the first like 48 to 72 hours. So be prepared to do that. And then you can dial it down into a coasting pace where um, you can just let things run for a little while without really changing too much. And and Joel, a question for you on this note, at what phase should the agency be at? Should they already have an appointment setter by then? Should they have their own closer? Can they handle all this by themselves? Like where should they be in the growth stage? It just depends. Like if you want to get a lot of at-bats and get a lot of reps in, then I think you can, and if you have the budget to play with, then you're essentially investing to accelerate you figuring everything out. Um, as a rule of thumb, I recommend beginners to start with cold email and uh, cold DM. Uh, that being said, once you are consistently getting clients through cold email and cold DM, I highly push everyone to transition to paid ads. Yep. This is way more scalable. Yeah. Um, okay. So th these are the ads. These are the ads for this specific campaign. I want to break down a couple key components of this. Um, and by the way, one, this is this campaign is for pay per show. So everything we've been talking about yesterday, again, if you didn't watch day one, you're, you're going to be confused. This is going to be for the, you don't pay us a single dollar to get started. No retainer, only pay after you get paid through the prepaid patient model. So everything we showed you guys how to do yesterday for your clients, this is where this aligns. Yep, exactly. And yeah, different niches have different offer requirements. Like chiropractors, you have to have, you need an advanced offer when you're going into chiros. You can't, you can't go into chiros and be like 10 leads guaranteed. It's not like you're going to pay like 500 per meeting. Um, oh, but man. if you go into a new niche, if it's like something very unusual, you can actually get away with that. I, I tell people like start at the offer that's most appropriate for where the niche is at saturation wise. So like if it's very saturated, you got to start with something, you got to do something like this. If it's uh, very unsaturated, you can start with something more basic. Um, it just depends. So a couple of key components of this ad. Um, copywriting is kind of fake for b2b uh, like you don't have to be some like extremely advanced copywriter for b2b um people just want to know what do you mean by fake what well, okay like so, you don't need to be you don't need to be like a crazy it you could be just like fake the offer yeah like you you don't need to get on here and use some 20 paragraph storytelling bridge after bridge style like uh copywriting technique you'll actually get worse results with that because business owners are busy. Like they, they're not going to read 10 paragraphs about the story of, of Bob, mm. the chiropractor who scaled his clinic from, you know, a penny a day to $20 a day, whatever. Like those type of copyright, that stuff works really good for info products. If you're doing info products, hell yeah. Like do that type of stuff. Um, but for, for B2B, you want to be clear with your offer. You want to state it early and you want to you want to be very concise with your ad so copy. business owners are busy and they're like what am i going to get is this something that i'm interested in? yes or no yeah no fluff like your copywriting should be clean and to the point that's what i prioritize over everything else like when you see this like when you if you if you just read this it instantly like you just know what it's about like you know what it's about 
no, it's not about leads and appointments. You get this instead. Like it, it's very like within two seconds of looking at it, it conveys to you what the offer is and what they're getting. Um, also the, the, the beginning of these, I write them like hooks. Um, I, I have one in dental right now that says something like all the years you spent in dental school were a complete waste and you wasted your money. <laughs> something like that. Like that's the first line. It's like, what? <laughs> like if you're a dentist and you see, you're like, what the hell would what, what, you say to me? So like you, you want to use the beginning part is like a hook and then bring them into the offer quickly. So first part hook, um, Next part, like state the offer. And th this is like very clear. It's like in the next 30 days, me and my team will fill your practice with prepaid financially qualified chiropractic patients. And that's not even the crazy part. So like, what's the crazy part? Like that sounds pretty crazy already. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do this for free. Like in the first two lines, we already told them we're gonna fill their practice for free. So yeah. um, you want your copy to be concise, hard hitting, very clear to the point direct. That's what works in B2B. Um, the rest of this, uh, there's nothing fancy going on, a check mark section listing benefits. Sometimes I'll have a list of X's that throw stones, like no more tire kickers. Don't turn your you know front desk into telemarketers. Um, don't be afraid to uh, be a little bit like, um, uh, what's the word? Disruptive. Yeah, disruptive. Like, like, don't be afraid to say some things that are a bit crazy. Because the thing is, everybody else is so vanilla who's seen my ad with obama on it like like i, I don't know but so like you, you really there's an yeah. ad there's an ad of isaac saying like i mean he said f obama but he wasn't talking about the politics he was talking about some after school lunch program that took away his favorite snack so it yeah yeah it was not like, it was not a political thing but it still got everyone like what is he talking about he was like yeah. f obama he took away my after school pro uh snacks program where they yeah. gave away like free Reese's pieces or something. Joel, Joel, you did the same thing to me on this workshop. The ads that you recorded, you were like, AI is dead. Uh, SaaS oh, is yeah, yeah. dead. I, Marketing I, 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 is dead. Do, Dude, I, the I, amount of people. Crazy hooks. <laughs> the people amount I literally said, I literally said in the ad, AI is dead. SaaS is dead. Marketing is dead. And it was like, now we're going to give birth to a new model where it combines all three. And then people were like, this guy said AI is dead. But I'm like, did you even listen to the rest of the ad? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had internal team members reaching out to me. Hey, can you tell Joel to not say SaaS is dead? Because it's not dead. I'm like, yes, yes. That is just disruptive is marketing. marketing. <laughs> yeah, I, we, I, I really, I'll, I'll give a shout out. One of the guys that I, I, I look up to, um, you know, a lot of people ask me like, who do you study? I actually really like Sabri Subi's ads. Re and then the Harmon brothers, like those two companies, like pr produce really interesting yeah. ads. Like there's an ad where Sabri Subi is in a church and he's praying and there's like Mark Zuckerberg, you know, on the, <laughs> yep, you know, at the top of the church, you know, on yeah. altar and there's Elon Musk and there's <laughs> Seth Bezos. Yeah, I think I think the point that everybody should really get from this conversation that we just briefly had is pick a tone, pick an angle, pick a, pick a perspective, even if it's disruptive. Some people do motivational, inspirational lifestyle stuff. Some people do, oh, I'm the good guy. Everybody else is bad. Like there's like, you know, certain angles. So you, do, you should develop a voice even within your ad. So then people are looking forward to but your you do have to be creative. I think what Isaac is trying to say is you can't stand out in today's world without being creative in some way, shape or form. Like you got, you got to be like, uh, uh, Isaac had me take it's simple stuff too. It doesn't have to be crazy or expensive. Like Isaac had me go to Dunkin' Donuts and buy jelly filled donuts <laughs> and squeeze them every time I would say something on the ad. So I'd be like, but you know how that goes leads that never pick up your front desk gets turned into telemarketers. The patients who do come in, are all tire kickers and broke. And then every time I'm saying that line, I'm squeezing a donut, right? So it's just getting creative with it. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, like, here's the thing. Like, if you guys go right now and you just rip this, like, if you just rip this and you rip the video out I'm about to show you, it's not going to work for you because it's not new anymore. Like, yeah. this isn't new to Kairos anymore. You have to, 
you have to come up with new stuff and it doesn't have to be advanced stuff. Like just, just do a brainstorm session. Like once or twice a week, brainstorm some interesting ideas, go on TikTok, look at some interesting hooks, like some organic creators are using. Um, like, uh, if you take the the jelly donut thing that Georgia said, where we're squishing jelly donuts is the hook, um, and you use that in Cairo, that's gonna crush. Like it's gonna crush. Um, Especially I, if you do it at like at a doctor at a chiropractic office, right? Yeah. Imagine if you were at a dental office, sitting on a dental chair, even eating a donut in between each sentence, that's gonna stand out immediately. Yeah, because they've never seen somebody squish jelly donuts on camera before like no chiropractor's ever seen that like what the hell is this so like um by that you will stand out from everybody else um yeah like i, I have one I, i'm gonna like use this soon like you eating like glass bottles is the hook like you know there's like edible glass bottles like in the grinch movie um where you just take a bite of them like that's one so like just come up with new stuff basically is the idea um What's uh oh headline w w one last quick note on this headlines your headline should state your offer you wouldn't believe the amount of times somebody doesn't have their offer st stated on their headlines and also their offer isn't stated on their imagery and like bro you have a really strong offer put it on everything so like when you have a strong offer like get chiropractic patients with zero dollars up front pay for patient for chiropractors only pay us after patients pay you like just take your offer reword it four times those are your headlines also I like using emojis and headlines that's a secret. Um, most people don't know you can actually use emojis in uh, Facebook ad headlines, but you can. Um, but yeah, headlines that state the offer very clearly, direct to the point. That, that this is the ads, like nothing fancy. Um, okay, let's jump into. Let me here. Let me play this for two seconds. Let me know if you guys can hear my audio or the actual computer audio. Yeah, it's very subtle, but we can. Okay, hear. Let me turn it up. Uh, Let me turn up my so you said you like your video similar to TikTok formats. Why is that? Exactly. So there's this weird phenomenon going on right now. Facebook ads that look like organic TikToks crush. TikToks, TikTok ads that look like TikToks don't actually work as good anymore. You want your TikToks, like if you're running TikTok ads, you want them looking more like ads. And you want your Facebook ads to look more like organic TikTok. And that's um, the trend you're seeing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I'll, I'll break down quickly why. Um, if you make a video that looks like a TikTok and you try running it on TikTok, it's not as entertaining as the other TikToks on there anymore. TikTok has become so entertaining that when people see your video, unless if it's really good, they're like, this is just a crappy TikTok. <laughs> and they'll just skip right past it. <laughs> it's so too like, saturated for their engagement. Yeah. So for TikTok, you actually kind of want to convey that it's an ad, like hit them very early with the offer, very hard hitting stuff. Um, they should kind of know it's an ad. With Facebook, on the other hand, uh, stuff that feels, I mean, you can even get more organic feeling than this. Like this still is kind of an ad. Um, you can even make it feel really organic. A lot of people have been starting off Facebook ads with organic clips from TikToks. Like they'll just rip organic clips from TikToks for the first five seconds. And then they'll go on a, like a rant about what they saw in that. And that's an ad on Facebook. So like your Facebook should look more like organic TikTok as much as possible for your videos, at least. Um, it's very interesting. Yeah, let's play it. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll play it for two more seconds. Let me know if it's good. Is that good enough? Yeah, there's no audio. Um, so if you, whenever you reshare, um, you could also just play without audio. We can we can see all the text. Yeah, you know? yeah, true. You said if I reshare, it'll share audio. Yeah, when you reshare, so you there's a the there, sound. yeah, there's a share sound option. It's a checkbox at the very bottom of the share button. Okay. Once you I, see the pop up in window. Stereo. Okay, I believe in myself. We can do this. <laughs> okay. Let's try now. Stop adjusting your yep. patience. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. All right. Yeah. We'll start over and watch the whole thing all the way through. 
Chiropractors, stop adjusting. Seriously, stop adjusting your patients and start adjusting your marketing. In the next 90 days, me and my team are gonna come into your practice and generate you highly qualified knee compression, knee pain, and neuropathy-based patients for free. Here's how it works. Our team will come in, handle all of the leads, generate all of the ads, and then run all of them through our patient care coordinator team and call center and only place the most financially qualified patients on your calendar. Plus, we handle all of the follow-up so you don't have to worry about no-shows. Now, here's the crazy part. We do all of this you only pay us when the patient shows up, has their consultation, and actually commits to a care plan. There is zero upfront retainer for a bunch of leads that all these other agencies will give you. We know we're the best and we want to prove it to you. Click the learn more button. Okay, so th there's a few uh, important elements on this. First of all, you'll notice it's basically this. Like th the script for the video is basically this with some joining phrases to make it make sense, if it, you know, reading it out loud. Your video script and your body copy script can almost be identical. Um, so I, I just saved you guys some writing. Um, you'll also notice this is divided into two sections. I'll play it without audio. Here's the first section, the hook, and then we're going to go into the body. The off okay. section, yeah. yeah. So like the rest of this ad is the body of the ad, the beginning five seconds were the hook. You actually don't need to build a ton of body ads. I've had some niches that are on the same body of the ad they started on six months ago. The body doesn't really saturate too much. It's the hooks that saturate. And it's also the hooks that you have the most leverage to get cheaper cost. So like, Write a good body for your ad, film it once, get it edited, but film multiple hooks. Um, I, you know, that client I talked about who's been using the same body for his ad for six months, he's probably like 30, 40 hooks deep. So like um, the, the way you keep ads fresh is by filming new hooks and filming more and more interesting hooks as well. Um, the crazier, the better. And also your hooks don't exactly have to make sense. Like the, the hook where I'm talking about like, hey, Obama ruined my school lunches. I can no longer buy pop out of the pop machine. That that was for like basically a software. That was an ad for a software. It, it, no real connection between the hook and the, the video. Um, but the hook was just so entertaining that it works. So most of your leverage comes from scripting and filming new and interesting hooks. Um, as far as the editing style, you can get editors on Upwork that'll edit. I mean, this is like roughly like Hormozy style, like his old style of editing. Um, you can get editors off of Upwork that are very good at this style of editing. There's we a video like my 25 to 50 bucks a video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a video on my channel. It's called like it has the word three dollars in the title. It's within the, it's within the first three to four recent YouTube videos I've made. Um, it goes over my exact hiring process of how to get editors off of Upwork for videos like this. So yeah. you guys can go check that out as well. And um, I think you, is your process very similar um, for other platforms outside of Facebook? I know we talked a lot about Facebook today, but is this the same principles you apply for YouTube, TikTok, Hulu, Netflix, Bing? Vista, like LinkedIn, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for B2B, there's not a lot of platforms that can really support heavy B2B campaigns. Facebook and TikTok are really the only ones you guys are going to be interested in using. YouTube has some use for B2B, but it's very niche dependent. You can really only do it in real estate, solar and roofing, kind yeah. of mortgage. Yeah. Um, but uh, your, your guys' main platforms are going to be TikTok and Facebook. And yes, they, the same rules apply to all of them. Yeah, the like LinkedIn, LinkedIn is really good with white collar professions like accountants, yes. CPAs, lawyers. Um, but anything outside of that is probably useless. Yeah, LinkedIn has some very specific use cases uh, that you can um, use it for. You, you have to be careful with LinkedIn because sometimes like, your niche will be on there, but only if you want to spend $20 a day. Like if you want to scale beyond that, there's just not enough of the niche. But like you said, there are some niches where there is a heavy presence on there that you can build some real campaigns. And some people have scaled some very big LinkedIn campaigns. Cool. But um, yeah, LinkedIn, especially like if you take just wild creatives like this, like when's the last time you saw an ad like this on LinkedIn? 
It's like never. So like you bring creatives of this caliber over to LinkedIn, you're going to crush. Um, assuming your niche is on there. Yeah. And they're trying um, to compete with platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube, where video is like a big thing everywhere else yeah. but LinkedIn. So if you do video, might work better because they need to figure out a way to compete. So exactly. Keep going. Yeah. Cool. So we covered targeting. We covered the structure of the campaigns. We covered the ad copy. We covered the video ad itself. What's left is the lander. Um, so this is going to be in the snapshot you guys receive. And now you're inside you high level, by the way, for those of you. Yes. Even on high yeah. Level. What, is, what, is, what is this what is beautiful that? software? Have you, have you <laughs> yeah, seen I, think I'm, I think it's high level. I think it's high level. <laughs> Is it yeah. go high level or high level? I'm tired of that. Well, question. well that's the big I, question. I didn't know this until like two <laughs> weeks ago, by the way. And I saw it somewhere. They're like, it's not go high level. I'm like, shit. <laughs> you know, I've been saying it's it wrong level. for like two yeah. years. No one corrected me. Yeah. Uh, well, can you do a quick you overview? Paul, can you do a quick Paul overview? Paulson, of the, Sean, well, Paulson, you, Sean, Robin, you guys are so like genuine. Like you're not going to be like, Joel, you're wrong. <laughs> Yeah, call us whatever you want. We, our focus is to get your revenue. That's it. Period. <laughs> what's what's on the LLC name? We need to look it up. It is, it is it is full incorporated in the U.S. Uh, okay. We have multiple incorporations in almost every country now. But either way, what are we looking at on the funnel builder here, uh, Isaac? Can you kind of break down the format, the structure? Yeah. So um, this is the landing page. These the rest of these I just left in there for you guys because everybody needs a privacy policy. So feel free to repurpose those. I just left those in there as a bonus. Um, this is the landing page. I'm gonna open this up and edit it real quick. By the way, high level is slow when you're on Zoom streaming, just FYI. It's actually pretty fast in regular use. Yeah, you guys will probably see it much slower today for me than than usual. It's usually really fast. Um, okay. So my, my philosophy with landers for B2B is keep it, it's the same thing as my ad copy. Keep it really basic, keep it to the point and let them know exactly what they're getting and make it easy for them to schedule. If you tell, if you make a lander and you tell them exactly what they're getting and you make it easy for them to schedule, it's going to work. Um, now, let me break this down. This is my most popular way I structure landers for B2B. Headline, stating the offer. Only pay us after patients pay you. Subheadline, detailing the offer. We send you prepaid, financially qualified chiropractic patients. You pay us after they buy care plans. If they're not interested after reading that headline and subheadline, they're probably not a good fit for what we're selling. There's like, or they like can't read or something. Like there's no ambiguity here as to what is being sold. Uh, you wouldn't believe the amount of landing pages that when I open them, I, I I just, I don't immediately know what it's about. I'm like, what are they saying? Like, what are you saying, bro? Like, <laughs> you know, you know it, what's crazy? I always notice this with agencies. I, I think agencies are the worst in complicating themselves because they'll yeah. have a different message in the copy of the ads, then a different message on the thank you page of that initial lander. And then they have a different message in the post-processing. It's like, like there's like three different songs being sang at the same time while it should yeah. all just be the same exact song. Yeah. And like, they'll get too philosophical with it. They'll have like a headline. That's like, what if you could get more Cairo page? I'm like, bro, just, just tell them you're going to give them patients after they pay. Like, don't make them wonder. Like they don't need to be wondering about anything. Um, be very direct, it, it, very direct, very clear, very simple. And keep your messaging, like Paulson said, in alignment, like from your ads to your video to your lander. Um, it should all be one core offer that you're hitting um, across all three. Um, okay. Then I, this is uh, basically- question. How, how yeah. ugly, does it matter if it's ugly? <laughs> Make it as ugly as possible. The ugly, <laughs> the ugly, the better. No, I mean, like um, what, what I tell people is like- it. Yeah. Yeah, like what I what I tell people was like, I'm gonna build you something ugly. If you want to get an actual good funnel designer to like make it pretty in the future, you can do it. But sad to say, guys, it doesn't really affect conversion rate that much. Like my ugly funnels. Funny story, real quick. I'll go on a 10 second tangent. I had a client. He spent 17k per day on ads. Um, he he runs a lot of uh, internet programs uh, across the East Coast of the United States, and um, I built him 
the ugliest survey lander you could think of. Um, absolutely ugly. It's uglier than this even. Um, and he pay, he'd ran it for like two years and he paid a CRO to come in and he paid them like 10 K uh, to come in and build him and a lander that outperformed and not a They used all these different platforms. They used um, unbounce. Uh, they, they used all these different things they were testing and um, not a single lander. On uh, high level though. No, they, and my, to, my, my lander, my survey lander. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. go. I don't, know, I don't know if y'all know this high level. Austin, you hear that? that? I know. I I I assumed that was going to happen, but high level has, if not, but the they also try to make lander. it pretty, right? Isaac, they try to make it pretty. Yeah. What's up? Did they also try to make it pretty? Oh, they made it so pretty. They made it so pretty. <laughs> it didn't work. So the idea of funnel hacking, you guys, like while it's a good concept when it comes to practicality, the only thing that really matters is the strength of the offer and the speed of how you push traffic. So like, if you don't know, nobody else will tell you this, but High Level has the fastest landing pages on the planet. We have it yeah. with data, Google backing us up, Amazon backing us up. I can show you stats on it. We can test whatever you wanna test and I can prove you that we have the fastest landers. Uh, and sites, you just have to make sure you construct it a certain way. The the point, the drop-off comes from when you push traffic from one step to another. And obviously you don't want anything slow. So like, you know, if you throw a video in there, it's going to be slow. There's no need for a video. Um, but go ahead. They Isaac, just want to wanna... know that they just want to know that the all it's the same thing. The, what you want is messaging congruency. You want it to be very similar to what's in the ad. It's like, okay, yeah, this is what I want. And make it easy for people to sign up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, high level, the, the way the landers work, they align with my personal philosophy of making things really fast and easy for the person. Like page load, this was years ago in Agency Lab. We used to have uh, the booking page. We had like 30 videos, testimonials embedded beneath the calendar on, on the uh, booking page. This was on uh, ClickFunnels actually. And we, we saw this huge fall off on the booking page. And we're like, I, want, I just had an idea one day. I was like, what if we just delete? all the testimonials beneath the calendar on this page and see what it does. And it literally basically doubled our booking rate on that page, just making it load faster. So like people didn't care about all those videos. They just wanted to schedule and the calendar wasn't loading fast enough for them. So like, if your messaging is clear, if everything loads fast, if they know exactly what they're getting and you make it easy for them to go through the funnel, like if you, you can send my grandma to this page, she'll schedule an appointment. She, like you can't mess this up. Like if you're interested in this, yeah, we, yeah. we can you mess have up. to pass the grandma test. Yeah, the grandma <laughs> test. <laughs> throw a little <laughs> shadow in there, and that's all you need. And move on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, look, yeah. look, if you guys if you guys want to take a basic structure and make it prettier, like the font, there's plenty of people in the high level community that can redesign this for you. Oh yeah, um, I would not overcomplicate it though. I would not add more elements. I would take the elements that exist and make them prettier. That's the difference. Yeah, exactly. Do not like, do not complicate the funnel, the lander. Take it, and then get a high level designer to make it more beautiful. Yeah, the color, and, the font, etc. Yeah, I I've realized that guys, the temptation to add like a bunch of testimonials to like a landing page. Um, I'm, my preference right now, and it hasn't for the past year. I I load the testimonials in the back end. Like, I I want them to see the testimonials on the thank you page that's where I think I'm going to get them to watch them where it's not going to hurt my conversion rate. Um, and also I'm going to send it out in text sequences, text and emails. Like that's where I prefer to put, if I have anything extra, I want them to view. I don't want it hurting my conversion rate too much. So I'm going to push it on the back end after they've scheduled their appointment. I want to get that schedule while their intent is high and then uh, teach them more. Um, okay. Uh, this next section is basically like an FAQ. Wait, can I answer something, Isaac? Yeah. Real quick, someone asked, um, how how do you know what is the piece that was working? Was it the offer, the design, the copy? My 80-20 for all of this is, and let me know what you think, Isaac. The offer yeah. is king, which we went over yesterday. We're literally giving you guys the offer. Offer is 80, the 80-20. You need to have a good offer. Like, do you have something that people want? If you said, hey, pay me a million dollars and I'll get you one patient. 
do people not, they're not going to want that. They're going to be like, okay, screw off. You're not going to, you could have the most beautiful lander, the best copy in the world, still not going to work. So offer, then creative. Can you stand out in the ad? That's like the actual video. Can you stand yeah. out? That's number two. Can you stand out to get people's attention, to get them to take in your offer? That's number two. And then number three is everything after that. The copy, the lander, all that good stuff. But like the 80-20 really is offer and the creative. Do you have something yeah. people want? And then are you grabbing people's attention to get them to consume that thing and be aware of that thing that you're offering? Exactly. Yep. O offering creative is 80 to 20. The rest, you just have to not mess it up. Like the way I view funnels and you, you guys have probably seen this trend. Like go look, go look in like a spy tool. Look at any of the top funnels uh, that people are running right now. The trend over the years has been to shorter, and simpler funnels. The more steps you can remove, the simpler you can make it, the better it's going to work. And I mean, who knows the exact reasons why why that's the case, but it doesn't matter. That's the trend. That's what works. So like get your creative in place, get your offer in place, and then the rest just copy proven stuff. Like just copy the proven structures. Like there's no reason to like overcomplicate the rest. Um it can be very simple. Um this section highlight main main big bullet points. FAQs, uh, if there's any like major like uh, kickback, like you get on sales calls that like you think should be addressed on the front end, you could do it in one of these columns. But I basically just, this is just a highlight reel of other benefits of the service. Like Kairos hate By the way, Isaac, lead. sorry to, sorry to cut you off. We got like 10 minutes. That's, that's a good, all that's left is the thank you page. So, um, uh, okay. This, yeah. Is this helpful y'all? Give me a one in the streaming. If this is helpful, like, I mean, nobody's going to sit and show you the back end of how they build massive businesses. Like we're doing this all for free. <laughs> Just... And, and I said yesterday, I warned you guys, it will feel overwhelming. So if you're like, whoa, that was a lot of info. Very, very fast. I warned you guys, you're asking us to show you the back end of a million dollar business three days and we're making it happen. And it will also be overwhelming and that's okay. That means that you guys are growing. So if you guys are loving the value, as Paulson said, drop a one in the chat, show some love. And if you're overwhelmed, good. That means that you're growing. That means that okay. your, your brain is getting expanded. And you guys can always go back and, and, and rewatch this. So, yeah. Um, last thing, button at the bottom that brings them back up to the, the, the top here. Uh, because it has to pass a grandma test. If they get to the bottom, they don't know where they are. Click the button, brings them back up to the top. Yeah. Um, okay. Last thing on this page. If you want cheap, cheap, cheap appointments, put a calendar here. Just embed the calendar on the landing page. If you want to qualify them a little bit more, put a survey. And then the survey redirects to the calendar. Um, yeah, that's it. It, it. it just depends on what you're looking for. Uh, some niches, no. it matters. Some niches, it doesn't. Now, real quick, your agency don't need a fancy website. But you do need an offer page that makes sense so you can run ads. Like your yeah. offer has to make sense. But you know, with high level, you also have a lot of website templates. A lot of people are like, do I need a website? I mean, you could also just build one in an hour, really. Just have yeah. like a yeah. on high level. It should not take you that long. Yeah, like, you, can, you can go I, to I Marketplace. Not spend more than a day. You can go to Marketplace and just download a free website or funnel template, slap your agency logo, and just put some generic information and move forward. Like you shouldn't spend more than an hour building a website for your agency. Yep. And yeah, all the templates actually look good. They don't look like stuff that I built. So you can actually get something <laughs> pretty for the main website. Um, okay. Uh, one second, I got to move the Zoom navigation. So beyond this, um, after the landing page, if you if you embedded the calendar on the landing page, like I said, they'll just go straight to the thank you page. Um, if uh, you, you use a survey, you will need a calendar page like this. The only thing that I do on the calendar page is um, uh, restate the offer and then embed the calendar. Like th th this is for one of his different offers. I actually chose one of his prettier booking pages to give you guys, but it's the exact same as the one that we're running, just different, different offer. Um, restate offer, calendar, like that's it. That's where they, if you use the survey on the lander, just re redirects them to this page, then this page post calendar, redirects them to the thank you page. 
pull that up. And can you briefly, like 30 seconds, just run over what a pixel is? So I know you have those things installed and can you just share the benefits of that? Yeah, exactly. So what the Facebook pixel is, is it, it's basically, it feeds data back into Facebook. So like, if you want Facebook to find more people that hit your thank you page, the way you tell Facebook that is by pixeling this page. So what you'll do is you'll put the pixel on the thank you page. You put, you can find on my channel, there's tutorial on pixel installation. Um, but then you'll put the conversion on the thank you page. The pixel is how Facebook interacts with your funnel. Um, so if you want Facebook to find, which you do, if you're running conversion ads, you do. Uh, if you want Facebook to find more people that convert through your funnel, you want it to pixel uh, the thank you page with a conversion event. So it feeds that data back through so that it finds more people uh, like the ones that converted and get you cheaper meeting costs. Open this up. Okay. The thank you page is um, where you want to teach your audience more about you. Again, people try to do this too this much is on called the front the end. We also call it the pre-call page. Yes. This is where we overload them with essentially testimonials frequently. Here's my big three that I like to cover. A mini video going over everything that they need to know before the call. So that first video. So like a five minute go video going over. Hey, here's everything you need to know before the call. Then testimonials and number three, frequently asked questions. Yeah. That, like that's the 80, 20 of it. Yeah. This, this is, is where you can make it really long and add social proof and add like, you know, we even have, we even on some of our thank you pages, we even link out to our YouTube channels. Like, this is where you can add as much as you want to like warm up the lead. Yeah, yeah. And just, just so everybody knows, like your onboarding process, you're still in sales. Like you're still having to sell them of who you are, what you bring to the table, even on an onboarding call, just because you got the revenue or the transaction completed does not mean they're stabilized in your business just yet. So continuously sell with the right amount of content and context that you're providing for the experience. Yeah, th this is where you educate the prospect. People try to do it too much on the front end. They're like, some people like some, there's exceptions, but like if I see somebody saying their company name too much in an ad, I'm like, oh God, they're doing, they're doing too much on the front end. You want to save most of the education for the back end, the thank you page, because the front end is to get them in, it's to get, get them to click, get that very valuable attention that's so hard to get these days. Um, with strong offers, strong ads, you know, short funnel, the back end, this is where you have your opportunity to educate. So all those resources Joel just mentioned, um, uh, all those are very good. Put them on here. This is what you want them to see before your meeting in order to warm them up, to make them easier to close. Um, beyond that, it, that th this is it like that. That's, this is a B2B funnel. Um, this is a B2B funnel. This is why I've used to scale multiple agencies to over 100K per month uh, within 30 day timeframes, uh, you know, assuming they have the systems for it. Um, this is what, if you, if you want to scale quick and you have the budget for it, this is the fastest way to do it in my experience. And if you guys want to see other ad examples or sorry, other niche examples, again, Isaac uh, not only has it on his YouTube channel, but if you guys stay till the end of day four, we're also going to give away three of Isaac's courses for TikTok and YouTube uh, breaking this down. But if you guys want to see like uh, um, examples for like real estate, examples for like solar mortgage, he has them on his channel as well. But that's it. That's pit ads. Can we drop a one in the chat for Isaac? Show him a lot of love. And, and by the way, stay on the call. We're about to go into the next pillar. Yes, we're yes, not yes, done yes, with the call. Just F, we got another. Well, Isaac, if you need a little break, you can, you know, yeah. <laughs> Isaac, if you, you, you can, you don't have to learn the cold email stuff, but, but everyone else, <laughs> you have to stay on. We're about to teach you guys cold email next and cold DMs. Isaac, that was absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10. He literally showed you guys how to build a campaign, how to do the targeting, how to do targeting in different niches how to do the creatives, the videos, how to write the copy. He showed you guys how to set up the lander on high level. He showed you guys all the different steps in the funnel inside of high level. And again, these aren't some theoretical ideas. This is a campaign he's running right now that is rushing in one of the most competitive niches on the planet. So it is 
literally working right now and we just gave it away for free. So yeah. Isaac, you're the best. Thank you so much. Thanks, Guys, man. if you haven't, go go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Show him some love. Drop what's your, what's your YouTube Isaac. channel handle, uh, Isaac? What's a actual... Me... Yeah, let me grab it for you guys. And yeah, thanks yeah, guys for uh tuning I would just look that. up Isaac Rubel, honestly. That's probably <laughs> yeah. the easiest. There's, there's only me and then there's like a wrestler named Isaac Rubel. And he's actually gaining like way too much traction. I actually like need to have a talk with him because I don't know how <laughs> he shows up instead of me. So I'm like, bro, there's, like, there's actually a Paulson Thomas in India who's like a break dancer. Like uh, he's He's same thing, mm. gaining a lot of traction. I don't know. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's your <laughs> your backup account. Stop you it, know? guys. Stop it. Okay, let's move to the next item. Isaac, good seeing you, brother. Appreciate you. Nice seeing you guys. I like Christian yeah. uh, take over on the quote email stuff. I'll see you guys later. All right. Cool. All you. right. So Give us a one in ads. the chat. Give us a one in the uh, comments in the streaming if that was helpful. You learned a lot out of it. Just I just want to get some good feedback of of post in the facebook streaming please not in the zoom but joel what we got next we got more to cover we're not even halfway we 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 got well we're gonna move fast i'm gonna see if we can do 45 minutes for each one of these next two okay we gotta go um paulson you and i have to work on just letting them rip and and keeping them on track i know let's make make, make that our job I mean, yeah, we need to shut let's, up. Let's just, Let them talk. <laughs> we need to. We we do, and we need to just keep them on track. So, um, for this next guest speaker, guys, this is the guy who actually figured out how to go from 500 emails a day all the way to 10,000 emails per day. So he was in my program, in my uh, in agency lab, and uh, he was crushing it. And I I hopped on I hopped on a call with him, and he was showing me his systems for scaling cold email. And I was blown away. I had never seen anything like it. It was unbelievable. And as time went on, we actually became strategic partners where we collaborate. So he is one of the coaches inside of our program. He also has his own agency for agencies for cold, for, uh, cold outreach. So for things like cold email. And he literally does this as a service. And he's going to be giving it all the way. So this goes to show you the level of character that this guy has. He's literally giving his business away and he's going to teach you guys right now how to scale to thousands of cold emails per day. He's going to be giving away the scripts. He's literally going to be giving away everything. Let's give a very warm welcome to Christian Ashu. I don't ever know how to pronounce your last name, by the way, but you're Christian, the only one who gets it right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's french right it's your it's issue. no it's like it's arabic but like you got it right bro you, i you thought it was right. french no i speak french but it's not a french name by default okay <laughs> okay that's where it threw me off i'm like didn't don't you speak fluent french yeah i do i do so i'll do this whole presentation <laughs> in french no i'm just kidding uh guys i'm gonna Thanks, go dude. super fast i'm literally gonna go super fast dude because i know please, we don't have too much i want time. you to i want you to break our minds break our minds okay Chat GPT level. They call me Chat GPT. Uh, literally, some people <laughs> call me that because I speak fast. All Let's right. It. Let's do it. Guys, I got a couple slides ready, very similar to Joel's slides from the other day. So, again, I'm going to speak very fast. And what I'm going to be focusing on today is the 80 20 of cold email. To be more specific, can you I have this actually? Table I'm so, sorry, Christian. Can you go ahead and full screen that so it drop down on slideshow? And yeah, thank you, so nice. much. thank you so much. One quick second. There you go. So guys, I'm going to show you guys how to send 20. And you can send more like Joel said. I was once sending 10,000, actually 15,000 a day, which was pretty crazy. I'll show you guys how to set up the system to send out the cold emails, which we currently set up for ourselves and our clients. It's working today. How to scrape a list because you need an email list to send out emails to. I'll give you guys the paper show cold email script that we are using right now to get our clients from as little as 20 meetings a month to as high as 90, I believe it was 92 meetings a month with the same system for agencies just like you. And then the stats you need to measure. So what are the KPIs I need to hit to actually know that I'm getting good results? So let's start talking about how to set up the system. I'll show you guys how to buy and set up domains. And I'll explain what that means in a second for those who don't know anything about cold email. How to set up email accounts and how to warm up the accounts. And then a couple of bonuses that are like good to have, but not neat, you don't necessarily need them, but they're useful. 
Now, let me quickly explain for those who don't know anything about cold email, like in two slides, how does it work? So the way cold email works, there's a lot of ways to do it, but how it's currently being done by us is you first buy domains, like bdbskill.com, hsli.com, highlevel.com, but you never use your main domain. And I want to start by that by saying that, guys, if you're going to do cold email, don't use your main domain. I would not use bdbskill.io for cold email. That would be dangerous because I'll talk about why later, but you want to buy separate ones just for cold email. Then create, you then create email accounts using those domains, Christian at bdbskill.com, joelhsli.com, paulson at highlevel.com. You then warm up those email accounts using a cold email tool, which I will show you guys in a second to make sure that they don't get disabled. And then once they're warmed up, you can start sending out cold emails from those accounts. So I'll show you guys all those steps. And before we start, I do want you all to know how much the investment is for cold email because you're going to buy some domains. You're going to buy the accounts. It's very, 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 very cheap compared to paid ads, which we just talked about. But it is a couple hundred bucks a month, depending on how many you want to send. So we use Google for uh, accounts it's seven dollars and 20 cents per month per account and the domains are 12 dollars per year a lot of you guys know you know what a domain is how to buy them and a lot of you guys are already setting up email accounts with google so that's pretty straightforward all right let's start talking about buying and setting up domains guys so first i, I don't know when uh, paulson and joel when they're going to get these slides but i gave you guys a sheet which i'll show you here in a second a sheet like this that we use internally i will, uh, in -house, I, will sorry. I will we'll go get it at the end of day four we're going to be giving away every single resource perfect so i'll give you guys the sheet which my team uses to set up the systems so it's exactly what we use and it just makes it way easier to track everything uh so that's in here but with that in mind we're going to be setting up the system guys using godaddy domains and google workspace so let me quickly explain what i mean i said that you first buy domains like bdbsk.com, highlevel.com, et cetera. And then you set up email accounts from those domains, like Christian at bdbsk.com. GoDaddy is where we're going to buy the domains, and Google Workspace is where we're going to set them up. There are cheaper, because some of you guys might be thinking, like, can I use Namecheap? Can I use Outlook? Can I use this? There are cheaper places to get domains, and there are cheaper domains that you can buy. Like, instead of .com, you can get .xyz, but these can lead to lower deliverability. And whenever you guys hear me say deliverability when it comes to cold email, I mean that when I send out an email, a cold email, if it gets delivered, it means that it landed in the prospect's inbox and they are seeing it. If it doesn't get delivered, it might go to spam, it might bounce, it might go to promotions. So that's what I mean. So we want to make sure that our deliverability is high so that people actually see the cold emails that you send out, which is why we use GoDaddy and Google Workspace. They're very trustworthy. When we buy domains from GoDaddy, we're going to buy .com domains. Like I was saying, you can buy for $1 a year, .live, .xyz, .shop, .online. But they are not as trusted, and they can cause, again, lower deliverability. Not only that, but they can lead to your accounts getting blocked. I've had that happen when I tested it out myself. So always buy .com, which, again, is $12 a year. These are trusted as well. I just don't personally use them myself, uh, but I've heard that they can be used as well. So just stick to .com just in case. And once we buy all the domains, we're going to add them. And I'm going to show this to you guys, like Joel said. I'm going to literally show you guys every step today. You're going to know exactly what to do. You're then going to add them to the Google Workspace Admin Console. So I'll show you guys what that is in a second. We're then going to go through these steps, activate Gmail, set up what we call SPF, set up what we call DKIM, which is also called DKIM, and set up what we call DMARC. These are you know, a bit technical, but pretty easy once you know how to do them. We set them up to, again, increase deliverability. If they are not set up, your emails are more likely to go to spam. It's not going to go as well for you. We also want to set them up in this exact order, SPF first, then DKIM, then DMARC. And I'll show you guys how to do that. And we want, we want to always use a tool called MX Toolbox to make sure that they're set up properly. So with that in mind, let me actually show you guys how to set these up. So I've got them ready here. I've got these three domains that we've already bought beforehand. And I know they're about XYZ. And I said to buy.com. They're just test domains, so I can show you guys how to do it. But again, stick to .com. So what you do first, right, is you go to a website like GoDaddy. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys know how to buy domains. You buy the domain. So whatever domain you want to buy, you buy it. What I like to do, because you're going to need to buy a couple of domains for this. Like You can't just buy one, or else you can't send a lot of volume, which I'll talk about later. But if my domain is b2bscale.com, like I said earlier, I don't want to use my main domain. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use a variation, a variation like dbdbsk.com, pro.bdbsk.com, yourbdbsk.com, 
the dash pdbscale.com pro dash like basically small variations like that that are very similar but obviously not the same once you've bought them you're then going to add them to a google admin console so how do you create a google admin console a lot of you guys know this it's pretty straightforward search for google workspace on google open the first link and get started just create a google workspace account a lot of you guys know this it's where you create your email accounts typically for your business get started and when it starts loading what it's going to do is it's going to ask you for your business information business name employees region you basically go through this whole thing and i will let you guys know sometimes what happens with us is at the end it will ask you, hey, can you give us, like if they don't trust you for whatever reason, especially when you set up a lot of accounts, they might ask you for your credit card information, like a picture of your credit card and a passport or a um, government ID to verify that it's you. When that happens, just a heads up, just put it in, give them the 24 to 48 hours, and then they'll accept it and you get access to the workspace. Once you're in, it looks like this. So again, guys, first thing I do is I buy domains. I won't do it, but I've, I bought them already. That's pretty straightforward. And then I add them to the admin console. My team's already added some, so we're ready here. Oh, let me just uh, log in so you guys can see this. And once we add the domains, there are a couple of steps that we're gonna go through here to make sure that we can actually use them for cold email. There you go. So again, I clicked on domains, guys. They asked me to log in again. I'm gonna go to manage the domains and this is where I'll see all of them. So here they are. I've got two of them that are already added. I'm going to show you guys first how to add a domain. So you add it here and you enter the domain name. So mine is, I've got one as an example, this one. We'll just add it. There you go. You add it as a secondary domain, add the domain and start verification. If the domain is connected to GoDaddy, which is what we do, obviously it's, it's super easy to set up. You just literally click on this, sign in to verify. It will lead you to GoDaddy, connect it. And then at least you said you said GoDaddy is better, right? Yes, and it's not the you? only one. Yeah, but it's like you can use GoDaddy. I believe Squarespace or Google Domains is also good. I try to avoid Namecheap because that's where people just so people can understand the mindset behind it. People typically go to name, like scammers and spammers and people that are not necessarily using cold email for the good of the of society. They buy domains from Namecheap because it's cheaper. So because of that there is a reputation to it. GoDaddy is very well trusted. And also .com domains are very well trusted. So I know I'm using so .xyz. .com and GoDaddy. Just, exactly. just, yeah. .xyz is just for the example. Exactly. So don't do .xyz, guys. <laughs> or your domains are gonna, it's not going to work as well. So .com and GoDaddy. You, just keep it simple, boom. guys. Exactly. So once I add it, I got to verify the domain. And that's what was happening right now. Typically, you got to wait for like five minutes. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Here it is. It's still verifying. I've already had my team add some other domains. So it's verifying right now. Once it's verified, this is another domain and this is what it will look like. It'll say verified, but you gotta activate Gmail. So I'm gonna do that next, set up MX record, next. And there you go. With GoDaddy, it's super easy. As you can see, it immediately does it. So now it's activating Gmail. And again, I'm, I'm going through this fast guys, but some context, this one is the one I just verified. You gotta wait for a couple minutes. Then for Gmail, I got to wait for a couple minutes and you got to do this for every single domain. And later I'll tell you guys how many domains you need to actually like send out a lot of emails. And then once this is verified, it's in progress, it looks like this. Cool, so it's verified and Gmail is activated. So let's go back to the slides. First thing I did is I added the domain. I activated Gmail and now I'm gonna add SPF, DKIM and DMARC in that order. I'm not gonna go over technical terms, but basically those are things that again, improve your deliverability just to keep it, Pretty simple. Obviously, there's some more technical stuff to it, but we'll keep it simple. So SPF, guys, is the first one. And this is typically already added automatically when you add your domain and you activate Gmail. And how do I know that's a fact? Go to a tool, like I said, like MX Toolbox, and go to their SPF record check. And you can find this pretty easily by searching MX Toolbox SPF check. And it's the first thing that comes up. So I already have it open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the domain in here to make sure that it's set up properly. And you always want to do this for every single domain, guys, to make sure you didn't make a mistake. So copy the domain, SPF, and domain name, and look it up. 
And there you go. When everything's green here, it means it's set up properly. So that is the first thing. And again, it's typically set up by itself when you add the domains to Google uh, Workspace. So next, I'm then going to go and set up DKIM. Make sure first, DKIM, right? Make sure that SPF is working. It is. Okay, let's go set up DKIM. How you do that is you go to the admin console, search for uh, let's see, yeah. search for DKIM in the search bar, and it's the first one that comes up. I'm going to go there. And again, I use the sheet uh, to set this all up, like I was saying. So it's going to help us with keeping track of everything. So this is the one I was setting up. Add it to Google. I've set up SPF. Now I'm at DKIM. The domain is growth-b2b.xyz. So let's open that up here. I'm going to select the domain. I believe this was the one in here. Yep. So this is what it looks like when you haven't set it up. And the way you do it, guys, is you generate a new record. First thing, keep this the same. Generate. And let's refresh the page. There you go. So this is what it then comes up with. I'm then going to go to GoDaddy. This is a bit technical, but very simple, guys. So I'm going to go to GoDaddy. Sorry, there's the, there you go. I find my domain. Here it is. I go to DNS. And you can, again, if you do choose to use another domain provider, like uh, Google, uh, it's not Google domains anymore, but anything else, they also have a DNS management section for each domain where you can add. And if you use high level to connect the domain to high level, typically you have to do this as well. So a lot of you guys might be familiar with it. But let's go back. I'm going to add this um, record to the domain. So I'm going to go here, add a record. This is for DKIM. Again, the second one we need to set up. Uh, the record is TXT. So it's a TXT text record. T no, it's not text. TXT. Go here, copy this. And copy this. And there you go. I can keep this the same, save. And then what you gotta do guys is you gotta give it some time. Um, what There's a button here that says start authentication. If I try clicking on it, it's gonna say, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work, not verified. You gotta wait a little bit. I don't know the exact time, typically a couple minutes to sometimes a couple hours. Once you click on this and it actually works, it will say, uh, it will turn to stop authentication. And once the authentication starts, which is not gonna work for now, your DKIM is verified. But again, I would then go and double check using MX Toolbox. So let's take the domain here. This was the SPF check. I do DKIM as well. And again, it's not gonna work now because I just, uh, an error occurred. So it's not gonna work right now. Let's try it again. Oh, sorry, that's why. I do wanna say when you look for DKIM, put the domain name and also selector. It asks for a selector, you wanna put Google. If you're doing it the way I'm doing it, if you're using Google, right? Apparently it's working, so we got it done. Um, but despite that, always make sure that it says start the authentication here starts or else don't use it yet. Like don't don't just skip to the next part. I gotta wait till this says start authentication, till this works when I click on it and it does give me an error, even if DKIM is set up here. Cause you see everything is green. DKIM record found, the record is valid, public key is present, cool. So let's pretend guys, cause we were low on time, that this did work. I'm then gonna set up DMARC. So how do I set up DMARC? Here, DMARC. Yo, Christian, by the way, people are saying that you were in the DNS for the wrong domain. Oh, was I? That's what some people said. They're right, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. As long as you guys understand like how to do it, the next step is DMARC. So to set up DMARC, it's the same. I got to ask a, uh, I got to add a TXT record again. I'm going to do it with the We're wrong trying to go very, again. very, Obviously. by the way, Christian, you're doing an amazing job. Just huge shout out. Like you are, you are so freaking smart, bro. It's insane. And you're fast. Joel hypes me up all the time. But uh, guys, why don't you do that? Uh, yeah, point, point two I, I would have, I, I'm, I would absolutely recommend you guys go back and watch this. Yeah. On like 0.5 X speed, 0.5, not 5X after the recording is live on YouTube. I would yeah, have to do 0.25. Like, I'm a little slow, right? <laughs> <do> 0.25. <laughs> not a techie. Keep going. Keep going, Christian. We're not stopping you. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So DMARC, again, guys, recap. I set up SPF. It's working. I set up uh, DKIM in the right domain. It's working. I, I don't just look here. I got to make sure, again, that 
and this is not going to work because I did the wrong domain, but it start authentication should work. Once this works, I then set up DMARC in that same domain. So for DMARC, I go back, TXT, I have added a um, the Google, the official Google um, um, article on how to set it up right here. So you guys can access that in the slides. So here's what I need to do. Copy this right here. All right, that's the name here, the, the name of the record. Now for the second one, the record value, I'm gonna copy this, but you'll notice here, there's an email. I'm gonna to need to change that. And I'll tell you guys why. What DMARC does, guys, is it sends reports. Pretty much, I believe every day, I might be wrong, but it sends reports to this email saying, hey, things are going well, things are going well. I personally ignore them. Um, and I don't think most of you, like probably all of you shouldn't actually pay attention to that. Just make sure that this email is one of your emails so you don't send out reports to random people is what I'm saying. So if I had to do it for me, let's just put one of our uh, business emails here and please don't email me. <laughs> no, gonna get <laughs> Christian, quick question. Yeah, uh, you don't use something like Cloudflare for DNS management? I personally don't. Okay, yeah. I'm just not familiar with it, that's why. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Guys, you know yeah. where we told you guys with Isaac, take what we taught you and innovate on it? For the cold email, for the setup, for this part, just copy and paste it. <laughs> Yeah, don't innovate like, on there's someone. No, this this is this is more of the tech stuff. Like it requires just clear copying and pasting. We'll 100%. talk about this when we get to the scripts. That's where you can innovate. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. So I've now said added DMARC, guys. Again, I would put it here. Check for DMARC. This is obviously the wrong domain. Well, let's just do this one real quick. You got it. I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's set up properly in here. Let's see if it works. This is what it looks like. So it's green. I know some of these are yellow, but I'm, I'm not going to go into too many details here. DMARC, you can set it up a lot of different ways. If this is what it says for you guys, it's good. There's two yellow ones here and three green ones. You're good. So again, let's go back to the sheet. SPF, DKIM, DMARC. I've set them up. I've added the domain to Google. We are now good to go for domains. And I always check with MX Toolbox, free tool, to make sure they're set up properly. So that was the first step. You guys are not ready for the other ones. Let's keep going. So oh, now we're man. gonna set up the email accounts. <laughs> <laughs> if you're brain well, fried and overwhelmed, simple. if you're watching this in brain fried and like totally overwhelmed, don't worry about it. Just stick with it. Just learn the principles. All these replays will be in the YouTube and you'll be able to break it down slowly, just FYI. And, and, and if you wanna be an entrepreneur who has the power to send 2,500 emails a day, all the way up to 10,000 emails a day as you scale this, you got to learn this shit, you know, there's, you can't have it all right. It's like, it's like, this, uh, this is what your competition is doing. So you got to beat exactly. them. And I will so, say this, I will say this too, because me and I, Paulson are playing good cop back. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this, like you guys can also, and I'm not talking about us. You can pay people to set this up for you on like Upwork. Um, cause obviously like some people will do cold email for other people, for agencies, it's a full service, but if you just want someone to set it up, just so you know, and I don't have a specific like person to refer you guys to, there are people that this is all they do. I don't know them personally. Like we do more than that as like for ourselves. So just, you can search that up, just giving you guys a heads up. There's always people willing to, uh, do this work for money or you can hire a VA and have them watch this and do it. Just make sure they're doing it right. We've now set up the domains properly. We're now gonna start setting up the emailing accounts. This one's pretty simple. I will say this though, guys. Sometimes when you try logging into them, it will ask you for a phone code, not a number. It's like, you gotta put in a number and then it, you, it's gonna send a code and it's gonna, you gotta put it in, right? Don't use your number for that because you're gonna set up a lot of accounts if you wanna send volume, which like Joel said earlier, uh, I don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paraphrasing here, but like, you're not gonna get crazy results saying, sending 50 emails a day. I was sending literally over 10,000. I don't know if I should have sent that many, but I was sending a lot. Uh, that generated like could be between 20, 30 grand a month for my agency in Cairo back then. But you don't like, you got to send at least a thousand a day, minimum. If you want to see like, in my opinion, it's significant um, results. So that's why you're going to need a lot of phone numbers. And what we do uh, internally is we use this tool called SMS Activate to basically get, I've got it open actually, to get temporary phone numbers specifically made for codes, like to get a code. Uh, just a heads up, always use first world country numbers. So, cause I've had a bad experience using like, you know, very, cause the, the third world country numbers are cheaper, but that can be dangerous. 
So I actually asked my team before this, what numbers do you guys use currently? And they told me Netherlands. So let's <laughs> let's use Netherlands. Uh, I'll just refresh the page here. A hey, quick question. Shout out for to the ones here um, do we do we yes, not sir. do the 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 chips anymore? Like, is that old stuff? Like, where you go uh, buy the SIM cards? Are you can do that. Be? You can do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. we used to do that That's, as well. Okay, yeah. I had that. my VA go to the fish market and buy, a th- you know, hundreds of SIM cards out in Philippines, and he 100%. would activating it, and we would get like 500 email domains set up. You could do that for sure. This okay. is easier though, but like I used okay. to do that as well. Okay, cool. So this is even easier. So let's just do that if that's easier. <laughs> yeah. Because you can literally just add some money. I know this is sketchy, guys. It's like, this is Russian rubles. Um, but you literally just search for Gmail, add money, search for the country. Again, we'll do Netherlands. Uh, this is like probably, it's less than a dollar. Like it's very cheap to get a number just adds up. Buy it. And then it will pop up somewhere. Oh, all right. I haven't used it myself in a while. My team does it. Uh, apparently it's not. Oh, there is. There is. There's the number. I would copy this number, put it in. If the account asks for a number, guys, I would put it in and then it will send a code here. Let's delete that. Just so you guys know, because you're going to have that issue for some of you. But let me show you first how to create email accounts. Like once that, now that we've added the domain, right? So the domains are added. We've done SPF, DKIM, DMARC. Make sure they're good with MX Toolbox. I'm going to go to users. And how do I create a user? So I'm going to add a new user here. Give it whatever name you want. So let's give it my name. Select the domain because you can select multiple ones. Uh, whatever primary email works, typically just your first name, your first and last name. And what you can also do is you can add a profile picture here, which I will recommend you guys do. Uh, I'm not going to do it for now, but like this is where you would add a profile picture. There are other ways, but it just adds up. I will then add the user and it is now created. I would copy the password typically and the username, uh, put it in the sheet. So I can keep track of it. And at the end, guys, you will have like a lot here, right? So uh, that's why you want to keep track of it somewhere. So I'm not going to try to log into this one because I'm already logged into another one here, which we all before created before for the sake of speed. What I'm going to do now, let's go back here. Again, I, I create the account. I try logging in, right? And sometimes it asks for a phone code. I use SMS activate for that and buy first world country numbers. Always use one phone number per account. I've made the mistake of not doing that. I would buy one number for the sake of like saving costs and use it for like two accounts. And what tends to happen when I did that, the accounts wouldn't let us log in due to suspicious activity. And when that happens, just a heads up, delete the account and create a new one, but only use one number per account. And again, they're super cheap. Do the conversion on Google. It's like a couple of cents, 10, 20 cents. And you can set these accounts up on an incognito window or really any window for those wondering. Once we've logged in, and I have one open right now, we're gonna set up these three things. Turn on IMAP, which we're gonna to need to connect the account to the cold email tool later. Add a profile picture, which I've already talked about, and add a birthday, and I'll say why. <laughs> so let's go, let's go to the account. So how do I turn on IMAP, which is the most important? I go to the settings here, see all settings, forwarding and pop IMAP, and I enable it. And right here, enable IMAP and save. Profile picture, I already showed you guys how to add that. So that's pretty straightforward. If I go to the account here, go to manage your Google account, I can add a birthday. And I'll tell you guys why we do it. It's because I've heard a long time ago that if you don't have a birthday, it can affect the deliverability. I will not, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like split test it, but it doesn't hurt. It takes like two seconds. So I think it's worth it not to risk it. So I might as well, right? So the account is now ready. That is it, literally, you create the account, you can do more things. Keep in mind, guys, you can do, this is like really the essentials. But now I can use this account to send out cold emails. There are a couple of things you got to do first, but that's literally so you it. You recommend you a profile that. picture? Yes, 100%. 100%. Yeah, really, you're imitating uh, a real sign-up. Yes. And we're just doing it like in mass volume because I only did one, but I'll talk about it later. If you want to send 2,500 cold emails a day, you guys need 28 domains and you need 84 accounts on those domains. So you got to do how this. Like long, how much time does that take you to set up? A day. Now, like my team will take like about a day for each system. Can you set more, up more sorry, time? More. 80, 80, 80, so it'll take about yeah. a day to get to a day of hard work nonstop. To set up the system. Set up, set if up not to more. just set everything up. 
Okay, so let's yeah, say got, let's uh, just say let's just say to keep it simple, two to three days for every twenty five hundred emails of of uninterrupted work. So a weekend of uninterrupted work. If you want to have ten thousand, you'll need four weekends of uninterrupted work, or about a whole week. Plus, you got like three Red Bulls and like two monsters. But like, yeah, it, it does get <laughs> it does get tiring. Just so you guys know, right? Like, it's it's definitely repetitive. So. Or you can also Definitely. hire a like a virtual assistant on like Upwork or yep. Remote Latinos or like all, all these other places that have a virtual assistants to go through the process and you just make sure they do it right one time with them, maybe even two or three times, and then they could just keep doing it for you. And if they're charging you five dollars an hour and it takes two days. And they work, Pretty let's say, cheap. just to keep it. Let's just say they, they work 10 hours each day. So you're paying a uh, hundred bucks plus, obviously, the cost, cost of the domain, but a hundred bucks to have someone do this for you. Christian, can you go over the can you go over the numbers one more time? Those that might have missed it. How many domains yep. do we need to be able to send out 2,500? I think 2,500 oh. is a good range to start per day. Yep, there is. That's the next step. So we set up, uh, let me do a, and I would argue, Paulson, you don't need to start at 2,500, but I think it's like ideal, not, not ideal, but it's, it, you're going to see like really significant results there. Thousand is like the minimum, I would say. If you're going to yeah. do this, you could do 500 a day, but it's like, yeah, yeah it's going to take a while. So, okay, let me go over the slides. You guys will understand how to set up. For every domain that I buy, I set up three emailing accounts. So for example, if I have b2bskill.com, I have Christian at b2bskill.com. Christian issue at bdskill.com and Christian.e or just Christian E at bdskill.com. Some people will say you can set up up to five email accounts per domain. We just don't do that. We've done this and it's worked well for us. Now I'm going to skip some slides here to go back to what Paulson was saying, but basically guys, you'll see this later. I'll, I don't have my calculator, but every account can send 30 cold emails per day. once it's fully ramped up every like one of these, at least that's what I recommend. And I would recommend you guys do what I recommend. So, if I just do some quick math, 30, how do, if I want to send a thousand, I need about 33 accounts, right? And I have three email accounts per domain. So I need 11 domains. That's to send a thousand. So 11 domains, $12 a year, uh, 33 accounts, seven bucks and 20 cents a month. If you're using Google Workspace, which I recommend. If I want to send 2,500 cold emails uh, per day, again, each, each account sends 30 cold emails per day. I need 84 emailing accounts. It's just about that. It's like 2,520. 84 emailing accounts. Again, three accounts per domain. You just divide that by three. That means I have 28 domains. And why is 30 that's, that's, the range that you don't cross? Like 30 emails per day? Yeah. So a general rule that is set in cold email, not just by me, but just people in general, is you don't want to send more than 50 emails per day per emailing account, especially new ones. If you want to do more volume, you just get more accounts. Because the more emails I send per account, the more it's at risk of like getting restricted, getting emails marked as spam. So we are sending 30, at least the way I set it up, which obviously works for us, send 30 cold emails per day. And we send 20, what I, we call warm-up emails per day. I'll talk about that in a second here. So if you add those, both of those together, we're at 50. And that is why we choose 30. Some people will say, I want to do 25 cold emails, 25 warm-up. We do 30 cold emails, 20 warm ups because it has worked for us. So, in all that in mind, all with that, all um, do that with keeping in mind that you don't want to go over 50 total emails per day, including cold emails, warm up emails, and anything else. And, and a side note, you can typically only have up to 50 emailing accounts per Google Workspace. So, like, you know, this whole thing that I said, oh, sorry, this whole thing that I'm setting up here. I can only typically have 50, depending on the plan you're on, uh, from what my team told me, because they're the ones to set this up. Like Joel was saying, guys, we onboard, last month we onboarded 15 new clients. I'm not sending this up myself for 50 new clients. Like, oh, that would be crazy. <laughs> we have like full-time team members doing this, right? So I would recommend, like uh, like Joel said, Upwork, get a VA. Like it's it's very, you could get somebody for three bucks an hour, four bucks an hour to do this for you. Like in the Philippines, it's, it's pretty uh, not complicated. Um, quick tip too. Don't set up these accounts in your main Google Workspace. So I, I did that mistake, honestly, but it, it hasn't hurt me yet. <laughs> I'm looking back, I wouldn't have done it. 
where you have your main account. So if you have your own company, you have your email address, you have your team members' email addresses, don't set up your email accounts for cold email on that Google workspace, go create another one. Because, and this is like rare, I'll talk about how to avoid this later, but like potentially in the same way that Facebook guys can just shut down your business manager just like that, Google could shut down your Google workspace if they wanted to. So I wanna make sure to separate the cold email ones, which are more, more risky than uh, from the uh, regular ones. Because technically, and I haven't mentioned this, Google doesn't want you to do cold email, not just them, but like most email providers, Outlook, Google, Zoho, it is legal though, like in the US, as long as you're in the US, you're, it's allowed. But you, that's why we got to do all these things. And I'll talk to you guys about it in a second, like the warm up. We just got to go around Google's uh, algorithm pretty much. And also make sure we made that mistake, guys. So please learn from it. Make sure that all your accounts are in the $7.20 month per month plan. Because when you create the workspace, sometimes what Google does is they'll give you a plan. They'll say, hey, go on the $21 a month plan. And then you go and you forget about it and you set up all these accounts. And then a couple of, like a couple of weeks later, you see you're been charged like $21 per account. It stacks up, right? Especially when you have 80 plus accounts. So do the $7.20 per month plan. Uh, you can quickly double check. Actually, I'm not going to show you guys. Just double check. I'm never, just to be sure I go through this fast. Uh, this is pretty big or else you might lose uh, quite a lot of money that you don't need to lose. So once we've set up the accounts, we're going to send cold emails using a tool called instantly.ai. A lot of you know it, uh, a lot of you don't know it as well. And there are other competitors that work. Smartly is one of them. I personally use Instantly. This is what it looks like when you're in it. So you want to get the $97 a month plan. It's the uh, least expensive one that gets you what you need to send out cold emails. Oops, there you go. There you go. I got too many tabs open. Give me one quick second. There you go. We're then going to add the email accounts to instantly once we've set them up the way that I showed you guys. And before we do that, there's just one thing that I have to do, which is to set up what we call OAuth in your Google Workspace, O-Authentication. Because if you want to connect an email account to instantly, which again is the tool that sends out the cold emails, like because you can't, there are cold emails, uh, tools specifically made for cold email. Instantly is one of them. So let me show you guys how to add an account once you're in instantly, right? I go to add new. Gmail, G Suite, that's what we use, right? They ask you to enable IMAP. Remember, guys, we already did it. That's why I told you guys to do it. And then we're going to select all authentication. This is the easier, like you say, easier to set up, more stable, available for G Suite accounts. I'm then going to log in. I'm going to need to log into the account. But before I do that, we got to set up all authentication. And I mentioned this in the um, slides here. You only need to set up all authentication once per Google Workspace account. So if all my accounts are in here, I set up, let's say 50. I don't need to do it for each account. This takes way less time. So let's go do that real quick. It's pretty easy. Again, you only do this once literally per, uh, per, per uh, workspace. So I search for API, here I am. I then go to manage third-party access. I'm gonna add an app, perfect, it's not even done. I'm gonna do it right now, add an app and select OAuth app name. This is for Instantly guys, specifically, right? It's not like for any cold email tool. If you're using Instantly, which I recommend, this is how you set it up. So I'm gonna go to Instantly, copy the client ID here that it give you, search for it. Here it is, select, select. This is good, trusted, and finish. And this is where it looks like. Now I can connect all the accounts that are in this workspace to instantly. So let's go do that. Uh, the one that I just set up, I believe was this one. Uh, there you go. You wanna allow? And it is now in instantly. So we've now successfully created the account, added domains set up the domains, created the accounts, set up the accounts and added them to Instantly. So let's search for that account real quick. Here it is. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up in Instantly in a second. But first, let's go back here. Okay, once we've connected all the Google Workspace accounts to Instantly, we're gonna launch what we call the warmup. So quick, very quick explanation of what the warmup is. When you send out cold email guys, uh, cold emails are actually, like I was saying, not so you're not supposed to do it. They don't get open a lot. They get marked as spam from some people. Some people uh, 
don't reply to them. And when those things, three things happen and more, it decreases the reputation of your accounts. And if it keeps happening, your accounts get restricted. So cold emails are like bad emails that are taking down your reputation. Warm up emails do the opposite. So you always want to make sure that you're doing both at the same time. That's why I was uh, telling Paulson earlier, we send 20 warm up emails per day and 30 cold emails. And you never turn on a warm up, guys. You always keep it on while you're doing cold email. Not only that, but you don't want to send out cold emails before warming up your accounts for at least 14 days, not business days, but just 14 days. So the warm up settings, I'm actually going to show them to you guys here. I've got, an, uh, I've got them here. Are these ones. I'm just going to show them to you guys. I think it'll be easier than reading through this. So I've got it again in the sheet. Let's go to the, uh, I know I keep referring to the sheet, but it's because we actually use it. So we added the birthday, we did IMAP, we connected it instantly. And the settings here are the ones that we want to set up. So let me show you guys what they are. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. All right. So the account is here, right? I'm going to click on it and go to the settings. First things first. 30 daily emails max. So like I said earlier, we don't want to send more than uh, 30 cold emails per day. So I'm going to set up the limit here to 30. That's one. Done. Then for the warm, that's not actually warm up, but I, I do it while I'm here, right? The warm up is here. Warm up settings basic. So what I'm going to do here, this is how we do it. We increase the warm up by two per day. So in other words, on the first day, it's going to send two warm up emails. On the second day, it's going to do four. Then on the third, it's going to do six, then eight, then 10, then 12. And it's keep increasing until it hits 20. So a daily warm up limit, and we're going to keep that at 20. So once it hits 20, it's not going to go over that. The reply rate is 80%, meaning 80% of my warm up emails get replied to because, again, just some context on what warm up is. Instantly has all these users, right? And what the warm up does is it sends emails between the instantly users and it purposely opens them, replies to them, takes them out of spam, and marks them as important even to make to increase the reputation. So that's how it does it. Back in the in day, the advanced back, settings. Back back in the yeah, day ahead, when Joel like started off this whole thing, like I want to say, like I don't know, 2016 maybe. What we would do is subscribe to like retailers. So we would like subscribe mm -hmm. to like Macy's, all the restaurants in the local area, and let it run for like a month and kind of impersonate. Yep. And I don't think that's that as I don't think that's even relevant today in 2024. So I'm glad you mentioned uh, the whole instantly tool. I've never even heard of it. Yeah, I know that was, yeah, the newsletter thing. You'd sign up for like 10 newsletters, leave it there for like two yeah. weeks. Yeah, I remember that. So this tool's so good for just skipping that. Yeah, so quick question on the relationship with high level on something like this. Where does high level even come in? If you, I mean, do you not recommend it? I usually don't recommend people to use high level for cold email at mass scales like this. I, I rather recommend people using high level for post processing afterwards. Exactly. So I'm going to talk about it. Uh, we don't use high level to send out cold emails, but I use high level to build out the landing page that we send to the leads. And then when we do reminders, right? When we get a lead, we use high level for that. And also we reactivate these through high level. So I won't talk about this today because we're out of time here and I don't have it in the slides, but when you get a cold email, you guys, you don't just email them once and that's it. What you're doing is you're building a pipeline, right? Of people that are interested in your services. And over time, we use high level to send them more emails, send them more emails. If they opt in into so text, send them text. Hey. Are you interested? Exactly. Like nurturing over time, reminder, the landing page, the calendar, that's all high level. So instantly sends out the emails. Once you have the leads, high level is what you use to uh, get them to book and to follow up and reminders and all that. Makes sense. Very cool. I mean, the principles haven't changed much of back when I had my agency because nope. like we would do like SIM cards and we would dial in and all these crazy things back in the day with our VAs overseas. Um, what else do we need to know about cold email at scale like this? What else do we need to know? Um, I'll show you guys the warm settings. And the other thing to know, I mean, this is pretty, pretty much it. You just got to do this like over and over again. And for a lot of accounts, there's a couple of things to be careful about with the scripts that I'll talk about in a second. But I'll just finish this warm up. Uh, just to, let me know, Pulse and Joel, if this is good. I got I have to go through this a bit fast. I mean, it looks like a lot of sides, but they're pretty quick. So I'll go even faster. Uh, <laughs> All right, buckle up, y'all. Right. Buckle up. Give <laughs> us, give us. A, I totally get it if you're feeling overwhelmed and it's like Paul said. I got people messaging me, Paul said, "This is so much info." We're literally trying to tell you 
everything we've learned over the last like five, six years of building seven figure agencies and how we complete, I mean, how we compete in today's market. This is what you're going out there and competing against hundreds and thousands of agencies that do systems like this. So this is not, you know, this is not new. This is all stuff that's very standard in the world of being an agency owner. And now you're adding SaaS to the mix with better offers. Now you're adding AI to the mix, which, which with more efficiency, it's going to get really interesting in 2024. All right, Christian, I guess go sure. faster, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and just context, guys, because I know it looks like a lot, but I'm not going to even talk about our paid clients. I'm like Joel said, I'm a coach in his program. I had people in his program come to me and say, hey, man, I made so much money with your system because I teach this thing in there as well. So there's money here to be made, guys. Just I know it's, it's a lot at first. But let's go back to the warm up. So, again, I set the limit to 30. I don't want to send more than 30 cold emails per day. Warm up increased by two. Limit to 20. Reply rate is 80 percent. Uh, here, I turn on these two. I don't turn on the weekdays one. So you can read through them. It just helps with the warm up. Open rate, I'm just going to go and check the stats because, again, they are in the sheet just to make it easier for you guys. So we did the two increase per day in the 20 warm up limit. I did the 80% reply rate. Read emulation, I turned on. It's the, the one here, this middle one. Warm custom tracking domain, I turned on. It's the other one that I turned on right below it. Then I'm going to turn on a warm-up open rate. So let's go here at 80% and 50% warm-up mark as important rate. So what does that mean? It means that 80% of my warm-up emails get opened. And mark important, it means 50%. I'm going to put a 50. 50% 50 of my uh, warm-up emails get marked as important. Spam protection, I keep at 100. So how many of your warm-up emails to save from spam? So if my warm-up emails go to spam, ISLI will automatically take them out of spam. Again, to si signal to the to the email providers that like hey we're good we're doing good things right we're not we're not sending out cold emails in any way shape or form and cold emails are good things as well but they don't think that so uh we'll uh, we'll continue so i've done this this and this the rest that i have to the right is not um it's not really required here i'll just go and continue through these slides so again now oh sorry there is one last step that's pretty important uh you got to turn on the warm-up so let's go back Save the settings, warm up, and enable. And you know it's enabled instantly when this is green. So the, the warm up's enabled. And again, uh, it didn't save. Just make sure sometimes, I don't know if this is a bug. I think sometimes you got to refresh the page and go back to the settings. Make sure the settings are correct. OK. Once you've launched a warm up, like I was saying, guys, you then got to wait 14 days. Do not send cold emails before that, or else you're very much at risk. That includes weekends as well. And that includes today. So today is when it's going to start sending two warm-up emails per day, then four, then six, then eight. And on the 15th day, we can start sending out cold emails after all of the setup. So how do we send out cold emails? We have two, I have two sending schedules that I'm going to give you guys because you don't immediately start st sending 30 per day. You got to ramp it up. So even after 14 days. So on day 15, I will start sending 10 cold emails per day per account. This is what we do for our clients. So it's, it's pretty safe. You do that for seven days of sending emails. And for context, I don't send emails on Sundays, but I do it uh, Monday through Saturday. If you want to do Monday through Friday, that's fine as well. So seven days of sending emails at 10 emails per account. Then 20 cold emails per account for another seven days. And after these two seven-day periods, right, I go to 30. Sorry, and I never quick. go over that. And it, real real yeah. quick, is this within the first 14 days or after the 14 days? After. So the first, so 14, the first 14, days, 14 days, I don't touch it. Okay. I don't. I leave the warm up on using the settings that I turned. Uh, I showed everybody. I don't do anything else. Then after 14 days of warm up, no sending cold emails. I start sending cold emails this way. This is like super safe method, guys. So seven days of 10 per day per account, another seven days of 20 cold emails per day per account, and then uh, 30. And then again, you stay at 30 cold emails and 20 warm ups. And if you want to scale, you get more accounts. I'll give you guys the rescue method if you guys want to. You know, take a risk. Uh, and we do this for ourselves. It does work, no, but uh, it is more risky, just so you know. After the 14 days of warm up on day 15, right? Because I, I warmed it up for 14 days, I send five per day per account. Then the next day, 10, then 15, then 20, then 25, then I stay at 30. So that's way faster and it works for us as well. But the faster you ramp this up, guys, the more risk there is. Like if I warmed up for a month, I, I can, I'm very sure, sure that like my accounts will not get restricted. There's no way. 
This is what I was talking about earlier. You don't want to send more than 50 emails per day per account. And by the way, this is the system, guys, just so you know. Like now you've done this, the warm up, you set up everything I told you, you're sending old emails. You don't want to send more than 50 emails per day per account, including warm ups and cold. This is what I was telling Paulson. We're sending 20 more emails per day and 30 cold emails per day, which is 50 total. I'm not going to go over that. If you want to send more volume, get more accounts. Don't go over 50 per day per account. Um, I'm going to quickly go through these guys because I want to talk about the script and everything else. So and how to get a list. So a couple of things, something you can do. I'll, I'll uh, Again, you don't need this, but you guys can Google how to do this. You can do what we call domain forwarding. So what that is, is I just bought a domain. Let's say I bought b2bscalers.com and I set it up for cold email. I can make it so that when someone Googles this, this domain to check us out, it, it redirects them to anywhere I want, to our landing page, let's say. It's very easy to set up in GoDaddy, and I have a tutorial on how to do it. Like you guys will have these slides, uh, like we said at the end of the uh, workshop. So you guys can do that. I'm not going to show you because I want to make sure we have time to go over everything else. Something else. Some of you guys might know cold email, and you're like, Christian, can I can I track open rate? Um, well, you, you're probably not asking that, but I will tell you though, to your surprise, I do not recommend that you track your open rates because instantly, unless you do that, the problem with the I'm not. I'll just show you guys real quick. If I go to a campaign instantly, which I'm not going to show you guys how to set these up because it's fairly simple. Uh, you guys can Google that. I'm trying to go over the stuff that is harder to find. I can uh, disable open tracking here in the campaign settings. The campaigns is what we set up to actually send out cold emails. I actually recommend that you do not um, set up open rates because what happens is when you set up open rates, deliverability goes down. Side note, you don't ideally want links, you don't want uh, attachments, you don't want images, videos in your first email that you send out to people because that also reduces deliverability. And the thing with open rate is it's a, um, it adds a pixel, an attachment to your emails. So that's how it's able to track open rate, but by because it does that, deliverability goes down. Yeah, and also so, even, even like subject lines, you want to use like lower lowercase subject lines you don't want to add emojis and you there's like this whole email thing is like its own industry in the world of digital marketing that there are massive companies that are just specialized in something like this so as much as we're covering there's there's going to be more depth to this that you may want to do your own research but even like i recently learned that like lowercase subject lines is a lot more safer versus like capitalized uh, letters in each one of the words, like every single email subject line, if you go through it, you probably capitalize one of those letters in, in one of those words. Um, but keep going, keep going, Christian. I, I'm, I'm not the expert. Yeah, you, <laughs> you don't know, but Paulson's right, especially like you don't want all caps. Like you definitely don't want that. And you'll see, I'll, I'll give you guys the scripts we use later for the same offer, paper show. You'll notice what Paulson just said, I apply as well. No, no capital letters um, and the subject line. If you do choose to track open rates, guys, you got to set up what we call a custom tracking domain. Uh, I'm not going to go into too many details as to how to do that. Instantly has a lot of tutorials, and this leads you to a tutorial on how to do it. And I would honestly recommend that you only track open rates for like a couple of days at most. So like two, four days just to get, you know, the data and understand it. Don't leave it turn off forever because, again, it does reduce deliverability. And when you do set up uh, a custom tracking domain, let's go back here to uh, one of the, whatever, one of the accounts, here it is. It's right here. So they literally give you the uh, option to turn it on. Add a, add a, you gotta add a C name right here. They'll show you how to do that. If you go to the article that I connected in the slides. Also, so now you quick, have set up. Also real quick, Christian, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, why, not buy, why not buy like a warmed up domain or warmed up e cold email system? Like, you know, like, do you, have you tried that or do you feel, do you feel more trust that you built it yourself? So a great question. I, I haven't tried that. I would say the main only thing that like might be bad with that is that the domain might not be branded to your company or it might be completely random. Now, I don't know if that affects results a lot. It probably does a little bit. But like if someone has a cold email system and it's branded to their company with their domains and then I buy it, I'd have their domains. Yeah, there are companies. Which I, it's not like a big deal, up. you know. Yeah, there are companies that'll, for the purposes of selling domains for cold emailers and stuff like that, you can you can buy stuff like getappointments.com and like crazy, like generic 
emails, but then yep. like you said, it doesn't brand to your business. You don't know what they did with it. A lot of folks will sell the same thing to like five different people and they reuse it. So there's, yeah. uh, it's, it's kind of a shady space in a sense. If you are not careful, it, it you is. will, you will get in trouble um, and, you know, fry your IPs and stuff like that. Anyways, let's keep going. Don't mean to sidetrack you. How to scrape a list for 120. That's pretty cheap these days. Wow. It is, dude. It is. And I will say this. Uh, I've done some of the things uh, Paulson says, like buying accounts. It does work. But like you said, it is a bit shady. They'll resell your accounts. I will go through this like super quick, guys. There's so scraping lists is an industry in and of its own. Like there are people who build businesses off of that. I'll just keep it simple for an agency. All right. I'll give you one tool. Use it. It'll work. D7 Leaf Finder. Very overused. People think the list does not work. We use it for our clients. It works for them. I promise. So what you do is you get the D7 Lead Finder. Let me let me get out of these slides. Professional plan, right? So let's go to the website real quick. It's um, yeah. Again, key on, it's key on all those. Key on all those is get the highest plan. <laughs> yes, yes, because what it does in D7 is it lets you scrape uh, 100 cities a day. So you want to scrape fast. Like if you want to get a, if you're scraping one city a day, it's going to take you a while to build a pretty big list. So the plans are here. I can go to bulk search in D7. And put a keyword, like let's say you guys are targeting chiropractors, which we've seen like 27 times uh, today. And <laughs> I've been day one as well, just because Joel had a chiropractor you see, and I could go on. But I'm going to put the keyword. I have a list here, guys, of the top thousand US cities. Uh, I just found it on the internet. It's not hard to find. I will put those cities here. Make sure to put them in the format that they want. Uh, you do 100 at a time, right? Because this plan lets you scrape 100 cities. You choose the country of the US if that's what you're doing. But again, uh, if you're e cold emailing in other countries, guys, careful. The laws are different. I'm going to give you, you know, everything I gave you is for the U.S. And then I would fetch the leads, and it's going to give me a list of 100, the, the chiropractors from 100 cities. And that's it. Next, I want to clean that list. So whenever you scrape, and guys, if you buy a cold email list, it doesn't matter what you do, you want to clean it always. Yes. Because what happens is, Million Verify is a great tool for that we use right now. If I get a list of 80,000 emails, for all I know, 10,000 of them, they don't even exist anymore. And the problem is when you email emails that don't exist, what, we, what happens is uh, we call it a bounce. So the emails bounce, meaning it goes to them and then it bounces back to you and it says, hey, this email doesn't exist. And if you get too many of those, your accounts are very much at risk. Like your reputation, they can get disabled. Uh, deliverability goes down. So you want to avoid that. So we'll use a tool like Million Verifier, which is relatively cheap as well, depending on the size of, no, even, doesn't matter what size of your list is. It's very cheap there you go let me close some of these tabs guys give me one sec what was that it's getting a bit slow i'm closing some of the tabs that i have because i uh, <laughs> no it's for a life pure design i got <laughs> there you go let's see cool I do there, there are several tools like this right there's like hunter.io yes. there's like a bunch of this is the best one i've seen okay got in it. terms of like speed and cost because okay. some are like super expensive relatively speaking this one, if you guys want to uh, clean a list of, let's say, 20,000 emails or 30,000, which is significant, it'll cost up to 50 bucks. And it's actually less because they only charge you credit when, uh, for the bad emails, I believe. So it's not actually this much, but about like 37, 50 bucks. And it cleans it in like 30 minutes to an hour. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. And a lot of them will charge you expensive and doesn't mean they're good. <laughs> they no, just position, no, no, no. They, they just position it as if it's like they're the best. Fancy. So yeah, yeah, they just they just play the pricing game, but a lot of them are not that great, just FYI. And this is a bonus, guys, uh, for D7 specifically, because it is a good tool. It is competitive, like it's been around for a while. But if you have an offer like the one that we're talking about in these uh, you know, this workshop, it's gonna crush. I know because we're doing it right now for people with a similar offer, it's crushing. In a D7 list, and some it's not the best list provider, but if you do it right, it will be it's still a really good list. I want to once I've scraped that list and I clean it, I have my team go in that list and they give you the categories of the email. So if I get an email address in that list, one of the categories might be chiropractic. My team will remove the categories that are not relevant because the truth is I get a list of like 50,000 chiropractors mm. from D7. Out of that, maybe 10,000 are like physical, ther similar industries, physical therapists, dentists, acupuncturists, massage therapists. So like industries are close. So we always have, I have my team go in there, not one by one, because you can remove categories, which is much faster with Google Sheets. 
and just clean up the list from a standpoint of like making sure that it's accurate. Got it. All right. So now I have a list. I have the system. Um, again, depending on how much you want to spend, uh, you can you know buy more accounts, less accounts. Like I said earlier, I recommend at least a thousand emails a day, which would be uh, 11, 11 domains, 33 email accounts. And it would cost you about uh, not much, but let me pull out my calculator here and tell you guys real quick. So the domains would be you're, you're good, bro. Bucks per you're year. good. I think we get the point. It's, it's, there's going to be a minimal operating cost on all these, but it's, but it's nothing. Cheap. Yeah, it's nowhere near. Yeah. So if you're starting out, start with cold email and before you go into paid ads, because once you go into pay ad, pay, by the time you get to paid ads, your offers need to be kind of ironed out. And cold email allows you to kind of iron out your offers in a new market or an existing market, yeah. and get to a competitive state. Because if you don't have an offer, your cold ad, your ads won't work because if it stinks, it'll stink more just because you ran some paid ads as far as your offer strength. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Paper show cold email script. Let's fast track. I'm about to give it away. And by the way, that was very well said real quick. I use, I think cold email is a great way to test your offer, make sure it works and also make sure your sales process works. And once you know your sales process works and your offer works, you start running paid ads. Unless you have a lot of money in the bank that you can just spend on ads to go faster. I think that's a really good strategy. Yeah, if you had a lot so, of money back, again, just go buy the business instead of building a new one. <laughs> <laughs> that is what. Well. That right. is well. Yep. Um, let's keep this simple, guys. I'm just going to give you two templates that work for paper show. Uh, and I'm going to add a script without a spin tag. So back to what Paulson was saying, patience for you. So what do, let's say this is for chiropractors. You can change this for any niche. What do they want? Patience. Hi there, just curious. Would you be interested in a paper show partnership? We'll send you 20 new patients per month and you only pay us when a patient shows up. No monthly retainers, no setup fee, no bait and switch. Reply yes if you might be interested and I'll get back to you ASAP on how this can help company name. <clears throat> Sorry. Thanks, first name. You got to put your company name here and you got to put your company address legally. You can put a PO box, by the way. And you got to have this opt out. You can reply with stop to opt out. It can be also a link. I, I just think this is better. I'll say why later. Now, this is going to look crazy. What I'm about to show you guys, so just bear with me here. You want to add spin tax to these scripts. I'll talk, about, <laughs> I'll talk about what this is in a second. But basically, what this does, and tools like instantly let you do this, is it will make each script different. So if I look at these brackets, let's look at this first paragraph here. In the brackets, there's this first sentence. Just curious, would you be interested in a paper show partnership? Then a vertical bar here. And then just wondering, would a paper show partnership interest you? So it says the same thing, but in different words. And what will happen is when I put this script in instantly, it will pick one of these randomly. So in other words, every script that I send out is going to is going to be different. And that's important for deliverability and to make sure your accounts don't get restricted. Yeah. Time out for one so, second. Let me explain this. Let me explain this. I'm not a tech. Okay, 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 I'm okay. going to, I'm going to break this down Go for ahead. someone who's like me, who's like, man, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the tech. So what you're doing is using something called custom fields or merge fields or values that a system like instantly allows you where you can create basically messaging that you can use anywhere. And that messaging could be email funnels, uh, websites, wherever you put these brackets in it will basically shoot out whatever your stored message is. So in this scenario of cold emailing, you want to have probably 10, 20 different variations of messages and styles and angles, because what that allows the system to do is pick a round robin method of creating variety in your messaging, which basically pretend, basically creates the experience for the sending to be very, you know, very diverse. Because if you send the same messages over and over, it throws off an alarm that you're just literally spamming where these yep. custom fields allows you to have variability. Yep, exactly. Well said. Okay. Cool. And I'll add to that too. So there's two types here. There's like this, what I call the spin tax, which is these ones where it's just taking the sentences that you're already putting in. Couple notes, guys. You can literally take this, copy it, put it instantly, subject lines here, send it out and you're going to get results. I literally, like this is the script. Like it, it works today. Um, but if you wanted to create your own script, again, there's like the spin tax, which is like just variations of the same sentence. And you want to make sure that it says the same thing, but with different words, don't change the meaning of it. Cause then you're testing like five different offers at the same time and you don't know what's working. And then there's custom values. See this right here, reply with yes. And I'll get back to you on how this can help company name. So this is like pretty common in cold email. 
When I scrape a list from like D7 or some other tool, I have the company name as well. And when I upload that to instantly, what it will do is for every single lead that it sends out an email to, it will automatically put their company name here based on the Excel sheet that I put in instantly. This is also super important for deliverability because now every single email you send is different because every company has a different company name for the most part. A second one, if you guys want to use it, hi there, we're looking for one chiropractor in the city who can handle, again, custom value, who can handle, so Chicago, New York, who can handle 20 new patients in the next 30 days. If you can take these on, we'll send them your way and you only pay us when they show up at your office. Reply yes if you might be interested. Very simple, straight to the point. Look at the subject line. Quick question. I'm not pitching in the subject line, right? I'm just getting their interest. I'm getting their curiosity. Patience for you. And some of you might be thinking, because question, a quick question has been used for a long time. It is very like, it's very used in cold email, but I promise it still works because we're using it today. And Joel talked about this. The ones who innovate win. And I'll talk about it later. So if you want to like innovate on this, go ahead. But I can tell you this will work as well. And I've got the script with Spintax. Yeah. Again, and always change the company name and address for sure. Yeah, and by the way, if you're if you're inside high level and you're brand new and don't have any scripts at all, we have our five day challenge program that we run basically once a week, and I've taken like eight to twelve scripts of my own agency and planned it around the SaaS offers that we recommend, which is the Trojan Horse method that we teach, and you get all of that for free. So if you need cold email scripts, just like literally sign up for the five day challenge and you'll get all those assets for free along with paid ads, all free just because you're a part of high level and you have a high level account, by the way. So keep going, keep going. All right, note, guys, high level is actually amazing. And I'm not saying this because I'm speaking, we use it ourselves. I'll show you guys how we use it specifically for cold email, but I would also highly recommend you guys get it if you're running an agency and not just that, Obviously, local business can benefit from it, but it's a it's a really great tool. So like I was saying, you always want to have spin tax in your cold email scripts, like what I just showed you. And you also want to always make sure to have at least one custom value in the script. If you go back, every one of my scripts has one that I just showed you. Company name, first name, city, whatever. If you don't do this, less emails will get delivered, like what Paulson was saying earlier, because every email is the same. And if every email you send out is the same and you're sending 2,500 a day, Good luck, right? Google is going to quickly catch on to that. So you got to have these things in um, because if not, your accounts could be at a higher risk of getting restricted. In the US, if you're emailing there, there are a couple of laws you got to follow. Um, I'm no lawyer, but I'll tell you guys what I found and what we do for ourselves based on my research. Company name has to be in there, company address. And again, it can be a PO box. Uh, I might be wrong on that. You know, I'm not a lawyer again, but as long as it's like related to your company and then an opt out. This is huge, guys. Uh, there can be fines with cold email. The only reason I can think of that you would get a fine, and I've never seen anybody get it, but the only reason is if someone tells you to unsubscribe and you don't unsubscribe them and you keep emailing them. So that if you go back to my scripts, you can also reply with stop to opt out. Always have something like this. You can also put a link, but again, like I said earlier, I said uh, links reduce deliverability. So what I tell them is to reply stop because again, the more people reply to my email, the better for my reputation, the reputation of my accounts. And then you unsubscribe them. It instantly has tutorials on how to do that. They have something called a block list, which allows you to unsubscribe. When you get a positive reply, they'll reply with yes, right? Because let's go back to the script. Are you interested? Reply with yes, and I'll get back to you ASAP. Sometimes they reply saying, I'm interested. Sometimes they ask a question, what's the price? Uh, never reveal the price, guys, by the way. Just give a range. If they ask, what's your service? Never reveal the service. Give them like, we can do this, 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 and that. It really depends on the client. Book a call. Right, always go back to the call, just a heads up. But this is like a template you can use. Uh, literally, we use this with our clients. Hey, first name, good to see you're possibly interested in our paper show offer. If you're not against it, I'd rather we talk over a call than via email. It'll be easier to go over the basics that way. Here's a calendar link to save you some time. I have an example, booking page. And then you follow up like crazy, guys. Call them, email them again, uh, text them, uh, uh, legally, of course. Do every, like, go reach out to them. You can reach out to them on social media. For us, we only do email and it works, but we've also added like other things. You can just follow up with them by call, which is huge. And the booking page built on none other than high level looks something like this. And you guys just said it's up. Isaac showed you guys a, a lander earlier that he uses for paid ads. You can use the same lander for, for a cold email. It works as well. By the way, is that and your- what he said applies. Is, is that- so is it okay for us to use our actual agency domains for the booking pages and stuff like that? Or should we get yes. like a, okay, cool. This was my Cairo agency. Um, it's the actual domain. Got so it. that is fine. Yeah, cool. you can use it. 
everything Isaac said for the landing page there applies here. And by the way, we've tested like a landing page on Hannibal versus just sending a Calendly. This outperforms. Just so you guys know. So use this. Well, not this, but use the landing page. Logo, call out your audience, attention, X, Y, Z, who want to massively grow their whatever practice business. This headline actually is not ideal for cold email. Right now, because I was using this for paid ads. If your email says, I'll send you 20 new patients a month and you only pay per show, this should probably say, and we do this, book a time below to learn more about our new pay per show offer. The sub headline would say, we'll just elaborate something like this. We're offering to run your ads, schedule your leads for you, and to only charge per qualified patient that shows up. And then you could have another, another thing that says like, no monthly retainers, no setup fees, no bait and switch, all that stuff. And then a call to action, pick a time for your, whatever you do, 15 minute phone call below to claim one of our 10 spots for the month. And then how we do it is they can book and we have all these qualifying questions. Um, you can also, I, I would not put this copy here, but you can have testimonials as well. Uh, and then I just do it again, something like this. Almost done, guys. Couple of final things. I know everybody's brain is fried with everything that you've seen today. Couple of stats to measure. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys the stats that I look out for uh, to know is this working or not. And this will vary from person to person. Marketing UC space, pretty competitive. We look for these stats minimum. 1% reply rate, meaning at least 1% of the people I email reply. So out of 100 emails, I get at least one reply. 0.2% positive reply rate, so max again. If I send 500 emails, I get one positive reply. And I will say that this varies, same as Isaac said earlier for paid ads. Like some niches, you get $30 cost per calls. Some you get 120. Cold email, same thing. Some industries, you get like a positive reply for every 100 emails you send. Some for every 1,000. Like dental, dental's competitive, guys. So that's an example, <laughs> right? But I am for 500 in general. Like one for every 500 emails I send, I get one positive reply. If uh, every positive, for every five positive replies that I get, I get one book call, 20% booking rate. That's what I mean. It could be higher, but again, it could be lower if you have a lot of qualifications. So that's why it's like not black and white. It's like really a, a continuum, right? It's like, this is just like general uh, guidelines. And at the end of the day, I believe Paulson, you talked about this earlier. The only stat that truly matters is CAC, cost of acquisition. Like even if you don't hit these stats, guys, if your cost to acquire a client is good, don't worry about it. Just scale, like send more emails. If you're not necessarily hitting these stats, as long as your cost of acquisition is good, you shouldn't, like, don't worry. Just go send more emails. Uh, final quick notes. Sometimes your email, email accounts, guys, will get temporarily restricted. Even if you do everything perfectly, it's normal. It's like driving a car. Even if the car, you drive it perfectly, it still gets scratched. It's still, there's some bumps in the road. There's like things that happen. And when that happens, just so you know, you can typically go into Google Workspace and reinstate them. Sometimes you can. And in that case, you just create a new account to replace the old one. If you do not follow the tips I gave today, I gave today considering spin tax, right? Having at least one custom value in your script and the way that I warmed up the account and everything, the exact set of method, method I gave you, and I'm not trying to scare you guys, but your entire Google Workspace account can get banned and your email accounts can get banned as well. And your domains can get what we call blacklisted, which means like, and the domain doesn't work anymore for sending emails. So a couple of things. So make sure to follow everything. You can innovate on the script, but the setup, like Joel said earlier, do it exactly as I do it. Also have the expectation, guys, that cold email changes every couple of months and years. Like eight, like six months ago, okay, a year ago, everybody used Zoho Mail to send out cold email. Six months ago, they stopped. They literally said no more cold email. This method I showed you guys today, people have been using it for years. Like Google Workspace. So it's been working for a very long time. But just have this expectation. Expectations are everything. And also, like Joel said, I believe earlier, the script I gave you will probably stop working eventually because everyone here will start using it. So it's working now. So, but you have to innovate. And this is the next thing. The last thing, the ones who innovate win. You can copy paste. You're gonna get you're gonna get copy paste results, which are not bad. But if you want like great results, you got to do something a bit different. Don't have to reinvent the wheel. But like, yeah, yeah. There, this offer is a great example of that. Yeah, there's a, by the way, Christian, that was fantastic. You got through so much content, like almost 200 slides in like, I don't know, less than an hour. I'm I'm pretty impressed uh, just in general. Um, so there's two schools of thoughts uh, that you all should think about. And I talk about this in our challenge, in our masterminds. By the way, if you're not coming to our February mastermind, you're going to miss out. Come to Dallas ASAP. Tickets are about to be sold out. Um, 
And Joel also will say this as well. There are two types of agency owners. There are the sales guys that are just really good at closing deals all day long. And then you have the tech folks that are good at building systems. If I were to pick a business partner, I know I'm better at sales. I will always find a business partner that's better at the tech. Eventually, you're going to have to choose the lane that matters best for you as an entrepreneur, as an agency owner, because things like this, I would pay someone to just set it all up for me and get out of the way. Because I, even if I did it, I just don't trust myself in not skipping a step or making a screw up or whatever. So those of you that are watching, if you're overwhelmed, it's totally normal. Think about who you're going to be in your business. Are you going to be the salesperson or the you know the tech person? And choose accordingly. Um, Joel, uh, uh, what, what are your thoughts on- Next steps. Of- well, Christian, you absolutely crushed it, man. That was insane. Honestly- you taught people how to do cold email in like an hour and a half, which is absolutely nuts. You give away the scripts, <laughs> setups, the scaling, the scraping, everything. So guys, we were literally over delivering for you guys like none other. Like can I we, told Paul, said, we, my, we, my hope is to do the craziest three-day workshop in the history of high level. <laughs> so um, one thing though, uh, so Paulson, our last guest speaker can't go tomorrow. So we're going to ram it 30 minutes. Okay, Rapid how fire. how do y'all feel so far? We went through three, like two massive business strategies, and not just talked about it from a concept standpoint. We practically showed you exactly how to get it done. Give me a one in the chat if you have the brain power to just keep going for maybe thirty more minutes. And what we want to teach, if possible, is Instagram DMs at scale. Um, post. I want to see the ones in the Facebook streaming. Uh, I don't see enough ones. Let me see here. How many of y'all are wanting us to keep going? And we'll take another 30 minutes. So we're, we've are we been about three hours so far. So that's less than what we spent yesterday. So I feel good about keeping going. Okay. Um, all right, cool. There's a ton of ones that just came in, um, Joel. Let's just get, bo- let's just get rolling. Awesome. For the last guest. I got a very, very special, incredible person, amazing entrepreneur. He is one of the uh, coaches in Agency Lab. He's also our community uh, manager. So he like manages all of our community, hypes everyone up. And he also has his own agency doing over $40,000 a month. And this guy is incredible at generating appointments through Instagram DMs. So he has an agency specifically on helping other businesses generate appointments through literally just messaging people on Instagram. Very simple, but very powerful. And today he's going to break it all down. Hopefully we can do it fast. <laughs> we'll see how uh, <laughs> how it goes. So uh, with that in mind, again, incredible individual, amazing entrepreneur. And uh, he's also just getting started. So I know that for a fact, he's going to be hitting 100K a month very, very soon. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's pass the ball off to Marcus Pizarro. What's up, Marcus? Yo. Marcus, up, welcome Joel? in, man. Good to Hang meet in you. There, guy. Can you Hang in give, there, guy. Can, can you give people a context on how many appointments you've set through DMs? About 10,000. Um, just a little bit about me. I've used my... So I ran a gym majors, and I solely use IG DMs to get my agency to 15, 20K. And uh, now... You know, actually, I give credit to Joel. Last year, he gave me the idea of helping you guys out, uh, get more appointments for your agencies in different niches from Cairo, solar, gyms, et cetera, uh, through IG, right? So I'm here to share with you everything that I've been doing in 2023 so you guys can take it in 2024 and leverage it with paper show, go high level, and just simply scale your agency out. So I'm excited to share with you guys. Don't worry. You know, I'm only going to take 20 minutes. Um, as much as I love, you know, Christian, I chew, it's not going to be as complicated as cold email. Uh, just a little bit of things to make sure you don't ban yourself off, you know, IG. And by the way, when I'm going to talk about IG, I'm also parallel to LinkedIn, to Facebook, right? It's the same thing. It's DM. So I'll be diving into that right now. Um, so yeah, anything else you guys want me to do before uh, we dive in? No, I like w- what you said earlier. It's like, hang in there, guys. It's worth it's worth the pain. Hang in there. At three hours in, we're, we're it's better than an eight-hour session Joel wanted, just FYI. There's so much to cover. 
<laughs> Absolutely. The funny thing is, is like, you know, these owners, they're not checking their DMs every day. They're tired too. Like you guys are tired right now. And one of the things I'll go over in the DMs is you got to be in and out really quick. I call it no man's land, you know, because they're not living there. And I'm going to show you what has helped me get their attention really fast, right? Just like fishing, right? Get a fish hooked on your bait and obviously reel them in as fast as you can. So obviously you can sell them on your great service. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, show you everything. So thank, thank you, Marcus. Just welcome him with a one in the comments, one in the streaming as a thank you or a, as a welcome to Marcus. Thank you, guys. guys. Yep. All right. So really quick, step by step, I'm going to first teach you the principles of DM outreach, overall outreach in general when it comes to paid ads um, and stuff that will be applicable specifically with DMing. Okay. The second thing is how to set up IGDMs, right? It's not complicated, but you always want to do it right. So you get the most out of it. So it's effective. The third thing is setting up your script and prospecting. And I'll be, I'm so pumped to show you what I'm doing. In fact, after this, I will actually give you my course. Fun, fun story. This is obviously go high level. So I'm going to give you it. You guys are obviously going to have it for free. Don't worry. Um, little story. I'm going to call out Joel, but I meant to give this to Joel in agency lab. But I just kept giving it to people in the coaching in the agency lab. And I was like, wait, <laughs> I might as well bring it to you guys right now. So I'm going to give it to you guys. Merry Christmas. Let's go. Uh, nice. You guys will have it. On top of that, I'll give you, a, um, because part of scaling is leveraging virtual assistants and training them very well. I'm also going to give you my certification course that I give them so that they are That's top awesome. prospecting. Um, prospecting and book uh, appointment setters for you. So obviously you don't have to be in the trenches all day. So you can Instead, literally pass this off. Yeah, you can really pass this off really fast. A little pro tip. In fact, a lot of people ask that's me That's awesome. By the way, wait, that that's that's huge, guys. So can we just take a moment to appreciate that? Because Marcus, that honestly is insane. Thank you, man. Of course, of course. Yeah, guys, I want to make sure you guys, you know, do this well and... um you know, part of, I'm not going to kind of, you know, dump, like, I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole right here, but I'm Filipino. I want to give as many jobs as I can uh, back to my country. So these guys are hardworking, help them help you. So I'm going to give you as much as uh, I can possibly give. So you guys have team members working hard for your agency and scaling. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into it. So here are the frameworks really quick. Number one, let's kind of like um, you mentioned, um, Pelson, is you know, think of the native, the origin, uh, the origin, origin of Facebook, of LinkedIn, of Instagram, right? Just like you said about TikTok and how it's disrupted how we watch videos now. These places are not to talk shop, maybe LinkedIn and Indeed, but Instagram and Facebook, you're here to connect with people that are like-minded, who are awesome, that you like, right? So the number one thing is to remind yourself to be conversational, right? You know, I'm going to dive into scripts that's worked for me, but being direct hasn't been usually the best case. And there's ways to obviously uh, start a conversation and actually help them be more friendly to you after cold outreach. The second thing, like we've always been saying, do more and do better, right? Volume is king. At the end of the day, you can have the best script, the best offer, et cetera. But if you're not doing enough, it don't matter. I can score more points than Steph Curry if I have a hundred shots up and he only shoots one time. Trust me, I'm not that bad at basketball. Number one, as we always say, is innovate, right? And by the way, if you guys are curious, why the hell am I doing number one, number one. I stole it from Gil Valeria, who got it from Tim Grover, his book called Winning. I don't want you guys thinking that the first thing is the most important thing. All of these are important, right? Whatever you need to focus on, it's the number one thing that you need to do, right? So where I left off is number one, be innovative, right? When, I, I swear to God, there's like 600 people in here, seven, almost 700 people in here. You guys will see the script. I need you guys to zag and not zig, guys. Everyone's going to use this script and it's going to make us look crazy, okay? So really innovate on top of this, but steal the frameworks. Uh, the fourth thing, again, offer is 80% of your outreach game. If you have a bad offer, they ain't going to click, they ain't going to book a meeting with you, okay? So make sure you have a great offer. Uh, the fifth thing, be concise and upbeat. Again, this is, imagine a bar setting. This is a bar setting, right? And I love sharing this on my coaching calls. That Instagram, Facebook, you know, most deals are done over a bar, right? Rather than, a, you know, a meeting room actually approach them very upbeat and concise, right? Be concise with your language. And they're not going to read a five essay paragraph, right? Not even, you know, an email link. 
So be concise and I'll show you exactly what my script looks like. Um, second to the last thing is again, DMs is a no man's land. If you start asking them questions to try to qualify them, which you'll see how concise my script is, they're gonna have to ask you questions back or you're inviting them to ask questions like, what's the price? How much does this cost? What do you do, right? So instead of that, just get them on a simple call, right? You guys will see my script, how I booked them in if they aren't available for a call. And lastly, speed to lead is key. Again, they're not living in the DMs, just like they're not living in um, you know, emails. Call these guys right away when they show positive reply, right? So those are the frameworks to begin with, right? The mindset behind this. So now I wanna share with you how to set up IGDM. It's pretty simple and pretty quick to get this set up. Literally you guys can do this today and start doing DMing that fast. So number one is you wanna get three to four age accounts. If you guys are curious how many DMs you can send possibly per account, it's 50 DMs per day per account to new prospects. Uh, but I like emails, you have to ramp it up. So start by doing only 15, then every three or four days, ramp it up by five. So do 20, then 25, then 30, et cetera, all the way up to 50, right? So where I go currently to get aged accounts is I go to bulk accounts by, these guys are vage and verified, right? Just get the aged Instagram accounts from 2011 or 2012 to 2016. And some of them actually have a thousand followers already. Now, if you want to get more because maybe you have 500 followers, no worries. I go to buzzoid.com. That's where I buy likes and followers. Now, if you guys are curious, what is your uh, prospecting page looking like, right? Number one, you don't want to make them, you know, uh, agencylab.io. You don't want to make them PK Media Seattle, my company, right? Now, unless you go high level where everyone knows you and they trust you, that's awesome. But we don't have that kind of authority to throw around in the beginning, right? And for our agency. So what we do is we make team member accounts, right? So what we do is we make team member accounts. They can be named Ashley, Andrew, David, and there's two reasons why. One is, and I'm totally going to just say the truth. I use female accounts like Ashley, Rebecca, Angelie, right? They get a three X R. They get a three X reply. Then my name, Joel's name. Well, it's it's messed up, man. So the, the, world fe the females have a competitive advantage on this in this domain. Exactly. Um, That's you crazy. know that. Yeah, it's crazy. Three X reply rate. You should see the roofers. Um, I'm joking. <laughs> but anyways. So we use team member accounts for not only the reply rate, but also because when they show a positive reply, we're able to say, hey, that's awesome. I can actually connect you with our CEO, Joe Kaplan, for a quick 10, 15 minute chat to give you more info. Would you like me to connect you with him? And it's kind of reverse gatekeeping. It's actually giving you authority uh, as a step up because your team member is guarding your time, right? It would be weird if Joel Kaplan literally reached out to you as an agency owner, right? So if he was someone was inviting you to actually sit down and talk to Joel, that would be pretty legit and cool, right? So that's how you set it up really fast. Again, start with 15 to 20, you know, prospects per account. That should get you roughly 80 to 100 uh, at the very start, and then you ramp it up. I just realized that's a copy and paste. All right. So I want to just share with you the KPIs really fast. Again, minimum over time while you warm up things. Do 100 messages a day, minimum, minimum. I will tell you, I'm literally doing 500 to 800 DMs right now a day. That's total, not per account, right? Yes, that's correct. Total, not per account. Again, 50 new messages per day per account when it's warmed up correctly. Um, now, typically out of 100, just for the sake of math and conversions here, you typically want to see 8 to 15 replies. Kind of like what Christian and I you said you know, 10 minutes ago. It really will depend on your niche, the timing of things. Like right now, I'll be honest, dentistry is harder to get in front of with a dentist versus a gym owner who probably handles their own, you know, page, right? But typically, I would say there are definitely easier and harder niches for Instagram right. DMs. Like you have to ask yourself, where does my niche hang out? Like realtors are on Instagram all day long. A dentist is busy with his patients. He's not like checking his Instagram nonstop. Whereas a med spa, right, who's doing more like visual stuff might be posting more, right? And engaging more on Instagram. So it just depends. Yeah, we call it the aesthetic aesthetic niches that are very sensitive to aesthetic branding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah like fit, fitness is one of those. Yeah, like if they yeah. use Instagram a lot, they're going to be on Instagram more. So... Keep going, Mark. Exactly. Yep. 
Now, let me go ahead and backtrack and actually show you how to get in front of these uh, prospects in your industry. So for example, one of my favorite ways is using hashtags. The reason why is because one, these people are showing that they are invested in making social media work and getting them leads for the garage, for the clinic, for their gym, right? So I love using hashtags. You can try and search up different hashtags in your industry that might work. For example, car detailing, maybe car detailing owner. For me in gyms, PT Studio got me in front of so many qualified gyms that had personal trainers under them because they are a studio, right? That's why I searched it up. The other way is like Christian Knight, you said, which is through a list, right? You can go ahead and scrape a list like D7 Lead Finder, and I'll actually give you their Instagram right off the bat. So you definitely can get, you know, a list for your paid ads, like Chris, uh, like Isaac Rubel said, Christian Knight, for cold email. And of course, like I'm sharing with you, DMing and also Facebook and LinkedIn too. That's how powerful D7 is. Um, the third and this really is dependent on your niche. It are famous pages that people follow, right? So for example, with gyms and what worked for me, we're, we're meme pages. A lot of gym owners and personal trainers would slack off watching memes off their favorite meme pages. And I would actually just engage with them and say, hey, that was funny, wasn't it, right? And again, that's the framework, being conversational, right? Just connecting about something that they absolutely love. And that helped me a lot when, um, with on top of hashtags, lists, and then also finding them on pages. There's multiple ways like Google Maps, right? You can definitely do that too. Now, the moment you guys have all been waiting for patiently, let me show you the script. This has literally been the script I've been using for, gosh, I would say a year now, but it has evolved over five years, right? So I'm sharing with you what has been probably like script 5.0. So there's three phases into this. One is starting the conversation, getting your foot through the door and starting the conversation. Again, it's what's funny is I love using dating analogies when it comes to literally sliding into people's DMs. That's why I call it that way. Um, number one is having a conversation starter, right? Getting them to reply back to you. The practical thing about this is that with Facebook and Instagram, you actually are landing in their message request. You're actually not landing in their primary or even general's channel, right? you're actually landing the, uh, in their request. So what you gotta do is engage with them and get them to reply back. Once they reply back, it's fair game. You can hit them up as many times as you want. So the second thing is transitioning to your offer. Again, be concise, get in, get out. Once they're hooked, then you book them in or give them a call right away if you have time. So let me go in and show you an example of how to engage with people, right? Sure, we know we need to like their posts or give them a comment, but many people, I swear to God, I see this all the time. They're just saying, hey, send you a DM, right? Hey, check your DMs, right? People who are editors, graphic designers, not just agency owners are saying that. And they don't have time to check 10 DMs a day, right? So what I do and what I've trained my VAs to do is be more personal, right? The most powerful thing, if I can share with you guys, is being more personal with your messaging and doing it at scale. When you can pair Quality and quantity it is a powerful outreach system. Those doesn't even just have to be DMs. It could be email too. Now, I, what I do, and you guys can take the script too, is I say, I love this video or I love this reel. I also like the one you posted about, if I was in gyms, I would say, you know, the five bicep exercise uh, to add an inch before summer. I'm definitely going to do number five. By the way, and then we just go ahead and use this same line. By the way, I sent you a message, would love to connect, though it might have landed in your request, right? We're just politely saying, hey, I tried to reach out to you. I don't know if you've got it, right? And after being friendly, a lot of people would take the effort to, you know, see your message, right? Because sometimes they might think that you're a customer. They might think that you're really interested in maybe becoming a client of theirs or, you know, a, a job if you're a roofer. Then that's where, if they haven't replied back, you can go in there in another post and say, hey, awesome content as usual. You know, did you get my last message? It might be stuck there forever, right? And here's the thing, depending on your niche, you need to vibe with them. So maybe this might not vibe, you know, with a lawyer, right? This, right, there's certain follow-ups that would work. Like, I'll go as far as to say, I used to try this one where, uh, when I was talking to gym owners being super casual, I would say, this person was ghosting me, like literally ghosting me. I was like, wow, this is how it feels when my ex left me. And that guy cracked up. Like he literally sent me a voice memo said, hey bro, you're funny. That's you're amazing. Yeah. And he was like, hey, I'll hop on a call with you to honestly talk about your love life and also how you can help me. Like I was, 
have like that was so funny um but would that work with lawyers maybe i mean it's human psychology right just being different but it definitely was allowed allowed me to be different right i would even i would even make it even more conversational you know, like this is this messaging is very formal. I would make it seem like you're texting a friend. Exactly. Like, this is very formal. I would just be like, yo, John, <laughs> even or like, it's going to throw them off. It's going to be like, okay, this is just someone trying to connect with me. Like, um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, test it out. A couple of questions, Marcus. Do you ever use reactions features to get in the inbox? Like, let's say you have a stranger and you watch their story because they have a public profile and you like drop like a fire reaction. Because if, mm -hmm. if they like respond to that, that automatically puts you into the regular inbox, right? Yeah, yeah, that definitely works. And especially the one of the re, uh, things I want to warn people, this is a new policy that Instagram has ha made is when you start copy and pasting your comments, this is why we do personalize in the first place, you know, it'll flag it as a spam, or it'll, it'll protect the community from, you know, you not following its guidelines, right? Another way to also, you know, have that, uh, you know, change in how you engage with people is replying to people's stories and going into their stories and replying back. Because here's the thing, what most people do is they'll go into the notifications, see who's engaging with people and kind of a sidetrack here. But the reason why I love hashtags is because it shows recent posts. And obviously people love seeing how their post is doing, right, that same day. And if you go in their posts on their uh, on their recent post, they're going to see all the people engaging. And when they see your comment, they're going to click on your profile, right? And they'll be, you know, checking you out for one to three, you know, seconds, right? To make sure you look legit. And then they'll see the DMs, right? So yes, to just give you that short answer, they can see who's uh, replying or engaging with their stories. Got it. Thank you, man. Let's get back to DMs, <laughs> the DM itself. Yeah. So now, yeah, of course. Now we get into the DMs, right? And there's multiple, multiple ways we can go about this. But the ultimate thing is you want to have a conversational opener, right? The only way you can screw this up is by making it super confusing, super long, or you don't come off as authentic and you're using something that's you know, been overused, abused, right? I mean, the funny one was when I was working with Tony Lee in car detailing was the, hey, is this the best place to ask a question, right? And literally everyone after that YouTube video went out, literally tried to use that. And everyone like who, every car detail was like, no thanks. And they didn't even know what the offer was, right? It's like, imagine going up to a girl and using the same pickup line. They're going to get tired of it. They're going to get tired of you. So you got to differentiate yourself. So that's where you can come in and ask a different question or again, be more personal with it and say, hey, saw, just saw your pace, like what you're doing, especially that bicep workout you showed, keep it up, right? Just really compliment them. It only takes 10 seconds for you or your virtual assistant to do, right? And then once they reply back, right? Like, hey, yeah, you know, we've owned our business for five years. Oh yeah, we're taking on more jobs. We're taking on more uh, ceramic coatings, right? And you, here's a cool thing. You can use multiple different ways there's multiple different ways to personalize your message. Like say, hey, I'm just curious, are you booked out this entire holiday season or do you have openings, right? Um, are you guys booked out already in January? I can imagine the fitness, be fitness business being super busy. And they're like, hey, no, I have more uh, spots available. Are you looking to come in? They might think you're a customer, but at the same time, they're raising your hand saying, hey, I need more clients, right? That's where you can transition to your offer and sound super conversational. We just low key say, awesome. We're actually looking to partner with, you know, in this case, one home renovation company in Dallas. Again, keep it personalized. We'll bring you, and then this is where your offer comes in. We'll actually bring you seven to eight jobs, right, within 14 days. And you only pay us when they show or when they have a sit down with you. And that's where the, you know, the paper show offer is so compelling because they actually see that you're really to show the proof of concept in this. And then simply just asking them like, hey, you know, would you be interested in sh me showing you how this actually works for other home renovation companies, right? If you have uh, clients already, if you don't, you can just simply say, hey, would you be interested in seeing how this works? Or do you know another uh, renovation company in Dallas uh, that would need this? And most times they're not going to pass up an opportunity like that. They're going to raise their hand and say, hey, heck yeah. And that's where you can go ahead and then call them right there, right? 
or you can go ahead and book them in, right? And actually have them meet with the CEO, right? My strategy with the whole team member account. Here are just some other follow-up paths that you can take, right? So just again, keep it conversational. Just say, hey, what's up? You know, doing good. Hey, name. You can drop a, a funny GIF, right? I showed one to gym owners where it was like, I miss my workout partner and they would get the joke, right? Right. This is what it feels to be ghost, ghosted, right? Did you get my last message? I guess, you know, life got the best out of you. Shoot me a text, right? These different lines, you can test out, see what works in your industry. Um, another thing that actually I want to share and give a shout out to Joel. He actually has it in his ClickFunnels course, MFA. You can actually do a whole follow-up sequence with testimonials, just hammering. It's like, hey, I don't know. By the way, that was made, that was made before high level existed. So really. Yeah, that's yeah. So that's why that's why I was on that platform. But that's Paul said every time we say that those two words, we get punished. So <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just, oh, yeah, yeah, it I'll was replace. this is from like this is from many, many years ago. But Marcus, Maybe. what kind of follow-ups do you set up? And like, what, what is too much? Like, I mean, do we do like 10 to 12 touch points, like other, you know, channels, or is it like, leave them alone if they don't reply? Yeah. You know, that's a great question. Follow-up is key. You know, follow-up is key before, if they're not in your ecosystem yet, meaning they're not in go high level, keep following up with these guys, right? These guys, believe me, they get hit up, you know, depending on your niche five times a day or five times a week, whatever. They forgot about you, right? Just keep hitting them up right? Hey, what's up? Doing good. Hey, I hope everything's all right. Hey, I know it's the holiday season. Did I catch you at a bad time? Right? You just be polite about it. You just be yeah. friendly, right? You don't try to be salesy, right? Yeah. Um, and what I would do practically is follow up with them if you can one time a day or once every day. So if I started, if I hit you up, Paulson, on Monday, I would follow up with you until say Friday. And then I would maybe come back Monday and show you different testimonials. So like, hey, I know um, it's a busy time you know, for you and focusing on your clinic. I just wanted to show you what Dr. Kim did uh, to get more appointments going into 2024, right? And you just literally hammer them and hammer them with so many testimonials. They'll actually watch it and they'll be like, okay, you're legit. Show me what's up, right? One of the, one of the sorry, I didn't mean to cut you up. One of the trends that are happening with a lot of agencies now is we built a, a prospecting tool inside of high level that allows you to identify uh in a local area which companies don't have a web chat or a website or yelp or gmb or instagram or any of these channels because what you can do in a dm is like hey i know we don't really know each other but i ran a test with my pro you know with my systems checker and i just want to send you a report and you can literally do it instantly where it just shows the traffic they have, how they don't have a web chat, how their in, you know Instagram is not collected in one place, and that's that's like literally inside high level that you can just shoot out a report. Um, just FYI, that's like all pretty new, like a month in. <laughs> that's fire. That is fire. I mean, if someone, what if one of you guys came up to me and you do SEO and you're like, Mark, because you're on the fifth page of Google, what are you doing, man? Um, I'm definitely gonna you know check out, give you yeah. at least five to ten minutes so that I can see what I can do better. Right. So that's fire. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. It's um, not even just SEO checker. It's literally like web chat, GMB, bunch of different things. Like if they, even if they don't have their Facebook account integrated into like a system, it'll tell them, Hey, you don't have a unified inbox. And, and it's like a full report that shoots out like a fancy PDF that you can email or just send as a doc. That's fire. That's yeah. absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Brand that's new like stuff inside high level. Anyways. My um, once the prospect is interested, what do you do? If you can, give them a call right away. If not, go ahead and use this strategy where you connect them with yourself, the founder, okay. or have the VA for you, right? I personally, honestly, I don't even know why this is here. I don't like to drop my link. The reason why, and what I've tested over thousands of thousands of different messages is when you leave people to their own devices, they will put it on the back of their agenda. They'll go back to work. They'll forget about it. You're, now you're going to have to play catch up. And now you have to, you have to do extra follow-up, right? What I like to do, and just keep it casual, just drop down your best availabilities. Here's a quick example. You know, can we schedule the call for tomorrow at 8 a.m. PST, right? Whatever their time zone is. Just make, time zone math actually makes a difference. Just give it to them in their time zone, 
right? If they say, hey, that works, sounds good, really quick, what's your best email and phone number to book us in? And by the way, right, if you're using Go High Level, just simply give them your number, the, the reciprocity bias is huge here, just so that they can trust you. It's like, hey, by the way, just so you know, when I call you, it's 206, and then you're arresting the number so that they can trust you. If you don't know who they're going to speak with, because sometimes you got you guys might get in front of the gatekeeper or the manager, just go ahead and ask them really fast, like, hey, what's the name of the person I'll be speaking with to really share uh, how we can help you guys get more patients in your clinic? Oh, it's Dr. Kim. Okay, cool. Right. And then just let them know politely that you booked them in. Right. And one of the greatest things outside of this is send them a pre-call page, right? That's where you can kind of help them understand a little bit more about you. Like, hey, just so you know who the heck we are, because I know I reached out to you and I saw that you were in Dallas. Here's a case studies page so that, you know, you guys have a better understanding about what we do, who we helped, et cetera, right? And that obviously increases show up rate and the nurturing. So at the bottom of here, right, there's different ways to handle um, objections or people saying no. Right. I don't want to I don't want to dive into it too much, but the ultimate thing is when they ask you guys price, hold a custom frame or better yet, just call them right away. That shows that believe me, that actually shows that they're interested. Right. That actually shows that they're interested. Um, but yeah, those are the top things. Like if they say no, you can definitely just say, hey, OK, no worries. Do you know another, you know, chiropractor in Dallas that would love 20 to 50 thousand in their bottom line revenue they're gonna be like oh i didn't know that's what you meant oh, okay right so you can get them back on track to being interested um another thing i used to do back in the day when i had time and guys i actually want to share if you guys have zero clients the number one thing that you guys can leverage is your own time please personalize your lines make the personal video literally say hey what's up joel my name is marcus I'm owner of PK Media. I actually saw that you're a chiropractor and I'm looking to partner with someone in Dallas. I wanted to make this personal video so you know I'm not using a virtual assist. Like le leverage that. That will help you stand out. When you can stand out, that allows them to trust you a lot more and be like, wow, you actually took time to make this video. I'll definitely give you five minutes of my time to see how you can help. So that is the script right there. Again, it's not that complicated. It's three things. A pro Again, I'm going to use the dating analogy. I'm really good with dating analogies as well. Uh, Approach the girl, have a different hook, get them interested with something that they want, that they like, and then book them and ask them out. In other words, get their phone number, right? It's, it's, that's why we call it sliding into your DM, all right? So that is the script right there. Really quick, I want to show you examples of this actually in play. So I, you know, Joel asked me like, hey, can you show some examples of this working, right? So here's an example. Here's a dog training agency. Right here is us literally using the, is this the best place to ask a question, right? Again, <laughs> it hasn't been used so much in dog training. They say, hi, how can I help? We actually go into the script literally and use the exact same thing, but for his, the agency owner's um, offer, right? Asking them if they're interested, right? And literally, look, she's saying, hey, how about a call tomorrow? She's the one asking if we can get on the call, right? She's the one giving the number, right? It's really that easy. I hate to say it that way, but people need your help. You just got to be friendly. You just got to be different, right? You know, let me show you. Let me show you. Let's see here. Can you, uh, before you go further into details real quick, Marcus, can you, can you help us understand the structure of what happens? So like, are these messages getting pounded into your Slack channel? How, how are the virtual assistants alley-ooping those dunks to you? Like, what does that structure look like? That's perfect. That's actually a perfect uh, point right, right here. So whenever they book a meeting, right, the number one thing is to make sure it's reflected on the owner's calendar. Obviously, the last thing you want to do is no show someone that you didn't know. Uh, so this is what I have my appointment setter say, right, the date and time that they're meeting, the account that we use, right, if it was a girl account, I would say Kaylin Parker. So I can go on that intro call and say, hey, I saw that uh, you spoke to my team member, Kaylin, over Instagram. She might have approached you about how we can help your dog training company get more clients. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then continue with your script, right? The information, if you want to do your diligence, right, especially if you're doing SEO or website, you definitely want to ask for the website uh, and see how they rank on you know, Google, their websites, so you can go in there and already do an audit. Um, and of course, dropping the screenshots of the conversation. So you have context of, you know, maybe they asked two times, like, what's the price? What's the cost? What do you do? Might be prepared. Uh, they might bring it up, right? 
So that allows you, and of course, showing that it's actually booked on none other than go high level. So, and then of course, have them drop your EODs because at the end of the day, you need to track your own numbers, whether it's paid ads, uh, cold email, right? With instantly for me, right? I just keep track of new messages sent, how many follow-ups were also sent, pause replies, and then intros booked, right? As you can see yep. Angela, uh, Angelica here uh, and Ace. And those are your actual virtual assistants. So from a ratio standpoint, about 150 or maybe above 100 messages at least to get to maybe five total positive DMs on an average, right? So that means at scale, you need to be sending out for your sales team. If you want 20 appointments a day because you're excited and want to get an appointment setter, their calendars need to be full. Otherwise, you're going to lose appointment setters. You're going to lose closers because there's no activities happening around your offer. So know those numbers so you understand how to ramp up. So if you want to get you know, a hundred appointments a, a, a week, which is kind of average in a standard, very growing agency. Um, Instagram just becomes maybe 20, 30% of the total traffic flow where another 40% is, you know, cold ads, another or warm ads, and then another 30, 40% is cold email. You need to have omnipresent approach as an agency to grow in 2024. It's not one thing or another. It's checking off that box with multiple things. So you're not just battling in one, one front of the battle. Um, Marcus, anything else that you I know do? I do. I, yeah. I do advise everyone though, Paulson, always, this, this is my philosophy. Start with one master one before you add a new Correct. channel. Correct. So yeah. pick out of all we get, I wanted to give you guys three different strategies, full breakdown step-by-step step, how to implement three different complete strategies for getting appointments and acquiring clients going into 2024. By the way, the reason I got a little quieter towards the second half is because I wanted to make sure everyone got through. So it's like, let me just let them go and, and not chime in as much. Um, but uh, tomorrow we have two more days left together. So don't worry, you'll get plenty of, uh, we'll have plenty of time to hang out. That being said, my philosophy is start with one prospecting channel, master it. Then ask yourself two questions. How can I do more and do it better? Until you feel like you've maxed that out. You're like, Joe, I'm sending out cold emails to everyone in my niche once a week. And it's really dialed in. It's very, very good. Okay, once that's done, add Instagram DMs. The only reason to maybe experiment with multiple at once is if you're not sure which one you want to go all in on just yet. So if you're like, hey, I'm going to do a small test for all three or two of them just to see what I like a little bit more, that's totally fine. But once you pick one, you need to go all in and, and really commit to it and figure out how to do more and better before adding new, more and better before adding new. Once you've maxed out doing more and doing it better, then add new. Um. Marcus, that was insane. Thank you so much. Guys, Thank you, man. so quick recap. Yesterday, we covered the entire paper show model step-by-step. -step. Then we covered how to actually get results for clients for two niches, Cairo and roofing. Then today, we went over three different strategies end-to-end, -end, giving you guys absolutely everything step-by-step -step that you need to acquire clients. Cold email, Instagram DMs, and paid ads. Isaac Rubel, absolutely over-delivered, give you guys everything. Christian Ashu absolutely over-delivered and gave you guys everything. And Marcus Pizarro, absolutely over-delivered and just gave you guys everything that you need. Literally, he's also giving you an entire additional course, breaking it down in more detail, although he just did an amazing job breaking it down from a high level. And he's making, or and he's giving you guys access to a course that you can share with your team members to get them certified in this process so that they could just do it on your behalf. Now, tomorrow, now that you guys know how to get clients' results, now that you guys know how to get appointments as part of the acquisition, tomorrow is going to be all sales. So I'm going to be bringing on my business partner, Sergio Tavares, eight-figure entrepreneur. He's closed millions and millions and millions of dollars in sales. He had his own agency that he scaled to over $300,000 a month. And now he runs Agency Lab with me. And he's going to be breaking down everything they need to know for sales from the intro call all the way to the demo presentation. We're going to give everything away as always. So make sure to tune in tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time. Let's make this the greatest workshop of high level history ever. So <laughs> I think, you know, what's crazy to me is like when we planned this out, 
the guys were like, really? We really want to run like a six hour session. And I'm like, well, let's just see what happens uh, with the crowd. And it's crazy to still know we've got well over a thousand plus people watching between the Zoom as well as the streaming. So I think people are loving it. If you totally have appreciated everything we've shared, give us a one in the Facebook group streaming comments, because I want to make sure Joel feels the love. Last night, he was texting me. He's like, Hey, do they do they love everything I'm sharing? I feel like I'm giving away the farm, but at the same time, I'm not really sure. And I'm like, Joel, I'm telling you, they they're just trying to figure I out swat, what I to swat, do. I swat love. I swat <laughs> he needs love. to feel the love, y'all. Like he's gonna give away more stuff, and we can yeah. convince him to maybe even give away a a, a massive agency somehow. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow, twelve o'clock. EST as usual. We still got two more days to go. We're only halfway. And imagine the amount of things. Sales is going to be unbelievable. I personally know Sergio. He's a great friend, someone that I respect in the sales space. And it's like when sales guys know sales guys, there's like a different jive. And Sergio and I are one of those where we we love each other's angles and content. Um, so Sergio's so going to be awesome. So tune in tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and end the call and wish me good luck that Zoom recordings don't crash. Give us a few days to get those replays up. Once again, this is your last chance to jump into this offer so you can get all the snapshots, all the courses. I feel like there's like 10 courses now between all the experts that we brought on. No, there's more. Uh, <laughs> there's more than 10. So, and by the way, Joel sells these things for like thousands of dollars on an annual. Well, I, I, get, uh, I, I, I just, just to be clear, I actually, I, about a, a year and a half to actually after the 10 day workshop, I started giving everything away for free. It's, it's just incredible. that it's becoming, it's become, it's become impossible to literally give away all the courses because on YouTube, because that would be like, endless amounts of videos on YouTube that are kind of unorganized. <laughs> so what I did for you guys is I organized all of the best content in one place where you just click and create one login and boom, you have access to everything. So yeah, um, it's, it's interesting. My business model shifted from, uh, you know, charging for the information to now saying, Hey, I'm going to give everything away for free. If you want to work with me, you can either hire me for consulting or I'll run your agency ad. So we also do have an agency for agencies, but every, all the information is free. However, you guys get it all in one place, easy to wow. access. Um, Thank so you guys. So make sure, so. make sure you comment one in the streaming. So Joel and his entire team feels the love. They're spending four or five hours these days, um, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, to really deliver to you. And, you know, honestly, they're busy people. They've got plenty of things to do. Make sure you uh, put a one in the chat and make sure he feels the love. Again, to jump into that offer, it's 50% off for the first three months on any plan, which is the same thing as our holiday offer that's happening right now. But if you do it under the workshop link, you get all the courses and snapshots and all those things that Joel's giving you completely for free, uh, along with the experts that he brought on from his team and strategic partnerships that also over deliver. So anyways, without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and close the call. We'll see you tomorrow. See you guys. Quick uh, housekeeping items. Number one, it, yes, this is all going to be recorded, uploaded to YouTube. This is also going to all be recorded and uploaded to my channel and High Levels channel. So both channels. On top of that, you guys are going to get access to all the resources at the end of the day four tomorrow. Everything that we've gone over, we're going to have for you guys. On top of that, you're going to get access to all the snapshots. You must have high level. You will need those to access the snapshots, the landing pages, the text sequences, the reactivation campaign, everything that we went over, you will need high level. There's no other way for me to give it to you. Um, how do you access day two and day one? You have two options. If this is day three and you're like, yo, Joel, yo, Paulson, how do I get access to day one and day two? It's very simple. You can either go to the Facebook group and the high level Facebook group and look for the replays because we did stream live to the Facebook group. The other option is that you can wait until we launch them on both YouTube channels. So 
if you want it like right now, you're like, Joel, I need day one, day two, go and find the live replay inside of the Facebook group. And if you're okay with waiting, it's all going to be in sequence, in chronological order on YouTube when we upload it in a few weeks. That will take a little bit. So in the meantime, and I believe we're streaming on YouTube right now, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, it says oh, now YouTube. streaming on YouTube. Sweet. So, okay, guys. So day one, this is going to be a bit of a uh, mind bender. Uh, day one, the live was streamed on Facebook. So you guys can go back and find it in the high-level Facebook group. Day two was streamed on Facebook. You can go back and find it in the Facebook group. Day three, you're only going to be able to see it on YouTube until we go back and re-upload everything. So uh, with that in mind, Jordan, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Jordan, can you do me a big favor? Can you check on YouTube and double check if that is a private or public streaming? Because it looks like it's privately streaming to subscribers where it's uh, no it's it's uh should be good now i think we're all set really okay how do i how do i see that i'm not a techie you know that <laughs> <laughs> uh there's there's the link here and people can just click on it and they're they're good to go oh cool there's like nine people watching um, uh, no, it's... all right so if you're watching on no, I would also comments. say, Jordan, can you post in the Facebook group a few times? Yep, I'm doing that right now. Just oh. like make a few posts being like we're streaming on YouTube. <laughs> what a curveball. It took us 20 minutes to just hey, we, we got it. We, we're, we're on it. Oh, man. Hey, this is not bad. First day three, first curveball. You guys have you guys have crushed it. You awesome. know, and it's really not that bad. It's chill. It feels like a day three vibe. It's more chill. <laughs> I'm I'm more relaxed. Maybe it's because I don't have coffee yet. You know, <laughs> that Uber driver is going to show up right at the height and climax. Oh, no, he's, it's no, it's he's he's, he's <laughs> about to deliver it. And okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So yeah. let's get started, Joel. I do have to run to the airport in about four hours. So I do have like. A no, today's going to be so a warning, guys. Today will be shorter. Today's going to be because the reason we divided in the day into four days Day one and day two are going to be the most jam-packed. How to get your clients amazing results with paper show leveraging high level AI and the agency model all together. We went over the ads. We went over the high level sequences. We went over how to call your clients leads to get them scheduled. We went over the scripts. We even went over how to take payment in advance to get to really increase their show up rates. We went over all that for both Cairo and roofing on. And we also went over how to do reactivation campaigns, how to actually reactivate all their leads. Day two, we went over all things acquisition, how to get appointments on your calendar with prospects that want to work with you. We literally broke down the entire system that you can use to scale the 10,000 cold emails a day. We broke down how to do Instagram DMs if you want to get started with a free method where there's literally zero cost. And we went over paid ads and we showed you guys literally everything, everything. The ads, the lander, the high level snapshot, everything. And we literally, we even showed you guys how to set up the email accounts, how to warm up the email accounts, how to uh, scrape a database, everything that you guys would need to know to start setting appointments. And we gave you three different strategies, not one, not two, but three today. We're going to talk about how to actually close the deals once you get the appointment. So how do you actually close the deals once you get the appointment? Now, there's two phases. I guess let's just dive in. So there's two phases of the sales process in the agency space. There's an intro call. And this is where you get to know the prospect over the phone. You get to really get to know them, understand them all that good stuff. And then we do a second call where we actually show them. We show them high level. We show them our ads. We show them what we're going to do for them. Now, some people might say, Joel, isn't it better to just do a one call close? That might be true. But the only reason I prefer a two call close in the agency space is because Number one, it helps set expectations. 
you're getting them to buy not just one time, you're getting them to buy for a long period of time. So what I noticed in the past is when people do a one call close, they're not really sure what they're getting exactly. And then as soon as they find out, oh wait, these are the ads, this is how, you know, this is how the high level AI works. Then they start having questions, maybe some doubt creeps in and you don't want that. I want to, I want to make sure that they know exactly what they're signing up for and they're excited. They feel really good about it. So personally, I prefer a two call close where you're going to first take them on a discovery where you're going to get to know them. You're going to find out all their pain points, all their desires, all the things that they want out of this marketing system. And then you're going to be like, cool, Sounds like we might be a good fit here. Let me show you everything just to make sure this is exactly what you're looking for. And if it is, we can move forward. The reason why that is important is because it sets you up for long-term success. Quick little funny story. One time we closed a client way back when on a one-call close. And then when the guy hopped on the onboarding call, I had built out all of his ads, high level, everything. I had everything built out and we hopped on the, the launch call to say, oh, let's get started and go live. And he was like, where's my website? So he thought it was, I don't know what happened there, but sorry, one time we closed a client. Wait, uh -oh. one call. Sorry, that was me. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, I, was I was like, checking the YouTube streaming and it was replaying what you were saying. Okay. I'm like, are we in its inception right now. <laughs> it's a spiritual um, day. Okay, so, spiritual day. That would have been thrown everybody out. <laughs> and then uh, the guy hops on. He's like, Joel, where's my website? And I remember being like, okay, this is not going to work. Like people, this is a, this is definitely more of a, uh, I mean, it's like, for example, the big software companies like High Level, there's a, it, it's a product, it's tech. You, it, it's, it's, it's not like an emotional sale. It's not like you're selling someone on working with you for losing weight, for example. And you're just a personal trainer. Like, what is there really to show? For example, let's hear a personal trainer and you're trying to get someone to sign up for a 12 week package. I mean, you can walk around the gym and show them the gym, but like, there's not much to show. It's just, it's pretty self-explanatory. So it's a hundred percent an emotional sale, not a product sale with high level with marketing agencies. It's both it's emotion and product. It's cool. I really need this. This is exactly what I'm looking for. This ties into ex my goals. This ties into everything that I want to avoid with marketing. It's perfect. And I need to know what I'm getting. It needs to also be a product-led sale. So I like a two-call close. That's my favorite. Can you do a one-call close? Sure. I will say there's one exception. If people are, like if you have a huge brand, everyone knows exactly what you do. You have an agency where people are like, I already know what you guys do. I've, all my friends work with you guys. I'm ready to sign up. You can do a one-call close. but the other reason I like a two call close is because when you're working with people that don't necessarily know, like, and trust you that much, or you just met them, it's very hard to meet someone and be like, Hey, can I get your credit card? It's a lot easier if you spend more time with them and it removes some of that friction and tension and, and urgency. It makes it more, of an authentic and genuine sale. So that's my spiel. It's two call close. I'm gonna give you guys a few more warnings. Number one, you guys need to be practicing every single, well actually before we go on, if that made sense, drop a one in the chat. Drop a one in the chat. I can see the messages today. So drop a one in the chat if that made sense. Two call close, that's the sales process from a high level. So Joel, um, that link- or that it in the zoom uh the youtube link uh if you click on that it'll take us to our youtube streaming and inside the stream okay the right did you disable the uh did you disable the uh okay i see because people were chatting and i was like yeah they I were guess no they were chatting until I was, talking about. I was able to start the streaming so i was like okay cool we can move the chat into the chat if you look at the streaming on youtube on the right side there's a chat open it's almost like okay i see it 
It's like, it's like these old AOL like chat rooms. It's so vintage, <laughs> but either way, um, there's a lot of ones there. Um, so you can see the comments and re responses. Um, also, to those of you that are watching and you sat through day one and two, you're you're probably brain fried of the amount of things that you have to essentially do to compete in the world of building a business today. I, I want to just like encourage you and inspire you and warn you at the same time. Towards end of this call and maybe even tomorrow, we'll go through and give you a chronological master plan that is going to be in order in what steps you should take for 2024. So as much as you're learning everything, Joel will be the first one to tell you, just focus on one pillar that you're focused on building. So maybe it's cold email and that's all you focus on. Maybe it's Instagram, G, you know, IG, that's all, you know, DMs, that's all you focus on. So as much as information we're providing, it's important that you don't get the squirrel brain of like, let me attack everything and do everything. You're not going to be able to do everything. Matter of fact, if you try, you probably will fail. So just focus on one pillar that matters and probably end of tomorrow or maybe even uh, later today, if we have time, we'll put together a chronological 2024 master plan calendar based on the things that we're teaching throughout the entire workshop. So that way going into 2024, you have a game plan for January. There's nothing else you need to do, but just that pillar. Maybe it's cold email for you. Maybe it's, you know, creating content, whatever it is, like just focus on one thing is what I'm going to reiterate because the amount of content that we're essentially putting out. And I'm only saying this because we had feedback yesterday. Uh, well, people are brain fried. People are overwhelmed. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. But we're building a massive business. I, uh, look, I, look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. You're going you're gonna to be overwhelmed. If you guys are like, Joel, how do I make a million dollars? And it's easy. And I don't have to stress and I don't have to learn and I don't have to grow. Like you're lying to yourself. That doesn't exist. Trust me, if it did, I would be a billionaire if I could just press a button and get you guys a million dollars each. It's, I, I don't, Paul said, I'm definitely down to do the, uh, the, the, plan the, the, the map. Yeah. I'm absolutely down to do that and help people. And, and it's also really important for people to keep in mind, if things are overwhelming, that is a good thing. That means that you are pushing your mind. That means that you're expanding your mental capacity. It's supposed to be, if, if you're learning how to build a million dollar business, it's going to be stressful. For example, I'll be honest, today I woke up, I had like five fires to deal with. Literally, first thing I look at my phone, I have like five, five fires to deal with. It, it, it's not supposed to be sexy. It, you know, everyone looks at like the, the Lambos, the lifestyle, the the traveling, the world, private jets. It's ninety nine percent not like that. So so, I'm gonna double down, Boston. We absolutely will do a map to make it simple for people. I'm absolutely down, and that will not get rid of the overwhelm. <laughs> it's still gonna be overwhelming. I promise you guys, and that's okay. I think one of the 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 realities is that if you know what you're signing up for, it's a lot easier. If you have the right expectation, it's a lot easier. So for example, if you're like, if I said to you today, hey, this is going to be kind of crazy. Paulson, let's go on a run after this. Okay. What are you probably expecting? One mile, two miles, three miles? Yeah, nothing crazy. Uh, two or three. I think I can now. Right? So maybe extra mile for me. <laughs> you probably can because I had knee surgery <laughs> like six months ago. Um so uh, imagine if we're on the uh, out there and I'm like, hey, you're actually going to have to run a whole marathon. Yeah, It's going to feel extremely overwhelming. You're going to feel underprepared. You're going to feel thrown off. You're going to feel conflicted. You're going to feel like, I don't want to do this. You're going to feel like, no, I'm out. Whereas if I said to you, hey, on this date, we're going to run a marathon. You know, let's say January 15th. Is it going to be hard? Is a marathon going to be hard? Absolutely. But now you have the mental preparation to be like, I know what I'm signing up for and I can prepare and I can lean in with more confidence. So I, I, I do want to state that 
and that's not a bad thing, guys. It's good. If, if you guys are getting overwhelmed and your competition is not, that means that you guys are growing and they aren't. So lean in, lean in. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's supposed to be hard. That, that makes it worth it. So by the way, got my coffee. So with oh, that wow. in mind, you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's uh, dive in. So actually a few more warnings. Sales. All of you guys, are try- you, you know that famous Allen Iverson quote where he's like, we talking about practice? You know that, that quote? <laughs> well, in sales, player, man. <laughs> it, it, yeah, in, in, in sales, you actually have to practice, okay? There's no like magical person that's like so good at sales, they don't need to practice. My company, eight-figure company, practices every single day no excuses three days a week are all about practicing the art of sales so like we do role plays we do call reviews and we learn new things on the other two days we actually we actually do product knowledge so we make the sales team better at understanding what they're selling if my team who's doing eight figures is still practicing every day and you're not, that is not okay. Even if you're just starting out, you absolutely need to commit to, and actually even more so, you need to commit to practicing one hour a day. And here's the things that you should do as a beginner. Number one, role play. Role play. If you don't have someone to practice with, find a group of people in this community in your network, even other agency owners, you don't even have to be in the same team. Find a a sales training group to be a part of. And it doesn't have to be a paid one. I'm saying like, find four other people in the high level group that you resonate with or you've talked to in the past and say, hey, let's all practice every day and hold ourselves accountable. This is gonna do a few things for you. It's gonna make you feel like you're supported You're going to get way more feedback very, very quickly. And it's actually going to give you a space to practice because now you show up and you do role play every single day with other people. You're going to level up much faster. Once you have calls to review, like once you've taken some sales calls, then you want to actually start listening to your calls, both the good ones and the bad ones, because this is going to wire your brain to be like, hmm. This one worked. That's interesting. I should do more of that. Or this didn't work. This felt off. Let's not say that again. And then the last thing you want to do is so role play, call review. And the last thing is just learning. Like you guys could also just take the hour to watch this training about sales or watch any other training about sales. It's, it's, it's just taking time to learn and master the art of sales. I will say this. If I had to pick one skill to grow a business, in the, or sorry, to grow my agency to start with, I would say sales. Everything else, if I have the ability to generate cash, I can hire really smart people. So for me, and, and what, what, one of my core philosophies, by the way, is you need product and sales. You need to have amazing client results and you also need to be able to get clients in the first place. But most people tend to focus so much on client results, client results, client results, and they ignore sales. Why is that? It's because sales is intimidating. It forces you to face all of your fears. It forces you to have to lean in and get rejected. It's very overwhelming, you know? And it's like, it's like you're consciously running into a wall every day. Yeah. You keep hitting your head. So so it's really hard. But if you can master it, you'll never have to worry about money again. Right. It's it's the it's that's the the beautiful side about it. So you guys need to commit to practicing every single day. That's warning uh, number one. Warning number two, you guys absolutely need to have conviction in what you are doing. Like the 80-20 of all of this. You I would throw away all the scripts. Throw away all the presentations. If you guys don't believe that you are helping someone, you're you're not going to close. I would much rather take someone that 
sucks at the sales framework, sucks at the script presentation, but really believes really from the bottom of, the, of their heart that they have something valuable to provide. I'd rather take them than someone that is tactically really good at sales, but doesn't believe in the product. So you have to ask yourself, how do you get conviction? Well, there's two types, two types of conviction. Number one, there's conviction in yourself. And number two, there's conviction in, in the product. And you need to increase both. How do you increase conviction in yourself? You have to be the type of person that says they're going to do something and does it consistently. Are there going to be times where you say you're going to do something and you don't? Absolutely. But you need to start becoming the person that you can consistently rely on. So your belief in yourself goes up. That is my, and there's way more things that you guys can do to increase your belief in yourself. But if I had to pick one thing to give you guys is if you say you're going to practice every single day and you're going to say, I'm going to commit to this Monday through Friday, one hour a day, and then you don't, then you're going to lose belief in yourself. It's not about, I'll give you guys a gym analogy. It's not about, and let's say we're trying to get strong, right? It's not about saying, I'm going to bench 315 pounds. It's about saying, I'm going to show up every single day and improve myself and try to get better. And I'm going to go to the gym and you know get better at lifting every single day. I'm going to follow my nutrition and be the type of person that says they're going to do it and follows through. And over time, what's going to happen is I will become someone who can bench 315, right? Or who can bench to whatever you guys want to bench. That's a lot of weight. Some people genetically might not be able to. So maybe that's a bad weight. But let's say like, let's just pick 185. Just something that most people could lift if they really committed to. That comes from saying you're going to do something and doing it consistently over a long period of time. And then you have the belief in yourself that it's possible. It's not by just looking in the mirror and being like, I'm going to bench 185. It's about you trusting yourself. So if I had to pick one thing, I would say it's that. It's saying, okay, I'm the type of person that says they do hard things. Let's do hard things. I'm the type of person that says, hey, I'm going to face my fear today. Okay, we'll pick up the phone and call your prospects. It's about being the type of person that you want to be and following through on a consistent basis every day. That's how I believe you ultimately build conviction in yourself. If I had to boil it down to one thing. Now, how do you build conviction in the product? This one is a little trickier. I believe everyone should start off by either running a performance model, which is what we've talked about, so that you can learn and get reps in by doing free trials so that you can, again, learn, get better, consistently see yourself getting your clients' results or partner with someone that already knows how to get the client's really good results. Those are probably my favorite threes where you do performance deals where it's low risk to the client and it allows you to get that experience. Number two, it's to run free trials where you're going to get experience over time, even though you're not getting paid so that you can build that conviction. And you're like, okay, this is a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. And number three is to find someone and essentially acquire that confidence through someone else. And Obviously, that's probably the, the hardest one is to find the, the, the right person, but um, that will allow you to believe in what you're selling. And I believe that the question shouldn't be, how do I sell without social proof, without experience? The, the real question is like, how do you get as much experience as fast as possible? You guys need to be asking yourself, like, how do I get conviction? A, a better question should be like, how do I get as much experience to have conviction as fast as possible? So you guys should be figuring out, okay, how do I get experience very, very fast? So for example, when I started my agency, and this is the last point I'll make, then we'll dive in. When, when I started my agency, I, uh, 
I went to BNI. I went to this local networking group. Paulson, did did you ever go to that? I did. Uh, it was like the ones where you had to come in and provide a referral. Everybody talks about what kind of referrals they want, and it was like a big exchange. Uh, so it's a it's a good way to start off just to get your feet wet. But I don't know so, if that's in the primary source. No, no. Well, here, here's what I was going to say. So what I did is I went to that local networking group, and you're in front of like 30 businesses, and I pretty much said, "Hey, I'm just launching my agency here in Boulder, Colorado." If anyone wants us to do a free 30 days of marketing, come talk to me at the end and let's chat about what that would look like. I'm trying to really build my network, get my name out there. I had I, that day, I closed five people on doing a 30 day trial. They're going to cover the ad spend. It's very similar to the performance model, right? Yeah. And what that allowed me to do is get experience quickly which slowly but surely builds conviction over time. So there, there's no like... If there is a secret hack, it's to find the person that already has it and, and, and work with them, whether it's a white label agency, whether it's someone in the high level group, whether it's someone that you know. Yeah, we have certified partners now, so you can get somebody that's certified that'll pretty much do your fulfillment for you. Uh, or if they're sales oriented and they're certified, that means they probably know your product pretty well, so they know what they're selling. So definitely tap into our certified directory, just brand new that we launched last, like literally last month. Go ahead, uh, Joel, let's dive in. Sweet. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview. Conviction, we talked about practice, we talked about, and lastly, it's gonna be hard. Like you're learning a, the, the, you're learning a, people talk about high income skills, right? Like coding, high income skill. Uh, copywriting, high income skill, sales, high income skill. Why are these called high income skills? It's because it directly affects the bottom line of a business. It directly impacts revenue. For example, an account manager that's working with the clients, it definitely helps the business, but it's not, it's, it's more indirectly. If the client has a great experience through an account manager, they stay longer, they pay more, but it's not directly getting money in the account. Sales is like the ultimate high income skill because you're directly impacting the bottom line, which means it is going to be hard, guys. Um, I will, I'll share one last story. I had a friend who he's a, a truck driver and he hates it. And I found an agency for him to go work at. And I told him, you're going to start off cold calling and then you can move on to closer. And it's going to be the hardest thing you ever do. He has two kids. He works really hard. And I told him it's going to be harder than you doing all that manual, like lifting. You know, he does manual work as well. I told him this is going to push you more than anything else. But I also told him this. If you push through and get really good, you'll have the tool, the key to change your life forever. So it is worth it. All right, with that in mind, let's dive in. For those of you guys that have followed my content in the past, this might be recap. Sales is not going to change that much. Like sales is going to be the same as last year, as three years ago, as four years ago, as 10 years ago. It's, it's, it's very similar. Um, it, it doesn't change too much. So the intro call, this is part one. There's four phases, okay? There's four phases to the call. First, I'm going to get them to commit to a conversation. I want them to get them to say, yeah, is this a good time to chat? Cool. We're having a conversation. Do me a quick um, favor, Joel. Um, can you, yeah. Can you go to the top left corner? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Perfect. And by the way, if you are a high leveler, you'll get these assets for free. If you don't have a high level account, jump in so you can take advantage of all the resources we're providing an example what joel is showing just fyi uh, as just one of many things uh, but go ahead yep okay do you guys uh wait i stopped sharing one second. Um, and if you're awesome. watching in the youtube channel and want to jump into the zoom i dropped a link of the zoom room you can come in if you want to and our administrators will let you in um 
And that's because we don't have our Facebook streaming that we normally have in the group due to Zoom being down right now with Facebook. Um, we usually don't stream into the YouTube channel. And someone said, um, you cannot hear my audio. Can you give me a one in the chat in the YouTube channel? If you can hear my audio. Uh, okay, Michael, thank you so much. Cool. Um, go ahead, Joel. All right. All right, so we're going to go through the entire script. I'm going to break it down for you guys. And uh, phase one, I want to get them to commit to a conversation. So, hey, Paulson. Yeah. Hey, Paulson, this is Joel with Agency Lab. How's your weekend? I literally thought you're, you kind of cut out Zoom or something. You're like, wait, is internet there? <laughs> No, 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 I'm just... You're, you're doing the sales call. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hey, Paul, so I'm like... Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, this is the craziest connection. Call, man. <laughs> it's one of those days. So I, 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 you know, I know we're set for chat right now. I don't know what you're talking about with the internet, but <laughs> are we still good for about 10 to 15 minutes here? Yeah, sounds good. I got about nine minutes. Okay. Um, so I just got him to say yes, right? That's, that's the first part. I just wanted to say, yes, we're happy. We're good to have a conversation. That's phase one. Paulson's like, no, we're not good for a talk, a chat right now. That means that we didn't accomplish phase one. So phase one is just getting them to agree to having this conversation today. Now there's two types of openers. There's opener for inbound, like the ads that we talked about, and then there's openers for outbound. So for example, remember yesterday, Marcus talked about calling people that reply on Instagram or calling people that reply on cold email. That's going to be this script. If you're, if someone already scheduled with you on your calendar, that's inbound. So if someone, if you already have the call literally scheduled on your calendar, that's inbound. If you're just calling them because they said they might be interested, they reply to an email, they reply to an Instagram DM said, yeah, call me. That would be outbound. So let's go through inbound one more time. Hey, Paulson. Yeah. Hey, Paulson. This is Joel with Agency Lab. How is your day going? It's pretty good. Uh, can you can you remind me what this call is about? Yeah, I know we're set for a chat right now. I see it on my calendar. Are we still good for about 10 to 15 minutes here? Yeah. Can you tell me what it's about? Sure. Um, for context and clarity, my name is Joel with Agency Lab. What we do is we work with dentists, helping them either with consistency or helping them scale the practice. Uh, you had scheduled on one of our social media ads uh, two days ago. And oh, yeah, uh, you remember the time for right now. Is now a good time for about a 10 to 15 minute chat? Yeah, we can talk. I remember seeing something about the ads. You're already throwing the objections. We'll get to the objections a little later. I'm being, <laughs> I'm, being, is, I'm being the real that's playing team. hard that's fine <laughs> I, I, we so i have all the responses as well um, okay, awesome. at the bottom objection so like can we talk later yeah i'm i'm so desensitized i'm so desensitized they are resistant i'm them saying no, them saying no to everything paulson's like no we're not talking <laughs> uh, look dr paulson um just to be honest my intent is not to bash you or come off too strong i'm just trying to get a better understanding of your practice and see where you're at what you're looking for you know so anyways all these are all these objections are, are down here we can we can go over them later <laughs> someone said this man um, is triggering my ptsd from cold calling <laughs> yeah all right well, let's do let's do outbound let's do outbound so again let's say that let's say that i uh sent you an instagram dm Okay. And you said, yeah, call me tomorrow. Or you said, yeah, I'm interested. But you never gave me a time to call you. Hey, Paulson. Yeah. Hey, Paulson. This is Joel with Agency Lab. I just saw that you replied to my Instagram message. We were just having a conversation uh, back and forth about getting you new patients. How's your day going? Yeah, it's good. I wasn't expecting a phone call, uh, but can you can you tell me a little bit about what this is all about? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, for context and clarity, my name is Joel with Agency Lab, and what we do is we work with dentists, helping them either with consistency or helping them scale their practice. Is now time for about a ten to fifteen minute chat? Yeah, sure. I've got I've got a few minutes. 
Cool. Perfect. Now, here's the thing. If they start being like, what is this about this or that? I just want to reply a little bit and go back to is now a good time to 15, 10 to 15 minute chat. It's like reply a little bit is yeah. now a good time for 10 to 15 minute chat. I'm just going to loop back to that. If yeah. Paulson's like, for example, also remember, also remember, guys and gals, I'm seeing some comments. This is not cold. This is warm in a sense because they've had some kind of interaction with you. If they message you on Instagram replying a couple of different times, then it's a little, I wouldn't even call it warm. It's lukewarm. There's some kind of an interaction you can stand on. Yeah, this is not cold call. We didn't, we're not going to teach you. Cold call is a total different beast. This is, for, this is in relation to what we talked about yesterday. Paid ads. Hold the email, hold the DM. This one is for paid ads. I'll even mark it down. Paid ads. Oops. And this is going to be cold email reply. Man, why is my keyboard not working? Or Instagram DM reply. So this is if, if someone booked on paid ads. Someone booked on paid ads. This is how you open it. If someone replied to your cold email or Instagram DM, this is how you open it. Now, if they're like, uh, can you just be like, well, you know, I'm really busy right now. Um, sure. Yeah, I'm really busy right now. Can you call me later? Um, yeah, just really quick. I have like two to three questions. You guys are mainly focused on uh, dental implants, right? Yeah, dental implants is kind of our main thing. And then I just jump right in. I'm just like, okay, awesome. And um, why don't you give me like a 30,000 foot view? Are you guys uh, also doing Invisalign? Are you guys doing general dentistry? Or are you just looking to hone in on dental implants in 2024? Uh, we like to get more implants uh, more than anything else, to be honest. So now I'm just I'm just hooking you back in and I'm ignore I'm essentially ignoring I'm taking the lead and I'm essentially saying I'm going to try to see if this is a BS objection or a real objection. That's really what I'm trying to do. So I'm like, look, I only have two to three questions. You guys are mainly focused on this, right? Um, if they if they still say they're busy, so yeah, I mean, so let, let's go through that. So just really quick, I have like two to three questions. Uh, you guys are mainly focused on dental implants, right? That's right. Yeah. Dental implants is kind of our main thing. And then tell me, but I'm really busy. I can't talk right now. Well, I'm, I'm really busy. Uh, can you call me back later or just send me something? So I can definitely call you back in like 10 to 15 minutes, but I just want to make sure you guys actually want to scale and add new dental implant patients. You're not just telling me, you know, 10 to 15 minutes to get off the phone. It's at least worth a conversation, right? Yeah, I, I think that's worth our time. Yeah, I appreciate you clarifying what the call is about. Cool. So at that point, if, if they're like, no, I really don't have time, that's a real thing. People, that is possible. Like it's a, now it's a logistical objection. I've got them, I've tied them down to saying it is worth a conversation. So I tied you down. I said, it is worth a conversation to you. And now I'm going to get you rescheduled. Yeah. Um, if they're like, wait, what? Who are you? What is this from? So be like, what is this again? Well, what is this again? Can you provide some clarity of what this is even about? Yeah. So again, for context and clarity, my name is Joel with Agency Lab. What we do is we work with dentists, helping them either with consistency or helping them scale their practice. It's now a good time for you know 10 to 15 minutes to get to know your practice a little bit better and see if we can help. Gotcha. Say, yeah. say no. Say, say, say. Um, uh, maybe not now. No, Call no, 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 no. Say, say no. Wait, wait, wait. Who are you again? Yeah. Wait, wait. Who are you again? Can I don't remember this. I didn't sign up for anything. <laughs> uh, Dr. Paulson, right? You're, you're yeah. a dentist. Yes. And, and you guys do dental implants, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, I mean, you're definitely in the right place. Are you guys in a position right now where you're looking for new patients? We are, um, but can you can you help me understand what your company is about or what is, what is this call about? 
because we get calls yeah, and then, all the time. <laughs> and then I'll just loop back to this. Well, yeah, for context and clarity, again, I'm just looping them back. It's just an objection handle. If they're literally like, no, F off, at that point, you're done. You know, you don't want to <laughs> force it. But but you want to like push back a little bit with like one or it's like one or two jabs. And then if they yeah. throw a right hook, I guess that's <laughs> it. So um so here's the thing that everybody should remember, like the things that we taught in day one and two creates systems for inbound, right? Cold email, IG, walking into a BNI, all those things, running Facebook ads. All that does is create inbound requests, inbound interest. You really haven't arrived as an agency until you can sleep at night, like Warren Buffett says, and either revenue is coming in or inbound interest is coming in. Like you should be able to wake up in the morning, you look at your Slack channel, there should be leads in there that are qualified. That's the world you have to get into before you can actually scale. Now, when that happens, the script that Joel is sharing are basically hooks to help them qualify, re-qualify for a proper either one call close or a two call close, whether it's on Zoom or over the phone or in person, it doesn't matter of what medium you use. The idea is to have a system in place that you handle the inbound flow a certain way. You want all your sales guys and appointment setters to literally, and, and sales gals, there's some killer closers that are women too. So no, 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 no need to, you know, assume, but like, honestly, you need to figure out a way to flow the traffic the right way so you can then measure how you handle the traffic on sales. Keep going, Joel. Yeah, so again, someone books a call with you, your paid ads, open it up like this. Someone replies your cold email or Instagram DM, open it up like this. And I'm just going to get you to say, yeah, we're having a call. So cool. We're good for a 10 to 15 minute chat. Awesome. Moving on to phase two get them to open up and admit they have a problem. So I'm trying to reel you in slowly. You got to, I got to get you to open up. Yeah. And admit that you have a problem. Now here's, here's where this is going to get tricky for everyone. You want to have a real conversation. You can't be a robot. You can't be a robot. I'm not an AI. All right. <laughs> Pauls is, I don't know about, Paul, no, I'm just kidding. Pauls is not an AI. You guys need to connect on a human level. This is the hardest phase. This is the least scripted version, uh, part of the process and the most important, and it will require practice. You're gonna, I'm gonna give you guys some tools, but you're gonna have, it, every single conversation is gonna be different at this, in this phase. So, so how do you get them to open up uh, in, uh, and put their defensive walls down? I want to get them to, here's the goal, guys. If I can ad help them admit that they have a problem and realize, oh, shit, I have a problem, then I can, all I have to do is position my solution or my product as the solution of that problem. If I can get you to open up and admit to yourself and realize, oh, man, I really have a problem here, then all I have to do is position my product, my agency, high level as the solution to that problem. I can't tell you you have a problem. You need to realize you have a problem. Now, I want to give you guys one golden nugget here, big golden nugget. You see how the whole time when I was doing the script, I was a little like, like sub, not, I, I want to say, let's say submissive. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, uh, no worries. Uh, and kind of stuttering a little bit. I'm doing that on purpose. I don't want to, I, I actually don't want to come off aggressive. I want to disarm the prospect. Yeah. So like, Sometimes people are taught to be in sales and be like, hey, Daniel. No, you want to be like, oh, hey, uh, Daniel, is this Daniel? Yeah, it's, it's because of saturation too. Like think about the experience in, in the US, for example. 80% of the people don't talk on phones anymore. Like we don't do phone conversations. Like that, that world is almost gone. In, 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 in the US market, at least, uh, most people text message. So when you do finally answer a phone call, if it's not friends or family, it's a very highly trained professional that is cold calling behalf of like an insurance company, some kind of rebate, the government, like it's, it's literally very, very skilled trained people. So they literally go through a script 
So you kind of want to position yourself as someone who's not that skilled, like a cold caller, where you kind of give off that indication that it's a cold call. You want to make it seem like you're you're personally just calling them without, you know, essentially giving away the clue that you're in a way professional as well. Go ahead, Joel. This, this, some of the comments on the YouTube are so funny. Someone said, Paulson really sounds like he didn't sign up for role playing today. <laughs> He did it. <laughs> These are facts. <laughs> These are facts. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna be real. So totally monotone. Uh who are you again? <laughs> yeah. So so you guys uh, someone asked, can I just do this over a VSL or AI? No, you guys need to we're in you guys are, you gotta admit to yourself, you're in a service-based business. You're human to human. You gotta get on the phone and talk to people. You gotta talk to people. Yeah. And if and look, I'll give you guys one piece of advice. If you're like, Joel, I will never be a salesperson. And you know, if that's you, you're like, I hate it. For example, Isaac yesterday ads, he hated sales. Like he would have panic attacks, hardcore, not that will go away. Like that would remain. He, so, so, so for someone like him, it's better to just partner with someone that's very good at sales. Yeah. And also if you're extremely sales this is a huge golden nugget. If you're so good at sales and you are so bad at tech and you know who you are, you literally are like, what's high level? Like me. <laughs> like find someone that could be your, that is a great time to either strategically partner or fully partner with someone. Because this business, like I said at the beginning, requires both product and sales. You need both product and sales. So if you're like, I can go both ways. And I'm good at both, but I'm not great where it's like, you know, I'm not, I don't know high level in and out like crazy. I also with sales, I'm not the greatest salesperson of all time. You know, I'm, I, I'm good at it. So, so you guys need to, I'm actually, my best skill is marketing. So I found people that were really good at the other things. Sergio sales, Isaac tech, right? So and product. So if you guys are so hardcore introverts, hate sales, don't want to talk to anyone, find someone that would be happy to do that because those people exist. So I did want to throw that uh, golden nugget out there. Okay, cool. So I get them to open up slowly, admit they have a problem. So Here's the overview, 30,000 foot overview. That's the first thing I'm gonna cover. I wanna go over what they've already tried. I wanna go over what their numbers are. I wanna go over what services they have, where do they get most of their sales from, what's worked, what hasn't. And what I wanna do is go deeper and deeper and deeper. And throughout by going deeper, they're gonna realize they have a problem. And we're gonna actually go through this. Uh, so Dr. Paulson, these calls are Typically short, what I find works best, if you're okay with it, is if you can provide me some clarity and context on your business, you know, where you're at, what you're looking for to get you, you know, from where you're at to where you want to go, that'd be really great. And if I believe that I can help you, I'll walk you through everything in detail and answer all of your questions. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that sounds good. How long would it take? You know, like mostly these calls go about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, Paulson, just just for the role play, if you can play easy mode, and then we'll get into hard mode. <laughs> we can get into hard mode later. All right. <laughs> no, if not, we're not going to get to the script. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> um, all right. If there's a pause, like let's say that you're just like, what? Uh, just be like, why don't we start with a thirty thousand foot overview? Just share okay. anything that comes to mind, and you know, get me up to speed, and we'll go from there. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so why don't we share a little bit more about your practice, um, sure. where you guys are at, where you're looking to go, really anything. Yeah, we started the practice maybe like two, three years ago. We got a couple of dental assistants. I'm bringing on an associate partner. Um, right now, dental implants is the main thing. Um, but we're already doing a lot of marketing uh, in general. Um, but a lot of it is not working. A uh, lot, of, lot of promises. Uh that is, you know, overwhelming in a sense. Um, but help me understand what exactly do you do that's different than all the other other people? So you guys said dental implants are uh, 
the main thing you guys are doing a lot of marketing in general a lot of promises can you tell me more about that yeah i just feel like i wasted maybe i don't know a couple of thousand dollars on a couple of these platforms and agencies and uh, i feel like i've gotten the same runaround um i get leads but none of them actually show up um and kind of just feel like i don't want to waste any more time with marketing in general but I know a lot of my other colleagues do really well with marketing and I just, I just feel like I haven't cracked the code. Okay. What I'm trying to do here, guys. So pause role play. I'm just trying to get Dr. Paulson to dump as much as possible. I just wanted to dump, 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 dump. Like I already got some crazy uh, insights. He's done marketing. So he is doing marketing. He's got money. He also hates agencies. That's very obvious. A lot of promises. You've gotten the same runaround. You've wasted a couple thousand dollars on platforms and agencies. I get leads, but none of them show up. That was a huge golden nugget. I'm writing all this down. I'm, this is my ammo. This is my ammo for later. Okay. And then now I'll probably, I would have probably pushed two or three, like one or two more times. So uh, Dr. Paulson, you said you're getting leads. None of them show up. Could you break that down for me? What, what does that look like? So they're, they're sending you leads. They're just not showing up. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think it's because, you know, we don't have a lot of automations or the, the, like some of the Facebook ads don't work that well. And, you know, my marketing guys are just, I don't know, and maybe they they don't do a good job with targeting or whatever. Maybe my offer is not good, but either way, uh, I feel like we get people interested, but we don't really push them to the final um, edge to being able to come into the practice for what we do. Got it. Got it. Awesome. So I do that a few times where I'm like, tell me more about this. Tell me more about that. And now I have a really good starting point. Like I have a lot of ammo to play with that. I could just, these are all little, like, this is going to sound pretty like messed up. These are all little wounds that I can press down on <laughs> later. <laughs> Yeah, to make them feel the pain. <laughs> so um, you, you do want them to realize I do have a problem. So these are all good starting points where he's like, okay, stop touching it. I have a problem. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is a really good starting point. This is where we start. There's a 30,000 foot overview. Now, again, I'm going to go off script here because it's a framework, right? So uh, Dr. Paulson, you said that you wasted a couple of thousands of dollars on platforms and agencies, but you are doing a lot of marketing. Like, give me a breakdown. What marketing are you doing? And, and, and also, what have you guys tried in the past? Sure. Yeah. So marketing wise, we do a lot of flyers in our communities. Um, we have radio that is launched. Um, we have radio. Yeah, we do radio ads and it's been working pretty well for us. Um, we also have, uh, well, my nephew, he does all the boosting. Um, and he's, a, a, he, that you will literally hear that all the time. My nephew does all the platform boosting, which is based, they're just basically saying they're running uh, Facebook ads, engagement or whatever campaigns without a certain purpose. Um, we have- you guys um, do like PPC or SEO or, you know, yeah, we we want to do an SEO, but we don't have a strong website. Um, I don't think I want to redo that. But either way, um, I think SEO is something we need to do uh, in the future. But right now, I don't know if we have a big budget for that. So what, what's leading? What, what's helping you guys get the most amount of patients in the door? Referrals, friends, family, community knowing us, um, um, reputation kind of thing. Got it. But you said you are, so you did say you're doing a lot of marketing. So it sounds like it's mainly just on the radio. Yeah. Radio and is kind of the boosting. big thing. Yeah. Radio is a good thing. Um, the boosting and we'll, you know, um, that's, that's really what we're doing right now. I see. I see. And uh, why don't we break down some of the numbers that uh, you're bringing in? So, what percentage of your patients are coming through referrals? What percentage of your patients are coming through radio? What percentage of your patients are coming through the boosting? 
Yeah. Um, so I think we don't really track all of it in my mind uh, well, but maybe like 20, 30% comes from the radio uh, and 70% comes from referrals of existing patients or friends or family. Um, maybe another few percent here and there comes from all the flyers. We don't have a way to track the flyers, but we know people love them. Um, <laughs> these are like real objections I've gotten. So it's probably not a fair uh, reply, but yeah, uh, all our marketing works. That's what every dentist tells me <laughs> in the past when I had my dentist. Wait, wait, you're not, that's not part of the, that's not part of the role play. No, no, right that's there. not part of the role yeah, play. I'm just like, telling you. I was like, wait, I'm confused. <laughs> I was about to be like, Dr. Paul, what sorry. are you talking about? <laughs> sorry sorry um, but yeah yeah um yeah so, so guys all, all, all i'm trying to do here is you guys can all you guys all, all you guys what i'm trying to do here guys is go off of the initial things he told me to now dig deep on what they've tried what their numbers are which services they prefer where do they get most of their sales from what's worked what hasn't and then over time i'll start going deeper so Dr. Paulson, like you mentioned that you guys all, you know, used a bunch of other agencies. Uh, well, tell me about that. Why, why, why do you think it didn't work? Um, well, I think we spent a lot of money um, in general, maybe about four or $5,000 every single month on marketing with a couple of these agencies. Um, but there wasn't like a, you know, a good result that came out of it. We got a few patients here and there from like Facebook ads and Google ads. And, but we haven't done those in a, in a while because my nephew just keeps boosting uh, Facebook and that seemed to create a lot of likes and comments in our pages. Um, so yeah, in the past, so you guys spent four, you guys spent, you guys spent four to $5,000 and you, you only got a few patients. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's because by uh, the way, guys, pause. I did that on purpose. I'm trying to make him feel like, oh shit, oh shit. I spent four to five thousand dollars. I didn't get patience. Let's dig deeper. But now I'm starting to probe. So, again, first I do a thirty thousand foot overview. Then I start to go specifically what they've tried, what their numbers are, which services uh, they prefer, where do they get most of their sales from, what's worked, what hasn't. And then once I have a very clear understanding, once you Again, it's almost like you're the doctor. Once you have a very good understanding of the patient, you know everything that you need to know to diagnose them and to give them the right medication, then we could start to dive deep. So now what I do is I'm going to start to go deep on these specific issues. So for example, like I said, you know, Dr. Paulson, it sounds like you guys spent four to $5,000 a month, which by the way, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, that you guys didn't really see much. And, uh, you know, if you were to put your finger on two things as to why it failed, what would those two things be? Well, I think, um, I don't think the marketing guys really understood what we stand for. You know, we're a luxury practice um, and we want to go after, you know, the corporate clients in the community. We don't want just any random person that wants to come in for a little cleaning. Uh, we want to go after affluent patients and families, and that's kind of our focus. And I think they just had a hard time. They didn't really understand you. Correct. And I think they had a hard time targeting and finding those people through their marketing efforts. That's really what it comes down to. And it sounds like they weren't tracking anything, right? Because you said you weren't even sure how many patients you got, right? Well, they told me, you know, uh, they brought in like 60, 70 leads every single month. But in reality, most of those people didn't walk in through my front door. Hmm. That's that that must be kind of frustrating. Um, that's crazy. So 60, you guys, 60 or 70 leads and you don't even know exactly how many showed up. Yeah. And, uh, and it's been a while. It's been a couple of months since we kind of turned those off. Uh, so hmm. it, I can go back and kind of figure out those numbers exactly if you need those. Um, but that's, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like full effort was harvested. And they didn't even give you like a CRM or, you know, software to track all this. They had something, um, 
but um it, it to me it was it was just a place to just find the contact information i don't think it was like a i don't know automation kind of software it was more like something that just houses information so we couldn't do anything with it except just log in and um find the information there um that's kind of what wow. I wow so you, i mean you can't even you couldn't even track the roi right no no i don't think there was a way to track any of that okay so pause you see how i'm making him realize like oh wow i did it wrong all these things are wrong no crm no tracking no leads that show up bad targeting then all i have to do is say i'm the agency that can help you with these things especially with i only get paid when they show up i i am incentivized to make sure the targeting is on point i also make sure to go on justice map like we talked about earlier on day one and only target the affluent areas now my pitch dr paulson is a hundred percent aligned with the problems that he had that prevented him from getting the result he wanted. Guys, is this clicking? This is the hardest part. Phase two is the least scripted. It's a conversation. This is chess now, not checkers. The big framework is, again, start off with a 30,000 foot overview, then get clear on what they've tried, what their numbers are through a conversation. Figure out their services. Where do they get the most of their sales from? What's worked? What has it? And then I start to go deeper. Oh, wow. How do you, you got 60 to 70 leads and you don't even know if you got an ROI? That's crazy. He's like, oh shit. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, This is not good. And then, so, so I'm just digging deeper and they didn't even give you a CRM to track. So how do you know if you even got the results? Well, I don't know. It's like, okay, I it's, it, clearly that wasn't working. So whatever I present has the potential to work. Absolutely. Uh, that makes sense. So one of the things that I'll tell everybody here is you don't need sales scripts. Like you don't need scripting that you can just read off of like obviously like joel said don't be robotic but what you do want to do is memorize a couple of milestones memorize maybe phases of a framework and actually matter of fact from sergio and joel back in the day i kind of developed my own bridge in my mind of four different phases i push all my conversations through. And I share that in our five day challenge. I share that at our masterminds, our conferences, our courses, everything, which really is essentially the same thing in a, in a macro way, which is story, numbers, conditions, and decisions. I have, that's the chronological order I go through. Story means I want to get a like a rapport created between me and that prospect. Numbers means I want to figure out what kind of numbers they're dealing with. So I go from volume oriented questioning to transitioning them into revenue oriented questioning. The third thing is conditions. I want to make sure there's a good market product fit just because they say yes to the money and transaction doesn't mean your product and services are actually fit for them. Then the fourth thing is decisions. You want to ask them, how do you like to be closed and figure out what is the comfort level for them to start the relationship? What Joel is teaching you here is the details of what happens in those phases. Every one of us sales guys have those phases memorized in our mind. We don't follow scripts, just FYI. I would, what, the way that I would look at it, guys, is following frameworks. Get them to commit to the conversation. Get them to be like, yeah, we can talk today. Then get them to open up and, and, and tell you about their practice, their business, their problems. That's what we're doing. It's like, okay. And then Dr. Paulson's like, oh shit, I, re I just realized I didn't track anything. The leads didn't show up. They were, they were just, my nephew kept boosting ads, whatever the heck that means. Yeah. And then uh, eventually what's going to happen is they're going to feel like, ah, I understand. That's my problem. So for example, the lead quality sucks. You could be like, so Dr. Paulson, you know, what offer were you guys running on the ad? Yeah. So what we were doing was, um, uh, if I can remember 20% off of teeth cleaning. 
Okay. But then you guys want to focus on it on dental implants? Yeah. So with dental implants, we didn't really do any discounts because we wanted to attract like an affluent customer base. Mm -hmm. We didn't really run a discount because of that. And, um, you know, the marketing guys, they told me they don't need to do a discount. They'll, they'll kind of handle it. And, um, majority of the leads that came in were for the dental cleaning and whitening, not the implants. These are like real scenarios that I've I've seen. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> I yeah, got the nephew thing is hilarious, by the way. I got it. That's that's so funny. Um, uh, there's a lot of nephews out there killing agency game. <laughs> okay, so I mean that that's that's interesting. So they're you're telling me that they did ads for teeth cleaning, but you wanted dental implant patients. Yeah, they promised me they'll bring in. Affluent dental implant patients, they told me- But then they did the teeth cleaning. That's what majority of the leads became. I don't think that was the intention, but I think they had the mm. easiest time marketing dental impl- you know, cleaning and whitening, yeah. where implants, I think they had a hard time marketing for. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so again, I'm making them realize like, okay, there's a problem here. Like, okay, they, yeah, why the heck would they advertise teeth cleaning when I wanted dental implants, which is what he told me at the beginning because I took the notes. Yeah. Where was it? And dental implants, are, main thing. And just pause for a second. These are real scenarios that, that you will come across business owners. They want their highest ticket to be sold the most. Whatever their biggest thing is, that's what they want more eyes on. They don't care about bringing in, you know, low tickets of any kind and just climbing them into um, upselling. Like that's usually not their first instinct because they're not marketing people, right? They're not salespeople. They're they're about their service. Um, keep going, Joel. What is Facebook? Yeah, and I think that um, I think that uh. The other thing that this is a huge golden nugget as well that I forgot to share in my warnings before we dove in. That's really important. If you guys are brand new, you should actually go and find some business in your niche that you could take to lunch, take out to lunch and get to know everything about the business. You guys should actually spend a day or two just doing market research, understanding the lingo, because if a dentist told me all on four or full arch restoration, Paulson and I would know what that means, but most of you guys would be like, what is an all on four? So if you can actually use these words, if I could be like, well, what kind of dental implants are you guys looking for single dental implants, or you want to do full on all on four procedures, full arch restorations, they're going to be like, okay, this guy gets it. He's in our space. He knows the lingo, immediate authority bump. Like you're already going to be seen as someone that knows their shit. So Highly recommend that. What I would, what I did is I found a chiropractor in Boulder and I invited them out one night for pizza. And we spent like three hours and I said, tell me everything there is to know about chiropractic, everything, the sales process, the lingo, the problems in the market, in the industry. What do chiropractors hate? What do chiropractors love? What kind of patients do they want? How do they make their money? Do they like insurance? When do they get paid by insurance? All that. Um, Cool. Then, uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, let's do a few more questions. So, okay, so you're telling me that they ran teeth cleaning ads for dental implant patients, and it sounds like they weren't even doing dental implant uh, marketing, um, which is honestly frustrating like that that that's that's not good you know um for such a big investment um that being said when the leads came in what was that process like were they calling them were you guys calling them how how, what systems did you guys have in place to make sure that they would show up yeah they they basically set up um i guess like a portal or a login where we had to log in and see the leads that came in and then um we couldn't we couldn't like dial from that portal. So we basically took the numbers and dialed with our regular phones to kind of call them in and schedule. But most of the leads did not even know anything about our practice. So it was kind of like they were throwing leads at us uh, in a portal and didn't have like a way to track 
or communicate or anything like that. It was just us having to manually dial with our regular mm -hmm. phones back to the leads, which I think also was kind of an issue uh, because I couldn't mm. tell whether my friend desk was actually calling or not because I'm busy in the back taking care of patients. So I'm, I'm just mm. kind of hoping that they did. Got it, got it. Cool. So now Dr. Paulson has started to open up. His demeanor changed from, I only have 10, nine minutes to, <laughs> you know, it's a little more calm. It's like, yeah, it just really didn't work. So now, phase three, I want to get them to buy into me as the solution to their problem. Here's how this is going to work. First, I'm going to summarize everything because I want them to feel like I really listened. I want them to feel like I empathize with them. And then we're going to drop our offer and our pitch. And here's where you're going to have to modify it on the fly a little bit and be a ninja and touch on their pain points. This is where you're going to have to be like, here's the ways that we can help you based on exactly what you told me. So again, first thing, I'm going to repeat everything back to them from a high level. So Dr. Paulson, I think I got enough here. Um, just to summarize, it sounds to me that you guys have worked with a bunch of other agencies, but they really, you know, dropped the ball on some core things. Like they weren't even doing dental implant marketing, which is crazy, by the way. They were doing teeth cleaning marketing and telling you guys you were getting dental implants. And then when the leads came in, you guys had no way to see if you're getting an ROI, if they're showing up. And then even worse, like they were making you guys do all the work and it sounds like they weren't even supporting your front desk staff. Like you were back with patients, how you should be as the doctor and you were paying this agency, but they're kind of leaving you out in the desert on your own. And it also sounds like you guys really want to hone in on dental implants going into 2024. That's where you want to maximize things, but you are also worried about making sure that if you're going to invest in marketing, that the patients actually show up. And it also sounds like you guys really love referrals. You want to grow that. So if there's a way to even help grow that avenue, since that's where you guys mainly get your uh, patients from, like that would be a great add-on. And is there anything else I'm missing or anything else you'd like to share? And yeah, I do appreciate like, you sharing everything with me. Yeah. So by the, way, this line is, by the way, this line is really important. This is where they might tell you the one or two things that they didn't share. Yeah. Yeah. So Joel, everything you're telling me is what a lot of these agencies once told me as well. You seem like a nice guy and I've heard something similar in the past. So to be honest with you, I'm kind of, you know, uh, traumatized from things like this, but what is, what makes you different than the other agencies? Like, what, is there a guarantee? Is there a risk that you will take on as well as me? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, um, Paulson, for the sake of script, let's play easy mode we'll, and then we'll do objections at the end. Okay, if, okay. If that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, because I, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I just, bad, just, just bad, so we can get bad. through it. Just so we can get through it and then we'll, we'll yeah, do yeah. objections. Yeah, I'll do easy mode. Tell me more, Joel. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, because we, we have them all here. Okay. And if they're like, um, all right, hold on one second. I mean, I also can go into it, but, you know, at that point, I'd, I'd probably play more like, you know, Dr. Paulson, I haven't shared much yet of, you know, how we can help, how we can't help. I'm first trying to just get a very clear understanding of sure. where you're at and okay. where you're looking to grow and, and really understand your practice. And uh, I'm more than happy to show you everything in detail of how we're different, the pricing, all the information that you need to know. Okay. To make an informed decision. But first, I really just wanted to get to know you just like you do with your patients before you start doing an entire dental procedure. I just, I just want to see if we might be able to help. Yeah. And then I'd shut up. Okay. And then you'd be like, you'd, what would you say to that? I mean, this is probably if you like, want to get well, into objections now. Yeah. Probably like, well, how much is it? Yeah, absolutely. So again, I'm more than happy to go over all the pricing, if that's something that you want to cover. Um, but again, first, I'm just trying to get a clear sense of where you're at and what you're looking for and what you guys need, right? Because 
there's a lot of things that we could do for you. But I also don't want to promise something that doesn't align with what you guys ultimately need to grow your practice. And again, uh, I'm more than happy to, to show you everything. But first, just want to make sure that I get a full understanding of, of where you guys are at. So, you know, is there anything else that you'd like to share with me? Um, anything missing from, from what we went over? Um, and again, not... see, now I'm, I'm just pushing it back on Paulson. Yeah. So I answer it quickly. I kind of address it. And I'm just like, okay, so and is there anything else I'm missing or anything else you'd like to share? And again, I, I do appreciate you sharing. It, it really does help. Um, I don't, I don't really think there is much. Um, I mean, is there anything you're looking for, Joel, that I should say? No, no, that could be fine. I will okay. say this though. If at this point they're resistant to you, you're not get. it's very hard to get the sale. At, at this point, if they're playing hardball at this stage of that, this is actually a really good point. If they're playing hardball at this stage of the script, like those questions that Paulson just threw would appear more up here. In the beginning. Towards like phase two, the start of phase two, where you're like, what's the price? I've already been burned in the past by other agencies. Like, but if you're already opening up to me and sharing and we're yeah. kind of laughing about your nephew boosting posts, it's I, you, you're probably going to, follow my lead at that stage. So, so keep that in mind. If, if, if you're getting those kinds of that kind of tension that deep, you, you lost the sale. Like the chance of you getting that sale is very hard. Also keep in mind, the sale is one actually on this call. It's not one on the second call. Most people think the 80, 20 is the demo presentation. The 80, 20 is you connecting with them and them feeling like you are the solution to their problems, to their pain. If they feel like you are the solution to their pain and to their problems, they will buy from you. Obviously, as long as everything checks off, obviously, but that's, that's a given. That being said, the, the battle, the 80-20 is won here. And that objection of like, well, what's the price? Again, I'd probably be like, more than happy. First, I want to get a, a sense of where you guys are at, what you're looking for, because I don't want to give you guys a recommendation for all the things that we could do. And then it doesn't really align with what you guys are looking for. Um, with that in mind, you know, I'd love to get a little bit more detail on, on where you guys are at. So you mentioned that you're looking to focus on dental implants in 2024. Is that where you guys are mainly focused in 2023? Yeah. Tell me about that. So, and then I just go back to the Questions. So I'd answer it, go back to the questions. And then if you're like, I've already been burned in the past, all that stuff. I'm like, I hear you. That other agency you were telling me about sounds crazy. You know, four to $5,000 and then running uh, uh, teeth cleaning ads. I'll, I'll tell you right now, you know, we're not going to do that. But with that in mind, um, I'd love to just get to know a little bit more about your practice and where you guys are focusing so that I can confidently tell you if we can help because right now I don't even want to say that until I have a little bit more clarity. Uh, with that in mind, you know, you mentioned that the leads you were getting weren't showing up. What was that process like when you guys generated a lead? So I'm just going back to the script, but that's probably going to happen in phase two, not in phase three. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Phase three. Um, so you're like, nope, there's nothing else for me to share. No worries. Cool. So from the sounds of it, Dr. Paulson, we can definitely help you. Uh, what I'm going to do is walk you through everything. Feel free to interrupt me at any time. And I do want to make sure I can answer every question. So at this point, guys, this you're going to have to modify. This is just a templated uh, version. This will be unique to you and your agency. This is something that you're going to have to rewrite, unfortunately. Now, you need to come up with three reasons why your offer is amazing and customize it to their answer. So, and by the way, you can also modify this on the fly a little bit. So everything we do is exclusive to you and customized. And it actually starts off with a social media platform and we actually mainly focus on TikTok ads. So I know you mentioned you've only tried Facebook and you wanted to try something new in 2024. And uh, we're one of the first agencies to crack the code on TikTok ads uh, for dentists. And I just want to be clear, you don't even need the app. And I'll walk you through why we believe TikTok is one of the most powerful platforms to get affluent patients 
that are actually looking for dental implants in 2024. So you see how I threw in that word affluent. I'm trying to plant seeds that what I got is what he wants. So number one, it was the most visited domain in 2021. And there's actually more traffic on TikTok than Google, which is crazy. So if you're like, Joel, there's no uh, people wanting implants on uh, TikTok, then you're also saying that they're not on Google. And what makes a social media platform viable is access to the platform, meaning we can target income on TikTok, whereas on Facebook, you cannot. And you can say whatever you want. Be like, meaning we can actually find the specific zip codes in your area so that we're only placing the ad in front of people who have money. Now, not saying that some people that don't have money won't opt in, but we're targeting places where it's mainly people with wealth. And number three, there was a report that just came out recently that one out of four millennials, again, I would have to tweak this because I'm, if I'm doing dental implants, millennials, it's probably the older demographic. So, um, you know, there was a report that just came out recently that one out of four boomers and even older folks are using TikTok as a search engine, not even Google. Does that make sense? Then you'll be like, yeah, it all makes sense. Cool. And then I throw one final rock at their main problem, even harder. And again, this is a this is a template. You guys will have to modify this for your offer. So you remember how you mentioned you guys were getting the leads and you got like 60 to 70 leads, but none of them showed up. And you were just dealing with tire kickers and you were like, I just want affluent leads that show up. Yes, I remember that. Okay, cool. So What's really amazing about our model is that we only get paid when someone actually prepays for their appointment. So we're actually going to get people that have money because they're prepaying for their appointment before they ever come in. And we've also noticed that that increases the show up rate to 95% on average for our clients. So I'm essentially, this is, I'm doing it on the fly. I'm throwing one final rock at their problem based on what they told me. So uh, here's how it works. And we're just going to break down overview of how ads work. You don't have to like overcomplicate this. And again, you could. Yeah. So real quick, let's pause for one second. So a couple of cups, a couple of observations here, right? The, and very similar to Sergio, I've done probably over eight years of sales in my career, building three agencies. Um, and I can tell you sales, more than the scripting, the framework, and anything and everything, it's about transferring the energy that you have about your offer to the prospect. So that's the first thing. Your ability as a salesman to transfer the energy, the right energy to the prospect. The second skill that's going to really elevate everyone here on sales is your ability to be discernful of the prospect's energy, okay? If you have the right skill set and enough practice, you'll be able to pick up small different things, how they will tell you and show you and demonstrate their energy towards your industry, your type of business, your offer. So over time, Joel, Joel says this uh, in a lot of his old uh, programs, he'll tell you the, there's a popcorn thing that happens. And, you know, popcorn doesn't pop early in the game. Eventually, it'll all pop in like one Saturday and it's like three customers that you signed up in one week and you're like, I don't know how that happened. But it's because there's a sales cycle. There's a trust that you're building with touch points. All to tell you that that energy transfer it is what matters more than anything else. And that takes repetition. That takes time. That takes, you know, multiple things. The part about phase three that Joel is sharing with you, that's going to make this whole thing so much easier for you is the strength of the offer of this business model that Joel's sharing, which is the paper show business model. You as the provider is taking all the risk except for the ad spend, right? Because that offer is so strong, your sales skills does not have to be elite. Your offer now, is so good. Mind, you, know what's, you know what's crazy though? If you're very good at following phase two and digging deep and connecting with them and getting to know them, 
they're not, and they trust you, then even if you're like, they will forget. I promise you, if the, if you won them over on phase two, they will not care if it's retainer or paper show, uh, which is interesting. Like people will stop asking about all that stuff. They only ask about guarantees, price. What makes you guys different if they don't trust you? The trust, and, and here's the, the takeaway. The trust comes from you knowing them better than they know themselves and you understanding their problems better than they do. It's kind of like, a, I tore my, my ACL last year, or sorry, in May. And I don't, I'm not an orthopedic surgeon. So when the, I walk into the, to the, I get my, the, the x-rays or not the x-rays, the MRI, the surgeon is looking at it with me. I'm listening very carefully at everything he's saying. And I trust every word that's coming out of his mouth. Why? It's because he understands my problem, my torn ACL better than I do. So we're giving you guys a lot of golden nuggets today. Cause I feel like, uh, I mean, normally I just give you guys a script. We don't go through it, but we're really dissecting this, which, which I really like. So phase three, at this point, again, you should have won them over. Like if, if at phase three, they're resistant, you, you, you kind of failed. Yeah. And that um, also means you need to not present the offer. <laughs> like don't present. Correct. This is not. There's a timing to present the offer of what you do. Don't enter into phase three if you have not won the no like and trust model of like creating that relationship. Yeah. So if Paulson's like, Hey, what's the, what do you guys offer? Yeah. So again, we can do a lot of different things for you guys uh, based on exactly what you need. And everything we do is customized for the practice. So a big part of why I'm wanting to get to know you guys and ask you guys all these questions is just so that I can come up with exactly the right system that would align with your goals and what you guys are looking for. Yeah. Um, that being said, you guys mentioned that, and I would just go back to asking a question. So I address it. I, this is how I handle objections. You address it, you answer it, and then you go back to a question. Yeah. So with that being said, you guys mentioned that you don't want to do Invisalign. Um, is it just because you're mainly focused on dental implants? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm, now I've got them back in. I don't want to let Paulson take the lead here, Yeah. but I also don't want to be an asshole. So it's like, I'm very submissive about it. I'm like, yeah, no, totally hear you on that. Uh, you want to get the pricing, makes sense. You know, I, th it's, that's really important. And I promise you, we will go over that. But first, I need to get to know a little bit more about your practice, where you're at, what you're looking for, so that I can give you a pricing based on exactly what you're looking for. Um, that being said, you mentioned you worked with another agency and they weren't getting leads to show up. If I had to, if I had the power to wave a magic wand and solve all that, all of those agencies' problems, what would you, what would you want? You know, and now I'm back in him to, now I'm, now I'm leading. So I'm, I'm still letting him push back a little bit, but I'm leading the conversation. Um, okay. So Interestingly enough, I don't even get into the offer, the guarantee, the paper show in this. I'm really just trying to keep it very high level. I'm trying to keep it very easy to consume. I don't want to I don't want to confuse Paulson right now. He's in an emotional state. He knows he has a problem. I don't want to confuse him with nitty-gritty and when do I get paid? Wait, do I get paid app? How does that work? And then I don't want to confuse them. I want to get to a point where I can show that on the demo. But I, I want to get, I want to essentially get Paulson to the point where he's like, I want this. So let's just go over the details, but I'm in. I want to get him to, this sounds awesome, but let's go over the details. What's interesting is most people go over the details thinking that that's what's going to get people to buy in. What's going to get people to buy in is that they feel like you know their problems better than they do and therefore can prescribe a solution in a way that they feel confident in. yeah so and also don't be afraid to spend a lot of time on this call if you guys can crush a 50 an hour long call with a dentist for an intro call 
that's gold. Do like that's amazing. If you guys can last an hour with a doctor or with anyone, a roofer, like you're gonna get. So, all right, phase three. You guys can fill this in. I pretty much just break down how the process looks. Like we create your campaigns and video ads. Your media buyer team takes care of all that stuff. This isn't stuff that worked well and we're putting in a new box. It isn't something that worked two years ago and we're just putting a fresh face to it or trying to accomplish with our system. This is where you're verifying if there's a good product market fit. Okay, you're making sure the solution you provide meets the need that they have that you've articulated well with them and help them understand that you can actually solve the relevant problems at this time frame of their business. Okay. Keep going, Joel. Yeah, so I'm going to, just for the sake of time, you guys will have access to this. You will have to modify this for your um, offer. But like, basically, you go over ads, targeting, high level. It's just like explaining that simply so that they're not confused. So, for example, um, I guess I'll go through some of it. Uh, the way that it looks is we create your campaigns and video ads. Our media buyer and our team will take care of all that stuff. Now, I want to be clear. This isn't stuff that worked well. And we're putting it in a new box. It isn't something that worked two years ago, and we're just putting a fresh face to it. It's working right now. And what's really cool, I'm going to go off script a little bit to align with what uh, Paulson said earlier. And what's really cool is we actually make videos specifically targeted to that affluent demographic. And we're going to set up all the ads in a way that really speak to people with money. So what we're trying to accomplish with our system is build trust and get intent. There's no branding in the video or mentioning anything else. We're speaking directly to that person. It's more of a compassionate and empathetic message, which really aligns with people looking specifically for dental implants. Again, I want to make sure that we focus our marketing 100% on dental implants, and I will not do any teeth cleaning for you, Dr. Paulson, I promise. Uh, does that make sense? That does. So I'm just hitting back everything he told me. I don't want to do teeth cleaning. I want dental implants. I want affluent people. I want to get them to show up. And, you know, what we're trying to do is build some trust and get some interest. And once we have that, we're gathering data. We're actually going to figure out what credit score they have, how serious they are about dental implants, what other solutions they've considered, how much money they are looking to invest, what time frame. And we can even customize this and add more questions so that you are only talking to the highest quality leads in your area. And we're also going to obviously get their personal data, like their phone number and email. And I know you mentioned earlier, this agency was just sending you the email and phone number, but we're actually going to give you a a whole breakdown on that patient profile so that you guys can even determine whether or not you can help them and get them financed for a $30,000 procedure before they even show up. So we're not going to waste any time with bad leads. Any questions about that? No, that sounds great. And, you know, that covers the first third marketing and gathering the data. The second third is we have to leverage that data into conversations. And uh, this is how it looks. Remember how you said you didn't have a CRM and any automations? Well, all of that data that we get is going to be perfectly placed into a CRM that we use called High Level, or whatever you want to rebrand it as. Maybe your white label and, name is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That we set up for you. And you're also going to have access to a mobile version of this so that you can take it with you and take it outside of your practice. I know you're super busy. That way you can literally log in and see your ROI at any time. So remember you told me that your agency that you were working with, you had no idea. Well, we're going to actually be able to track not only how many leads you got, but how many were qualified, how many showed up, how many prepaid for their appointment, and the entire ROI throughout our whole journey together. And again, you could log in and check this at any time. It's up to date, live at all times. Any questions about that? No, that sounds fantastic. And will my um, team members be able to log in and see that as well? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to work with your team directly and make sure that they have access to everything. And one of the other things that you mentioned, I'm glad you actually brought this up. This is one of the really nice things about working with us. It's not like the core thing, but we actually train your entire staff as well. So if you'd like, 
we can even meet with your staff and train them on this entire process to make it as easy as humanly possible for you. Which uh, leaves us with the final part, the booking, the appointment, and the sale. And at this point, you have to change this. So breaking script, at this point, you have to change this based on if you're calling them or if they're calling the leads. So let's say that we're calling the leads, like Faisal showed on day one. So which leads us with the final part, the booking of the appointment and the sale. Now, our team is going to look at all the data from the leads, and we're going to take anyone who's qualified for financing, for dental implants, who says they are serious about signing up right now, and they have the money to invest. And we're actually going to call them on your behalf and get them to prepay for an appointment. And what we've noticed is that this increases the show-up rate to up to 95%. Whereas before we were doing this, we were at about a 40 to 50% show-up rate. So I know you mentioned you've had bad experiences with leads that you generate, but then never show up. Well, this will solve that problem and we'll take that 100% off of your plate. So all you have to do is really show up and give them an amazing experience. So I know that was a lot. If you have any questions, uh, you know, I'm happy to answer them. And at this point, so pause script. Do you guys see how I've taken all the things that Paulson told me and kind of sprinkled them into my pitch? And now Paulson's going to be like, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, this was all improvised. We, I, this is all based on what you told me at the beginning. I, I, we, I didn't plan for this. This was all just what you told me. Affluent. I said that word like five times. I, yeah. I could have said luxury. Like yeah, that could so, have been cool. Yeah. So just to add on to what Joel's saying here. So, you know, I, I've trained in some of the most uh, top sales systems and programs in my career. And I can tell you the number one thing in being a really good closer or a salesperson is understanding your sales leadership skills, right? And the first pillar of good sales leadership skills is your listening skills. Your listening skills will allow you to transition the prospect in the right path. So like, for example, um, you need to understand how to listen properly and what's important to them in the right energy in how they're giving you objections. Um, and the way you do that is by understanding how they consume information, right? So I'm going to go on a little soapbox here, so bear with me. So in the world of content communication and sales, in um, how you listen to things, coach, all that, there are three different types of you know, mediums, which is visual learners, auditory learners, and kinesthetic learners, right? Your visual learners are people that wants to see the picture, right? So when you present your offer or when you present things about your business, you want to articulate it in the macro world and show them, hey, you know what? The best picture I can tell you in how you would work with me in 2024 is XYZ. Do you see what I'm telling you? Like, does does this make sense? You see how I'm, I'm using the word see, look, right? When you think about auditory learners and you're talking to a prospect that has auditory skills or that's how they consume information, you want to say things like, hey, here's what, what I would like for you to listen to the most, most importantly. Here's what I've heard right? If there's anything, here are my, you know, here, here's the way, um, like, you guys get it. You get my point on how to be conscious of the mediums that you're using and how you're articulating. The third one is kinesthetic, which is feel, right? Here's how I feel about how we can work together. Here's what I want to touch on when it comes to this offer. Here, and these are pretty advanced level sales skills that I'm telling you. I don't want to overwhelm you. But honestly, if you can get to a point of emotional intelligence, if you can get to and understand how to move towards that, and if you can also understand the energy of the prospect and your energy as well, and then you 
really sprinkle in the VAK, which is what I call it, the visual auditory kinesthetic, you can actually transition them through in a very clean way of truly, truly understanding what they get out of working with you. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Hopefully I didn't overwhelm too many people with that. But these are skills that you develop over time. This, you're not going to practice any of this in uh, January. Over the next 90 days, these are things you develop in how, like just like how Joel said, hey, here's the affluent piece. I would figure out whether they played basketball or not. If they played basketball as one of their fun things to do, there's a very good chance that they're a kinesthetic person. Right. If you're talking to PT clinics, 90% of people that own PT clinics are kinesthetic people. If you're talking That's, to this is like this is really like next level. It is. If you're talking to like yeah. med spa folks that are aesthetic, they're brand oriented, they're visual people. They're a cosmetic dentist is more visual than an implant dentist who's more analytical. So you need to really understand the environment of sales and who you're talking to. But anyways, let me get off my soapbox. Joel, back to you, back to you, back to you. No, that's really good. I, I think like, that's, that's really good. I think understanding the type of person you're dealing with, if they're more logical, more emotional, you know, but that's like, <laughs> that's definitely phase, that's level two, you know. These are things you will master into these are not things that happen right. overnight like guys like me and sergio develop these skills to have this conversation in three minutes over like eight years almost like a decade of business practice just fyi no need to exactly no need to get there tomorrow but these are things that you need to practice to get there empathy um you know there's so many things i can go into but anyways Let's go through. Yeah, I think if, uh, I think if, I think if you guys practice this every day, just like literally, just like I did with Paulson, where one of you guys pretends to be the dentist, and I would play, again to get through it, I would play easy mode first. Just get through it, you know. Then start to be like, "What's the price?" I hear you, Doctor Paulson. I, I promise you, we will go over all of those details. First, I just want to get a really good sense of where you guys are at. Blah 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 blah. You know, first practice easy mode, get through the script and do that every day until you're like, okay, I get this. I get the, I don't have to think about what phase I'm in. I just know what phase I'm in. Okay. So, all right, let's see here. Cool. So at this point, let's say you ask a lot of questions. I'm going to start answering them. So if you're, you know, well, how does this work? I'll answer them. This is where you need to know your stuff a little bit. Well, how does the CRM work? you answer it. You know, how does this work? You answer it. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into so much product. You keep it concise, like one to two sentence answer, not like, or maybe even a few sentences. It could, you just don't want to go into a 15 minute rant about high level. Yeah. Like, like me, how does a CRM me, work? Let me pause you for a quick second. <laughs> Those of you that are, give me a one in the chat if you're selling SaaS. Give me a two in the chat if you're doing a hybrid like SaaS agency kind of model. Okay. This is definitely hot. This is definitely cool. hybrid. Yeah. Now, if you if you have any inclination to sell features, just stop because you shouldn't be selling features. You should be selling the result of what you can do for the customers. Don't talk about no automations. Don't talk about no funnels, no, none of that crap, because it doesn't matter to them. They just care about how people are going to walk in through the front door and do business with them. So the result that you provide to them is what matters. So do not sell features. If you want more ideas on how to do that, jump into our five-day challenge. It's all free to you if you're a high leveler. And we talk about breaking down one offer, which is the missed call text back and walking people through that. Anyways, sorry, Joel. I, I just had to put that in because I know a ton of people are watching that are SaaS agencies and they lead with a lot of features. It's a huge mistake. No, you're fine. Yeah, no, I mean, and this should get you out of that feature mentality because this is all about getting to know them and their problems and digging deep. It's all about them. Don't talk about features. Here's a good way to look at it. Don't talk about features. Talk about them. Don't talk about features. Talk about them. So, um, all right, phase four. At this point, 
We got them to say yes to having a conversation. We went deep. We got them to realize, oh, wow, I have a problem. And now we've hopefully positioned ourselves as the solution to that problem. At this point, they should be pretty bought in. Like at this point, we've had people be like, I'm ready. How do I get started? They're starting to show buying signals. They're like, cool, what's the next step? That being said, this is where you want to. So, so, so the point is, they should be sold. 80% of the way at this point. If they're like, why should I trust you? Like someone in the YouTube comments mentioned, you know, handle that objection. But if you're having to do that hardcore objection handling, where it's like a trust objection as opposed to a logistical objection, then it's very hard to win them back at this late in the game. If you're having to do trust-based objections this late in the game, it's going to be hard. Like that, that just means that you just forced yourself through the script. It shouldn't feel forced. It shouldn't feel forced. And that's probably the hardest part um, is getting them chill out and go along for the ride. Um, okay, cool. So phase four. So Dr. Paulson, out of curiosity, does this check off some of the boxes? Do you see how working with someone like us would bring in dental implant patients that actually show up and pay into your luxury practice? Absolutely. Yeah. It makes sense. Awesome. Awesome, Dr. Paulson. So I'm a visual person. Uh, the next step would be for us to have a demo scheduled where we will visually walk you through the system and everything included because... You're probably thinking, what does the ads look like? What does the CRM look like? What do the automations look like? And like I said, no problem. I will walk you through all of that. But you let me know where you'd like to go from here. Um, well, I guess we can schedule where, something where you can show me what, how you would uh, you know, get, get all this done for us. Okay, awesome. So are you in front of a computer? And have an additional, you know, 20 minutes or so, and we can cover that right now. Um, yeah, I could, but I do have another patient to get to. But um, can we set it up maybe first thing tomorrow? Was that easy mode or hard mode? I can't tell. <laughs> nah, I mean, no, it's not, it's more like <laughs> it's not easier or hard for, for me, it's more so just making it easy for the, for us to go through this period. god is sorry sorry yeah yeah we can we can do a 20 minute demo right now no problem <laughs> okay okay if they say yes you take them right then and there if they say no uh, if you're like tomorrow let's do it tomorrow I'll be like um by any chance do you have any openings this afternoon that's probably what i would say so if you're yeah. like hey let's do it tomorrow yeah be like could... possible by any chance do you have any afternoon openings and if you say no i'd probably say okay let's go ahead and do tomorrow yeah i'm not gonna yeah. Again, at this point, they should be pretty bought in. I'm not going to fight them on this. This is more a logistical situation, trying to figure out logistics. But I, if I could take them right then and there, that's option one. Option two is later that day. Option three is next day. Option four is pushing it out. Yeah. So that's the order of priority. Yeah. Okay, so I've got you in. Let's say we decided on th this afternoon. You know, So I've got you in for this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. You're going to get a confirmation email and text. The Zoom link will be included. If you could just make sure you're in front of a computer to not cause you any eye strain, because we're going to be going some, over some nitty gritty details. And um, I did have a question though. Is there anybody else that you look to for a second opinion? I know you mentioned you had an associate, um, but I don't know if they own the practice with you. Do you, do you have any partners? Yeah. No, um, it's, just, it's just me. Um, but but I, I will have to talk to my wife before I make a decision fully, but she's not part of the practice. Okay. So at this point, if they say no, I would probably say something like, well, out of curiosity, did anyone come to mind when I said that? And you said your, 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 your wife, you know, I'd probably ask, is there any way she could attend? It sounds like you got, it's important for you guys to make these financial decisions together. Um, at the, again, at this point, if you're going to start pushing back, she's not going to make it. I'm still going to take the demo. I'm, I'm going to not, be that aggressive, but I'm still going to try to go for it. If you say, yes, I do have my business partner. All I would ask is, you know, what's their name? And is it possible that they can attend? 
Again, I'm not going to fight you at this point. Yeah, what I'm, I'm going to like, do I'm is... Not, I'm, I'm not gonna die, you know. I'm not gonna die on the hill for this. Like, I'd probably just be like, if you said your wife, I'd be like, oh, that, it's, it seems like it is important for you guys to make these sorts of decisions together. It might, it might be a good idea for for you to bring her on. Um, what by by any chance is there any way that she'd be available at that time? Yeah, I can I can have her come show up um, to the call as well. And if you're like no. I'd just be like, no worries. That's okay. Is there anyone else that came to mind? <laughs> Got it. And yeah. then and then at the end, we say, great. Um, sometimes it ends up in your spam folder. So just be sure to check that. And last thing, your practice does come before the call. I know you're super busy, have a lot of patients coming in and out. Um, so if you have a patient that needs to be attended to or something comes up, all that I ask is that you text us back at this number that we're calling you on right now. So you have my number and just let us know. Um, that's not a problem. If something comes up, again, all I ask is that you shoot me a quick text. Sure. And yeah. uh, we can always reschedule. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. Talk to you then. Bye-bye. Okay. End call. So that that's, that's a successful intro call one. Now, uh, we went over some of these objections. Um, if they're resistant, so if they're really pushing back, what's the, so let's say I, you give me the price objection. I say, no worries. Uh, we can definitely go over the price. Um, it really mainly depends on what you're looking for. And I don't want to tell you something unless I know for a fact that we can help you with that in mind. What's the main service that you guys are looking to focus on in 2024 dental implants. Yeah. And I'm getting you right back. And if, if, if you start pushing back and you're just an ass, let's say that you're, <laughs> mean Dr. Paulson, then I'm going to say this. Look, Dr. Paulson, um, to be honest, you know, my intent with this call is, and actually pause, what I'm trying to do here is disarm the situation. I'm kind of being vulnerable and hopefully get them on my side. And if it doesn't work, it's going to be tough. Like you're not, if, if someone's an asshole after this, it's the likelihood of them buying is very low. So you know, look, Dr. Paulson, my, my intent here is, is not to bash you or come off too strong. Um, I'm just trying to get a better understanding of your practice and see where you're at and, and what you're looking for. Maybe a better place to start is you walk me through everything. You share what you feel like you want to share. And we start with that. Why don't you just maybe start with uh, what you feel like I should know to, to see if I can help you. Does, does that sound fair? Yeah, that does. And if you're like, no, fuck F you, then the chances of, of <laughs> just the chances of, of getting back the, the leadership, the, the frame to, to lead the conversation is very low and requires some next level mental ninja tactics that's advanced. Like if the guy is still like, no, <laughs> I'd maybe at that point throw in like a, look, Dr. Paul, like a very honest, I'm willing, like at that point, I'm probably risking everything. I'll probably say like, look, doc, Dr. Paulson, it sounds like you don't want this. It sounds like you don't even want to be on this call. Like I said, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. Um, first, I want to see if we can help. If We don't have to do this call though. Um, if, you, if you feel like you need to hop off here, I, I fully respect that. And like I said, I would be more than happy to also help. And, and, and we can, I would absolutely love to keep going. And I'd shut up and I just let you then decide if we're moving forward, because essentially at that point, if you say, yeah, let's keep going, you're submitting to me. And if you say no, then I lose the sale, but at least I, I risked for it. I you know I risked it. I went for it. That makes sense. I think, and, and I think the key to key to good sales is making sure you're in control of the conversations. And sometimes in the early beginning stages, a lot of you that are starting out, especially, you might feel um, a bit more pressured. Like you, you might feel a little desperate that you're like, you know what, I got to get this client so I can make some money so I can move the business forward. So like, f f you know, make sure you function from a place of abundance that 
you don't need to be working with every client. You, you're selecting which clients you want to work from in a market. And that's the mentality you always have to have, regardless whether you're starting out or not. Sometimes when you have brand new offers, you're not going to have the confidence, right? So, you know, in a sense, you got to kind of play hard, hard to get in, a, in, in the world uh, of prospecting. And a lot of times that gives you that extra edge to be authoritative. Otherwise, you're going to let the prospect run you around in the framework where you're not going to get them over to phase four, which is closing the deal. You'll get stuck in phase two, back to We're one. Closing the demo. Two. Right, closing the demo. Whatever the next transition is, you'll find yourself stuck in phase one and two over and over like a little rat race because you're not controlling the agenda of the call. Okay, so in the beginning, remember to not not operate in desperation to get the sale. It, it's okay to lose the yeah, sale. It, it, and you guys know, probably noticed I started a lot on purpose. I Even when I go into the script, I change a little bit. I'm more like submissive, more like, oh, I don't want to step on your, your toes. But at the same time, I'm leading everything. So it's like you're actually, it's a trick to disarm Paulson so that he takes my lead and I'm not a threat. Because at first we go into it and he thinks this guy's trying to sell me big threat. So I'm like, oh, is this a good time for about a 10 to 15 minute chat? Yes. Awesome. Why don't we start off with a 30,000 foot view? Tell me everything, whatever you feel like I need to know. I would love to hear about what you guys have tried, what's worked, what hasn't, all that good stuff. Cool. Then we start to get to know each other more and more and more and more and more. And if at some point you're like, well, tell me the price. I'll try to handle that objection and bring you right back to a question for the script. And at that point, if you're like, no, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna get burned by you. And then at that point, I'd be like, well, Dr. Paulson, again, um, my intent is not to bash you or come off too strong. I'm just trying to get a better understanding of where you're at, where you wanna go and, and see if I can help. And you get, it's very submissive. And maybe a better place to start is you walk me through it. You share what you wanna share. And uh, maybe that's a better start. Does that sound fair? But I'm actually leading it. I'm saying, hey, are you willing to play ball? Are you willing to play my, by my rules? And if he's still like, no, no, no. Then at that point, I'm like, look, Dr. Paul, like, I'd probably just say some anything. Look, Dr. Paulson, it, it sounds like you don't want to be here. Um, we don't have to do this call. Again, I, I'd be more than happy to help. Yeah. It, it, it sounds like there's a lot of things that happened with other agencies that didn't go according to plan. They were running your teeth cleaning ads for dental implants, which is crazy. And I promise you, we won't do that. Um, and I'm sure in your field, there's amazing dentists and also some really bad ones. And I'm going to do my absolute best to try to help you out. And with that in mind, first, I need to understand your practice a little bit more and see if we can help. Yeah. Um, but if, if you don't want to do this call, that's also okay. So wh why don't you tell me where you'd like to go from here? Yeah. And now if, if he submits, I win. Yeah. So right? Joel, can I add a few notes to this? So like in the world of sales guys and gals there, they, they say the person that's in control is the person that's asking the questions, right? You always have to be the person that's asking the questions. The next level of that is the person that gives the control, right? What that means is like, when I talk to my prospects, I'm going to let them feel like they're leading, even though I'm the actual leader, right? I'm going to help them understand, hey, is there anything that you feel like we didn't cover that you would like to bring to the table that I might have missed? So then all of a sudden, you being the leader there and allowing them to dictate how we're going to finish up the call or move to the next phase of the call it gives them the feel and control that they want at the same time the ultimate person that's in control is the person that's giving control i hope that makes sense to a lot of you but but the key is to let them feel like they're they're in charge while you're in charge and no it's a my it's a my it's a mind bender i think that <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a mind bender. You guys, it'll click for you guys. But the idea is always loop them back into asking questions. And then if they get too aggressive, respond to it. Try to get them to loop back into the questions. If they get overly aggressive, then just be honest with them. Be like, look, I'm not trying to come off too strong or 
bash you. And if they're still so aggressive, then put them on like an ultimatum. Are we doing this call my way or are we not? And I would do it in a very kind way, a very submissive way. Like, again, like Dr. Paul, and I know there's a lot of bad dentists out there. There's also some amazing dentists. I understand you've been burned. I'm, I'll do everything in my power to make sure this is a great experience for you. First, I need to know if we can even help. If you want to get off this call, that's okay. Um, and if you want to continue, like I said, I'm more than happy to help. So, you know, you tell me where you'd like to go from here. And at that point, if you say I'm getting off this call, then I lose it. But if you say I'm staying on, then you're going to be following my lead. Absolutely. I love it. It's that. kind of like rationalizing with like an angry person. That's really what it is. Or with a person that's, uh, that, 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 that has yeah. tension. Okay. So we get them scheduled for the demo. Let's go over the demo. Now, here's Joel, where we get into paper show. Joel, real quick, just FYI, we got about 20, 20, 30 minutes left. Is that enough time? Yes. Demo is easy. So, guys, 80, 20 of this is that intro call. If you do an excellent intro call, this, should, this part should be easy. I hate using the word easy, but I'm, I'm going to say, it. If, if you do an excellent job on the hard thing, which is the intro call, this part should be the easy part. So I'm going to go through it fast. Really, all we're trying to do with the demo is get them to check off mental boxes. Here's how we're going to do that. Three, there's really four phases. What makes us different? Does this work for other people in my space? And the more you are in business, the easier it'll be to Social prove that. Yep. Answer frequently asked questions and show the actual product. That's really the, the main goal. So let's go through it very quickly. <clears throat> Again, this part should be the, 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 by the way, this should you, be the simple part. By the way, if you jump into the Joel Kaplan offer for the workshop, you get all the stuff for free, the demos, the snapshots, funnels, like ads, all his courses, like you get a ton of things for free. Just FYI. Uh, go ahead, Joel. Absolutely. So, so, so first, first we start off. So I, I, I put slides for you guys to explain all the other slides to, so that you could just fill it in. So the first thing is we want to start with a quick recap and, um, wait, what's going on? Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, so first things first, we want to start with a quick recap and has anything changed? This is if you're doing it later. So, Hey, quick recap of everything we talked about and has anything changed since, since we talked? If, if the answer is, uh, well, here, just because we have 20 or 30 minutes, I'm going to just rush through this. Yeah. That's where we're going to start. First quick recap and has anything changed? If you just had the initial call and you're doing it this back to back, you don't have, you can skip this slide. Next, we're going to break down the process and plant the seed for the sale. So I'll be like, look, you know, this is where we're at. We had our intro call. And this is, I literally want to tell them. We had our intro call to see if it's a good fit. Now we're on the demo call. The next step would be technical setup. The next step after that, we're going to build out your system. The next step after that, you're going to have your launch call with our account manager. And then we go live. And that whole process from today to when you go live will take about 14 days. I'm planting the seed for the sale. Real quick, then, real quick, Joel. So right here, it, this slide is probably the most important slide because you're the person that is setting the agenda for the call. That means you're assuming authority. You're assuming authority for the call and you're setting the agenda. If you don't have anything, even if you're on a phone call, even if you don't do like a Zoom call, set the agenda as you begin the conversation. Keep going, Joel. Okay, again, these slides right here is just explaining the other slides. So this slide, this slide, and this slide, do not have them in your slides. It's just me explaining what, so you guys can fill it in. Next, we're gonna go over what this is not. So before we go into any further, let me share with you what this is not. We're not gonna set up some simple Facebook ads. We're not gonna just send you some leads. We're not gonna charge you crazy high retainers. And this is not you ending up hating us and us ending up with a bad review like that other agency that just sent you teeth cleaning leads, which I won't talk about anymore, Dr. Paulson. But um, now this is where your big, bold claim comes in. So what this is, 
It's a proven system to fill your practice with high quality patients that prepay actually show up and close. Literally, zero risk to you. Now, my goal is to show you how we're helping chiropractors, just like you leverage the system to add 20K, 30K, even 50K a month in their practice in as little as 30 days. And I had a huge case study right there, if you have that. If not, you could literally take that out. Now, um, let's break down the, at this point, we're going to break down the system and throw in more so, social proof. So most importantly, how we're, we're going to break down how this is all done on a paper show basis, like some of these docs. So these are some of the doctors that we work with and uh, even more doctors. If you don't have social proof, I want you to do this. Delete them, delete them, delete them. Just skip it. If you don't have the social proof, you're just starting out. We scaled Atlas Dental, which was our dental agency, from zero to about $20,000 a month with zero social proof. One of my students, Amin Gotti and Alex Ivanov, in incredible individuals, they scaled a brand new agency. They, they knew how to run agencies. They had a seven-figure agency, but they launched a new agency in the dental space, and they scaled it from zero to $100,000 a month in 30 days with zero case studies. So is it hard for sure, but it is possible. Now, what we want to do is if you have social proof, you want to put it here. If you literally only have one social proof, you could be like, like Dr. John and put his social proof. You could even just have their one testimonial video. Yeah. By the way, um, if any of you are brand new and you're trying to get to like the first customer, I have a five day challenge that's free where I show you how to build an agency right off the scratch without any social proof. Like, so we basically put together like a beta angle of telling them, Hey, you're part of our first five people in a beta. Uh, we're trying to build social proof so we can get out to the market and we give them a discounted offer. Just FYI, that is possible. Keep going, Joel. I don't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, no worries. Um, next, I mean, if you have a lot of social proof, it, uh, it's a, it's a really badass question to ask. If you do have it, like, do you recognize anyone here? Because like, <laughs> imagine if they do, that's crazy. They're like, yeah, that's my, I went to college with that guy. Um, then we're going to explain what makes us different from every other agency. This is really important. We're essentially addressing this objection before it happens later on. We're almost cementing in their mind that we're different. So let's address the elephant in the room, what makes us different. And now what you're going to do is you're literally just going to put a list of all the things that make you different. You don't have to overcomplicate this. For and example, be and be truthful large, and honest. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, yeah, don't lie. And that's a great point. Everyone's like, can we fake say, uh, testimonials? No, I would rather you go out and get free trials or do a reactivation campaign or do a Google review campaign with high level in exchange for a testimonial video. Okay, so this is, these are some of the things that made us different. We have a proprietary pay ahead system that gets rid of discount seeking tire kickers and gives us the highest quality patients compared to every other agency, blah, 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 blah. Plus we are the only system that leverages AI on a 100% performance basis. So we partner with you on your practice to pay $0 to get started. You never pay us a retainer unless you want to. You cover the ad spend. You only pay when you get a show. We are both incentivized to help you grow. Now, before... Uh, we show you the system, you might be wondering how is paper show better than the normal retainer model? So with us, you only see pre-qualified prepaid patients, no more dealing with leads and appointments, just shows, and we have aligned interests, you win, we win. Whereas every other agency is gonna sell you leads, you pay them before you get results, and there's really no incentive for them to get you patients to actually show. So just to be clear, there's gonna be no hidden setup fee, no retainers, no more no-shows, we're gonna fill your calendar, only pay for new patients and only see pre-qualified prepaid patients. Yeah. Pause for one. We leverage yeah. Go to, go to slide 20, 22 real quick. Um, one thing that you should all know is there is a common enemy in almost every industry. So when you use the idea of us versus them, remember there like agencies in general could be a common enemy. Like Joel says, oh, agencies is a common enemy. <laughs> that is one common enemy. The other ones are certain businesses, certain brands, for example, like when I was doing dental, um, all the Invisalign providers hated uh, fake aligners companies, right? So like um, Right Club and there's like Choice Clear or Clear Choice. There's a bunch of these other brands that you can also leverage as a common enemy, like by saying, hey, listen, 
other agencies would probably not focus on great Invisalign patients while, you know, you're trying to undercut or you're trying to just bring in folks that are not interested in like right club or clear choice and all these different things. So remember, there are multiple common enemies that you can kind of stand on to further the relationship faster. Just FYI, keep going. I think you're on slide number 24. Yeah. And, you know, we leverage, you can put your own white labeled version of high level here. So we yeah. leverage high level and AI to have customized conversations with every patient and get them scheduled. Now, before we go any further, can you see why a true paper show model is the only real way to go? I'm curious why though, what about it catches your attention the most? Um, and then now if you have more social proof, you're going to show more social proof. If you're not, you're going to skip this entire section. Now, here's some of our clients uh, that are using this model. So, and we just go through it. And by the way, if I'm doing this, I'm going through it very fast. I'm like, Dr. Paterna, you know, he collected over six figures in less than a year. Dr. Kosterman, Dr. Eric. And I would just, I would, no longer than five seconds on a slide. Um, and then now you're going to show and tell the system. In a perfect world, you actually take them into your high level. You take them into the ads. You actually show them system a little bit in a perfect world. Now, I give you guys a placeholder here of like all the things that they're going to get. You know, with high level, everything. But in a perfect world, you actually go through and show them. Here's the ads on TikTok. Here's the high level sequence. Yeah. I would actually take them through it and show them here's the AI actually working within high level. Yeah. By the way, if you guys ever do a in-app demo, don't go into all aspects of the app. Just focus on the pipelines and just focus on co inbox conversations and nowhere yeah. else. Like don't go into building. I would just show them, I would just show them the AI, honestly. Be like, look, yeah. it's literally texting people automated. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And then they're like, oh my God. And again, all I'm trying to do is get them to know what they're signing up for so that in three months, they're not like, this is not what I paid for. <laughs> I want them to know exactly what they're paying for so that they retain. So getting a new patients at pre and close is great, but um, what do we do to the patients that didn't schedule or scheduled but didn't close? And again, if you already went through this in the intro, you could address it. Um, uh, step three is the patient journey automation. And we talk about, again, high level. So do you see how this could work? Do you think this three-step process is exactly what you need to, you know, get to whatever goal you have? And by the way, all these questions should be memorized. All these little things, all these slides. Transition questions, right? Well, yeah, they should be like written or you could write them down somewhere where as you're going through the ad system, you could be like, look, Dr. Paulson. So I know getting new patients that pre paint close is great, but you know, what about the patients that didn't schedule or scheduled, but didn't close, right? So you want to have this written down somewhere so that you're saying these things without literally reading the slides. I meant to say that earlier. Um, what happened here? Uh oh, 1600. That's why go down to fit the window. Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Then you want to go over frequently asked questions. I would literally just put like your main frequently asked questions. You know, everything is month to month. We have exclusivity policy. Add any more FAQs there. Then I would ask them, what questions do you have that weren't on the FAQ? Cool. Um, so we do have a guarantee if you want. By the way, you don't need one for this offer. But if you want, you could throw it in. Like we get you, again, if you prepay, we're going to get you 20 patients at a show. That's the guarantee. If not, we'll give you a refund for any people that didn't show. So if you bought 20 prepaid patients and we only got you 10, we'll refund the, the difference. Uh, not including ad spend though. And then we're going to go over some bonuses. Plus on top of that, we have some free bonuses. Uh, our Google review campaign, patient reactivation campaign, which by the way, we're giving you guys for free in the snapshots. We went over it on day one. Plus we have our lattice payer referral program. So 
For every chiropractor partner that you refer to us that invests a minimum of $1,500 a month with us, we send you $500 cash per month as long as they they stay. By so the remember way, Joel, I told you guys. By the way, Joel, I want to give you credit where it's due. You are one of the first people in the agency space that I've seen launch a affiliate program for the local businesses. And I, it, it's, it was, I mean, you had a few chiropractors that like let go of their clinic and like their practice and just went all in on your program. Right. Like if I, if I can remember, well, like at least yeah. one, which is crazy because they're making like, a handful. Yeah. Yeah. It was just nuts because they're like, I don't want to deal with patients. I'd rather just go build businesses. <laughs> Send you chiros. Yeah. yeah. So can you go I, over that program? So remember, remember we, yeah, I mean, remember we talked on day one, we talked about how high level really grew through affiliates. And I told you guys, I would show you a way that you could do that for your own agency. Essentially, what I would do is I would raise prices by $500 a month and then use that as a budget to for your affiliate program where all of your clients that send you clients you pay them 500. You don't discount them 500. You actually pay them. And what, this actually solves multiple problems or multi, it, 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 it helps with multiple things. Number one, it increases retention on both sides because now this person's making money from you. They're not going to want to leave. And if the other person wants to leave that they referred, they lose money. So they're going to try to convince this person to stay. So it's like you're getting retention increase on both sides. And on top of that, it changes the relationship. It goes from, you're just my marketing agency to, hey, we actually can be partners on this and grow together. Yeah. Can you go to it's that slide different. and kind of uh, map out the math real quick? And guys, like I did something very similar in the dental space. And the key is to identify like, like folks with authority in the industry, not just anybody. Like, so I went after the dental professors that every dentist listened to and thought is a, a thought leader essentially, right? So that having a relationship with somebody that has influence is key because I even brought some of those dentists to come into other practices and teach them sales. They would do something called case presentations. And that's like a skill in itself on how you present a diagnosis to a solution for patient care. Like, so I leverage a lot of these relationships even more than from like a revenue affiliate standpoint, but just so you know, for go after folks. I mean, look, that's authority. Can you go break down the numbers here? This, it was Yeah. So crazy. for example, like I was paying, I was paying Dr. Jenna, Dr. Brian, 15,000 a month off of just people. They referred to me, you know, this, this one, which is only 500 from one of your retainers, right? So that means you probably got like over a hundred grand from just them on retainers. Yeah, their entire, uh, our business, a third, a little more than a third of it was all referrals, but we incentivize referrals. Crazy, right? That's so just from- I, And now here's here's the genius part. I'm making it as part, a part of the bonus. So now I'm, I'm actually planning this. This is benefits me. So they're like, oh my God, I get- this bonus, but it's really a bonus that helps me get clients. And I'm, I address this referral program throughout my whole relationship with the client on the sales call, on the launch call, on our first check-in during check the first in, big yeah. win. <laughs> I, I try to push this referral program. Like, Hey, if you're liking our service, if you literally refer three people that sign up, you get 1500 a month. If you refer five, that's 2,500 a month. If you refer 10, that's 5,000 a month. They're like, Oh my God. Yeah. I got to get on this. And you and do that doctors that would literally you do that recurring it's recurring it's as long as they stay so it incentivizes yeah. retention on both sides and the moment you leave you stop getting paid by me. so like Dr. Jen and Dr. Brian would never want to leave they're like if I leave I lose out on this money yeah well, okay so affiliate marketing one on one <laughs> all right so let's talk about how to get started with our uh, paper show system option 1 0 dollar setup fee $125 per prepaid patient, minimum 20 patient credit. So it'll be $2,500 to get started plus ad spender. Option two, it's $19.97 a month. And you get unlimited patients for $0. Um, so if you do want to go with a retainer, we do give everyone that option. It's up to you though. No pressure either way. It would be $19.97 to get started plus ad spend. Which option sounds best to you? At this point, they should pick an option which tees you up for the sale. Awesome. Now I'm not taking their credit card just yet. Awesome. You like option two. Great. Now let's go over to ad spend. So we have three options. Good, better, you skipped and best. Over, you skipped over a really important thing, 
when go back to I, know, I think you said we only had 20 minutes right i know, so I know. Going fast. <laughs> thank you bro <laughs> go to go to 71 as soon for all of you that are new to sales as soon as you present an offer or price close your mouth don't talk just let them react to what they just learned and observed right here it could be awkward for 30 seconds one minute it doesn't matter let them process the next investment to bring their business out of the trenches right so stay quiet as soon as you present Paulson, do you see how do you see how after we spent so much time together especially on that intro this doesn't feel like a lot whereas if we're just like hey we just met i'm getting through this fast this Another feels like a lot it's like yeah. Another thing is before the demo, you're also sending them videos of the demo of previous interactions and kind of priming them to prep for the demo as well. So by the time they get to the demo, they're like, oh, I already know what you're going to tell me. Then it's a confirmation of what you thought. And then we put guarantees in the relationship to be, you know, the expectations are set better. But yeah, 1,000%, one, 1, Joel, I see how if you're, if you win, win the heart at the intro, um, you can just close easy on the actual demo. Yeah. So I think that, uh, yeah. So I think that uh, after you say which option sounds best to you, you shut up, you let them decide, make it awkward, and then they should pick one, right? Yeah. Now, then we go over ad spend. Cool. So we have three options. Uh, good. $50 a day, better $100 a day, best $150 a day. Um, most clients go with better option $100 a day. And if you're really looking to scale fast, the top clients end up going with the best option. Uh, so with that in mind, which option sounds best for you? And do you cool. do the same thing for retainer? Uh, yeah. Spend? Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, remember, the more ad spend, the easier it is to get results. So I'm going for best. Most people pick better. So at that point, I'm actually sending them, it depends if we're doing ad spend on their credit card or on mine. If I'm running the ads on my ad account, then I have to send them two separate invoices, one for ad spend, one for the credit or the retainer. The reason for this is because if I send them all in one bill and they, for some reason, decide they weren't happy with us, I lose the money that I already gave to Facebook or TikTok. So I bill them twice, once for ad spend, once for my services. Now, if we're using their credit card, you only have to bill them for your services and get their credit card on file for the ads. Cool. At this point, they pick great. Then it's very simple. You're going to have to ask for the credit card. <laughs> what I like to do is, would it be easier if you get me your card numbers and I can take care of it for you or if I send you a link right now and we do it together. That's how I like to do it. It's very easy. Again, low tension. Would you prefer if you share your card details with me and I get you all set up or would it be easier if I send you a link and we could do it right here together? Cool, send me a link. You have two options. You can either text them the link and be on the Zoom as they're doing it and watching them or you could share your screen. Um, and, and pull up that link. Personally, I'd rather just shoot them the link. So again, at this point, very simple. Dr. Paulson, sounds good. You wanna go with option number one um, and you want this much in ad spend, we'll put that on your credit card on your TikTok ad account. So we don't have to worry about that. That being said, would it be easier if you share your card details with me over the Zoom and I do it here on my end or would it be easier if I send you a link and you can take care of it on your end uh, right now on the call. Yes, absolutely. And and for those of you that are watching, inside high level, there's invoicing, there's subscriptions. If you're doing SaaS and they're like all the invoicing, the billing could all be automated inside high level for an agency. Just FYI, um, Joel, can you talk a little bit about what happens after the sale? Like, how do you transition them into the next steps, or is there anything else we need to know about the close of the sale? Okay, so you take their payment um, and then here's what happens next. So you get their payment, awesome, great, you're all set up, then you go over next steps. Now, if they're like, no, I wanna think about it, blah, 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 blah. We could spend a whole two hours on objection handling here. 
we don't have the time. I will give you guys my top secret strategy to get people over the edge. This close this helped us close hundreds of clients. And I use it in every single one of my businesses. If they're like, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Let's say I can't overcome it. I can't overcome it. Here's what I do. Uh, no worries. Um, if you would like to think about it, that's no problem at all. We just ask for a 100% fully refundable deposit of $250 to hold your spot with option whatever that you picked for 72 hours. In the meantime, we're also going to be connecting you with some of our clients while you wait. So the next step would be for you to take some time to think about it. Speak with our other clients that have gone through our program, and we will be more than happy to schedule a follow-up call to decide on moving forward or give you the full refund, which will show up in five to 10 business days. Yeah. Now, here's, the, here's the key. Every single one of my business has a strategic reference. I have one of my best clients who I can call up at any time to hop on a call and help me get people over the edge. This is one of my greatest hacks of all time. In Atlas Dental, Paulson, we could not crack past 20K a month. We were stuck. It was very hard. Then we found a dentist who loved us, who said, I'll hop on every call with you guys. We All we did was we split the commission between the closer and the strategic uh, reference. Yeah. 5% and 5%. And we we told him, hey, hop on the call. And we scaled from 20K a month to 80K a month within those next like few months, just from that one tweak. So if they want to think about it, the only, and by the way, if they actually want to think about it and they aren't willing to hop on with your client, then it's a smoke screen. They actually don't want to think about it. They're not bought in. But if they're actually like, hey, I just want to think about it, which is fair, they need some time. The main thing to do here is you want to make it mandatory for them to speak with your strategic reference that's going to hype you up. So then you schedule the follow-up and you try to close them then. Assuming they're closed, just for the sake of time. Cool. We just finished the demo call. Congratulations, Dr. Paulson. Welcome to the Agency Lab family. We're so excited to have you. We're going to crush it for you. I'm not going to run teeth cleaning ads. Don't worry. Um, so the next step would be for us to have a success workshop where we actually meet with your team. Like I said, I don't know if you remember earlier, we talked about training your team. So we're going to actually meet with your entire team, you as well, breaking down what it takes to succeed with our system. We could get that scheduled right now. Then we're going to actually take the next week to build out your system. Then you're going to have your launch call and blah, blah, blah. So we ended up even getting them a, a, a one-on-one -on -one with our best client to help out before they go live. That really helped to, again, get them really excited, get them really bought in. At that point, this is where I would have, whenever they pay the invoice on high level, it should kick off all of your onboarding processes. I cannot teach that right now. That is, that's a <laughs> complex thing. I, there's a, uh, yeah, you should on. have like automation me, firing on. I want, to show, you, I want to show you guys this into your world. Um, but there's a guy that I highly recommend, high leveler. Let me pull him up. Uh, one second, one second, one second. Hopefully, this has been helping you guys. Uh, I know there's a lot of different details, and uh, Joel threw this um, uh, last minute. Um, role playing on me but i think we did pretty good uh <laughs> just just to shoot off the cuff from old experiences you know and these these scripts and these frameworks so you guys, hearing is, go ahead if you guys see this video right here how to onboard smma clients on my channel just look up joel kaplan or joel kaplan smma this video is with a high leveler and he gives away his entire onboarding sequence as soon as the invoice is paid so we do not have time to cover it right now but this video much. yeah it shows you what to do after the invoice is paid it literally breaks down all the automations that fire in high level to get everything rolling yeah the excitement should stay like remember when you if you went to buy a fancy car you that excitement stays with you for several days so it's important for you to ride that wave of excitement that energy that 
they just invested into their own business by going with someone that knows marketing, right? So keep that energy going with automation. Say, congratulations, uh, send them, you know, um, a gift, send them collateral, send them multiple things, even if it's just like, I don't know, a, a cookies or a bottle of wine or whatever. There needs to be, you need to think through on what kind of client onboarding experience you're going to want to provide. And that's not something we're covering on this call. I'm just highlighting, uh, again, the importance of it. Yeah, I think the the biggest thing for you guys is that 80-20 is that first call. You the, Hopefully, you guys can see how that second call is more just like checking off the boxes. Let me show you what you're getting. So you know what you're signing up for. Let's go over some logistics. Let's go over the pricing. And let's get you to buy. And yeah. at that point, Dr. Paulson should be pretty sold. I'd say 80% of the way there. Not saying that you might not have resistance at the end, but like you should at least be aligned with me. You shouldn't be like on a different world where you're like sitting through this and you don't even want to be there. Let's, so, say, let's say they say no for whatever reason. It's, it's not a harsh no, but not like it's like lukewarm no, right? You should have eight to 12 touch points that brings them back into an active sales cycle. So like, even if you get a no today, it doesn't matter. The sales cycle of an agency is usually 45 to 60 days long. It takes eight to 12 touch points with different mediums. So like, don't give up on the prospect. The actual business for yourself is built on the follow-up. Yeah, and, and by the way, there's also like, I don't want to get into too crazy of a, a tangent, but like if someone is really like, no, I'm not ready. You can also downsell other things. You could be like, why don't we start off with a reactivation campaign or a Google review campaign, just so you could get a little taste of what we could do for you. And just so you could see the power behind some of our marketing, some of our tech our CRM, all that good stuff. So you guys can always still get them to engage in a business relationship with you, even if it's not a full sale just yet. Yeah. So like what I told my sales team, when we're especially when we're starting out, you want to make it easier for yourself, for the prospect to say yes. The longer you're doing this, the more you've earned the right to be picky. So it's like, you don't want to pay, no worries. But at the beginning you kind of want to squeeze the juice out of every opportunity you can get. So if they say, no, I'm not ready to buy, say, and if they really are like not going to buy, let's say that they're really not going to buy. Oh, are you sharing your screen or am I? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Let's say that they're really not going to buy. You could say, no worries. Um, another option is for us to just start with a Google review campaign where we will take a database of all of your existing uh, patients, clients, and we will leverage our uh, software, aka high level, to reach out to all of those people and get you filled up with five-star reviews. And it, you saw it on the on the demo is one of the bonuses. I'm, I'm happy just so you guys just so you can see the power of what we can do here. Yeah. I'm more than happy to do that for you at no cost. All I ask, all I ask is that if you get over 30 five star reviews, you leave us a five star review. That's all I ask. If, you, if, you <laughs> I, get, like if I get you 30, because it's no cost. So Dr. Paulson, if if I get you 30, 30, not 10, not 20, 30, you get us uh, a five-star review. Now, if I get you 50, you also make me a testimonial video. So if, I, if you get you 30, you leave me a five-star review on Google, on Google or wherever, you know, my Facebook page, doesn't matter. It's more so you have that written review. And then if I get you 50, you leave a testimonial video and that way you can see the power of our system and what we could do. And we could really start to work together. And that way I can also earn your trust to show you, Hey, this, this ad system is really going to work. And then if you say no, then that person is not like they're out. So you guys can also do that as a last case resort, which by the way, if you do that enough times, it'll help you get like, imagine if you do that 10 times and you have 10 testimonial videos and 10 written uh, five star reviews, you'll have enough social proof. I know I had like a hundred, but with 10, you are farther ahead than most people in this industry. So, so Paulson, Joel, that's it. Uh, yeah, let's close out for the day. What are what are we going to learn tomorrow? Tomorrow, by the way, today's not the last day for the three day workshop. I know we're on the third day, but we. 
uh, basically put together a bonus day for all of you for tomorrow. And Joel, what are we going to cover tomorrow that they should get excited for? Yeah, so tomorrow um, we're going to have a, a really special guest who has built out all of my AI sequences in high level. So this is the Ooh. person that I go to to help me. So I, I literally have high level saying crazy stuff to my, all of my leads to get them booked. Like there's this automation thing I told Paulson. It sends them a picture of a rock and it says thinking of you. This is the AI. It's just thinking of you. And people <laughs> respond every time. It's crazy. So with that in mind, tomorrow we're going to be teaching you guys how to leverage AI to make this process easier, not only for yourself and your own agency leads, but also for all of your clients' leads like we talked about on day one. So Love it. Tomorrow's all about AI. And the last thing is if we have time tomorrow, we're also going to do Q&A and next steps. So actually yeah, mapping gonna, out. Yeah. Tomorrow we're going to do one more item that we didn't plan for initially, but it's just based on the feedback. Do y'all see my screen here? Oh, let me just share my screen. Okay. I know this workshop so far has been extremely valuable at the same time. It could be overwhelming with the amount of information because a lot of you are brand new. Um, I know a lot of the advanced agencies are like, oh, yeah, these are things that we do. I'm getting a lot of new new strategies out of it. But tomorrow, towards the end of the call, I we're going to map out a 2024 annual action master plan that you're going to be able to decide on what you focus on in an isolated way. So like January, we'll figure out whether you're just going to do cold emailing. So chronologically, with everything we taught you, we're going to put together an annual plan of what kind of action you should take. That's going to really pull everything together on the things we taught for the first three, I mean, essentially four days, you know, in teaching you how to build, you know, a multi-million dollar business. But anyways, Joel, any final words for today? No, guys, that's it. I'm, I'm Trying to teach you guys everything I know in four days. So it's been a freaking awesome. I'll see you guys on day four. All right. Paulson, Dr. Paulson. <laughs> I'll, send, I'll send you my high level invoice and you can take care of that bill. <laughs> love it. Love it. I need to talk to my wife. Time. <laughs> but anyways, take I care. Know you're at home. I know you're at home. <laughs> Call her over. <laughs> love it all right see you guys tomorrow same time 12 p.m est today we did not stream into the facebook group due to zoom having an outage um and we have the live stream in the youtube channel uh if you get into a high level account you can get access to all the videos all the collaterals uh by the way oh, that offer that I we have one, i have yeah go I ahead have one last thing Sorry, yeah. sorry, I forgot. I also want to give a massive, massive, massive shout out to our CRO, my chief revenue officer, Joe Potion, because he is the one who actually modified this script and he's helped oh. us master it over time. He's been known to close a six figure deal with a Fortune 500 company off of a cold call. So this guy is insane. <laughs> so I wanted, I, I did want to give a quick shout out. Like, the demo presentation was me and Sergio's creation, but Joe really mastered that um, yeah. intro call. So, so I did want to give credit where credit is due. He's our chief revenue officer. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I got to run to the airport, Joel. I'll see you tomorrow. Appreciate you guys. Uh, take care. Bye-bye. Peace out. So quick recap, and then let's talk about what we're going to go over today. Uh, it's been crazy, value, jam-packed last few days. I bet it's been overwhelming in a good way because, again, that means that we're growing. And uh, I'm excited for you guys. So the all, the all of you guys that made it through the first three days and are still here for day four, you guys are the real winners. You guys are going to uh, be the ones really taking the lead with taking massive action, I bet. That's just my guess. And uh, I'm excited for uh, day four. So quick recap. Day one, we went over the entire paper show model, how to leverage AI, high level, and the agency model and combine it to create a model that I believe will win in 2024 that's winning right now in 2023. Then we went over how to get results for clients. So we broke down the ads. 
we, we broke down the high level sequences. We broke down how to call your clients leads and get them scheduled. We gave everything away that you guys would need to go out and get your clients insane results. We also gave away a reactivation campaign that you can plug and play that's already been battle tested hundreds of times and a uh, Google review campaign that you guys can plug and play to get your clients amazing results that's also been battle tested and proven to work hundreds of times. That was day one. Day two, we went over how to fill up your calendar with qualified prospects that want to work with you. And we broke down not one, not two, but three different prospecting channels. And we showed you guys how to do it step by step. So we broke down cold email step by step, literally showing you how to send up to 10,000 cold emails a day. <clears throat> we broke down Instagram DMs. So how to literally start sending messages on Instagram to start getting positive replies and start getting booked appointments. And we broke down A to Z, how to set up paid ads to get appointments for your agency the same way you're going to set up paid ads for your clients. We showed you how to do that for yourself. And then yesterday, we broke down sales A to Z. We broke down the entire intro call script. We broke down the entire demo presentation. And uh, I reeled Paulson into role play with me. And uh, he was a dentist. So if you guys missed that, definitely uh, go check it out. <clears throat> and for that, with that in mind, for day four, I've got a very special guest. Or actually, let me give you guys the agenda first, and then I'll introduce him. Yeah, and I have a so, few things as well, Joel. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's do a few housekeeping things. So uh, agenda for day four. Today, we're going to go over um, really... Three things. Number one, we're going to go over how to leverage AI with high level to make all of the lead scheduling, nurturing, that entire process for both yourself and your clients a heck of a lot easier. And I believe we're actually going to be building out an AI sequence live in high level, which is awesome. And there's not a lot of content on the internet yet from really really amazing people that are crushing this right now give me a one in the chat if that excites you like i i i need a thousand comments on this thread right now because if we're if we're about to build out a live ai like you're you're not gonna find that anywhere else <laughs> i don't even think it's ever been done inside at least not uh, at least not at least not a really really good one like this guy <laughs> knows his stuff Fair Fair okay Fair and, and uh i'm sure there's some people <laughs> But, uh, and then uh, let's see what else. The next thing we're going to go over today is breaking down some next steps for you guys in terms of how to actually move forward, take everything you learned and implement it. And then last but not least, if we have time, I'm not going to do three hours of Q&A today, Paulson, but we could do like 30 minutes of Q&A, something like that. Yeah. 1,000. So, yeah. So uh, for me, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, yesterday, uh, I just want to warn everybody, yesterday, right before we went live or tried to go live, we there was a Zoom outage and, you know, got, yeah, I don't know how that happened, but Zoom basically had all their, um, I guess, APIs or integrations not working on the streaming side. So when you actually try to stream into the Facebook group, it didn't work. So intent, so we, what we did was, uh, as a backup plan, we streamed into the high-level YouTube channel. So if you are in the need to watch day three replay, you will notice that it's not inside our Facebook group. It was due to the Zoom issues we had yesterday. So catch the replay for day three on in the YouTube channel, high-level YouTube channel, and you'll see it. Now, today is Thursday. Give me till end of day tomorrow you'll start seeing the official replays from high level inside the, the same uh, YouTube channel with day one, day two, day three, as well as day four, probably towards Monday or Tuesday. Um, just also, I'm visiting my in-laws. My internet is a little choppy. So if I go get disconnected or whatever, um, just, um, just be aware of that. I'll come back to you, uh, come back into the room, Joel. Uh, before we do our Q and A today, I had asked Joel. There's so you know one of the common things, uh, the themes that I heard from a lot of people is, you know, the content is so 
deep and there's so much to it that it could be overwhelming. So I asked Joel yesterday, hey, can we map out a action plan for one year for everybody that's on this call as if Joel, me and you started a business from scratch and we're going to tell you what to do in January, February, March, April, May, June, June, all the way through throughout the year, tell, literally telling you what should be your step one. As much as information there is, we need to break it back down into what's the action step that you need to take for next week. If that's it's if that sounds good to you, give me a one in the comments. Give me a one in the chat uh, in the Facebook streaming if that makes sense for you. And we're gonna simplify this whole thing down to what matters to you in taking the right action. Okay, is that fair? All right, I'm seeing a lot of positive comments here. Okay, Joel, go ahead. Um, who should we bring on here? In uh, absolutely. Well, yeah. guys. So uh, this is someone I've had the pleasure of working with for my own businesses. And uh, I kept seeing this guy post content actually in my community. He's, he's one of our clients. And I was like, man, this guy's really smart. He's posting all these like crazy ninja hacks around AI, increasing show up rates, automating the entire scheduling process. I'm like, all right, let me, let me send this guy a message. And uh, we end up chatting and he ended up coming on board to work with all of our companies and build out an AI sequence to get leads scheduled into actual appointments without us ever having to jump in. So any lead that comes through our pipeline that doesn't automatically schedule gets sent to a sequence that this person built for us and the sequence this ai is our salesperson following up non-stop every single day and now here's the crazy part because ai sounds awesome right it sounds really cool but half of the time it's like more hype than actual like value <laughs> it can be very hypey you know it's like for example for example you can plug into ChatGPT to write you copy for an ad. It's still not going to beat my copy, at least not yet, right? Not saying that later on it won't be possible, but not right now my copy will outperform ChatGPT's, right? So it's like, with that in mind, I was like, let me make sure this actually works. And we have booked hundreds, hundreds of appointments through this AI within high level. Wow. So I asked this individual, can you come on the workshop? Because you are the best person that I know for AI. Can you come on the workshop and share your sauce, share your secrets on how to leverage AI with high level? Because there's just not a lot of people out there. And I, that, that are doing this exceptionally well. And I knew that if I brought this person on and he taught you guys how to leverage AI with high level, it would not only help you with your own agency for your own needs, but also all of your clients. Cause you could essentially build this out yeah. for either yourself with your leads or your clients to automate a lot of the follow-up process. Now I know that Sean, Robin, high level team are trying to build out voice AI. They're in process. Once that's ready, I'm sure this person's going to be on top of it, one on top to, of it. To, yeah. <laughs> But for now, it's for now it's mainly texting. So I wanted to clarify that. For now, it's mainly texting. So with that in mind, Ashton Wilson, Ashton Wilson, I don't know where you're at, but let's yeah, bring him let on. Me, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, make find him. A host. Hey, Ashton, let me go ahead and pin you. You may have to turn on your camera and uh, audio. There you are, Ashton. Awesome, bro. Welcome. What's going in. on, guys? How we doing? Welcome, man. Yo, well, Ashton. What's up? What's going on, Joel? Thanks for having me, by the way. This is this is awesome. And Paulson, I almost didn't recognize you with a with a new background. I feel I like know. every time I'm I see in my you, in laws, man. This is I'm I, this is my day off, by the way, Joel. I'm like, okay, you want to do a fourth day? I'll cancel my plans on the vacation and make this happen. So yeah, my background is not there. You may see a little pet running around, bunch of kids behind me. Like I'm gonna mute myself most of the way. <laughs> yeah, all good, all good. Um, first, I want to start off by saying the amount of value that you guys are giving away throughout this three to four days is absolutely insane. Like I've 
personally paid for $10,000 programs that have less information than you guys are giving. So as long as everybody actually takes advantage and takes action on everything that we went over, and I know it's a little overwhelming in the beginning, but just pick one thing, isolate it, get really good at it. You guys are going to make a lot of money. It's going to be awesome. Um, if quick question, if I share my screen, are people going to be able to write on it <laughs> like yeah. they were on day one? Oh, no, no, we, we turned off all the security uh, issues. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. We, we figured out how to, we figured out how to be professional with this now. <laughs> okay. All right. Actually, Beautiful. before you get started, tell us your quick story, man. Give us a 30, 30 second rundown of who you are, um, what exactly you do in the world of digital marketing or regular marketing. I would like, give me your story. And how you got so good at AI. Yeah. Yeah. What's your background, man? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, great question. So I, uh, actually about 18 months ago, um, I was working in a hospital, right. And then I started, I founded a marketing agency with the help of Joel. Um, so went through his program. Uh, I was a client of his, we ramped that up to a certain point and then there's this time when AI was really popping off and I was just really trying to figure everything out. We developed these chat bots and then it just multiplied our business almost overnight. It was absolutely ridiculous. It was uh, the sophistication of the conversations that were happening was pretty amazing. And we made a slight pivot where we started making that our main focus, building these out for other people who have similar businesses to the ones that we had, like marketing agencies, coaches, consultants, et cetera. Um, and everybody just started seeing a lot of success very quickly. So it was a no brainer. And we started going towards that. And now the last like six months to a year has been just isolating that specifically and trying to make it the best possible product on the market. Love That's it. Pretty much, Love it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, so yeah, yeah. Let me, let me just, you got the reins, brother. Let me just go ahead and uh, back up here. You do your thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. And yeah. Perfect. So uh, first I want to go into some of the stuff that, um, what we do has actually done for us and all of this is uh, real data. So this bot specifically has taken us from 20 K per month to 50 K per month. Everybody can see my screen. Correct. You guys are good. Yep. Everybody can. Okay. See it. Yep. So it took us from 20 K to 50 K in less than 30 days, whenever we made this pivot and keep in mind, it took us like six months to go from zero to 20 K and uh, we made this pivot, we made this change. And within that next month, we had 150% growth, which is pretty insane. Um, booking rates went from 16% to 48%. Show rates went from 42 to 80%. And in the last 90 days, our bot has booked over 700 appointments just in our business alone. So we're comfortably able to book more than 200 appointments a month, which um, luckily, you know, keeps us above water most of the time, which is good. Um, but uh, let's go into... And what kind of industries were you attacking during this time? Good question. So when we started off, it was a lot of brick and mortar. So it was med spas, um, gyms, and some online fitness coaches, because we had a gym marketing agency beforehand. And now the majority of our client base is uh, actually so social media marketing agencies. So that's, yeah, that's mostly who we work with now. So who is this for? If you're going to be building this Yo, out. Ashton. Before, yeah, before you dive in, I, I forgot to make a very important announcement. Guys, yeah. we're going real quick for day four. At the end, we're going to be raffling off the iPhone, the one-on-one -on -one with me and giving everything away. So oh, yeah. I, don't, I yeah. don't want people to feel like I just forgot about that. I did not forget. Well, I did forget <laughs> to announce it, but I won't forget to give it away. So, all right, back to you, Ashton. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, um who this is mainly going to be for is SMMA owners, aspiring SMMA owners, SaaS agency owners, and aspiring SaaS agency owners. Obviously, your general business owner and freelancers can use this as well. But if you fall under these categories, you can leverage it so much more because not only can you use it for yourself to book more appointments, but you can also resell it to your clients and use it for them, which makes you more valuable, means you can charge more. And if you're closing deals, you're probably going to, your profit margins are going to skyrocket. So um, everybody likes higher profits. So now, uh, if you don't know where to start using AI, and uh, I'll get into uh, building this out very shortly as well, but if you don't know where to start, a lot of people I see, they're implementing it in their onboarding or their back office first. And the problem with that is a lot of these people starting out haven't gotten their first client yet. So their energy is all placed into solving problems that aren't there yet. So if you are just starting and you're like, I wanna implement AI in my business, it needs to be 
in acquisitions. So lead generation, appointment setting, appointment showing, and follow-ups. Whatever's going to help you get clients and help you get them consistently is where you need to put all of your focus. And then when you get to the point where you have too many clients, and you're like, wow, it would probably be really cool if I had an automated onboarding process, make my life a lot easier. That's when we can start moving our focus into different areas of the business. But I see, uh, and I hear Joel talk about this a lot. It's like a lot of people when they first start, they put all their energy in the wrong places to avoid actually doing the work that's going to get them clients. It's like, we need to isolate the front end of the funnel. All right. And then uh, another thing to touch on is voice AI is not there yet. So we actually did a split test between voice AI appointment setters and, um, and VAs. Voice AI booked none and the VAs uh, booked significantly more. I think it's just the tonality. Um, there, there's just some bugs to work out, but I think it's going to be there very soon. I just think we're not there yet. Uh, to actually leverage this as much as we could in the future. All right, so where this is going to fit in whenever you start implementing it, this is kind of the uh, the entire sales funnel. So we have at the top, we have, uh, you know, we're generating leads and it's basically, we need to learn how to do each one of these things before we can have a repeatable process that we can put money into and make more money out. So number one is generating leads. Number two is appointments, shows, and closes. So you have to get good at each one of these things to make it to the next level. So if you don't have leads, you can't book appointments. If you don't have appointments, you can't get them to show up. And if you don't have people showing up to appointments, you can't close deals. Where we fall in is optimizing this stage right here. We get more of our leads to book appointments, and then we only have to worry about these last two stages. So in order to make this work, we need three things. Number one is a go high level account. And we've tried this in multiple different CRMs, implementing a, a, our bot. It doesn't work in any other CRM. There's no other CRM that has the sophistication of the workflows, the automations, the custom values, custom fields. It does, our bot literally is just too sophisticated to work in any other CRM. High level is the only one that allows it. So that's uh, a slight pitch there. That's a soft pitch. Get <laughs> high level ASAP. Um, Let's two, go. That's yeah. what he's trying to say. Exactly. Get high level off first three months. Get high <laughs> level today. Right. You Anyways. need it. 100%. Uh, number two, Zapier. So um, you can get a free trial on Zapier. It's not, you know, all of this is really not going to cost any extra money out of your pocket. And three, a ChatGPT account. So let's go into an example conversation of how this would work. So Ashton, just real quick, just so you know, yeah. there's a lot of people on this call that's never seen high level before. So when you go into okay. high level, um, it might be helpful if you can just kind of articulate some of the basics of how you look at high level, maybe go over the tabs a little bit. So a brand new stranger who, who's never seen this before uh, can kind of get some context, okay? Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, so I'll go into an example uh, conversation first. So basically, we use high level for everything that we do in business, right? So it, uh, it houses all of our landing pages. We book all of our appointments into high level. Um, it's very easy to, to organize. You have all of your tabs on the left side. So you have your conversations, your calendars, your contacts, where you can see just about anybody who has come into your pipeline via ads, um, whether it was cold email, whatever. It's, uh, you have basically everything you need to run a business just in high level alone. And it's, it's one of the most useful softwares, especially if you're anything agency related, whether it's a SaaS agency or a marketing agency. But uh, if we go into one of our conversations here, so here's an example conversation of how our bot works. Okay, so this is what we call mock GPT. It's one of our test bots that we use to give demos, or we'll throw some of some prospects into these conversations. Um, and this is a fitness bot just because everybody can relate to fitness at least a little bit. So we say, Hey Mike, thanks for signing up for our new fitness challenge. What's your main fitness goal right now? Hey, thank you. What are your hours of operation? And he's just testing it out. So he, the bot responds, continues asking questions. I don't have one. He tries to go in and break the bot a little bit. So he says, do you sell screwdrivers? And this is kind of where we've, um, where our bots, uh, skill set come out. So we're able to program it to understand nuances and sarcasm and say, ha ha and LOL and common phrases that only a human would say. So for example, it said, ha ha, Mike, we're all about tightening up those muscles, not screws, but seriously, we focus on fitness. Speaking of which, do you prefer group workouts or more personalized experience? If you find a bot on the market that can do something like this, let me know, That's because this insane. is, 
it's absolutely amazing. It blows, it still blows me away when I do demos. I'm like, I can't believe he just said that. And the prospect is like, yeah, me either. So we'll be on calls. It's, it's awesome. Um, and then this guy, actually, we signed him up right after he said this. So he saw this message and he was like, yeah, I'm sold. And he messaged it. He said, hello, I'm ready to move forward with your offer. We signed him up like right after he sent that message, um, which is pretty solid. So this is how it's going to work. It's literally just jumps in and has conversations and generates responses in other in under five seconds, unless you put a wait period to every prospect that comes in your pipeline. So whether you have one lead a day, five leads a day, a thousand, five thousand, it can communicate with an unlimited number of people at once with just one bot, which is amazing. Its main priority is to book appointments. So the first thing I will do is give an overview. By the way, this is a master class in and of itself. Like this could be its own three-day workshop. <laughs> you know, like you guys are getting some insane, you guys are gonna be getting some insane value because like this isn't this is just ridiculous like it's it's crazy yeah i did i did um yeah i'm gonna do my best to try to make this as simple as possible in the amount of time that we have but um if especially if you watch the replay you should be able to go through this and set up your own bot like without fail um so let's get into i'm gonna go over an overview first i think it'll be better if we see like a, a high level overview of yeah, how everything is work picture and then let's go into the details yeah all right all right, perfect. All right, so in the automation section in high level, and basically what this is, is it's um, a way to create workflows or automations and triggers for certain things to happen if you're, if you're new to high level. So for example, if someone books an appointment uh, onto the high level calendar, we can trigger an action to happen for like it to be moved to a certain stage in our pipeline and for appointment reminders to be sent. So it's an easy way to create triggers and to create automations. So we create a folder called ChatGPT. And basically what's happening is we're sending out a trigger message in the beginning. And here's what our triggers are. So trigger number one is customer replied. Okay, so if we send out an initial message to a new lead that comes in, and let's say that's a trigger, we can set that up. So a Facebook lead form is submitted, someone signs up for your ad, and we trigger a message to be sent out and we say, hey, what's your main fitness goal? when they reply to that message we have a series of conditions here so this is called an if else condition just to give you a breakdown you would type in if else and you can create conditions based on what's happening with that prospect so customer replies to a text message we have a condition set up to where the contact replies actually let me go into this workflow instead so we have a condition set up where the contact replies and it's going to send a webhook, which is basically, it's a link from Zapier to trigger additional actions to happen, if that makes sense. So what we're doing, and you don't need to completely understand the entire thing as you're going through this, but when I walk through it and I set it up, as long as you have a, a working bot, that's really the important part because you're going to be able to replicate the process after you build it out once. So. We have a condition, the contact replies, it goes down this pipeline. We send a webhook that goes to Zapier, which then goes to ChatGPT, generates a response based on their message. We upload the contact field in high level so that the response is pasted. It goes back into high level and it sends that message based on containing it in a custom field. And Paulson, I don't know if you can uh, give a quick breakdown on custom fields and custom values, if uh, you could probably explain it better than I can. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm not a techie at all. I'm kind of like Joel, kind of the visionary sales guy at the top of the company in the, in like, that's my lane. Um, oh, I could give but, a breakdown then. Yeah. But, but the reality of this is um, if you're brand new to the world of automations, um, don't let any of this overwhelm you. You can get a certified admin that has high level certification or whatever and just hire somebody for a couple of hundred bucks to just build it out one time like this is all possible or you can even hire an agency or a consulting firm like you can go as extensive as you want to build these things out but but custom fields are based or custom values in general are basically pre-built actions or pre-built uh, coding that you can build inside high level or assigned coding that tells the system, hey, if this happens, then have, then react this way. 
right? So these are if then conditions, if then conditions. And you can get very creative as a marketing agency slash consultant slash whatever in figuring out how your customers move through your pipelines and build if then conditions off of their experience, right? So he's showing you an example of triggers, which are basically sources of actions, right? That we map or pay attention to. And then the if then condition is like, okay, contact replied, contact changed or nothing happened. Here's the way we want to actually respond to it. So this allows a lot of manual labor to be eliminated. Of course, it's not the same as a human, but this, you know, this basically will um, not have a leak or a gap in the process. Like it, it kind of bu bullet proves the experience of the customer so you can map and track what their journey is so you can get them to that finish line of closing the deals. Keep going, Ashton. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, also, keep in mind, we have brand new business owners that have never used high level before and we're able to teach them how to build these bots. You're going to be fine. Again, work on one thing at a time. Once we have leads coming in, this is something that you will be able to implement down the line. If you already have a high level account, you already have leads coming in and this is something you want, you're going to be able to plug this in as well. All right, so um, another run through of the high level. So customer replies, we send a webhook that goes to Zapier, to ChatGPT, back into high level. We generate the response in a text message and we basically create a loop. And this all happens in under five seconds. So a lot of times we actually put a wait period in here because the only reason why people are able to find out whether or not it's an AI is because it's generating a paragraph response in under five seconds. And obviously a human isn't able to do that. So sometimes we'll put in a short wait period um, for like 15 to 20 seconds so that it's not, yeah. it's not as easy to tell. And from a messaging standpoint, guys and gals, like if, if you are doing formal literature style copy, it's probably going to fail you. You need to be very conversational. You need to be very casual. You need to have spelling mistakes. You need to have like slang. You need to have emojis. You need to have like... Just like how you would text a friend that's like really close to you um, and you don't really care about the formality. That's what I've seen work the best. Um, Ashton, I don't know if you kind of agree with that or not, but like, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I, was re I was actually reading one of the questions in the chat as well, uh, not to change the subject, but someone asked if it worked in a pro plan. This should work. This setup should work in every single plan, high level plan. Yeah, you don't need to be on the highest plan. Um, these things, this is workflows. This is built inside every, every, it's available in every plan. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, but do you believe the conversational style messaging works better in general? 100%. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Always. It, from my experience, I, I try to be as conversational as possible at, at all stages of the process. Um, and I think one of the things as well is human interaction obviously enhances the, um, the outcome, like when you have prospects coming in, like human interaction is going to increase the number of people that book appointments. Human interaction is going to increase the number of people that show up to their appointments. The thing with this is that it's so close to a human interaction. If you set it up correctly, you can't tell the difference. So it's almost like you're having human interaction to increase everything in the pipeline. So people that show up, people who book appointments, etc. cetera. Um, but yes, I, I do think the conversationally is very important. All right. Now I'm going to get into the step-by-step -step breakdown from the jump of how to set it up and how to um, walk through this process. So let me go pull up these custom values. So you went to settings for that, right? Yes. Okay. And you're looking at a sub account or an agency view? We are looking at a sub account. Okay. Got it. So, so we're in a sub account level. This will be like um, the sub account that you will e either create for one of your clients or for your own business. Yeah. So agencies, uh, this is something I learned from Joel back in the day as well. Like as an agency, you need to have your own departmental location where you function for sales and marketing, right? So have your own sub account that's literally built for cold paid ads, whatever. Just have your own sub account for yourself as an agency. Uh, keep going. What are we looking at? Yeah. Um, one more thing, answering one of the questions in the chat. So if you ask it directly, the bot, like if it's AI 
or if it's programmed by ChatGPT, we actually put in the prompt that when it's asked to not admit that it is AI or to not disclose its AI nature. So it will say something like, haha, I get that a lot. I'm just a super efficient assistant or something like that. And then it will continue asking questions. So um, we give it a goal and it will continue. Uh, so you, you can't really break the bot, especially if you're using ChatGPT4. It's really hard to break the bot. These bots are good. Um, all right, so we have the custom value page here. Now this is uh, just to give another breakdown of what we're doing with the custom values. So we're basically, it's basically like giving it away to talk to other platforms in our scenario specifically. So we're taking these codes that high level gives us and it's able to, and we're able to bring these codes into Zapier and it can populate all of this information. So if we put our appointment link, for example, we create a custom value. So for example, you would just create the name like appointment link, and then you would paste the link in the value. And now if we were to copy this and paste it in a text message, for example, it would populate the link. So that's how this is working. So we have a few custom values that we want to make to make this possible. Number one is going to be the appointment link. Number two is company name. Three is GPT message. And this is going to be basically that initial trigger message that goes out and asks them a question. And keep in mind, whenever you're prospecting or if you're running paid ads and you have leads come into your pipeline, you always want to try and ask a very easy question in the beginning, like a question that's very simple to answer to trigger a response just in general, even if you don't have a bot, because we want to engage with our leads um, as soon as possible, especially right after they opt in. So this is gonna be our trigger message. The name of the AI assistant can be whatever you want the name of the AI to be. The webhook URL is something we can talk about in a bit. Um, so this is the URL that, that Zapier is going to give us. And then your website link. And this is all basically just information that we want to provide to the bot so that if it ever needs to regurgitate this information, it can. So if we're and talking to like, someone, it says like pillar information, right? Like, you know, these are going to be part of common questions. Exactly. Exactly. So you could, um, once you create this for yourself, you could actually create as many of these as you want. If you feel like you're receiving common questions that the bot doesn't know the answer to, you can just make more custom values, but these are the ones that we see the most. So obviously if people want to book the appointment, people want to know the company name. Um, people want to know if there's a website that they can look at. These are very common questions that we can, or common things that we can regurgitate or they'll ask the name of the bot that's talking to them. So these, this is uh, some of the information we have here. So that's number one, custom values. Number two, we need to create a custom field and it's going to be called GPT response. And what's the difference between a custom value and a custom field? So from what I know, um, the they're, they're pretty much doing the exact same thing. So custom fields, uh, are a little bit more sophisticated. So for example, you would make, um, a custom field here, you would name it and you would be able to use this to hold information based on like, a a contact that we have. So for example, if you had a form that had a question, like what, what is the name of your company? that question would be housed as a custom field so that when someone answers the question on that form, it attaches it to that contact. So now when you look up the contact in your system, it will say, you know, Dave Jones, and then it'll say the name of their company because they answered that on the form and the custom field is what's making that possible. Got it. It's basically tying, tying it to the contact. Got it. Did I break that down? Well, is that, Kind of makes sense so, the way that, yeah okay yeah so the way i look at custom field is like it, these are like response systems where custom values are aligned to like pillar information in my in my mm -hmm. mind uh but th then again i'm not the best at these tech stuff you know <laughs> yeah yeah i'll go close yeah. the deal uh, Ashton, <laughs> what, what what i think we should do is just go through it you know okay. let's just and then if, if people have more specific questions there's more than enough resources from high mm -hmm. level and all the uh, content creators that support a high level that can answer the nitty gritty. I think True. the real sauce is like your process, how you, you know, and just the step-by-step. -step. So I think that would be easier if you guys are okay with it. Paulson, I'm, I'm what do you think? It. Yeah, that's the nicest right, thing cool. told me to, okay, stop interrupting Ashton. I got you. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I just, I just, you know, I'm you're kidding, with family, I'm man. Kidding. I don't want you here for seven hours. Yeah. No, I'm, no, that, that's a, 
That's a great point though. I think uh, a, a lot of the things like custom fields, custom values, you could do a quick YouTube search and you could find a, a great amount of information just yeah. on that alone. I'm just, yeah, I'm just thinking about all the people that are on this call that's never seen high level and mm -hmm. I just don't want to overwhelm them. And that's my bigger concern, but keep, okay, going, okay. keep going, keep going. All right. All right. Perfect. Um, so we'll need to create, uh, and again, the other understanding can come later. As long as you follow the processes, you'll be fine, but we'll need to create a, a GPT response, um, custom field. So you'll just go down here, click on custom field. You'll click add field. And again, this is what's going to be housing the response that GPT generates. So I like to use multi-line just in case it's a longer response. And then you'll name that chat GPT response. You'll click save and you're good to go here. The last thing you'll need to do is create two tags. Tag number one is going to be autopilot and tag number two is going to be stop bot. And these will make sense um, when I start actually walking through the process. So to create a tag, you'll go up in the top right corner, new tag, name the tag and then create and you'll be good to go. So autopilot and stop bot. All right, now let's go into the workflow. So first workflow we're going to make, you'll just go up here, create workflow, and we're going to start from scratch. First one we're going to make is called start bot, and it does exactly what it sounds like it does. It starts the bot. Number one, so trigger number one or action number one is going to be add tag or remove tag stop bot. And again, to do this, you'll just click on this plus button. You'll go through remove contact tag and then you select the which tag you would like to remove. That first one is gonna be stop bot, just in case, and this is for any specific scenario. So for example, if you wanted to start the bot on someone who's already spoken to the bot, um, you would want to remove the tag stop bot if they had that on their name, because stop bot is another workflow where we deactivate the bot. So hopefully that makes sense. So number one, we're removing the tag. Number two, we're adding a tag called autopilot. And lastly, we're going to update the contact field and we're going to add a custom value in here. So to walk you through this specifically, you'll click on the plus button. You'll go to update contact field. You're going to add field. You will find the custom field. If you scroll down, you'll see the one that we made, which is chat GPT response. So we'll click this. And then here we need to put the custom value of the GPT response. So what I walked through in the beginning in the custom values, we created one for that initial trigger message. So we're going to click on this little tag here. You'll scroll down, go to custom values, and then GPT message is what's going to go in there. And when you save this action, what's going to happen is we add someone to this workflow. The tag autopilot gets added. We're updating the contact field to that message. And then it's going to instantly move into this workflow. And here's why, and I'll break this down. So we have a, a contact changed trigger. So we would create a trigger called contact change. How's, how, how are we doing so far? Everybody with me, give me a one. If you're with me, give me a two, yes, if you're not, <laughs> all right, cool. It's making sense. All right, so we can we can okay. always slow this because guys, you're gonna have access to all these replays uploaded on both my channel and high levels channel. So you guys can always go back and watch this in slow mode. And as long as you're following the steps, yeah, you know, and then if you have more questions, you could just search for those specific things mm -hmm. literally on the high level YouTube channel or the Facebook group. Um, so on and so forth. Beautiful. All right. We have uh so we're gonna go trigger, contact change. You'll add the filter, and then that's exactly how we're going to come up with this. So the filter will be ChatGPT response has changed, and those will populate. So you'll find that ChatGPT response, and then you're going to move to has changed. So now that we've updated the contact field in the start bot workflow, what's happening is it's automatically triggering this. So the contact changed, and now it's going to go through this condition, this if else condition here. And here to create a condition, you'll go if else. And then we have two conditions that we can create and you add branches based off what you want the conditions to be. So in our case, we have workflow trigger is customer replied 
workflow trigger is contact changed. So it's going to go through the contact change pipeline because we just updated that contact field. And now in here, we need contact chat GPT response custom value, which is found right in here. So uh, you'll go to, actually you'll go to contact, scroll all the way down to custom fields, and we'll find it this way. Chat GPT response, and that's how you populate a custom field in the text message. So now it's gonna go through that pipeline. It's gonna deliver that trigger message that we created and it's gonna wait for a reply. So first I'm gonna focus on this top half. So what just happened was step one in Startbot workflow, we updated the contact field. Because of that, the contact was changed. Specifically, it was the GPT response. So it moved down the conditions, went to contact change, it updated the um, custom field into the text message so that the text message would send to the prospect. So that's what just happened. The next step is that we're wait, we put a wait. So this will just be a wait action. We'll click wait here, but specifically we're gonna wait for the contact to reply. So that's gonna be the sub condition. We're gonna wait for it to reply to this message specifically, and we're gonna time it out after one day. So we're waiting one day for a reply. And when they reply, we have another condition down here. So this is just another if else. You're gonna have one condition, and it's gonna be contact replied is true. So if the contact replies, we're gonna have a go to action. And this is just a way to take one place that someone is in the workflow and trigger it to another area of the workflow whenever you want. So in order to get here, you're gonna click go to, you're gonna save the action, and then it's going to ask you where you want it to go. So I can click pretty much anywhere and it's going to route that person uh, to anywhere I want in the workflow. It allows you to like loop the experience in multiple yes. places. And, and again, high level is the only thing that like high levels workflows and automations are absolutely amazing. If you really sit down for a couple hours and just try them to, to master the workflows, you can do so much. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, I think there's like over 200 actions or something crazy. Yeah, uh, it's, it's crazy. It's, a, every it's awesome. Area. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, if they reply, we're routing it back to the webhook. Now in the webhook, here's what we want to have set up. So we have another action here and it's going to be, yeah. So let me go to the other trigger first. So we just went through one trigger route. So we went contact change because of the start bot condition. It went down this sequence. We sent the text message. Now we're waiting for a response and we're routing the go to, to a webhook. We have another trigger, which is customer reply. And the filters are going to be reply channel is SMS. It has the tag autopilot. So remember in the previous workflow in Startbot, we added the tag autopilot. So now only anyone who has the tag autopilot is going to be able to engage in conversation with the bot. The bot will be deactivated if it does not have this tag. This um, makes it easy to create like certain conditions. So for example, if someone books an appointment, we don't want to continue bothering them with the bot because it's already met the goal. So we can create an action where we remove the tag, which is where the stop bot comes in and the bot will stop talking to them and it will trigger the, you know, the text message reminders or something like that, if that makes sense. So it has tag autopilot and it doesn't have tag stop bot. So customer replied, reply channel, Hashtag doesn't have tag. Now, what this is going to do is when the customer replies, we're going to hit this condition and it's going to be in the contact replied stage. So again, we have contact replied workflow trigger is customer replied. We're going to add a webhook here. You find the webhook just by typing in webhook. And what it's going to look like is the method is going to be post. The URL we don't have yet because we haven't even went into Zapier. So don't worry about this yet. All we need to make sure of is that the custom value is made uh, in the beginning, whenever we start this entire process. So we're just going to put the custom value for the URL, and then we're going to have some custom data here. And you add these items like this. So this is the, the, the custom values that we want to be sent to Zapier. And, and you just, just add... Just real quick, why, why go to Zapier in general? 
versus using systems inside high level? Like what are the benefits that you see so far? Oh, great question. So um, one of the benefit, one of the main benefits is the ability to use ChatGPT4. So ChatGPT4, it, it's, you can only use the API in specific conditions. Um, Zapier is one of the ones that the API for ChatGPT4 integrates with. Also, the sophistication of the prompts. So you can okay. include as many characters as you want. So for example, we have a, a, this bot that does estimates for electrical, for an electrical company. And the prompt for that is like, it's like a 10 page essay. And it's literally, you know, it's, it's thousands and thousands of words and it's hard to find somewhere where you can actually have that sophisticated of a prompt and use it anywhere else besides uh, Zapier and ChatGPT. Thank you. Let's get back to custom data key and value. So what are these keys that you're throwing in there? What are the benefits? Does this match the original custom? Um, yes. Values? Okay. So these are all the custom values that I went over in the beginning. It's the exact same data. Now what we're doing since this webhook is what's being sent to Zapier to make this all possible. We're taking that custom data. So for example, you would just put, let's name it a uh, AI assistant. And then you would find that custom value from the beginning. So you scroll down to custom values and you'll see all the custom values that you have made. And we'll click on name of AI assistant. So now what we're doing Did he pause for you, Joel? Did Ashton go? Yeah. Okay. Um, it his knows AI... our website. Ashton, Does that make wait, sense? Ashton, we lost you. We lost you. You came back. Are you are you AI, bro? <laughs> Can you hear me now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like we we hear you now. Am I back you... on? Everything's good. Yeah, everything's good. Back. Yeah, to is the Ashton AI is the Ashton AI working? <laughs> We're all set. <laughs> I am AI, by the way. Yeah, can no, you okay. can you say it one more time because we had lost you. So AI assistant that you assigned, uh, yes. Show how you pulled up the key and the value. Yes, yes, absolutely. So AI assistant, you're going to go to this tag here. We're going to scroll down, custom values, and we're going to select name of AI assistant, which was in the custom values that we made from the beginning. And you'll do this with all of them. So what we're doing is we're attaching this information to the webhook URL so that whenever it's triggered, it's gonna take this information and pull it into Zapier so that we can use it for the prompt. So now whenever we create the prompt, the bot will know its own name, it'll know the company that it works for, it'll know it's um, the website, et cetera. Does that make sense? That makes sense, thank you. Okay, all right, perfect. So this is what the webhook is gonna look like. So webhook, post, um, we'll put the custom value for the webhook URL, and then you're gonna add all this custom data in individually. So yeah, whatever so information have to be you built chronologically, if you skip that initial step, you're not going to be able to pull that data here, right? Exactly. Yes. Cool. So ex the exact order that I'm going in. So first, first thing you want to do is create the custom values, create the custom field, and then create the two tags. So that should be done before any of this is started, any of the workflows. Got it. Okay. So now I'll briefly go over, this one's not as important. The uh, stop bot, very easy workflow. And again, once you have this set up once, you never have to touch it again. You don't have to worry about it breaking like it's unless you run out of zaps in Zapier or something, but you walk through the process. You don't even have to understand why it works. Just go through the steps. You'll have a bot. Everything's good. So for here, we have a trigger of a booked appointment. And if the customer booked their own appointment. So here you would just go to appointment status and then save that trigger. So anytime an appointment is booked in the system, it triggers the stop bot workflow. Number one is we're removing it from GPT master, which is the workflow we just came from. So we're moving it from there. We're removing the tag autopilot so that the bot can't engage anymore. And then we're adding the tag stop bot. Now you can act, you can manually do this as well. So you can, if you have a contact and you see the bot, it's like following up too much or someone said like, leave me alone, you can stop the bot and we're good. All right, now let's go into the Zapier side of things. So we have this workflow. Let's say we just started out. It went through the stop bot or start bot. I'll go through all this over again. 
So a lead came in from Facebook. We threw it into StartBot. We removed the StopBot tag. We add autopilot. We update the contact field. The field is going to be GPT response and we're pasting the custom value for that initial trigger message. And that is going to cause action number two to happen, which is in the GPT master workflow. So the contact was changed. It's going to go through this condition, contact change. We're going to update that text message to the trigger message. We wait for them to reply. They do reply. We send the webhook, and now we're going to go into the Zapier stage. Anything uh, that you want me to address before I move I out of high level? I think we're good so far. Keep going. Okay, cool. All right, so let's uh, start from the top. So all of that just happened. Yeah. First of all, we had well, a... before you get started, those yeah. of you that don't know what Zapier is, it's basically a communication systems that a lot of software, a lot of systems, a lot of marketing people use to transfer data from one place to another, right? So it's basically like a bridge system and it's been around for a long time, very dependable. Um, and some of the functions that Zapier has is already inside of high level. So we're always constantly looking at ways to replace Zapier inside of high level. It's impossible because they would develop us often as well. Um, very cool tool to use to transfer data from one place to another. In addition to that, the type of data that you can transfer is based on behavior. So like if then conditions, or if this happens, do that, or like there's a lot of cool nitty gritty details around it. I mean, you can even do, a, there's a 10 hour masterclass that can be done on Zapier alone, but either mm -hmm. way, I just wanted to give you guys an overarching idea of what Zapier is. So that way, if you're brand new to it, never heard of it, you understand what it is. Go ahead, Ashton. Yeah. So the, another cool thing about Zapier is that it's actually, um, it, you pay, you pay more or it costs more as your business grows. So for example, if you're just starting out, you can use a free version. Like if you're, if you don't have a lot of lead volume, you're not using a lot of zaps. It's completely free. So implementing this bot in your system is not going to cost you any additional money, which is awesome. Um, so we are sending, so let's just say the scenario is lead came in. We went through all those processes. The customer replied to our initial message. Now what happens? So we go into Zapier and the first trigger that you set up here, and you can add the trigger. Whenever you open a new screen, it's going to ask you to add a trigger and you're just going to type in webhook by Zapier. Now to, um, program this, here's what we're going to do. So we type in webhook by Zapier. This is going to come up. You're going to see this screen here and you're going to tell it to catch the hook. So catch hook is going to be the setting we go for catch hook just basically means it's receiving information. So for example, we have the, if we have the webhook link in our workflow, when someone replies, that's when the webhook fires. So that's when we catch the hook, for example. So we're going to use catch hook for that. We are. And then we get to this stage and it gives us our link. Now what we're going to do with this is we copy this link. Let's go back to high level. We go to our settings to the, from the very beginning, custom values. And now we can go to our webhook URL and we can paste our webhook link in here. So that's, this is when we get our webhook link is when we start making this app. Okay. So once we paste that in there, to generate a record, we need to catch a hook, which means we need a prospect to respond. So what I would do is go in here. We're going to go to contacts. We're going to create a new contact, call it test, throw in a phone number that you have access to. You're going to scroll all the way down on the left side. Wait for this to populate. Cool. Campaigns. We're going to throw it in the campaign of Startbot. Hmm. So now what this is going to do is generate that response, um, or it's going to generate that initial trigger message that will go in there. You're going to receive the message to your phone. And what you will do afterwards is respond and you can respond to anything. So in this case, that initial message would be, um, and let's just see if it populated. 
By the way, high level will be slower when you're on a Zoom, especially live streaming versus not not on a Zoom. Just, just got from, it. From a browser yeah. standpoint, yeah. Okay, got it. But it's pretty fast today. I mean, it's, I'm seeing the yeah. way you're moving through. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, so we got the we got the message to go through. We get that message, reply something generic, right? So you can reply anything. You'll see the message pop in here. I just replied. Uh, so it says it's asking what the main fitness goal is right now. And I said to lose weight. Now, once I respond to that message, that's when the web hook is caught because that's how we've set it up. So now you can go here and you can find a new record. And in your case, you will see a new record populate with your name or your test name. And that's the record you're going to select. And then we can move forward. So hopefully that makes sense. So we webhook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Zapier perfect. also allows you to pick like different formatting and all kinds of different details around record bridging, just in general, just so you guys know. Uh, but okay, cool. And uh, just to give you an example too, I just typed this in, lose weight. We got a response already from the bot asking us what our exercise routine is like. So where so are those cool. messages housed? Uh, what do you mean? Like, like go back to, go back to high level real quick. Where is that message coming from? Like, where, where did you put those copy down? Like, that's the great goal. Like, how, like, where is the actual responses? So that's, that's the great thing about this and how sophisticated it is, is that none of it is generated by an FAQ. You can ask it anything. It's, it's a, it's an intelligence that has a mind of its own. So you basically give it a direction on how to act. And you can ask it whatever you want. It's literally going to act like it's an employee of your business. So, so that's where the chat GPT part comes in. Exactly. Exactly. So it, it could be a different response every single time. There's, we have no way of telling what it will be. It's, it's actually, yeah, yeah. it's, wow. it's, it's, it's a mind cool. of its own. Yeah. That's cool. That's good and bad. At the same time, it's better than nothing. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually, um, Sorry, but cool. Yeah. 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 It's uh, <laughs> scary how powerful it's becoming. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, it's, it is very cool though. So um, once you respond, you're gonna find a new record. You'll grab the record that, that you see. So you'll see the information here. You'll see the name of the person, et cetera. You're gonna click the one uh, that will be the contact you created. And then we're gonna go into the next stage. Now this is where the chat GPT park comes in. So you're gonna need a chat GPT account and it's gonna ask you to sign in. So the first, actually, let me move back. Yeah. So first thing it's going to show you is ChatGPT once you select it. So basically you'll add a step, you'll type in ChatGPT and you'll be able to select it from the drop down, And that's going to take you immediately to here. So you'll see ChatGPT and it's going to ask for an event. The event is going to be conversation because that's what we wanted to do. Okay. We're going to continue. And this is where it's going to ask you to connect your personal account where you're going to need to grab your API key, which is pretty easy to find on the, if you have an open AI account, once you make it, it literally says API in the top left corner, you click on that. You'll be able to find it. Then we continue and you're going to see the actions. So step number one, you're going to have our so actually once you click on these spots, you'll see the data that we pulled in from high level. So this is where the, oh, the dots are kind of going to connect. So all the data that we wanted to pull in uh, from the contact, including the custom fields and the custom values. Wow. So we'll go, um, let's see if we now can find our response. So for example, come together. <laughs> what's that? I said, now it's starting to come together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you'll find the response. So if like, for example, in my message, I said, I wanted to lose weight. And if you selected the correct key, you'll scroll down until you see, and you'll see last response, or you'll see lead response. And that's going to be, it'll say lose weight. So you're going to select that option and you'll see that right in here. And then you're going to select the model of GPT. GPT-4 is going to be the most sophisticated version that you can possibly have. It can generate images. Um, it, to this day, when it's having conversations for our business, it still blows me away because that's, this is the one that's able to recognize sarcasm, use sarcasm, say LOL, ha ha, and use like phrases that, you know, wow. people would normally use. This is what uh, ChatGPT-3 is, is, is good, 
It's a little less sophisticated and it's just not able to recognize or acknowledge the responses as well, if that makes sense. Very cool. So we're going to go with chat GPT four. We're going to add the memory key, which is the contact ID that is held in high level. Um, you don't need to know too much about that. You just need to know that you need to scroll down and find the contact ID. But you should just be able to type it in and find it. I already have it pulled up in here at the moment though. So you'll scroll down, look for contact ID. The memory key is basically, um, this is how we remember the history of the conversation. So the bot is going to be able to refer back to five to six messages prior to when it's having a conversation mm -hmm. and bring up, you know, past things that they've said to overcome objections or anything like that. Um, oh. and this is how it's able to do that. So it can remember the entire conversation regardless of how long it is because of the memory key. Wow. Okay. That's insane. So we have the uh, first name of the user that we want to add in here, which again, that's just data we pulled in. Okay. We have the custom, this is where the custom values come in that we linked to the webhook. The name of the AI assistant. Yeah, I remember setting that up. Okay. Which in our case is Angela. Yeah. And then we have the most important part of the entire thing, which is the prompt. So this is where we pull in more data. So we want to tell our bot how it's supposed to behave so that it doesn't deviate. So for example, we say you are Angela and assistant for custom data company name. Remember we set that up in the beginning, which is going to be mock GPT. And the reason why we don't just type it in, in the prompt and we use custom data is because if you're going to resell this to your clients, you're going to have all of your templates made so you don't have to go th through all these steps again. So you can literally have, you can create the bot with the personality. And if you have a client that wants a bot as well, it's automatically going to import the data once you make their uh, high level account and you create the custom values. So everything's going to be set and you won't have to manually change anything. You just have to go through and link everything together. Got it. So it's important to isolate each company's data. So then whenever you do resell it back to them or whatever, or go to a franchise and sell a bunch of gym stuff, you want relevant data that's relevant to that type of business instead of just all your stuff mixed with theirs. Exactly. Yes. Got it. Okay. I'm following. Keep going. Okay. Perfect. So um, in this case, it was mock GPT, which is a gym that specializes in transformations. Uh, we have our address in there. Your role is to engage potential customers in conversation and find their goals, uh, eventually get them to book their consultation through this link. And then we have that custom value that we have put in there. Mm -hmm. We can also add any additional, the more descriptive you are, the better. So we can add any additional information that's going to make it behave accordingly. So you're intelligent, educated, witty individual. You communicate thoroughly, but are encourage, encouraging and pushy when need be. You also bring out your sarcastic side when needed. So I always find this to be fun. insane. Those are things you're telling the bot to be like. Correct. Yes. So if I say, hey, be mean, it'll be mean. Exactly. Yeah. So it'll be slightly rude in its responses. <laughs> That's hilarious. Keep yeah. going. You probably don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I, just, I was being a little witty right now, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we like to um, use this prompt specifically, regardless, unless you're like we, we've worked with mental health clinics and stuff in the past where we don't use as much mm. sarcastic, but any other business, um, sarcasm is always good because yeah. if you have a lead that comes in and like they throw like LOL in their messages or whatever, it's able to actually like make jokes and come up with responses that, you know, someone would actually come up with, which is cool. Yeah. This makes sense. Cause Joel said his bot sends out like stuck under a rock or Yao Ming faces or whatever. It yeah. Yeah. A ton of stuff. Cool. Yeah, I yeah, didn't it's say cool. Yao Ming faces. Yeah. Well, that, maybe not you. That's, I know you did the yeah, that's a, one, right? You yeah, have so some that's... weird images that the AI sends. <laughs> yeah. So okay. the, um, the, the one thing to note about that too is that you can only send images with ChatGPT4. So mm. ChatGPT3 won't allow you to do it. So all the follow-ups yeah. that like we're sending with The Rock and stuff um, for Joel, that's going to be only because we have GPT4 connected. Got it. Okay. Make sure... Make sure you got the API for four. Yeah. Let's talk about the qualifying questions, right? Okay. Yeah. So this is kind of how we give the bot a direction to move into. So um, if you kind of just like give it a direction and you don't give it qualifying questions, it's just going to like, it will be like an assistant and they'll just respond back and forth continuously. So here's where we give it an end goal so that it makes it even more human-like. 
So we give it qualifying questions to ask, and it's not necessarily to qualify them. Sometimes we just add it as a layer of friction to make it more conversational. So what are you currently doing for exercise? And do you typically prefer a group setting or a more personal experience when working out? So when the person responds, it's going to address what they say, maybe make a little joke, and then it'll continue asking the questions. And the ultimate goal is to book an appointment, which we put up here. And it will not book the appointment or send the appointment link until these questions are asked. Beautiful. So you're giving it a North Star, a goal, essentially, to move the conversations towards a, a direction. Otherwise, it'll be just generic. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Got it. So we give it a personality. We let them know who it is. Okay. We give them qualifying questions so that they have the end goal of booking an appointment. So they'll ask question number one. The person will respond. They'll address their response, ask question number two. Once both questions are answered, um, that's probably a more high quality prospect. Because as Joel can attest to, sometimes leads come in and they just don't answer or you know, they'll ghost you. So if you can get if you can text someone back and forth and get two positive responses out of them, they're probably pretty warmed up and you can start booking. Got it. Makes sense. Okay, so that's the prompt area. Okay. This down here you don't need to know much about. Um 250 tokens is just what we put as a placeholder in here. And then the temperature is actually something we can go into. So uh, the temperature in chat GPT is basically the range that you're giving the bot to behave. So if you have this as a higher number, so let's say you, right now we have it as 0.1, which means it's going to be really focused on its goal of booking an appointment and behaving how we tell it to behave. If we increase this to two, we're giving it free range to kind of behave how it wants and maybe listen to our prompt a little bit. If that makes sense. Oh, okay. Okay. So like the focus number. Exactly. Exactly. That's a really good way to put it. I'm going to start using that whenever I explain it to people. Okay. okay. Hopefully you're okay with me stealing that. Yes. yes um, but yes, this is the focus number. <laughs> so if you're, if you're giving it a direction and you have it at point one, which is the lowest that you can have it at, it is going to focus on the priority, which is, uh, you know, being conversational, asking the questions and booking the appointment. Got it. Okay. So as a business owner for what we do, I would always keep this at uh, point one. Then we're going to go to the next step. Wait, what was the last one? The top P or whatever. Is that something important? Oh, no, this isn't important. Okay, cool. I'm not even sure what this is, to be honest. We just kept that as how it is every time we build it. Cool, cool. So 250.1 and then 1.0. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and move forward. And now we have it. So... What happened here was it went through our workflows, right? The person responded. We sent the webhook. We're sending the information through uh, so the webhook can be caught. It's taking those responses. It's sending them to ChatGPT. It's saying, hey, this is what the prospect responded. Give me a response to type back. ChatGPT generates a response, and it's plugging it. And now we have to plug it back into high level so that we can connect the dots on the last stage and actually... Um, take that response and paste it into a text message. So the event is going to be lead connector. So it's not called high level. This uh, might trip a couple people up. Um, yeah. Cause I'll, I remember I'll explain I, it real quick. So high level is obviously white label, a bull platform. We white labeled our white labeled ourselves with a brand called lead connector just for integration purposes. And you can basically move data back and forth under the gray label name lead connector, which is, our white label for you guys as agency so you don't have to disclose that you're using high level to your end customer and it's free keep going all right perfect um so you would pull this up and the reason why i think it was necessary to bring that up is because i when i was creating one of my first zaps i looked for high level in here for like an hour not knowing that it was called lead connector so yes. <laughs> pull it up You'll see lead connector right here, and that is high level. So let's delete this. Yeah. This, so this we're sending it here. We do to protect the white labeling for you as an agency. Just anyways, keep going. Yep. Um, so we're going from ChatGPT, and now we're getting into our account. So we have lead connector. You're going to see this. The event is going to be we're updating the contact. So remember the contact fields that we created. So we're going to update those contact fields. The next step is going to be connecting your account. What you're going to do to connect your account is it's going to ask you to connect an account. 
go to your high level once you have it created. You're gonna to go to the sub account level that you're building this bot into. Scroll down, click settings. You're gonna see business profile. You're gonna copy the location ID because that's what it's gonna ask for. And then you're gonna paste that. Click continue and you're connected. Voila. Then we'll click continue and we're gonna focus on the action. So I didn't put a last name on mine whenever I submitted it. So you can click on this go to catch hook and it's going to show you all the information that was imported. You'll see full name and you're going to click on that one, but you won't put it under first name. You'll put it under full name right here. Okay. So full name under there. Now we're, we're mapping all the data that was caught uh, from that was caught in the webhook and that was caught in chat GPT. And now we're connecting all the dots so that high level knows, Oh, this is all for the same person and it sends a message to that person. So we're gonna scroll down. You can ignore all of this information. You're gonna scroll down until you see GPT response. And you're gonna to go to the conversation that I had in GPT. You will see the reply. And you're gonna plug that reply into here and we're gonna populate that. And this is the custom field. So the chat GPT response is the custom field that we made. So what we're doing is we're taking the GPT response and we're plugging it into the custom field that we made and it's gonna apply it to that contact. And then that is pretty much it. So went from the workflow to catch the webhook whenever the person replied. We went through all that, went through the conversation part. So we're event conversation, chat GPT account. We have all of this filled out or take some time on your prompt too. You want it to be really good. You want to make sure that it's, um, it understands what your business model is and you don't have to put a lot of information about your business. As long as it knows what you do, it's uh, chat GPT is going to be able to work its magic and it will know everything about your industry. So for example, we built a bot for a lawyer and it knew answers within five seconds that the lawyer actually had to look up in an encyclopedia. So it just knows because it has access to all the information. Uh, we continue and now we're going to import all that information into high level. And the only things that we're updating is full name, phone number, and the response. GPT response. Yeah. And we're going to plug in the reply. Cool. We're going to continue. We publish this. And then when you go into that same conversation that you were having, you should be able to continue talking back and forth with the bot. So this asks what my exercise routine was like. The only time you're going to have issues with this too, is whenever there's like a, whenever the server is down for chat GPT. So sometimes there's a server overload because too many people are using it at once. Usually that's on Fridays we've seen. Um, and you might have a, a delay in the messages or the responses. Well, they just, so, need to, they just need to pedal faster. We're busy, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I'll send them an email. I'll see, I'll see if they, <laughs> I'll see what happens. Cool. So what's next? So now, um, we're able to, the bot will be conversational once we have all of this set up and you're going to plug this into all of your workflows. So for example, once you have this set up and the bot is conversational, so for example, let lose weight, that's a great goal. What's your current exercise routine? Like, and now it's asking the qualifying questions. We're going to go into automations and we're going to make one last workflow. So. This is called new opt-in AI chatbot. Okay. And if you're running inbound, um, if you're running ad campaigns, for example, this is how you would set this up. So we have a Facebook lead form is submitted trigger. And what we do is we create an opportunity, which we just call this a new lead. An opportunity is basically like a stage that they're in, in your own sales pipeline. Okay. Um, this is a whole different thing, but you have, different opportunity stages. So you can have new leads, consultation, uh, people who, you know, had a conversation with someone on your team, for example, so that you can view them and know exactly where someone is uh, in your business. And I assume Ashton, you, for each source that we build out for cold emailing, Instagram DMs or Facebook ads, you mm -hmm. know, conversions, you probably will have separate sources that you're pulling, right? Or is it yes. all going under the same workflow? 
so we create them in different ways. Okay, got it. So we'll create an entirely, um, so like for example, if we have someone who's doing cold outreach and they have a large list. Cold email or something, yeah. We make it specific to cold email. Got it. Yeah, and then we'll just manually enroll them in the workflow as opposed to anything else. Got it. Okay, so let's go forward with uh, okay. lead forms. Okay, so Facebook lead form is submitted. And the important part here is that we create a trigger where we're adding them to a workflow. So this is as easy as clicking this and then just finding that uh, action to add to a workflow. And the workflow we're adding them to is Startbot. So that first one that sends out the trigger message. So now every lead that comes in from Facebook is automatically enrolled in, in a conversation to the bot. Interesting, got it, okay. And then that is how we complete the circle. And now let's go back and check in on our bot. So uh, don't work out, no worries, we all start somewhere. Do you prefer a group setting or a more personalized experience? So now that's it, our bot is finished. Yeah. He's going it's for conversational. The, with the qualifying question, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I know that was a lot, but if going through the replay, and just going step by step through the process, you're going to be able to set up everything. Whether or not you understand the science behind why it works doesn't matter. As long as you have a bot that is able to communicate with your leads, you're gonna be good to go. That's pretty cool. All Passion, right. this was insane, man. You crushed it. I appreciate it, man. I know, I know yeah, it was a lot. I, I tried to it. simplify it as much as I possibly could. No, you did. Uh, okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. This is what, this is also why I just hire you to do it. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, also I'm, easier. I'm pretty elementary with this kind of stuff. You walk me through it in a pretty comfortable way. I feel like I understood it pretty well. So great job. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, awesome. absolutely, man. Can we give Ashton some crazy amounts of ones? on the Facebook live. Yeah, give him feed. his flowers, can we, please. <laughs> can, can, can we please show him some love? He took time out of his day to show us the entire sequence, step-by-step, step, go behind the scenes. Ashton, is there anything else that people need to know? Um, this, everything that you guys, just in the workshop in general, the, I'm telling you, this is, uh, I've paid for a lot of courses, just getting the ball rolling and getting to this point. The amount of information you guys have gotten in this workshop has the potential to make you so much money. It's not even funny. Like the cold emailing, the cold DMs, the Facebook ads. Um, Isaac, the person who was going over the Facebook ads, he's a guru. Literally, if you have a small, you have a small budget, like even if it's just $100 a month that you can add, allocate to ads, $300 a month, whatever it might be, put it into ads and let it drip slowly. You're going to be able to generate leads using the information that you get from him. Um, just make sure you pick one platform a lot of times when people receive a lot of information and they're overwhelmed with like, I can do all of this at once, they end up doing nothing at all because it's too much information. So pick one, get good at it. And that is the platform that each one of these can make you a lot of money. Cold email, cold DMing, yeah. cold, or Facebook ads. Just focus on one, get really good at it and only do that. Yeah. Thank you, Ashton. I appreciate you jumping in. Yeah, um, absolutely. Just real quick, where can people find you? Is there a website, um, Instagram handle, whatever, like, by the way, before everybody gets off, before you get off, uh, if everybody can just uh, grab their phones and kind of record over the Zoom and just tag high level um, on Instagram, Joel, as well as Ashton, whatever your handle is, please do that. Our teams are prepped to uh, repost those stories and things like that. Uh, but either way, um, what's 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 your um handle okay ashton 11 wilson and that's not an ai either right <laughs> no this is that's not AI. <laughs> if, you, if you dm ashton you're gonna get his chat gpt bot with <laughs> yeah. high level i'll turn it, it off i'll Instagram. turn it off for the next few days i'll be <laughs> manually answering questions love it love it thanks for being here ashton i appreciate it um Joel, yeah, you ashton, a very important question someone asked how much can you bench <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Someone, you don't have to someone answer. said you're the jacked version of 95 pounds. Uh, uh, <laughs> someone, no, no, he said, what, What's the guy's name? Stark from uh, Iron yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. What's the yeah. guy's name? Why am I blanking out? I don't know. I saw the comment. I was dying laughing. But let's move forward. We got like a couple of more hours to go. Stick to Tony Stark. Tony they Stark. said you're the Tony Jack Stark of AI. Stark. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to put that in my bio. <laughs> 
Tony. Well, someone actually said Jack Tony Stark of AI. Okay. That was funny. <laughs> but that's awesome. All right. Cool. Thank you, Ashton. You're the man. Appreciate yep. you. Uh, Paulson, before we do the uh, giveaways and tell people where they can get everything, um, you wanted to come up with a game plan month to month. Now, I will be honest. I'm more of a fan of like 30 day game plan, 60 day game plan. But if you want to do a full year, I'm, I'm cur- we can collaborate on it live, whatever you feel like is best for, for people. Let's, yeah. Um, let's ask the people, what do you guys want us to do? Do you like, I propose the idea because there's such, there's so much content from this workshop alone. One talking point that we've had could be a workshop in itself or a masterclass. Would you guys like us to, and gals, do you want us to do like a 30 day type in, let me just feel the crowd a little bit. Quick. We could also do like 90 day kind of in Yeah, between. maybe do a 90 day of like what, I learned all these things, Paulson, like what, what should I take action on? Should I start with cold email or should I start with Instagram? Should I go straight to paid ads? Should I, you know, get on a stage and sell from stage? Like whatever it is, like, what do you guys want us to do? Okay, 90 days. I'm hearing 90 days as kind of like, a common ground here q1 90 day okay cool got so you. let's let's do this um joel so here i I, I have here to... check this out paulson okay i have this resource that i give to all of our clients okay it's it's a, it's a 10 steps to 10k a month <laughs> maybe we can map this out because it'll it'll really just take everything we learn and kind of just like condense it and i could even yeah. make a copy I'll even add this to the resources, by the way. Okay. But I, I can make a copy and I can also, um, whoops. I can make a copy. And what I can also do is, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, add specific timelines, if that makes sense. Yeah. So let's do this, Joel. Here's the final answer. Let's do 90 days. Nobody needs anything beyond that unless they're a Fortune, you know, 100 company just yet. Um, let's just focus on 90 days. And two avatars that we can talk to, Joel, is the guys and gals that are starting out and they're under $10,000 a month in revenue. Let's create a plan for that. And then the folks, agencies, consultants that are above $10,000 a month, let's do a second 90-day plan, if you don't mind. So three months. Yeah, I'm, someone- I think like... I can answer the latter pretty quickly. If you're over 10K a month, then you're, you're, you're well, what I was going to say is like, what you should have done through this whole workshop is gotten like three or four things you want to implement because you already have a foundation, you know, your niche, you know, your strategy. What you should really do is ask yourself, what are the three or four things that I need to implement over the next 90 days? that can drive my business forward and really move the needle. It really doesn't have to be more complicated than that. It's almost like what I tell people when we go, when they come to our events, I say, your goal here is not to implement everything. Your goal is to take three or four big things, three or four big projects from everything you learned and got overwhelmed by and implement it over the course of 90 days. Now, where this gets challenging is for someone brand new where they have to implement everything, right? That's where, that's why we come up with a 90 day plan. So I think like my, my honest, genuine answer, if you're over 10 K a month, over hundred K a month, even over a million a month, if you're doing some big, big numbers, the, the, the key is always less is more. So it's like, okay, there's a lot of stuff, right? So maybe one of the three projects is I'm going to implement an, an, an AI uh, bot inside of high level for all of our uh, Legion nurturing. Yeah. I'm going to start doing paid ads and Joel talked about getting a strategic or building a referral program an affiliate referral program. Those are the three things. That's it. Yeah. And, and that's how, that's the mindset you have to take as opposed to, I'm going to implement this, 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 because you, you already have so much in place that you're, you're going to, you're going to overcomplicate the process. Um, and then also, you don't Joel, have to I, know, do so much. I, I know the workshop is about getting, from zero to a hundred K a month. And I know Joel has plenty of agencies that do that in 30 days. So even in the 90 day plan, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's, a few, I mean like zero yeah. to 30 days or like, no, you're I'm saying, saying you, like, you've had agencies that go from zero to hundred K a month. Oh yeah. We 109 agency owners. 
so okay. far that we track can you, and know can of. You, can you tell us a 90-day plan that aligns to that goal? Oh, sure. Yeah, we can go that's, over that too. That's Let me question. see. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. I thought you meant more so like takeaways from the... Uh... No, no, no. Yeah. I see. I see. Well, let me see if I have something. Um, Somebody pointed out my microphone is low. It should be better now. Thank you. Give us a one in the chat. Um, if so far this whole workshop has been like a mind bender, as Joel calls it. Now we're going back a step and saying, okay, here's what you need to implement based on no, no. hours of things we've put on, put on your plate. <laughs> I mean, normally I say mind F U C K, and I'm trying to be more. Thank you, thank <laughs> so you, Joel. So thank you Joel. Yeah, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Because <laughs> so I can get into it, so I was like, maybe I just know. call it a mind bender. Passionate. <laughs> yeah, just call it a mind bender. All right, let's see here. Okay, so if I were, uh, we can put a, a timeline on this. If I were at zero, trying to get to 10k a month. You know, first step I talk about is always mindset. You can actually go and watch day one of the 10 day course that I already did with High Level many, many years ago, either on my channel or High Level's channel. And day one was all focused on mindset. So I guess the first thing is I'm going to put watch, you know, next steps. So maybe you could do this this weekend it's really just like over yeah, do the, do do the january program. week oh. one two three and four give us a week by week for 90 days okay january week one yeah watch this video and can you change the title of that doc to 90 day plan action plan sure I mean, the heading of the page. Uh, yeah, that too. Yeah, cool. Because that way, because we're giving, we have so many collateral, so we're giving away, people are going to be confused on which document is which. Okay. Um, and again, I can actually, uh, so you can find these. Let me show you. One second. If you look up high level... Joel Kaplan, let me just pull up my computer here. Are you trying to find the 10K in 10 days videos? Uh, yeah, I'm going to find them. Okay, so I found them. Those are like five years old. Just by the way, that was a very first it's, workshop we ever did in high level. <laughs> I mean, the mindset doesn't change, right? It's not like the mindset needs to yeah. be updated for 2024. <laughs> um, okay, so watch this video. That's the mindset one. Oh my so god. I'm gonna copy that link. That way you you know I'm gonna add it here. Um I'm looking at that video that you just flashed, just reminded myself I had lost weight since then. <laughs> Intentionally, but yeah. Crazy. <laughs> I got a fine day too. Oh my goodness. What a memory lane. It's still one of the strongest workshops ever watched. The old ones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is. Yeah, just do, I don't don't worry about it, Joel. It's gonna it's gonna literally. Okay, fine. You're doing it. Go ahead. I Bye. got it. <laughs> I, just I would want... say the. Uh, I would say. <laughs> January week one. Watch this video. But honestly, January week one, you should also watch this video. <laughs> yeah, I I think that's I think... the truth. I think that's, yeah, let's create a game plan for January week one through four. Then let's do February. Let's... Yeah, maybe we'll do it like this. Let's Maybe yeah. we could do it like this where it's like. Here's the thing, though, guys. I'm a huge believer in taking fast action. So if it really takes you 90, like two weeks to watch two videos, you do not want this bad enough. Yeah, no, you I know? need you to stack it up. I need you to stack it up, Joel. Like function it like the way me and you would function. And I know, like you know, we we go. Well, let, I'll just say we. I'll in. just say I'll, I'll just say this. January should be watching this video, picking your niche, creating your offer, which we already created for you. So this one should be already crossed off. We literally created your offer. So yeah, if you go back to day uh, day one of this three day workshop, we already created your 
uh, your offer for you. So that's done. I would set up one free prospecting channel. I would all do this all in these first four weeks. Okay. So matter matter of fact, matter of fact, when I remember being inside Joel's like inner circle courses, like the guys that jump into those programs that Joel had, they implemented in the first like three days. There's a lot of high performers there. And the standard was like first two, three days, get one channel up. We'll get whatever the channel is it didn't matter just get one channel yeah, I'm, I'm making it up. i'm making it easy mode for you guys no be, be if you tough. want a hard mode be I tough can. yeah be tough be tough okay do it the all way right me well, and you would look, do. This, this, <laughs> then it really needs to be a you guys want the honest truth this needs to be a 30-day game plan that go for like, it go for it's it it's like it's like it's like uh, at the end of the day it's like week one mindset picking a niche creating an offer that's already done and setting up one free prospecting channel. So we talked about cold email or Instagram DMs. And not only setting up a free prospecting channel, but actually executing on it. Like yeah, you're actually starting to send cold in. emails. Yeah. Correct. You're if starting to send are not cold flying emails. in, it's not checked off. Correct. So so set up free prospecting channel and start prospecting. This should also, this should all happen within the first week. Most people delay and delay and delay and they want to wait and wait and wait for the perfect moment, the perfect time. And then what happens is they never take the first step. One of my favorite sayings is, I wonder if I have it here. Um, yeah, take the first step. Most people focus on steps eight, nine, and 10, and they never end up taking the first step. Yeah. It's kind of following the philosophy of fire, ready, aim instead of ready, aim, fire. Most people are like, let me make sure I have everything ready. Then I'll aim, then I'll fire. But what you should actually do is fire, ready, aim, fire, take action, then get data. Be like, okay, I need to tweak this. You get ready again, you aim, and then you fire. So um, one week, you guys should have, get a little, watch this video on mindset. It will help you guys. Pick your niche, watch this video, it breaks it all down. Create your offer that's already done. So you have it ready to go. And set up one free prospecting channel, whether it's Instagram DMs or cold email, pick one. Instagram DMs or cold email, pick one, start it. And not only set it up, but also actually start prospecting. That should be week one. Yeah. And that, and it leads you to setting appointments and closing appointments. That's, that's the golden word for Joel Kaplan in my mind for the last like five years, setting appointments and closing appointments. That's what people don't do. Yeah. I think you guys are going to watch this training and be like, Oh my God, like the AI is awesome. And then spend weeks tinkering with AI and you don't even, you don't even have a client. And it's like, what am I, and it, when, when I teach this, people think that I don't care about client results. Guys, client results matter so much. If you have bad client results, you're not going to have a successful business. Remember what I said day one. If you can get your clients' clients, then you can always get yourself clients. So it starts with that. And the reason we started on day one with client results is because that's the foundation. But here's the truth. Most people will spend months tinkering, learning, messing with what is going to happen if I land a client and they never actually focus on landing the client. And I follow the analogy of the airplane. When you're on the airplane and there's a a warning for oxygen or lack of oxygen, what do they tell you to do? Put the mask on yourself first, then help the person next to you. You have to be able to find the client, aka put the mask, if you want to even support the person next to you. And what ends up happening is most people never have clients. I would say 90% of agency owners, this is going to sound crazy, Paulson, 90% of agency owners or aspiring agency owners or SaaS owners or aspiring SaaS owners, they either never get their first client or they say they're going to get, this is more, this is the, so they either never get their first client or more likely they say, yeah, I'm going to get started my agency, I'm going to start trying to get clients once I get this done. Once I finish tinkering with this AI thing, once I finish this workshop with high level, that's going to teach me even more things. And you never take action on growing your business. And remember what I said on day one, it's both product and sales. 
product and sales. Apple understands this very well. They are a sales machine. They're so, they make billions of dollars and they're always focusing on the product. How do we make it better? How do we make it better? But it's both. And uh, with that in mind, most people never focus on sales and they only focus on product. So the reason I push this so hard of focus on sales, focus on sales, focus on sales is to bring you to the middle because it's both. So I would actually say for week one and week two, don't worry about, don't worry about client results at all. Make sure you even get to the point where you're talking to prospects, talking to people. So week two, go down to the next page on that one. So there's a second page. Oh yeah. This, this should actually be up here. Hold on. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm going to make this number four. Or so number four should be uh, scraping lists. And I'm actually going to scrap all this because Christian showed you how to do it. Yep. You had to do this on day two. Two. So yeah. you guys need to scrape a list of we, Yeah, we basically prospects. have to get to 10,000 cold emails a day. Yeah, so scrape lists of prospects in your niche. Christian showed you how to do this on day two. This is step four. And then step five is setting up a free prospecting channel and start prospecting. That's week one. This should honestly all take you one week and that's it. Do not spend more time on this. Yeah. Keep in mind, I'm not telling you to build a website. I'm not telling you to come up with your name, build a logo, any of that. That doesn't matter. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Week two. I'm actually going to put paid ads uh, a little bit farther down. And this is for someone who's just starting out. Just Correct. FYI. Yeah, we're, we're talking about launching. Okay, week two. Let me just like put this down here for now. Okay, week two. I don't want you to move on to step six until you have started prospecting and have replies. You mean don't worry about a script, intro script until nothing. Okay. I don't want you guys to worry about anything else. I'm Love trying it. to dumb this down. Love do, it. I do not care about anything else until you guys are like, oh my God, someone replied to me on Instagram. Then I want you to worry. Yeah. Again, don't don't fire. Oh, yeah. Fire, ready, aim. Yeah. Oh my God, they replied. What do we do next? That's yeah. the right mindset when you're a beginner, because if not. If you over prepare, you're going to burn out. You're going to be extremely overwhelmed to the point of burnout, not in a healthy way. And also what's going to happen is as a beginner, you have so much to learn, deal with, improve. You have fears to overcome that you've never faced. You have skills to learn that you've never had to. You have limited time and limited resources. You have your back up against the wall in every way humanly possible. So yeah. we have to be as efficient. We have to be as efficient as Ashton's AI bot, right? We need to be so efficient. And the only way to do that is by only focusing on the next step and the next step and the next step, not eight, nine, and 10. So some people might be like, well, Joel, I need to build my sales presentation before I even prospect. No, prospect first, one step at a time. And when you have to, when it becomes the time to deal with the demo presentation, you will actually know your business will speak to you. Guys, I've helped 109 agents here under scale to 100K a month. I have helped teenagers, teenagers scale to 100K a month. Yeah. I've helped over 10 teenagers hit 10K a month. I've also helped agency owners go from zero to 100K a month in 30 days. And I'm telling you, I've seen this happen over and over and over again. And I told, I also said, I trained the, entrepreneur i don't train the model the system I, I i'm the hardest part is getting you guys to think the right way and take action the right way i always say this it's not about taking action it's about taking action on the right things and that is what i'm trying to do here so week one to recap watch the mindset video which will go into all these concepts further then pick your niche then you don't have to create your offer that's already been done 
scrape a list of prospects and set up one free prospecting channel and start prospecting. Do not move on to week two until you have started prospecting and have replies coming in. So once you're like, Joel, I got someone to reply to my cold email, great. Then I want you to go and look at the intro script that we wrote or that we went over yesterday. And I want you to rewrite it for your niche oh, yeah, for yourself. So I want, I want you to then take it and rewrite it. You're like, oh, okay, now I got, I'm getting replies now. Now it's time to work on it. Yeah. Then just, I want you to build your demo. Yeah, real quick on some of these things like niching down and all of that with SaaS, you don't need to niche down. You do need to have a focus on local businesses. Eventually, you will have to niche down. In the beginning, just go after anybody and everybody in a local area just to get the ball rolling when it comes to SaaS. If you're doing the agency stuff and have an agency offer, you 1,000% have to niche down because it's usually saturated. So if you want clarity on things like that, go to our five-day challenge. I've made it very clear on how to launch SaaS versus an agency. Okay, keep going, Joel. Yeah, so I think uh, I was just looking at the, the well, comments just, to see yeah, if there's yeah. what people are saying. Um, I would also say that uh, as far as like the local business, thing like yeah well i don't want to get into that that's going to be like a whole other spiel. i know we, it's we got to be moving. two hours yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We week two week two moving. by the way if you're like joel i only have one client this still applies to you this yeah. all applies to you unless you're already at six figures if you're at 10k a month fine this doesn't apply but if you're under 10k a month this absolutely all applies to you if you're like joel i only have one client that doesn't, this still applies. Then you're going to build your demo presentation. That's going to take you about mm, two hours max. Honestly, honestly, this is, I'm going to do this the Joel way, Paulson. I'm sorry. Yeah, do Week it, one, do, do it then the Joel way. <laughs> this should take you, this should take you one day. <laughs> I'll give you two days. Yeah. Give them two days. But, but I if like you, the urgency because that's the way I think most people have to function to compete you're competing you, you're in sports as business owners and and the best the best kobe's win not just because you're playing you will win you have to be cutthroat at this and be cutthroat to yourself have standards of getting these done things done okay i'm gonna get off my soapbox i'm, I'm finding myself going down that lane okay no no you're good you're good you're good so <laughs> Look, once once you're getting positive replies to your outreach, people started saying, yeah, yeah, I'm interested. It sounds awesome. You have 48 hours <laughs> to write your intro call script or build your demo presentation. Or sorry, yeah. and build your demo presentation. I give you Which, two days. You got two. We, but we've already built it out. They just need to change the names. They need to change a few things. Yeah, yeah they need to change. So, so it should only take, I'm going to give you two days because you're going to want to like, design it and i already know you guys you're gonna make it look pretty all that stuff fine <laughs> go for it but you got two days after two days you're still tinkering the presentation you're not focusing on the right things once you land a few clients from free prospecting i want you to set up paid ads now paid ads is a little bit more complex so i'll give you 72 hours yeah so and once you, you start hire landing, anybody. you can do it yourself in the beginning yeah and we showed you guys exactly how it should be set up um cool at that point at this point at this point you you should have everything you need to start to get clients yeah the first thing is quantity just fyi you're you're just trying to tap into quantity whatever it is let me just rise up the number of people that are inbounding into my business. Don't focus on quality of those leads until you have confirmation of quantity. So if you're not at like 10, 15 leads coming in every single day, you don't need to be tinkering on like conversion ads and all these other things and funnels and landing pages and trying to figure out all kinds of stuff. In the beginning, you're just getting the lead ads going, getting the cold email going, worry about the quantity stuff later, maybe in the second month. Okay, what are we looking at here? Getting a power partner, and what we're on week. No, no, so, so, well, once you, once you, 
No, we're on. We're on. You guys need to take some some action, big time, <laughs> fast. I'll give you guys one week to to get your free prospecting channel up and running. Then I'm going to give you guys, once you start getting positive replies, I'll give you two days to get your sales materials, your intro call script and your demo presentation. And then once you land a few clients from free prospecting, I give you 72 hours to launch paid ads. And I want you guys to take the money that you get from those clients, dump it in the paid ads. So you get three days to set it up. At this point, you should have everything that you need to get clients. At that point, this is where it gets a little tricky, okay? There's two things that I want you to do, and the timeline is not so black or white, unfortunately. You have to get a power partner. I want you guys to get a power partner, and we talked about this, where you find someone in your niche that could be a big resource to you, someone that could be your reference case study. They could be your guinea pig to try new things out on, and I want you guys to find someone that can essentially help you in exchange of, for you to do all their marketing for free. So you're going to do all their marketing for free in exchange for them being your reference, your case study, testing things out, using them on videos, using them on ads, and just learning about the industry as a whole. So again, this can take a while. It might not happen overnight, yeah. but I'll try to find someone in your industry that could be your strategic partner to help you yeah. because you don't know about the industry. And then at that point, I want you guys to switch all of your entire focus to client results, like your life depends on it. And I don't want you to then go out and get a crap ton of clients until you feel really confident about your ability to deliver. Yeah. And if you're like, Joel, I have no idea. I don't want to do any of the client results. Three options for you. Okay. You can either work with a white label agency. There's plenty of people in high level that are amazing. Number two, you can find a business partner that's really good at the tech, really good at the fulfillment, hates doing the sales. Or number three, you can also just suck it up and understand that if you're going to take someone's money, you better do whatever it takes to get them the best results possible. And you guys have a lot of the resources to help the clients. We literally give you the, like Faisal's system is getting chiropractors insane results. And we gave it all to you. And we gave it all to you. So it's like, you guys have all the resources is, to be able to also yeah. go out and get the client's results. So now the, the, the main thing holding you back is actually your ability to get yourself clients. Again, I'll say that one more time. We gave you guys everything to be able to get your clients great results. We even showed you how you can set up really incredible AI bots in a high level to offer yeah, to your clients. So, it's like, <laughs> so we have no excuses. giving you guys all the resources to get your clients great results. You just now need to go out and get clients. That's the truth. So at this point, you should be getting some clients. And, you should, and, and what you need to focus on is getting a power partner to work with you more closely on, hey, how do we really make this system the best system ever for chiropractors, for dentists, for gyms, for roofers? And then focus on all of your attention on, hey, how do I now create the best product ever? Yeah. Because again, well, it's real like- quick, Real quick, Joel. So what? if if any of you watch, uh, go up to the power partner thing real quick. So if any of you went through either Chase Buckner's course or my course on SaaS, we teach you how to build a small group of beta of like five customers. Those right away become your power partners. They become your affiliates. And inside high level, you could even build an affiliate system that handles affiliate commissions and all of that. So you're, you're, even the billing for power partners is literally automated. We teach that in the five day challenge as well as our mastermind everywhere else. So like, if, even if you're doing SaaS, the first round of beta that you bring in, that becomes your power partners right out of the gate. Um, keep going. And, and like this this workshop, Joel, I'm going to be honest with you. It's turning into what I call the no excuses workshop, <laughs> right? That's literally what it's turning into. And I love it. But that should be every workshop. It is. It Honestly, is a workshop. That, that, but like... The game of business, Paulson, is a mental game. It's like, it's like, the, for example, here's what happens with 99% of entrepreneurs. Imagine we're trying to get really good at basketball, Paulson. Imagine you and I are trying to get in the NBA, even though we're never going to. But let's say that you and I, are, we both like basketball. We're trying to get in the NBA, right? 
And then we go off and watch all the YouTube videos ever on basketball. And that's what we do. We're like, we're going to watch YouTube video after 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 YouTube video, but we're never going to show up in practice and we're never going to show up and actually play with pressure on the line. We're just going to watch YouTube videos. Do you think that we're going to get really good? No. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you the, 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 in, the opposite of that. Imagine if we decided, hey, every single day we're going to practice for three hours. And at the end, we're going to do a real game with real people. And we're never going to watch YouTube videos. Who do you think is going to get better faster at the actual skill of going out in the court and playing basketball? The guy that's actually hooping all day long. Exactly. So I think th that's a mental decision. It's a mental choice. And the reason we end up, or most entrepreneurs end up watching YouTube video after YouTube video, after YouTube video, after YouTube video, after YouTube video is because it feels like you're making progress, but you're actually lying to yourself and you're just making progress in your knowledge, not in your action. And what I say to people, I have a rule. It's called the three to one rule. For every one hour of learning, you should be taking three hours of action. So for example, you guys have spent now, man, 15 hours with us this week, maybe a little less, a little bit more. That means that you owe me and you owe Paulson 45 hours of action before you even learn anything else. And then what, what most, what tends to happen though, is people will hop on the next high level workshop and be like, okay, what's this next cool thing? And then they never take action. This is, I promise you, it's a mental game that holds you back. It's not, yeah. the skills can be learned, the action can be taken. So what is the thing holding you back? Yeah. Most of the time, it's just our, our fear of putting ourselves out there, getting told no, getting rejected, and then we never end up making progress. Yeah. So you know, you know, another thing I notice on that note, Joel, especially with the high level crowd, the high level family, and you all know I love you, and we're and Joel and I are speaking with like a lot of passion, and that's built from a lot of pain of unsuccessful launches, a lot of pain of like seeing people struggle in the space. And I'll tell you, the one thing I see with high levelers in general is what I call the knowledge trap. The knowledge trap of, oh, I need to like, learn everything about high level before I can go out there and do business. And I'm like, dude, like you came to three of our masterminds now, our conference, sat in, you know, every workshop. You probably know more about high level than I do, genuinely. Me you too. Guys, actually, I will, I will make a bold bet. 90% 90, 90 of you guys watching this know more about high level than I do. Me too. I don't know enough about high level myself. And it's the same thing. But if you put us out there on a sales competition, I, I can make my run for my money because I will go. But here's the thing, Paul, you know? I will actually be able to get people better results, even if I know less about high level. And here's why. Because I'll actually, it's almost like the, the analogy of being out in the court and, and practicing. If yeah. I'm talking to my clients every day and practicing and working on getting them great results over time. I will, even if I know less about the specifics of the yeah. custom field and the custom tag and this and that you need the client in order to get the client results. There's yeah. you, you, there, you can't change that reality that like you need one for the other. And people <laughs> say like, you, you know, you know, the, the theory of like what co comes first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah. Or the, the, the analogy in, in the world of business, I'm going to just pick one. The egg comes first, then the chicken. The yeah. egg is the client. The chicken is the client results. And that's, that's just it. the way it is. So yeah. let's go back to um, week week three or week two. Where are we at? Sorry, guys. Well, it's, we get it's on very these simple. Week, yeah. the the And I would say, honestly, guys, I'm going to go back on the rant a little bit because this is the most important thing I've taught you. In the four days, this, what we're talking about right now, yeah. I will put my millions of dollars I will bet that this, what we're teaching you right now, what's coming out of my mouth is the most important lesson for most of you guys. If you're like, Joel, I take more action than I even know what to do with, then this is not for you. But I know most of you guys are hesitant and scared to put yourselves out there. And I get it. I've been there. I, wanted to, I, I showed this on day one. I started applying for jobs while I was trying to be an entrepreneur. I almost gave up three times. I have a lot of fear. I have a lot of doubt. I have a lot of insecurity and I still showed up, right? That's, that's the name of the game. I still took the very first step like I teach. And 
the reason I can share this is because I've been in your shoes. I know the feeling and I know that most of you guys will learn, learn, learn your way to nothing. And, and, and it should really be, how do I learn, get enough knowledge for me to take the next step? Okay, cool. I know what to do now. I'm going to ignore the knowledge. Now it's time for me to take more action. And if you guys follow that mentality over and over and over again, I promise you that you will make progress. I'm not saying that you're going to make millions. I'm not saying you're going to be this ultra successful, but you will absolutely make progress. And I will guarantee that. So can I get one in the chat? If you will make that promise to yourself that you're going to take enough action to get on the goals that you want to hit, give me a one in the chat. Just in the comments, if you're going to be an action taker on this, because this is a lot of information that's worth a lot that you will not find in most programs out there. And I'm not disqualifying disqualifying anybody else. I'm just telling you, this is from a lot of building agencies. <laughs> and this is, I mean, I, it, it, anyways, let's get back to week three, week two. Well, that I, I want to say, say one more thing. You know why? So for example, this year, I helped, um, I helped a few teenagers hit 100k a month. I helped one 15 year old hit 10k a month. 15. Yeah, yeah. like the Jared 15. Curry story. Insane. <laughs> I mean, no. Now these are different guys. This is like Connor Trong, 15 year, 15 years oh old God. in high school, and he's working with HVAC companies. Hits 10k a month. Now here's why they're able to do it more easily, and it's because. Less they're not overcomplicating it. Yeah. They're, 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 just, they're just like, okay, Joel says not to overcomplicate it. I'm going to trust that I shouldn't overcomplicate it. You know, someone said in the comments, it feels like it's so simple. It is. It's just you have to – the hard part is you showing up to the basketball court and taking the shots and practicing. That's the hard part. You know, it's like that. In, in following the analogy of basketball, the, the hard part is you showing up and doing the work on the right things. It's not – the high level, the high, all the, the, all, everything else can be taught. We literally gave it to you. We gave you an entire business model over the course of four days with new innovations that haven't been shared with the world, like the AI from Ashton today. So we gave you everything. We even gave you innovative cutting edge strategies, but that's not, that's the easy part. All of you guys consume that information. Access to, access to that information is the easy part. The hard part is the taking action and also doing it, taking action on the right things. So I know I'm ranting, Paulson, but I promise you, this is the most important takeaway from all the four days. If not, no one is going to get results. I promise you. If everyone just watches this and they're like, oh my God, this was amazing. Joel's awesome. Paulson's awesome. All the guest speakers were awesome, but you don't do anything with it. You'll still be stuck exactly where you're at and it's useless. The yeah. value of it is just perceived value. It's not real value at that point. Right. Yeah. The worst thing so, you could do is make us feel good and give us flowers, which we don't really need. <laughs> we don't need any more flowers than what we have because we are action takers and we want you to follow that same energy, the same type of mentality and do this for your own self and your families and loved ones and yourself as a person. Like the journey that you took off was you know, it's not what it all you thought it was going to be. Like I did the same thing, jumped into my first 997 course. Two years, I had like almost no clients, almost no clients because I was just taking a lot of different action. It wasn't efficient until I realized, okay, I got to take the right action. Anyways, let's get off our soapbox here for a second. Yeah. You know, it's out of love. No, I, th I, <laughs> no, I, th I, th I think like, honestly, that's the whole, I'm gonna, that's all I'm going to tell you guys to do. If you guys want a specific plan, I would say spend one week diving into some more mindset stuff, picking it, which you actually don't even need to. That's more if you want. Actually, no, I'm going to get rid of it. You guys don't even need this. Boom. Pick <laughs> you your got your mindset just in the last 10, 10 minutes. Yeah, you got it. You got it. This is the <laughs> mindset. It. You just it. needed a little push. This is it. This you is already it. Let's not waste it. any more time on that. So, okay, so in the next week, in the next week, pick your niche. You don't need to create an offer. That's already done. Scrape a list of prospects in your niche. Set up a free prospecting channel and start prospecting. Once you start getting replies, write your intro script, build out your demo presentation over two days. Okay. Once you start landing a few clients from prospecting, set up paid ads within three days. At this point, you should have everything that you need to start getting clients. 
which okay. means that now I want you to focus your attention on Hey, now that we have some clients to work with, let's make the best product in the whole wide world for them. And the way that you're going to do that, number one, get a strategic partner. And then number two, take everything that we taught you today or, or on day one, implement it for your clients and slowly tweak it. That's, that's really the answer. Take everything we taught you on day one, implement it for your clients and start to slowly tweak it. So that's it. I'm going to give you guys that game plan. It's it, it. And by the way, that's a much, I know you guys, I know 12 months sounds awesome, but right now, if you guys are below 10 K a month, you should be thinking in day to day, week to week. Like, what do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? Not, yeah, you know, six, seven, eight months from now. So guys, hopefully that was helpful. As far as 10 K to hundred K a month, I'm going to just break this down super fast. Um, uh, where is it? Okay. By the way, to get to 10K is a lot harder from than going from 10K to 25 or 10K to 50, 10K to 100. Because by then, a lot of the fundamental pillars of the business is, is kind of finished because you have an offer, you have a market, you have pricing, you have inbound leads. You can you, might, you probably even have paid ads at that point. At that point, you're trying to figure out how to duplicate yourself as an entrepreneur. Keep going, Joel. Yeah, I think that's a great, that's a, that's a good golden nugget. Zero, zero to 10K is the hardest because you have your back against the wall. You have everything is limited time, limited resources, a lot of skills to learn, a lot of fears to overcome, and a lot to do. <laughs> While you're at so, your day, day job doing nine to five and trying to figure it's out. It's really hard. <laughs> I mean, 10K to 100K a month is a lot simpler. You need to have a product. I'm going to just go through this very fast. It's really just more things you have to ha have in place. You need to have a productized offer. You need to have paid ads. You need to build out, uh, you, you need to start to build out your brand. Yeah. You need to start hiring, um, what's it called? Setters, appointment setters, building yeah. out emails and text sequences in high level. You need to build out a sales team, hire a setter and closer. You need to hire an operations um, fulfillment, or fulfillment partner. partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, build out your team, automate service delivery, and learn how to sell high ticket. Like that's just really fast. Can you For me to can teach? You, yeah, can you go back to that? I want to just highlight one thing that you just glanced over super fast that is really important. Can you go back to that? I want to. I want to just make a point here because it's sure. really important. Yeah. So go number two, productized offer. Okay. Agencies out there, implement and build some kind of a software offer into your agency. That is going to be the fastest way you can productize your offer. And what Joel's talking about is creating an assembly line. So it's repeatable. You're kind of creating the same type of fulfillment. Okay. And Joel and I come from the world of absolutely not wanting to do custom projects. We don't do custom projects in our world of agency delivery. Everything is predictable offers. And SaaS allows you to go down the route of productizing the fastest way possible, okay? Whether it's downsell, gateway offers, whatever, SaaS allows you to productize the fastest as an agency more than anything else. I just wanted to just let you know that because regular agency services is high churn regardless. SaaS services that are baked in with an agency service has less churn. If it's SaaS only, even better churn, right? So like, Pay attention to that component, and that's when you need to go into figuring out, okay, my offer needs to be better. How do I productize this to make it easier for my team? And then launch to bigger markets. Keep going, Joel. Yeah, I think, like, also, guys, I have a lot of content on on YouTube as far as, like, how to scale to 100K a month. If you guys get to 10K a month, the chances of you being able to scale to 100K a month significantly go up. It's, 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 yeah. Cause at that point, you know how to get clients and get clients results. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the foundation to this business model. Yeah. That's it. You know? So, um, yeah, if you're 10 K a month, you're trying to get to hundred K a month. The, the, the big things to look for, you have to build a sales team to free up your time. You have to build an assembly line for fulfillment so that you're not stuck doing all the work you need to hire, build out your team. You need to um, build out all of your systems, onboarding systems, automations with high level, all that stuff. And then you also need to start building 
your brand, right? You need to start to be a million dollar brand. And the way that you do this is, I mean, this is, this could be a huge mass. This could be more content, more content, more <laughs> content, but um, I don't want to over, I don't want to overcomplicate the process for you guys. So for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. Cool. Um, I think, I think you guys get it. They get it. You know, uh, Paulson, <laughs> I, I, when you said, let's make a 12 month plan. I was like, man, should we just hammer them with the, with the truth of what they need to hear? Cause well, I think really it's you guys... important to have a structure of some kind that you're going to follow. Like have a game plan. Like you guys don't need us to create a plan for you, but have a structure of action plans. Like matter of fact, in the comments, can you type in what is the source? What is the cold source of inbound leads that you're going to go after? Is it cold email? Is it Instagram DMs? Is it paid ads? Type in in the comments of what you're going to launch first. I kind of want to get an idea, a ballpark idea of what kind of an action you guys are going to all take. Uh, I would love to just see that. Let's see. Nico says email. Let's see. Michael Scott says he's going to launch paid ads. Callie says Instagram DMs. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Cold emails, guys. ads. Like t- just own that. Whatever you're just saying right now, own that and launch it by next week. You don't even need to wait till January. We're still in December. We got like a whole two weeks left in my mind for 2023. So by the time January comes, you have pillars built out for your business. Joel, what else do we need to cover today? We, I know we have more things to do. No, so, so, so guys, we made it till the end. It's time for the raffle and it's also time for the uh giveaways now before uh-huh. we talk about that but this is going to be my spiel on high level you guys need a high level to make this business work out of all the 109 agencies that we helped scale to 100k a month they all used high level it's like you need this software to make it work so part of why we also wanted to create this three or sorry four day workshop to give you guys everything and use it through high levels because you need it, right? Carl Orton is asking, with the paper show model um, and chiropractors, how do you handle prepay and health insurance? I don't touch health insurance. We just take prepay and then let the chiro deal with that. Okay. Justin Jacobs asking, when taking the initial deposit to say chiro when booking the appointment, do we send them the initial payment to the doctor or how does that work if that makes sense so i guess what uh, you're saying, saying if we get if we get the payment in yeah yeah so like let's um, a point like 25 bucks to confirm the appointment does that revenue go to the doctor or do you use it for marketing on behalf of the doctor so we took the ad spend in-house so we would just credit it towards their ad spend Got it. So for their budget that they paid us for ad spend was two thousand, and we collected five hundred dollars in prepays. We would credit them five hundred dollars in ad spend. Got it. Xavier Caldera. Hey, Xavier. Good to see you, man. Um, he's asking for the AI chatbot. Why don't you use Mate? Have you tried Pinecone to feed the AI at scale? Well, we use Chat GPT four, right? That was kind of the main thing. Or are there any other tools that you use? I don't even know what those names are. I have no idea. Okay, cool. Uh, Lewis is asking, I just started my agency. I have one client on board. I've been running the system for four days. Should I wait to fine tune everything with her? Parentheses power partner, or should I get more clients onboarded now? So he's got one client. He's asking whether he should just go get more clients or perfect the fulfillment with that. Well, I, I, I I like to have about five clients before you slow down and perfect the system. And here's why. Let's say that you're playing with a basketball team. You go to the gym, there's your there's pickup game going on, and you get four people to join your team. What if they all suck <laughs> at basketball? You probably won't. Win. Like, like there's good, like any industry, there's good great business owners, there's good business owners, there's average business owners, and then there's bad business owners. So, so you, I like to have like a little bit more data to determine, Hey, cause, cause what if the system works incredibly well for client number three, and it's the same system as client number one, but client number one is failing. Um, so it's not that, that 
proves to you that it's not really the system, it's the person. So sure. I would say try to get a, a handful. A Got handful. It. Lori, Lori Wisdom is asking, how about just running Facebook ads for SaaS without having to do the free prospecting for SMMA? What would be a great offer? Wait, could you, wait, wait. So Which, she's basically asking, yeah, she's basically asking what would be a great offer for slash slash SMMA. We talked about that in day one. Um, so if you go back and rewatch that, we talk about the paper show model, performance model, essentially, that puts the risk divided between the agency as well as the client. So I would say, Lori, watch that. But when it comes to offers, your industry is going to determine what offer makes sense to them the most based on how they perceive your type of business. But Joel, any thoughts on offers? How do you how do you create an offer typically? Um, let's see. But what what is the she the person was trying to offer this SaaS? Is that is that what she's asking? How about just running Facebook ads for SaaS without having to do the free prospecting for SMMA? What would be a great offer? If you're like, hey, sign up for my SaaS. I haven't seen that work as well because it's like we talked about earlier. People don't want features. They want results. People don't right. want, they right. don't even want AI. They just want to know yeah. that AI can help them get more patients, more jobs, more estimates, more yeah. money. So, so it's like the, the problem is that if you're, all of your ads should be guided towards the desire or the pain. And yeah. then you, and, and then your solution just happens to be SaaS to solve that uh, pain or to help them get that desire. Now, yeah. as far as offers, if I was trying to get a lot of SaaS people, what I would actually do is reach out to local businesses. Um, here, let me see if I can find this video. One second. Also, I think we might've misunderstood her question a little bit. I think she's asking also, should I just run Facebook ads versus doing the cold approaches? If I had the money. Oh, if, okay. Okay. If you have the money, Here's what's going to happen. If you run ads, you're going to be able to practice sales and practice your whole process faster. And you're going to get better a lot more quickly. But yeah. there is risk involved because it is pay to play. So what I like to tell beginners is get your first few clients organically so that there's yeah. less risk. Yeah. And then once you have a few clients, you can ramp up with that. So if you're like, Joel, I don't care to invest and risk it, then go with ads. And if you're like, Joel, I already have a few clients. I'm ready to scale this up. That's when you want to light the fire, fuel the fire with ads. I love that. I think the second question after that was similar. I lost my spot. So I'm going back up here. Let's see. Put all your questions down, guys and gals. We're doing a like a power through of um, these questions here. Let's see. Um Um, is it okay to run, you know what, let me go back to, I'm sorry, you guys, let me get off my phone and go to the actual Facebook streaming and pull up the questions there. Um, I see a ton of questions coming. So let me see if I could go to all questions. Okay, here we go. Um, what do you recommend uh, an international agency on launching uh, in the U.S.? Like, how do they launch in the U.S.? And if they want to go okay, after... Okay, here, here's the honest truth. Are you, you're trying to make American dollars and you're in a different country, then you're going to have... Like, there's going to be... It's going to be harder. Like, there's, there's no denying that. People are like, well, I'm in blank country. Can I just get U.S. clients? That's like, if I try to go get clients in Germany, it's, I don't speak German, you know, it's going to be hard for me. Is it possible? Yes, but it's going to require me to level up, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I would say that if you're trying to get US clients, launch everything that we taught you, but you have two options. You can either, what I would do, just to give you an answer, as I would find, build my team in the US or find a business partner who's in the US. Because it, it's like, if I was trying to get clients in Germany, I could go find someone in Germany who speaks English, 
who can be my business partner for that country, Space. right? So, 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 yeah. Or, or like, or you can also just play on harder mode. Like, it will be harder, right? Yeah. But then you also get the benefits that if it works, the return on the currency is way higher for most countries, not you know, or for some countries. So, what I would do is I would probably find someone who's in the US or build my team in the US so that I can leverage them to overcome some of the challenges when it comes to the language, when it comes to the time zone difference, when it comes to the cultural differences in terms of how business is done. Like if I was trying to go and build a business in Japan, they approach business differently. Yeah, they might not be as so yeah. so so I'm gonna I'm gonna find someone in Japan who can partner with me. That's probably my easiest way. Yeah. If I want to leverage that country. So, yep. Andrew Phillips. Hey, Andrew. Um, he's asking if I have a client that is kind of on the fence about paying and I don't have a client who I can provide social proof with to help close the deal, what do you suggest that I do to get that client over the fence without social proof? How do you start off? The, 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 a better question to ask yourself is how do I get social proof as fast as possible so that this never becomes an issue again? So the, 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 the reality is closing clients without social proof is very hard. So it's like the, the better problem to solve is how do I get social proof so that this isn't a thing that keeps happening? Yeah. What, what I would do is I would offer either a reactivation campaign or a Google review campaign that we taught you how to do on day one in exchange for a testimonial. And we even gave you the script to downsell it on day three yesterday. We gave you the script to downsell um, Google review campaign or a reactivation campaign. So what I would probably do if you can't get them over the edges, say, hey, why don't we just start with a Google review campaign or um, reactivation campaign? And, and, and I'll do that for you at no cost in exchange for a testimonial video. And now we are not pitching him and you're also solving the problem of social proof. Got it. Um, Dino is asking, with how many clients is the right time to transition to done with you? I have worked with eight clients so far and I have three testimonials. I'm currently doing all done for you, working with MedSpots, doing Facebook ads. So I guess the question is, when do you get to that transition of models? It's not a, it's not a, when do you get to that? If you want to start a done with you business, you're starting another business, like an agency and a consulting business are totally, completely different businesses. Yeah. So it's not a, oh, when do I unlock the ability to do so? It's more like, a, okay, well, if you want to start a consulting business, that's fine, but that's not an agency and vice versa. What I would say is be very careful to start consulting businesses where you teach them how to do marketing, where they don't want to do their marketing. So for example, realtors, they like to do their marketing. They like to post on social media. Entrepreneurs like to do their marketing. A dentist would rather, much rather pay someone to do it than ever have to go into the ads manager ever. So if you're like, I'm going to teach dentists how to do it, it you're, you're going up, it's going to be an uphill battle. Here's the other thing I'll say. Personally, Consulting businesses, unless you have a big brand where people, what, what, here's the thing. I'm going to just go into a quick spiel. With consulting, you are the product. They are buying you. So if you don't have a big brand, if you don't have a super successful med spa, if you don't have a huge influence already, it's going to be an uphill battle because you are the product. It's not ads. You are, they're buying you. Just like you guys are like, oh, how do I work? If you're like, how do I work with Joel? you're buying me, right? So, so the thing to keep in mind is when you're doing an ads agency or a SaaS agency, whatever you're doing, they're buying the product, the service, not you. They just know that you, they just trust you to be able to deliver on that. That is much harder, guys. Getting someone to buy you for who you are and not what you offer is much harder on the sale, much easier to fulfill, much harder on the sale, much easier to fulfill. So just know that you're going to probably struggle to get clients and yeah, it'll be easier to fulfill, but now it's harder to get clients. So personally, I would build your agency unless you're, if you're like a huge influence in the med spa space, or you have a huge following, 
I would just keep building your agency personally. Yeah. Yep. And I don't recommend people selling their time because it's not scalable either. Even if you got a yes, you could only do that for a limited amount of time. So it's not worth your time typically. Alexander is asking, uh, Joel, what is a SaaS agency as opposed to a traditional marketing agency? Um, I mean, that's a better question for, for you, Paulson. I don't know how you guys position it, but I think it's just selling high level without the service. I think the key is productizing your fulfillment where it doesn't involve humans to create that fulfillment delivered to your client. So then you're dependent on systems and technology versus talent and skills of like an ad buyer. Why do people jump into the world of SaaS agency? Because no matter what you do, even if you have white glove service, amazing fulfillment, we know for a fact within the first 90 days, based on the data that we have inside high level today, we know the first 90 days of most agencies, they will get a canceled client. Within first 90 days, 76 or 74% of agencies, traditional agencies lose their client because of churn. So you have to implement things like what Joel's teaching you because you have to stay on top of prospecting and sales as the agency model, traditional agency model has a big leaky bucket. Now, if you add a software to the mix, you lower that churn from 76% down to under 6 7% or even 5%. So what happens is this. Let's say you go sell Facebook ads, but you want, you know, they cancel the Facebook ads for whatever reason. What, what, you're, what as an SaaS agency, what you can do is tell them, hey, you want to keep your CRM? You want to keep the system for reviews? You want to keep the system to engage with your customers? We'll charge you $200 a month or $500 a month, therefore allowing you to stay on as a vendor for a long time, usually two to three years, versus you just walking out the back door because Facebook ads didn't work. So a lot of high-level agencies today are transitioning into the SaaS agency model where they're kind of creating the hybrid of providing you know, skill and talent-oriented services on top of product and technology that is like an operating system. Now, this is not for everybody. <laughs> it's a complicated system for you to now figure out what kind of technology matters to the business. So for that, for that, we have things like the five-day challenge that you can learn how to sell SaaS. You can come to our mastermind. We have a SaaSpreneur course. Uh, but either way, that's why that's the difference between the SaaS agency and the traditional agency model. Alex, let's see. Um, let's see. Last question. Okay, last question. <clears throat> Let me just pick a great question for you. Okay, here's a good one. Um, how do I level myself? up as an entrepreneur over time i think that's a great okay, great question, question to end on i'll yeah. tell you guys a story i'll tell you guys a story so i graduated college and i applied for this i wanted to be an entrepreneur in college i had two failed businesses i had a djing company for weddings and parties and then i had a software actually called mazoof which completely tanked and i was trying to build interest-based social media which essentially were, were like facebook groups but you could essentially create a facebook group within a certain mile radius didn't work both failed businesses then i wanted to go and start a a beverage company and like a healthy drinks company and my dad actually said hey joel why don't you go and work for two years get your take a step back then three steps forward which was great advice so then I applied for this program called Venture for America, and it's very competitive. Most of the people that got in were like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, UPenn. Even the entire training was at Brown University, and it was a very intimidating interview. So for example, they had us, so I got into the interview, and they had us go to New York, go to this, uh, this huge skyscraper at the very top, and it was a group interview all day long. And 
even uh damon john from shark tank was there so like you had some big time people as the judges interviewing you i was scared out of my mind i did not sleep the <laughs> night before i was on like one hour of sleep i was intimidated i had never done anything this intense i was like i didn't go to these schools these people are probably smarter than me which by the way funny enough side tangent most of those people didn't end up being entrepreneurs after the program which is very interesting uh whereas the non-ivy league school people most of them ended up becoming entrepreneurs which is interesting but side note anyways i get up as part of you have to do a pitch that was part of the interview and i get up i'm in front of like uh i'm interviewing with like six or seven other people and I have all the judges, big skyscraper, really intense. I'm on very little sleep and I have a panic attack. <laughs> I have a panic attack. I'm, I feel like I'm going to die. It, it, no, it's, it's really, it's, it's, I don't know if you've ever had one, but it's, it's extremely uncomfortable. You feel like you're going to die. Someone take me to the hospital and, and you start yeah. to like get depersonalized. You start to feel like you're, you're on drugs. You start to feel, vi- but not in a good way. Like you feel uncomfortable oh, no. and okay. panic starts to sink in i start to get really anxious my heart's beating really fast and i literally don't say a word and i sit down i skip my turn that day i grew a massive fear because before that i didn't have it but that day i think it was the lack of sleep all these things i grew a massive fear of public speaking that day Okay. After that, I was afraid, afraid, deeply afraid to public speak. Like my body would just have terrible reactions to it. And so long story short, I ended up getting waitlisted into the program because of that moment. I ended up writing to the CEO, Hey, give me another shot. He ends up letting me off the waitlist into the program. And guess what? I got placed in a company in Colorado, where my job for the next two years was going to be to do public speaking. Oh my! So <laughs> I'm like freaking out. I don't have to do public speaking for two years and face my fears. And I remember telling myself, Joel, as long as you continue to lean in and face your fear over time, you will get better. You don't have to be the best public speaker in the world. You don't have to be this so super comfortable just show up just keep showing up first time i did public speaking as part of that job i was shaky i didn't have a panic attack but i was severely uncomfortable second time same thing third time maybe a little bit better that year i went on to do over 500 hours of public speaking i spoke in front of crowds of anywhere between 10 people all the way to over 500 people that's a lot of people in a room and Now, today, fast forward today, I am so comfortable public speaking that even if I completely lose my train of thought, I feel no pressure. If I literally, you put me on a stage or the microphone, I forget what I'm going to say. I'm like, sorry, guys. Or if I need a break, I need to go to, I'm, I'm getting off stage. I do. I lost all. I became so comfortable that I don't even care anymore if things don't go well to the point where. I started doing improvised comedy classes to get better, to show up every single day and improve every single day and improve every single day and improve. Now you can put me on a stage in front of strangers with no preparation. I feel totally comfortable. There's, I have no shame. But here's the thing. I had to lean into the challenge every single time. And I had to grind through some very scary periods over those two years. And even like a year later, after I had gotten more comfortable, every once in a while, I would have a random anxiety attack on stage or a random kind of flashback. And I just told myself, keep showing up. And the reason I'm sharing this story is because most entrepreneurs, as soon as something gets hard or scary, they they kind of resist, they push back, they delay. And really the only way for you guys to become better entrepreneurs is to keep leaning in 
Yeah. Do you have do your are your clients getting bad results? Lean into that problem. Lean, call them. Try to figure it out. Don't get scared and like, oh, I don't want to call the clients and face the reality. You know, face it head on. Did your team member just quit on you because you weren't a good leader? Lean into that. Why did that happen? Call them. Hey, can I get, I know you're leaving. I just want to get feedback so that I can be better. You're afraid to cold call. You're afraid to talk to clients. Talk to clients and get rejected. You guys have to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. That's how I believe. And it, and it happens. It doesn't go away. It just changes at every level. For example, you guys probably had to get comfortable with managing a huge company. Like it's very different than being like a 10, per, you know, five to 10 person team. Now you guys have hundreds of team members. It, it could be scary. Now you have hundreds of people relying on you. Not only that, high level has tens of thousands of individuals and all of their clients relying on them. That's pressure that most people never have to deal with. And that could be extremely uncomfortable, but the entrepreneurs that win are the ones that continue to lean in. So that's a good place to end. If you guys want to get better at entrepreneurship and, and you ask me, how do I become the best entrepreneur? I would just say there, there's no magic formula besides continuing to lean in, lean into learning new skills, lean into facing challenges, lean into innovation, lean into the uncomfortable. So hopefully that helps. Absolutely. Awesome. Let me let me go ahead and just um, say something to everyone here. Joel, Joel and I have a friendship over the you know many years, and um, he's always extremely generous in providing information to the high level family. And you know, I, I'm very appreciative of you, Joel. You don't have to do what you're doing. The folks that you brought on, the experts that you brought on, they as well. We just want to give you all your flowers that you're due. Um, obviously, you know, you have a great relationship with high level. We'll continue doing great, great things. Give, give Joel as an appreciation, type in a one in the chat. If you got at least one thing out of the last four days, give me a one in the chat. And I'm talking about in the Facebook streaming chat. As a thank you to Joel Kaplan, as a thank you to Isaac Rubel, Sergio, who couldn't be here, that we taught from as well, um, Ashton, Faisal, Aaron, uh, Marcus. Christian. Christian, Marcus, yeah. yeah, yeah. Who else? Did I miss anybody? Isaac. Isaac, yeah. And there's also like 30, 40 people on the high-level team. Jordan, Jordan's been the MVP that- Huge shout out to shout teams. out. To yeah, Jordan. huge shout out. Um, and we have a lot more things. And huge shout out to you, man. Of course. I literally, you, well. <laughs> you guys, all these workshops that high level does all the education, all the free value is because it started with Paulson. It really did. Yeah. He, yeah. he put himself online and said, we're doing this many yeah. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> now we have departments built around just these workshops, which is insane. Um, but anyways, so this is all, that. man, you should, you should be proud of yourself, man. Like that's, Very that's proud. really cool. You're, well, we have a big you're, task you're helping at hand. a lot of people. We, you know, we have a big task at hand. We have 70,000 agencies today in this group. It's my personal goal for myself to level up 70,000 agencies. And that number keeps going up every week because next week it'll be 75,000 agencies. And my goal is to level and scale all every single agency. No agencies left behind or marketers or consultants or course creators or branders or coaches like everyone now we're we've kind of went past the agency avatar now there's a lot of different people even business owners are in here every single one of you business owners and entrepreneurs i want to level up that's my goal and we're going to continue doing this mm. more often more rapid that's more really faster cool. more depth uh but anyways thanks for watching the three Paulson, can i say one last thing shop. yeah for, just for you man i uh you know before we did that 10 day workshop in 2019 I used to be very secretive about my intellectual property, about what I know, about my strategies, my tactics. And that workshop was the workshop that made me want to give everything away for free. That was like the turning point where I saw, oh my God, if you really give, like 
not only do you help a lot of people, but you actually grow so much. So I want to thank you, man. What I wanted to do with this three-day workshop was to destroy the 10-day workshop and over-deliver even more. And we gave you, there was nothing else to show you guys, honestly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's the business model. So yeah. you did it. I appreciate you, Joel. Um, anyways, replays will be in the YouTube channel in case if you don't have a high level account. Anyways, have a good rest of your afternoon, morning. Um, Joel, happy holidays to you, my guy. I probably won't see you probably you, next event that we will be at. Um, but anyways, I'll go ahead we'll and, have to hoop it and up. on that note. Yeah, my, we'll knee, will, my, 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 knee, my knee will be <laughs> healed by then. That was one of the cool things about your coaching programs. Once in a while in the masterminds, uh, everybody got to hoop. <laughs> Never seen the only, the only downside is people had a were on a mission to beat me. <laughs> so, like, there's one of my very good friends, Neville. He's a big dude. Okay, he yeah, should I not. Neville. I should not. I should not be guarding him, and I, and he should not be guarding me. Okay, <laughs> he's a center. I'm a small forward. Okay. Oh my gosh. And he's strong. And he was literally like, Joel, I'm going to eat you alive. And I got a little freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And you're like 6'2 or 6'3. You're a pretty tall guy. 6'1, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, anyways but we'll get off. Busted, we'll man. get off. Have a good rest right. of your day. Um, we, we do have another workshop in the, in the ramp up. Uh, and so just stay on the lookout for that. But anyways.